Canto. Chapter 17. Charles goes, with his, against King Rodamont. Griffin in Norandino's tournament. Does mighty deeds. Martano turns his front. Showing how recreant is his natural bent. And next, on Griffin to bring down a front. Stole from the knight the arms in which he went. Hence by the kindly monarch much esteemed. And Griffin scorned, whom he Martano deemed. God, outraged by our rank iniquity. Whenever crimes have passed remissions bound. That mercy may with justice mingled be. Has monstrous and destructive tyrants crowned. And gifted them with force and subtlety. A sinful world to punish and confound. Marius and Scylla to this end were nursed. Rome with two Neros and Achaeus two thirteen cursed. Domitian and the latter Antonine. And, lifted from the lowest rabble's lees. To imperial place and puissance, Maximine. Hence Thebes to cruel Creon bent her knees. Mezentius ruled the subject Agiline. Fattening his fields with blood. To pests like these. Our Italy was given in later day. To Lombard, Goth, and Hun a bleeding prey. What shall I of fierce Attila, what say? Of wicked Ezzeline, and hundreds more? Whom, because men still trod the crooked way. God sent them for their pain and torment sore. Of this ourselves have made a clear essay. As well as those who lived in days of yore. Consigned to ravening wolves, ordained to keep. Us, his ill-nurturing and unuseful sheep. Who, as if having more than served to fill. Their hungry maw, invite from foreign wood. Beyond the mountain, wolves of greedier will. With them to be partakers of their food. The bones which Thracimene and Trebia fill. And canny, seem but few to what are strewed. On fattened field and bank, where on their way. Ada and Mela, Ronco and Taro stray. Now God permits that we should feel the spite. Of people, who are haply worse than we. For errors multiplied and infinite. And foul and pestilent iniquity. The time will come we may such ill requite. Upon their shores, if we shall better be. And their transgressions ever prove above. The long endurance of eternal love. The Christian people then God's placid front. Must have disturbed with their excesses sore. Since them with slaughter, rape, and rapine hunt. Through all their quarters. Plundering Turk and more. But the unsparing rage of Rodamont. Proves worse than all the ills endured before. I said that Charlemagne had made repair. In search of him towards the city square. Charles, by the way, his people's butchery. Beholds, burnt palaces and ruined fanes. And sees large portion of the city lie. In unexampled wreck. Ye coward trains. Whither in heartless panic would ye fly? Will none his loss contemplate? What remains? To you, what place of refuge, say, is left? If this from you so shamefully be reft? Then shall one man alone, a prisoned foe, who cannot scale the walls which round him spread, unscathed, unquestioned, from your city go, when all are by his vengeful arm laid dead? Thus Charlemagne, whose veins with anger glow, and shame, too strong to brook, in fury said. And to the spacious square made good his way. Where he beheld the foe his people slay. Thither large portion of the populace. Climbing the palace roof, had made resort. For strongly walled, and furnished was the place. With ammunition, for their long support. Rodamont, mad with pride, had, in his chase. Of the scared burghers, singly cleared the court. He with one daring hand, which scorned the world. Brandished the sword. His other wildfire hurled. And smote and thundered, mid a fearful shower. At the sublime and royal house's gate. To their life's peril, crumbling roof and tower. Is tossed by them that on the summit wait. 
nor any fears to ruin hall or bower. But wood and stone endure one common fate. And marbled column, slab, and gilded beam. By sire and grandsire held in high esteem. 214. Rodamont stands before the portal, bright. With steel, his head and bust secured in mail. Like to a serpent, 215 issued into light. Having cast off his slew. Diseased and stale. Who more than ever joying in his might. Renewed in youth, and proud of polished scale. Darts his three tongues, fire flashing from his eyes. While every fright beast before him flies. Nor bulwark, stone, nor arbalest, nor bow. Nor what upon the panem smote beside. Sufficed to arrest the sanguinary foe. Who broke and hewed, and shook that portal wide. And in his fury let such daylight through. Twas easy to espy, and might be spied. In visages o'ercast in death-like sort. That full of people was the palace court. Through those fair chambers echoed shouts of dread. And feminine lament from dame distressed. And grieving, through the house, pale women fled. Who wept, afflicted sore, and beat their breast. And hugged the doorpost and the genial bed too sixteen. Too soon to be by stranger lords posseist. The matter in this state of peril hung. When thither came the king, his peers among. Charles turned him round to these, a vigorous hand. Whom he had found in former peril true. Are you not those that erst with me did stand? Gainst Agilent in Aspermont? In you. Is vigor now so spent, he said, the band. Who him, Troiano, and Almontes slew, 217 with hundreds more, that you now fear to face. One of that very blood, that very race? Why should I now in contest with the foe? Less strength than you behold than them? Your might. Upon this hound, pursued the monarch, show. This hound who preys on man. A generous sprite. The thought of death, approach he fast or slow. So that he dies but well, holds cheap and light. But where you are, I doubt my fortune ill. For by your succor, have I conquered still. This said, he spurred his courser, couched his spear. And charged the Paynim. Nor of life less free. Sir Ogier joined the king in his career. Namus and Oliver, and, with the three. Avino, Avolio, Otho, and Berlingier. For one without the rest I never see and on the bosom, flanks, and on the front. All smote together at King Rodamont. But let us, sir, for love of heaven, forego. Of anger and of death the noisome lore. And be it deemed that I have said enow. For this while, of that Saracen, not more. Cruel than strong. Tis time in trace to go. Of Griffin, left with Origil, before. Damascus Gate, and him who with her came. The adulterer, not the brother of the dame. Of all the cities under eastern skies. Most wealthy, populous, and fairly dight. Tis said, Damascus is, which distant lies. From Salem seven days' journey. Its fair sight. A fertile plain, abundant fruit supplies. Winter and summer, sojourn of delight. Shading the city from the dawning day. A mountain intercepts its early ray. Two crystal streams the wealthy city scour. Whose currents, parted into many a rill. Infinite gardens, never bare of flower. Or stripped of leaf. With grateful murmur fill. Tis said the perfumed waters are of power. So plenteously they swell, to turn a mill. And that whoever wander through the streets. Sent, issuing from each home, a cloud of sweets. Then the high street gay signs of triumph war. Covered with showy cloths of different dye. Which deck the walls, while sylvan leaves in store. And scented herbs upon the pavement lie. 218. Adorned is every window, every door. 
with carpeting and finest drapery. But more with ladies fair, and richly drayest. In costly jewels and in gorgeous vest. Within the city gates in frolic sport. Many are seen to ply the festive dance. And hear the burghers of the better sort. Upon their gay and well-trapped coursers prance. A fairer show remains, the sumptuous court. Of barons bold and vassals, who advance. Garnished with what could be procured, of ore. And pearl, from Ind and Erythrean shore. Forward Sir Griffin pricked, with his array. Surveying, here and there, the whole at ease. When them a knight arrested by the way. And, such as wont in natural courtesies. Obliged beneath his palace roof to stay. Where he let not be wanting which might please. And cheerfully the guests, with bath restored. Next welcomed at his costly supper board. And told, how he, who, Norandino hight. Damascus and all Syria's kingdom swayed. Native and foreigner had bade invite. On whom the sword of knighthood had been laid. To a fair joust, which at the morrow's light. Ensuing, in the square was to be made. Where they might show, and without further faring. If they had valor equal to their bearing. Griffin, though he came not that joust to see. Accepts the challenge of the cavalier. For when occasion serves, it cannot be. An evil used to make our worth appear. Then questioned more of that solemnity. If, twere a wanted feast, held every year. Or new emprise. By which, in martial course. The monarch would assay his warrior's force. The gorgeous feast our monarch will display. Each fourth succeeding moon, the baron said. This is the first that you will now survey. None have been held beside. The cause which bred. The solemn usage is, that on such day. The king from sovereign peril saved his head. After four months, consumed in doleful wise. Mid tears and groans. With death before his eyes. Our monarch, who is named King Norandine. Fully to you the matter to recite. Through many and many a year for her did pine. Above all other damsels fair and bright. The king of Cyprus' daughter. Whom, in fine. Espoused, he, with his bride, and dame, and knight. To wait upon her home, a fair array. Towards his Syrian realm had shaped his way. But as we scoured the fell Carpathian Sea 219. With flowing sheet, at distance from the shore. A storm assailed us, of such cruelty. The tempest even scared our pilot whore. Drifting three days and nights at random, we. Our devious course mid threatening waves explore. Then, wet and weary, land mid verdant hills. Between well shaded and refreshing rills. We our pavilions pitch, and, mid those groves, joyfully strain our awnings overhead, and kitchens there construct, and rustic stoves, and carpets for the intended banquet spread. Meanwhile through neighboring vale the monarch roves, and secret wood, scarce pervious to the tread, seeking red deer, goat, fallowbuck, and doe, and, following him, two servants bear his bow while, with much solace, seated in a round. We from the chase expect our lord's return. Approaching us along the shore, astound. The orc, that fearful monster, we discern. God grant, fair sir, he never may confound. Your eyesight with his semblance foul and stern. Better it is of him by fame to hear. Than to behold him by approaching near to calculate the greasly monster's height. So measureless is he, exceeds all skill. Of fungus hue, in place of orbs of sight. Their sockets two small bones like berries fill. 220. Towards us, as I say, he speeds outright. Along the shore, and seems a moving hill. Tusks jutting out like savage swine he shows. A breast with drivel fowl and pointed nose. Running, 
the monster comes, and bears his snout. In guise of Brock, who enters on the trail. We who behold him fly, a helpless rout. Wherever terror drives, with visage pale. Tis little comfort, that he is without. Eyesight, who winds his plunder in the gale. Better than aught possiest of scent and sight. And wing and plume were needed for our flight. Some here, some there make off, but little gain. By flying him, for swifter is the pest. Then the south wind. Of forty, ten, with pain. Swimming aboard the bark in safety rest. Under his arm some wretches of our train. He packed, nor empty left his lap or breast. And loaded a capacious scrip beside. Which, like a shepherd's, to his waist was tied. Us to his den the sightless monster carried. Hollowed within a rock, upon the shore. Of snowy marble was that cavern quarried. As white as leaf, unstained by inky score. With him within the cave a matron tarried. Who marked by grief and pain a visage wore. With her were wife and maid, a numerous court. Both fair and foul, of every age and sort. Large as the other, and that grotto near. Almost upon the summit of the rock. Another cavern was contrived, to rear. And from the weather fend his woolly flock. Which he still herded through the changeful year. So numerous, it were hard to count his stock. Won't in due season these to pen or loose. And play the shepherd more for sport than use. The flesh of man he savoured more than sheep. And this, before he reached the cave, was seen. Three youths of ours, ere yet he climbed the steep. He are alive, or rather swallowed clean. Then moved the stone, which closed that cavern deep. And lodged us there. With that, to pasture green. His flock he led, as wont, the meads among. Sounding the pipe which at his neck was hung. Our Lord, meanwhile, returning to the strand. The loss which he had suffered comprehends. For in deep silence, upon every hand. Through empty tent and hut the monarch wends. Nor who has robbed him can be understand. And full of terror to the beach descends. Whence he his sailors in the offing seas. Unmoor and spread their canvas to the breeze. As soon as Norandino was in view. They launched and sent their pinnace to convey. The monarch thence, but he no sooner knew. Of the fell orc, and those he made his prey. Then he, without more thought, would him pursue. And follow, wheresoe'er he bent his way. To lose Lucina is such cruel pain. That life is loathsome save he her regain. When on the newly printed sand his eyes. Norandine fixed, he with the swiftness sped. With which the rage of love a man supplies. Until he reached the cave of which I said. Where we, enduring greater agonies. Than e'er were suffered, there await in dread. The orc, and deem at every sound we hear. The famished brood about to reappear. The monarch to the cave did fortune guide. When the orc's wife alone was in the lair. Seeing the king, fly, woe to thee. She cried. Should the orc take thee. Woeful everywhere. I cannot choose but be, the king replied. Whether be take or miss me, kill or spare. Not hither I by chance have wandered, I. Come with desire beside my wife to die. He afterwards the dame for tidings pressed. Of those the orc had taken on the shore. And of Lucina above all the rest. If slain or prisoner kept. With kindly lore. She Norandino, in return, addressed. And said, Lucina lived, nor need he more. Have of her future safety any dread. For the orc on flesh of woman never fed. 221. Of this you may behold the proof in me. And all these other dames who with me dwell. Nor me, nor them the orc offends, so we. Depart not ever from this cavern cell. But vainly who would from her prison flee. 
hope's peace or pardon from our tyrant fell. Buried alive, or bound with griding band. Of, in the sun, stripped naked on the sand. When hither he today conveyed your crew. The females from the males he severed not. But, as he took them, in confusion threw. All he had captive made, into that grot. He will send out their sex, not tremble, you. Lest he the women slay, the others lot. Is fixed, and, of four men or six a day. Be sure the greedy orc will make his prey. I have no counsel for you how to free. The lady, but content thyself to hear. She in no danger of her life will be. Who will our lot, in good or evil, share? But go, for love of heaven, my son, lest thee. The monster smell, and on thy body fare. For when arrived, he sniffs about the house. And, such his subtle scent, can wind a mouse. To her the amorous monarch made reply. That he the cave would not abandon, ere. He saw Lucina, and near her to die. Then to live far from her, esteemed more dear. Seeing that she can nothing more supply. Fitted to shake the purpose of the peer. Upon a new design the matron hits. Pursued with all her pains, with all her wits. With slaughtered sheep and goat was evermore. The cavern filled, the numerous flocks increase. Which served her and her household as a store. And from the ceiling dangled many a fleece. The dame made Norandino from a whore. And huge he goat's fat bowels take the grease. And with the suet all his members pay. Until he drove his natural scent away. And when she thought he had imbibed the smell. Which the rank goat exhales, she took the hide. And made him creep into the shaggy fell. Who was well covered by that mantle wide. Him in this strange disguise she from the cell. Crawling, for such was her command, did guide. Where, prisoned by a stone, in her retreat. Was hid his beauteous lady's visage sweet. Kin Norandine, as bid, took up his ground. Before the cavern, on the greensward laid. That he might enter with the flock who wound. Homeward, and longing sore, till evening stayed. At eve he hears the hollow elder's sound. Upon whose pipes the wanted tune was played. Calling his sheep from pasture to their rock. By the fell swain who stalked behind his flock. Think if his heart is trembling at its core. When Norandino hears the approaching strains. And now advancing to the cavern door. The sight of that terrific face sustains. But if fear shook him, pity moved him more. You see if he loves well or only feigns. The orc removed the stone, unbarred the coat. And the king entered, amid sheep and goat. His flock so housed, to us the orc descended. But first had care the cavern door to close. Then sent it all about, and having ended. His quest, two wretches for his supper chose. So is remembrance by this meal offended. It makes me tremble yet, this done, he goes. And being gone, the king his goatish vest. Casts off, and folds his lady to his breast. Whereas she him with pleasure should descry. She, seeing him, but suffers grief and pain. She sees him thither but arrived to die. Who cannot hinder her from being slain? Twas no small joy, mid all the woes, that. To him exclaimed Lucina, here sustain. That thou wert not among us found today. When hither I was brought, the monsters pray. For though to find myself about to leave. This life be bitter and afflict me sore. Such is our common instinct, I should grieve. But for myself. But whether thee, before. Of after me, the orc of life bereave. Assure thyself thy death will pain me more. Than mine. And thus the dame persists to moan. More Norandino's danger than her own. A hope conducts me here, the monarch said. To save thee and thy followers, every one. And, if I cannot, I were better dead. 
than living without light of thee, my son. I trust escape, as hither I have spied. As ye shall all, if, as ourselves have done. To compass our design, you do not shrink. To imbue your bodies with the loathsome stink. The trick he told, wherewith the monsters smell. To cheat, as first to him the wife had told. In any case to clothe us in the fell. That he may feel is issuing from the fold. As many men as women in the cell. We slay, persuaded by the monarch bold. As many goats as with our number square. Of those which stink the most and oldest are. We smeared our bodies with the fruitful grease. Which round about the fat intestines lay. And clothed our bodies with the shaggy fleece. This while from golden dwelling broke the day. And now, his flock returning to release. We viewed the shepherd, with the dawning ray. Who, giving breath to the sonorous reeds. Piped forth his prisoned flock to hill and meads. He held his hand before the opened lair. Lest with the herd we issued from the den. And stopped us short, but feeling wool or hair. Upon our bodies, let us go again. By such a strange device we rescued were. Clothed in our shaggy fleeces, dames and men. Nor any issuing thence the monster kept. Till thither, sore alarmed, Lucina crept. Lucina, whether she abhorred the scent. And, like us others, loathed herself to smear. Or whether with a slower gait she went. Then might like the pretended beasts appear. Or whether, when the orc her body hent. Her dread so mastered her, she screamed for fear. Or that her hair escaped from neck or brow. Was known. Nor can I well inform you how. So were we all intent on our own case. We for another's danger had no eyes. Him, turning at the scream. I saw uncase. Already her whom he had made his prize. And force her to the cavern to retrace. Her steps, we, couching in our quaint disguise. Wend with the flock. Where us the shepherd leads. Through verdant mountains, into pleasant meads. There we awaited, till beneath the shade. Secure, we saw the beaked orc asleep. When one along the shore of ocean made. And one betook him to the mountain steep. King Norandine his love alone delayed. Who would return disguised among the sheep. Nor from the place depart, while life remained. Unless his faithful consort he regained. For when before, on the flock issuing out. He saw her prisoned in the cave alone. Into the orc's wide throat he was about. To spring. So grief had reason overthrown. And he advanced even to the monster's snout. And, but by little, scaped the grinding stone. Yet him the hope detained amid the flock. Trusting to bear Lucina from the rock. The orc, at eve, went to the cave again. He brings the herd, nor finds us in the stall. And knows that he must supperless remain. Lucina guilty of the whole does call. Condemned to stand, fast girded with a chain. In open air, upon the summit tall. The king who caused her woes, with pitying eye. Looks on, and pines, and only cannot die. Morning and evening, her, lamenting sore. Ever the unhappy lover might survey. What time he grieving went afield before. The issuing flock, or homeward took his way. She, with sad face, and suppliant evermore. Signed that for love of heaven he would not stay. Since there he tarried at great risk of life. Nor could in anything assist his wife. So the orc's wife, as well upon her side. Implored him to depart, but moved him not. To go without Lucina he denied. And but remained more constant in his thought. In this sad servitude he long was tried. By love and pity bound, till fortune brought. A pair of warriors to the rocky one. Gradasso, and Agrican's redoubt son 222. Where? With their arms so wrought the champions brave. They freed Lucina from the chains she wore. 
though he with less than fortune served in save. And running to the sea their burden bore. Her to her father, who was there, they gave. This was at morn, when in the cavern whore. Mixed with the goats, King Norandino stood. Which ruminating, chewed their grassy food. But when, at daylight, twas unbarred. And now. He was instructed that his wife was gone. For the orc's consort told the tale, and how. In every point, the thing rehearsed was done. He thanked his God, and begged, with promised vow. That, since twas granted her such ill to shun. He would direct his wife to some repair. Whence he might free her, by arms, gold. Or prayer. Together with the flat-nosed herd his way. He took, and for green meads rejoicing made. He here expected, till the monster lay. Extended, underneath the gloomy shade. Then journeyed all the night and all the day. Till, of the cruel orc no more afraid. He climbed a bark on Satalia's strand. And, three days past, arrived on Syrian land. In Cyprus, and in Rhodes, by tower and town. Which in near Egypt, Turkey, or Afric lay. The king bade seek Lucina up and down. Nor could hear news of her till the other day. The other day, his father-in-law made known. He had her safe with him. What caused her stay? In Nicosia was a cruel gale. Which had long time been adverse to her sail. The king, for pleasure of the tidings true. Prepares the costly feast in solemn state. And will on each fourth moon that shall ensue. Make one, resembling this we celebrate. Pleased of that time the memory to renew. That he, in the orc's cavern, had to wait. For four months and a day, which is tomorrow. When he was rescued from such cruel sorrow. The things related I in part descried. And from him, present at the whole, heard more. From Norandine, through Calend and through Ide. Pent, till he changed to smiles his anguish sore. And if from other you hear aught beside. Say, he is ill instructed in his lore. The Syrian gentleman did thus display. The occasion of that feast and fair array. Large portion of the night, in like discourse. Was by those cavaliers together spent. Who deemed that love and pity's mickle force. Was proved in that so dread experiment. Then rising, when the supper's sumptuous course. Was cleared, to good and pleasant lodgings went. And, as the ensuing morning fairly broke. To sounds of triumph and rejoicing woke. The circling drums and trumpets echoing strain. Assemble all the town within the square. And now, when mixed with sound of horse and wain. Loud outcries through the streets repeated are. Sir Griffin dons his glittering arms again. A panoply of those esteemed most rare. Whose mail, impassable by spear or brand. She, the white fay, had tempered with her hand. The man of Antioch in his company. Armed him, a recreant worse than he was none. Provided by their landlord's courtesy. With sturdy spears and good, the course to run. Who with his kindred, a fair chivalry. To bring the warriors to the square is gone. With squires afoot and mounted upon steeds. Whom he bestowed, as optimist for their needs. They in the square arrived and stood aside. Nor of themselves a while would make display. Better to see the martial gallants ride. By twos and threes, or singly, to the fray. One told, by colors cunningly allied. His joy or sorrow to his lady gay. One, with a painted love on crest or shield. If she were cruel or were kind, revealed. It was the Syrians' practice in that age. To arm them in this fashion of the West. Haply this sprung out of their visnage. And constant commerce with the Franks, Posseist. In those days of the sacred heritage. That God incarnate with his presence blessed. Which now, to them abandoned by the train. Of wretched Christians, heathen hounds profane. 
God's worshippers, where they should couch the lance. For furtherance of his holy faith and true. Against each other's breast the spear advance. To the destruction of the faithful few. You men of Spain, and you, ye men of France. And Switzers, turn your steps elsewhere, and you. Ye Germans, worthier empire to acquire. For that is one for Christ, which you desire. If verily most Christian you would be. I speak to you, that Catholic are height. Why slain by you Christ's people do I see? Wherefore are they despoiled of their right? Why seek you not Jerusalem to free? From renegades? By Turkish Moslemite. Impure, why is Byzantium, with the best? And fairest portion of the world, Posseist? Thou Spain, hast thou not fruitful Afric nigh, 223? And has she not in sooth offended more? Than Italy? Yet her to scathe, that high. And noble, enterprise wilt thou give o'er. Alas! Thou sleepest, drunken Italy. Of every vice and crime the fetid sewer. Nor grievest, as a handmaid, to obey. In turn, the nations that have owned thy sway. If fear of famishing within thy cave. Switzer, does thee to Lombardy convey. And thou, among our people, dost but crave. A hand to give thee daily bread. Or slay. The Turk has ready wealth. Across the wave. Drive him from Europe or from Greece away. So shalt thou in those parts have wherewithal. To feed thy hunger, or more nobly fall. I to the German neighbor of thy lair. Say what I say to thee. The wealth o oh, the West. Which Constantine brought off from Rome, is there. Brought off the choicest, gave away the rest, 224. Their golden Hermus and Pactolus are. Mygdonia and Lydia, nor that country blessed. Which many tales for many praises note. If thou wouldst thither wend, is too remote. Thou mighty lion, that art charged to keep. The keys of paradise, a weighty care. Oh! Let not Italy lie plunged in sleep. If thy strong hand is planted in her hair. To thee, his shepherd, God, to guide his sheep. Has given that wand and furious name to bear. That thou mayst roar, and wide thine arms extend. And so from greedy wolves thy flock defend. But whither have I roved? Who evermore? So from one topic to the other stray? Yet think not I the road I kept before. To have missed so far, but I can find my way. I said, the Syrians then observed the lore. Or arming like the Christians of that day. So that Damascus crowded square was bright. With corslet, plate, and helm of belted knight. The lovely ladies from their scaffolds throw. Upon the juicers yellow flowers and red. While these, as loud the brazen trumpets blow. Make their steeds leap and wheel and proudly tread. Each, rode he well or ill, his art would show. And with the goring spur his courser bled. Hence this good cavalier earns fame and praise. While other scornful hoots and laughter raise. A suit of arms was prize of the assay. Presented to the king some days before. Which late a merchant found upon the way. Returning from Armenia. This the more. To grace, a vest, with noblest tissue gay. The Syrian king subjoined, so powdered o'er. With jewels, gold, and pearls in rich device. They made the meat a thing of passing price. If the good king had known the panoply. This he had held above all others dear. Nor this had given, as full of courtesy. To be contented for with sword and spear. Twere long to tell who so unworthily. Had erst mistreated thus the goodly gear. That lay the way the harness had been strode. A prey to whosoever passed the road. Of this you more in other place shall hear. Of Griffin now I tell, who at the just. Arrived, saw broken many a knightly spear. And more than one good stroke and one good thrust. 
eight were there who made league together, dear. To Norandine, and held in sovereign trust. Youths quick in arms and practiced in the shock. All lords, or scions of illustrious stock. At open barriers, one by one, the place. They kept against all comers for a day. At first with lance, and next with sword or mace. While them the king delighted to survey. Oft times they pierce the corslet's iron case. And everything in fine perform in play. Which foemen do that deadly weapons measure. Save that the king may part them at his pleasure. That witless Antiochite, who, worthily. By name was cowardly Martano Height. Thinking, because his comrade, he must be. Partaker of the noble griffin's might. Into the martial press rides valiantly. Then stops. And the issue of a furious fight. Which had begun between two cavaliers. To wait, retiring from the strife, appears. Seleucia's lord, of those companions one. Combined in that emprise to keep the place. Who then a course with bold Umbruno run. Wounded the unhappy warrior in mid-face. So that he slew him. Mourned by every one. Who as a worthy knight the warrior grace. And over and above his worth, before. All others, hold him for his courteous lore. When vile Martano from his place discerned. The fate which might be his with fearful eye. Into his craven nature be returned and straight began to think how he might fly. But him from flight the watchful griffin turned. And, after much ado, with act and cry, urged him against a knight upon the ground. As at the ravening wolf men slipped the hound. Who will pursue the brindled beast for ten or twenty yards, and, after, stop to bay. When he beholds his flashing eyes, and when he sees the greasly beast his teeth display. Twas thus, before those valiant gentlemen. And princes, present there in fair array. Fearful Martano, seized with panic dread. Turned to the right his courser's rein and head. Yet he who would excuse the sudden wheel. Upon his courser might the blame bestow. But, after, he so ill his strokes did deal. Demosthenes his cause might well forego. With paper armed he seems, and not with steel. So shrinks he at the wind of every blow. At length he breaks the ordered champions through. Amid loud laughter from the circling crew. Clapping of hands, and cries, at every turn. Were heard from all that rubble widely spread. As a wolf sorely hunted makes return. To earth, to his retreat Martano fled. Griffin remained and sullied with the scorn. Esteemed himself, which on his mate was shed. And rather than be there, he, in his ire, would gladly find himself i the midst of fire. With burning heart, and visage red with shame, he thinks the knight's disgrace is all his own. Because by deeds like his with whom he came, he weans the mob expects to see him known. So that it now behoves his valor flame. More clear than light, or they, to censure prone. Ere's he a finger's breadth, an inch, will swell. His fault. And of that inch will make an L. Already he the lance upon his thigh. Has rested, little use to miss the foe. Then makes with flowing rein his courser fly. And next, some deal advanced, directs the blow. And, smiting, puts to the last agony. Sidonia's youthful lord, by him laid low. Ercome with wonder each assistant rises. Whom sore the unexpected deed surprises. Griffin returned, and did the weapon wield. Whole unrecovered, which he couched before. And in three pieces broke it on the shield. Which bold Laodicea's baron bore. Thrice of four times about to press the field. He seemed, and lay along the crupper, sore. Astound. Yet rose at length, unsheathed his blade. Wheeled his good courser, and at Griffin made. Griffin, who in his saddle sees the peer. Advancing towards him, nor unseated by. 
The encounter, says, the failure of the spear. In a few strokes the saber shall supply. And on his temples smote a stroke so sheer. It seemed that it descended from the sky. And matched it with another, and again. Another, till he stretched him on the plain. Here two good brothers of Apamea were. In turn he won't to have the upper hand. Carimbo named and Thyrsus was the pair. Both overturned by Griffin on the land. One at the encounter left his saddle bare. On the other Griffin used his trenchant brand. This valiant knight was, in the common trust. Sure to obtain the honors of the just. Bold Salanterno, mid the warlike train. Was in the lists, vizier and martial height. Who had the government of all that reign. And was, withal. A puissant man of might. The tourney's prize he sees, with much disdain. About to be borne off by foreign knight. A lance he snatches, and to Griffin cries. And him with many menaces defies. But he makes answer with a massy spear. Out of ten others chosen as the best. And leveling at the buckler of the peer. For greater surety, pierces plate and breast. Twixt rib and rib, it bored the cavalier. Issuing a palm behind. To all the rest. The king accepted, welcome was the blow. For each was greedy Salanterno's foe. Two of Damascus next Sir Griffin sped. Hermophilo and Carmando. This, arrayed. Under his flag, the king's militia led. That was as Lord High Admiral obeyed. This lightly at the shock on earth was shed. And that, reversed, upon the ground o'erlaid. By his weak horse, too feeble to withstand. Sir Griffin's mighty push and puissant hand. Yet in the field remained Seleucia's knight. The best of all the other seven at need. And one who well accompanied his might. With perfect armor and a gallant steed. Both at the helmet, where it locks, take sight. And with their spears to the encounter speed. But Griffin hardest smote, whose pain him foe. Lost his left stirrup, staggered by the blow. They cast the truncheons down, their coursers wheel. And, full of daring, withdrawn falchions close. Sir Griffin was the first a stroke to deal. Which might have split an anvil. At the blows. Descent, the shield is splintered, bone and steel. This had its lord mid thousand others chose. And, but, twas double, and the coat as well. The sword had cleft the thigh on which it fell. He of Seleucia at Sir Griffin's cask. At the same time, so fell a blow at rest. It would have rent and torn the iron mask. Had it not been enchanted like the rest. The Paynim's labor is a fruitless task. Of arms so hard Sir Griffin is posseist. Who has the foes already cleft and broke. In many parts, nor thrown away a stroke. Each one might see how much Seleucia's lord. Was overmatched by Griffin, and that day. The worsted men had perished by the sword. Had not the monarch quickly stopped the fray. To his guard King Norandino spake the word. And bade them enter, and the duel stay. They part the knight, whom they asunder bear. And much the king is lauded for his care. The eight, who had to keep the field pretended. From all the world. Nor yet their part had done. On a sole night, their quarrel ill defended. Had vanished from the tilt yard one by one. The others, who with them should have contended. Stood idle, for to answer them was none. Since Griffin had forestalled, in the debate. What they should all have done against those eight. And, for such little time endured the play. Less than an hour sufficed to finish all. But Norandine, the pastime to delay. And to continue it till even fall. Descending from his place, bade clear the way. And the huge squad divided, at his call. Into two troops, whom, ranked by blood and might. The monarch formed, and marched for other fight. Sir Griffin, during this, had made return. 
homeward, with anger and with fury stung. Less thinking of his honours that the scorn, which on the vile Martano had been flung. Hence, from himself the opprobrious shame to turn. Martano now employs his lying tongue. And she, the false and cunning courtesan, assists him in his scheme as best she can. Whether the youth believed the tale or no, he the excuse received, like one discreet, and deemed it best for them at once to go, and secretly and silently retreat, for fear, that if the populace should know, Martano base, they him might ill entreat. So, by short ways and close, they quit the abode, and issue from the gates upon their road. Sir Griffin, was he or his horse foredone? With toil, or was it sleep his eyes down weighed? Ere yet the troop beyond two miles had gone. At the first and upon the highway stayed. He doffed his armor all, and Morion. And had the steeds of trappings disarrayed. And next alone he to a chamber sped. Locked himself in, undressed, and went to bed. No sooner he his head had rested there. Then, with deep sleep oppressed, he closed his eye. So heavily, no badgers in their lair. Or dormice, overcome with slumber, lie. Martano and Origil, to take the air. Entered this while a garden which was nigh. And there the strangest fraud together bred. Which ever entered into mortal head. Martano schemed to take away the steed. And gear, in which Sir Griffin had been dight and stand before the monarch, in the weed, of him who had in joust so proved his might. As he had shaped in thought, he did the deed. He took away the warrior's horse, more white, than milk, his buckler, surcoat, arms, and crest. In all Sir Griffin's knightly ensigns drayest. He, who was clad in trappings not his own, like the ass mantled in the lion's hide, as he expected, to the king, unknown, was called in place of Griffin, when descried. Or Norandine, he rising from his throne, embraced and kissed, and placed him by his side. Nor deems enough to praise and hold him dear, but wills that all around his praise should hear, and bids them the sonorous metal blow, proclaiming him the conqueror of that day, and round about loud voices, high and low, the unworthy name throughout the lists convey. He wills that, side by side, with him shall go. The night, when homeward he shall take his way. And him such favor shows, intent to please. As might have honored Mars or Hercules. Him lodgings fair he gave, wherein to dwell. At court, and she who with the peer did ride. Was honored by the courteous king as well. False Origil with knight and page supplied. But it is time that I of Griffin tell. Who unsuspecting, she, or white beside. Him would with treacherous stratagem deceive. Had fallen asleep, nor ever waked till eve. When he how late it was, awaking, knew. With speed he from the chamber did withdraw. And hastened where he, with the other crew. Left Origil and her false brother-in-law. And when, nor these, nor, upon better view, his armor nor his wanted clothes he saw, suspicious waxed, and more suspicion bred, the ensigns of his comrade left instead, the host, arriving, him at full posseist, of every thing, and how, in white array, that warrior, with the lady and the rest, had to the city measured back their way. By little and by little, Griffin guessed. What love from him had hidden till that day. And knew, to his great sorrow, in the other. Origil's paramour, and not her brother. Now he lamenting for his folly stood. That having heard the truths the pilgrim said. He should have let her story change his mood. Who him before so often had betrayed. He might have venged himself, nor did, now wowed. Too late, inflict the punishment delayed. Constrained, a crying error, in his need. To take that wily trekker's arms and steed. 
he better would have gone like naked man. Then braced the unworthy cuirass on his breast. Or hasten the detested shield to span. Or place upon his helm the scorned crest. But of the lover, and that courtesan. He, passion mastering reason, took the quest. And bending to Damascus gate his way. Arrived an hour before the close of day. On the left hand a castle richly dight. Stood nigh the gate, to which Sir Griffin rode. Besides, that it was strong and armed for fight. Filled with rare chambers was the rich abode. The first of Syria, king, and lord, and knight. And lady, in a gentle group bestowed. Therein an open gallery fairly met. Were at their glad and costly supper set. With the high tower the beauteous gallery, clear. Beyond the city wall, projected out. From whence might be discovered, far and near. The spacious fields and different roads about. When Griffin now, in his opprobrious gear. And arms, dishonored by the rabble's flout. Makes, by ill fortune, to the gate resort. He by the king is seen, and all his court. And, taken for the man whose crest he wears. In dame and knight moves laughter, through the ring. The vile Martano, as a man who shares. The royal grace, sits next below the king. And next, she, whom her love so fitly pairs. Whom Norandino gaily questioning. Demands of them, who is the coward knight. That of his honor makes so passing light. Who, after feet so base and foul, anew. Approaches, with such front and shameless cheer. And cries, it seems a thing unheard, that you. An excellent and worthy cavalier. Should take this man for your companion, who. Has not in all our wide Levant his peer. Did you with him for contrast sake combine. That so your valor might more brightly shine. But did not love for you my will restrain. By the eternal gods, I truly swear. He should endure such ignominious stain. As I am wont to make his fellows share. Him would I make of my long nurse disdain. Of cowardice perpetual record bear. To you, by whom he hither was conveyed. If now unpunished, let his thanks be paid. That vessel of all filthy vices, he. Made answer, Mighty sir, I cannot say. Who is the stranger, that fell in with me? Journeying from Antioch hither. By the way. But him I worthy of my company. Deemed, by his warlike semblance led astray. I nothing of his deeds have heard or seen. Save what ill feats today have witnessed been. Which moved me so, it little lacked but I. For punishment of his unworthy fear. Had put him out of case again to ply. In martial tournament, the sword or spear. And, but in reverence to your majesty. And presence, I forbore by hand to rear. Not for his sake, nor by thy mercy showed. On him, as my companion on the road. Whose former fellowship appears a stain. And ever, will sit heavy at my heart. If I, uninjured, see the wretch again. Scape, to the scandal of the warlike art. Twere better he from tower, a worthy pain. Were gibbeted, than suffered to depart. Hung as a beacon for the coward's gaze. Such were a princely deed, and worthy praise. A voucher he in Origilla had. Who well, without a sign, his purpose read. I deem not, cried the king, his works so bad. That they should cost the stranger knight his head. Enough that he again the people glad. For penance of his weighty sin. This said. He quickly called a baron of his crew. And him enjoined the deed he was to do. With many armed men that baron fares. And to the city gate descending, here. Collects his troop, and for the attempt prepares. Waiting the coming of the cavalier. And him surprises so at unawares. He, softly, twixt two bridges, takes the pier. And him detains, with mockery and scorn. In a dark chamber, till returning morn. 
the early sun had scarce his golden hair. Uplifted from his ancient nurse's breast. Beginning, upon alpine regions bare. To chase the shades and gild the mountain crest. When Martin, fearing Griffin might declare. His wrong, and to the king the truth attest. Retorting upon him the slander cast. Took leave, and thence upon his journey passed. His ready wit a fit excuse supplies. Why he stays not, to see the recreant shown. He is with other gifts, beside the prize. Rewarded for the victory, not his own. And letters patent, drawn in ample wise. Wherein his lofty honors wide are blown. Let him depart. I promise he shall meet. A guerdon worthy of his treacherous feet. Griffin is brought with shame into the square. When it is fully thronged with gazing white. Whom they of cuirass and of helmet bear. And leave in simple cassock, meanly dight. And, as to slaughter he conducted were. Place on a wain, conspicuous to the sight. Harness to which two sluggish cows are seen. Weary and weak, and with long hunger lean. Thronging about the ignoble car, appear. Brazen-faced boy and girl of evil fame. Who, each in turn, will play the charioteer. And all assail the knight with bitter blame. The boys might be a cause of greater fear. For, joined to mocks and mows, and words of shame. The warrior they with volleyed stones would slay. But that the wiser few their fury stay. That which of his disgrace had been the ground. Though no true evidence of guilt, his mail. And plate, are dragged in due dishonor round. Suspended at the shameful wagon's tail. The wain is stopped, and to the trumpet's sound. Heralds, in front of a tribunal's pale. His shame, before his eyes, amid the crowd. Another's evil deed, proclaim aloud. They take their prisoner thence, and so repair. In front of temple, dwelling house, and store. Nor any cruel name of mockery spare. Nor leave unsaid a word of filthy lore. And him at last without the city bear. The foolish rabble, trusting evermore. Their thrall to banish to the sound of blows. Who passing little of its prisoner knows. The warriors' jives no sooner they undo. And from their manacles free either hand. Then Griffin seizes shield and sword, and, through. The rabble, makes long furrows with his brand. With pike and spear unfurnished was the crew. Who without weapons came, a witless band. The rest for other canto I suspend. For, sir, tis time this song should have an end. Canto. Chapter 18. Griffin is venged. Sir Mandricardo goes. In search of Argier's king. Charles wins the fight. Marfisa Norandino's men o'erthrows. Dupain's Martano's cowardice requite. A favoring wind Marfisa's gallery blows. For France with Griffin bound and many a knight. The field Medoro and Cloridano tread. And find their monarch Dardanello dead. High-minded lord. Your actions evermore. I have with reason lauded, and still laud. Though I with style inapt, and rustic lore. You of large portion of your praise defraud. But, of your many virtues, one before. All others I with heart and tongue applaud. That. If each man a gracious audience finds. No easy faith your equal judgment blinds. Often, to shield the absent one from blame. I hear you this, or other, thing adduce. Or him you let, at least, an audience claim. Where still one ear is open to excuse. And before dooming men to scathe and shame. To see and hear them ever is your use. And ere you judge another, many a day. And month, and year, your sentence to delay. Had Norandine been with your care endued. What he by Griffin did, he had not done. Profit and fame have from your rule accrued. A stain more black than pitch he cast upon. His name, through him, his people were pursued. 
and put to death by Olivero's son. Who at ten cuts or thrusts, in fury made. Some thirty dead about the wagon laid. Whither fear drives, in rout, the others all. Some scattered here, some there, on every side. Fill road and field. To gain the city wall. Some strive, and smothered in the mighty tide. One on another, in the gateway fall. Griffin, all thought of pity laid aside. Threats not nor speaks, but whirls his sword about. Well venging on the crowd their every flout. Of those who to the portal foremost fleed. The readiest of the crowd their feet to ply. Part, more intent upon their proper need. Then their friends peril. Raise the drawbridge high. Part, weeping and with death-like visage, speed. Nor turn their eyes behind them as they fly. While, through the ample city, outcry loud. And noise. And tumult rises from the crowd. Two nimble griffin seizes, mid the train. When to their woe the bridge is raised, of one. Upon the field the warrior strews the brain. Which he beats out on a hard grinding stone. Seized by the breast, the other of the twain. Over the city wall by him is thrown. Fear chills the townsmen's marrow, when they spy. The luckless wretch descending from the sky. Many there were who feared in their alarms. Lest o'er the wall Sir Griffin would have vaulted. Nor greater panic seized upon those swarms. Than if the sultan had the town assaulted. The sound of running up and down, of arms. Of cry of muezzins, on high exalted. Of drums and trumpets, heaven, t'would seem, rebounded. And that the world was by the noise confounded. But I will to another time delay. What chanced on this occasion, to recount. Tis meet I follow Charles upon his way. Hurrying in search of furious Rodamont. Who did the monarch's suffering people slay? I said, with him, the danger to affront. Went Namus, Oliver, the Danish peer, 225. Avino, Avolio, Otho and Berlingier. Eight lances shock, that eight such warriors guide. Which all at once against the king they rest. Endured the stout and scaly serpent's hide. In which the cruel moor his limbs had drayest. As a bark writes itself, the sheet untied. Which held its sail, by growing wind oppressed. So speedily Sir Rodamont arose. Though a hill had been uprooted by the blows. Rainier and Guido, Richard, Salomon. Ivan, a ghetto, Turpin, and the twain. Angelin, Angelier, false Ganelin. And Mark and Matthew from Esti. Michael's plain. With the eight of whom I spake, all set upon. The foe, with Edward and Sir Ari Main. Who leading suckers from the English shore. Had lodged them in the town short time before. Not so, well keyed into the solid stone. Groans upon Alpine height the castle good. When by rude Boreas rage or Eurus drown. Uptorn our ash and fir in mountain wood. As groans Sir Rodamont, with pride o'erblown. Inflamed with anger and with thirst of blood. And, as the thunder and the lightning's fire. Fly coupled, such as vengeance in his ire. He at his head took aim who stood most nigh. A ghetto was the miserable wight. Whom to the teeth he clove, and left to die. Though of good temper was his helmet bright. As well the others many strokes let fly. At him, himself, which all the warrior smite. But harm, so hard the dragons hide, no more. Then needle can the solid anvil score. All the defenses, round, abandoned are. The unpeopled city is abandoned all. For, where the danger is the greater, there. The many give their aid, at Charles's call. Through every street they hurry to the square. Since flying not avails, from work and wall. Their bosom so the monarch's presence warms. That each again takes courage, each takes arms. As when within the closely fastened cage. Of an old lioness, 
well used to fight. An untamed bull is prisoned, to engage. The savage monster, for the mob's delight. The cubs, who see him cresting in his rage. And round the den loud bellowing, to the sight. Of the huge beast's enormous horns amused. Cower at a distance, timid and confused. But if the mother spring at him, and hang. Fixing her cruel tusks into his ear. Her whelps as well will blood their greedy fong. And, bold in her defense. Assail the steer. One bites his paunch, and one his back, so sprang. That band upon the Paynim cavalier. From roof and window, and from place more nigh. Poured in a ceaseless shower, the weapons fly. Of cavaliers and footmen such the squeeze. That hardly can the place the press contain. They cluster there as thick as swarming bees. Who thither from each passage troop amain. So that, were they unarmed, and with more ease. Then stalks or turnips he could cleave the train. Il Rodamont in twenty days would clear. The gathering crowd, united far and near. Unknowing how himself from thence to free, 226. The pain him by this game is angered sore. Who little thins the gathering rabblery. Staining the ground with thousand slain or more. And all the while, in his extremity. Finds that his breath comes thicker than before. And sees he cannot pierce the hostile round. Unless he thence escape while strong and sound. The monarch rolls about his horrid eyes. And sees that foes all outlets barricade. But, at the cost of countless enemies. A path shall quickly by his hand be made. Where fury calls him, lo! The felon hies. And brandishes on high his trenchant blade. To assail the newly entered British band. Which Edward and Sir Ariman command. He who has seen the fence, in well-thronged square. Against whose stakes the eddying crowd is borne. By wild bull broken, that has had to bear. Through the long day, dogs, blows. And ceaseless scorn. Who hunts the scattered people here and there. And this, or that, now hoists upon his horn. Let him as such, or fiercer yet, account. When he breaks forth, the cruel Rodamont. At one cross blow fifteen or twenty foes. He hews, as many leaves without a bead. At cross or downright stroke. As if he rose. Trashes in vineyard or in willow bed. At last all smeared with blood the pain him goes. Safe from the place, which he has heaped with dead. And wheresoe'er he turns his steps, are left. Heads, arms, and other members, maimed and cleft. He from the square retires in such a mode. None can perceive that danger him appalls. But, during this, what were the safest road? By which to sally, he to thought recalls. He comes at last to where the river flowed. Below the isle, and passed without the walls. In daring men at arms and mob increase. Who press him sore, nor let him part in peace. As the high-couraged beast, whom hunters start. In the wild nomad or Massilian chase. Who, even in flying, shows his noble heart. And threatening seeks his lair with sluggish pace. From that strange wood of sword, and spear, and dart. Turns Rodamont, with action nothing base. And still impeded by the galling foe. Makes for the river with long steps and slow. He turned upon the rabble rout who bayed. Behind him, thrice or more, by anger driven. And stained anew his falchion, by whose blade. More than a hundred deadly wounds were given. But reason, finally, his fury stayed. Before the bloody carnage stank to heaven, 227. And he, with better counsel, from the side. Cast himself down into Sain's foaming tide. Athwart the current swam, with arms and all. As if by corks upborne, the cavalier. Though thou Antaeus bredst, and Hannibal. O Africa! Thou never bredst his peer. 
when now across the stream, without the wall. He turned, and saw the royal town appear. To have traversed all the city moved his ire. Leaving it undestroyed by sword or fire. And him so sorely anger stung and pride. Thither he thought a second time to go. And from his inmost bosom groaned and sighed. Nor would depart until he laid it low. But he saw one along the riverside. Approach, who made him rage and hate forego. Straight shall you hear who, twas, approached the king. But first I have to say of other thing. I have of haughty discord now to say. To whom the archangel Michael gave command. To heat to enmity and fierce affray. The best of agreements besieging band. She went that evening from the abbey gray. Her task committing to another's hand. Left it to fraud to feed, till her return. The war, and make the fires she kindled burn. And she believed, that she with greater power. Should go, did pride with her as well repair. And she, for all were guested in one bower. In search of her had little way to fare. Pride went with her, but, that in hall or tower. A vicar to her charge might duly bear. She for those days she absent thought to be. For her lieutenant left hypocrisy. 228. The implacable discord went, and with the dame. Companion of the enterprise, was pride. Upon her road. And found that, by the same. Was journeying to the Paynim camp, beside. Comfortless jealousy, with whom there came. A little dwarf, attending as a guide. Who erst had been sent forward with advice. To Sarza's king, by beauteous Doralis. When she fell into Mandricardo's hand. I have before recounted when and where. She had in secret given the dwarf command. He to the king should with the tidings fare. By whom she hoped not vainly would be scanned. The tale her messenger was charged to bear. But wondrous deeds be done for her relief. With sad and signal vengeance on the thief. Jealousy had that little dwarf espied. And kenned the reason of his mission too. And joined him, journeying with him side by side. Deeming that she therein a part might do. Discord, with pleasure, jealousy decried. But with more joy, when she the occasion knew. Which thither brought the dame, who much, she wist. Might in the task she had in hand assist. Of means to embroil the sarzen and the sun. Of Agrican, 229 she deems herself posseist. A certain mode to enrage these two is one. And other means may work upon the rest. She thither with the dwarfish page is gone. Where the fierce pagan in his clutch had pressed. Proud Paris, and they reached the river strand. Exactly as the felon swam to land. As soon as the redoubt Rodamont. Knew in the dwarf the courier of his dame. He all his rage extinguished, cleared his front. And felt his courage brighten into flame. All else he deems the courier may recount. Save that a white had wrought him scathe and shame. And cries, encountering him with cheerful brow. How fares our lady? Whither sent art thou? Nor mine nor thine that lady will I say. Who is another's thrall? The dwarf replied. We, on our road, encountered yesterday. A knight, who seized and bore away the bride. Jealousy, upon this, took up the play. And, cold as ASP, embraced the king, her guide. Pursued his tale, relating how the train. Their mistress taken, by one man were slain. Her flint and steel, fell discord, as he said. Took forth, and somewhile hammered on the stone. Pride, underneath, the ready tinder spread. And the quick fire was in a moment blown. This on the Paynim's soul so fiercely fed. He could not find a resting place, mid groan. And sob he storms, with horrid face and eye. Which threat the elements and ample sky. As tiger rages, who in vain descends. Into her den, and finds herself alone. And, circling all the cavern, 
comprehends. At last, that her beloved young are gone. To ire, to rage like hers his wrath extends. Nor night the king regards, nor rock, nor stone. Nor stream, nor length of way nor storm arrest. The speed with which he on the plunder oppressed. So raging, to the pygmy dwarf who bore. The news, exclaimed the king, now hence away. Nor horse he waits, nor carriage, nor, before. Departing, deigns to his a word to say. He hurries with such speed, that not with more. The lizard darts at noon across the way. Horse had he none, but be he whose he might. Would make his own the first which came in sight. Discord at this, who read his secret thought. Exclaimed, as she looked smilingly on pride. Through her he to a courser should be brought. By which new cause of strife should be supplied. And, that by him no other might be caught. She from his path would keep all steeds beside. And knew already where the prize to seek. But her I leave, again of Charles to speak. When, on the Saracen's departure, spent. About King Charles, was the consuming flame. He ranged his troops anew, some warriors went. To strengthen feeble posts which succors claim. The rest against the Saracens are sent. To give the foe checkmate and end the game. And from St. Germans to St. Victor's gates. He pours the host, which on his signal waits. He these at St. Marcellus' gate, where lay. Outstretched a large circumference of plain. Bade one another wait, in one array. To reunite against the Paynim train. Inflaming every one to smite and slay. In guise, that for a record should remain. He made the various troops fall in below. Their banners, and the battle signal blow. Agrament has remounted in his cell. While this is doing in his foe's despite. And with the stripling two-thirty who loved Isabel. Is waging perilous and fearful fight. Lurcanio with Sabrino strives as well. Rinaldo a troop encounters, whom the knight. With valor and with fortune for his guide. Charges, and breaks, and routs on every side. While so the battle stands, King Charlemagne. Falls on the rear guard of the Paynim foe. Where bold Marsilius halts the flower of Spain. And forms the host, his royal flag below. On these King Charlemagne impels his train. Who, foot with horse to flank, against them go. While so the deafening drum and trumpet sounds. Twould seem the spacious world the din rebounds. The Saracenic squadrons had begun. To bend, and all the army of the moor. Had turned, disordered, broken, and undone. Never to be arrayed or rallied more. But that Grandonio stood. And false iron. Tried oftentimes in greater ill before. With Serpentine and Balagantes proud. And the renowned Pharaoh, who cried aloud. O valiant men, he, O companions, cries. O brethren, stand, and yet your place maintain. Like cobweb threads our cruel enemies. We'll find their works, if we our part sustain. What this day fortune offers to our eyes. If now we conquer, see the praise, the gain. If conquered, see the utter loss and shame. Which will forever wait upon your name. He in this time a mighty lance had spanned. And spurred at once against Sir Berlingier. Who Argolifa guided with his hand. And broke his helmet's frontal with the spear. Cast him on earth, and with the cruel brand. Unhorsed perhaps eight other warriors near. His mighty strokes discharging, at each blow. He ever laid at least one horseman low. In other part, Rinaldo, in his mood, has slain more enemies than I can say. Before the warlike knight no order stood. You might have seen the ample camp give way. No less Zerbino and Lurcanio good. Do deeds, which will be told in every day. This, with a thrust, has bold Balastro slain. That Finaduro's helm has cleft in twain. 
the first was of the Alzerban army head. Ruled by Tardaco some short time before. The other one the valiant squadrons led. Of Safi, and Morocco, and Zamor. Where, mid the Panims, might to me be said. Is knight whose sword can cleave or lance can gore. But step by step I go, and as I wind. My way, leave none who merits praise behind. Zumara's king is not forgotten here. Dardanelle, who Sir Dolphin of the Mount. Claude of the Wood, and Hubert, with the spear. Of Mereford he, and Elio did dismount. And. With the falchion, Stamford's cavalier. Sir Anselm, Raymond and Sir Pinamont. From London town. Though valiant were the twain. Two stunned, one wounded, the four others slain. Yet will his squadron not so firmly stand. Maugre the valor which his deeds display. So firmly, as to wait the Christian band. In number less, but steadier in array. More used to joust and manage of the brand. And all things appertaining to the fray. Seta and Morocco turned, and seized, with dread. Zumara and Canary's Islesmen fled. But faster than the rest El Zerba flies. Whom Dardanelle opposed, and now with sore. Reproach, and now with prayer he moves, and tries. What best he deems their courage may restore. If good Almontes has deserved, he cries. That you should by his memory set such store. Now shall be seen, be seen, if you will me. His son, abandon in such jeopardy. For sake of my green youth, I pray you stand. That youth whereon your hopes were wont to feed. And suffer not that, scattered by the brand. To Africa be lost our noble seed. Save you united go, be sure the land. Is shut against you, whereso are you speed. Too high a wall to climb is mountain steep. The yawning sea a ditch too wide to leap. Far better, tis to perish than to be. Torn by these dogs, or lie at their control. Since vain is every other remedy. Wait, friends, for love of heaven, the advancing shoal. They are not gifted with more lives than we. Have but one pair of hands, have but one soul. So saying, the bold youth, amid the crew. Of enemies, the Earl of Huntley slew. Almonte's memory, through the Moorish bands. Makes every bosom with such ardor glow. They deem, tis better to use arms and hands. In fight, than turn their backs upon the foe. Taller than all William of Burnwich stands. An Englishman, whom Dardanelle brings low. And equals with the rest, then smites upon. And cleaves, the head of Cornish Aramon. Down fell this Aramon, and to afford. Him succor, thitherward his brother made. But from the shoulder him Zumra's lord 231. Cleft to the fork, with his descending blade. Next Bogio de Vergala's belly gored. And from his debt absolved, the forfeit paid. Who to return within six months, if life. Were granted him, had promised to his wife. Lurcanio next met Dardanello's eye. He upon earth Dorcino had laid low. Pierced through the throat, and hapless Gardo nigh. Cleft to the teeth. At him, as all too slow. He from Altheus vainly seeks to fly. Whom as his heart Lurcanio loves, a blow. Upon his head behind the Scotchman speeds. And, slaughtered by the stroke, the warrior bleeds. Dardanelle, to avenge him, took a spear. And, should he lay the fierce Lurcanio dead. Vowed to his Muhammad, if he could hear. The mosque should have his empty arms. This said. Ranging the field in haste, that cavalier. He in the flank, with thrust so full and dread. Encountered. That it went through either side. And he to his to strip the baron cried. From me it sure were needless to demand. If Ariadance, when his brother fell. Was grieved, if he with his avenging hand. Among the damned would send Sir Dardanelle. 
but all access the circling troops withstand. And Bar, no less baptized than infidel. Yet would he venge himself, and with his blade. Now here, now there, an open passage made. He charges, chases, breaks, and overthrows. Whoever cross him on the crowded plain. And Dardanello, who his object knows, would fain the wish content. But him the train impedes as well, which round about him flows, and renders I his every purpose vain. If one on all sides thins the Moorish rank, the other slays Scot, Englishman, and Frank. Fortune still blocked their path throughout the day, so that they met not, mid that chivalry and kept one as a mightier champion's prey. For rarely man escapes his destiny. Behold the good Rinaldo turns that way. That, for this one no refuge there might be. Lo! Good Rinaldo comes, him fortune guides. And for his sword King Dardanel provides. But here enough for this one while is shown. Of their illustrious doings in the West. Tis time I seek Sir Griffin, and make known. How he, with fury burning in his breast. That rabble rout had broke and overthrown. Struck with more fear than ever men posseest. Thither speeds Norandine on that alarm. And for his guard above a thousand arm. King Norandine, girt with peer and knight. Seeing on every side the people fly. Rides to the gates, with squadron duly dight. And at his hest the portals open fly. Meanwhile Sir Griffin, having put to flight. The weak and worthless rabble far and nigh. The scorned arms, to keep him from that train. Such as they were, took up and donned again. And nigh a temple strongly walled, and round. Whose base a moat for its protection goes. Upon a little bridge takes up his ground. That him his enemies may not enclose. Lo! Loudly shouting, and with threatening sound. A mighty squadron through the gateway flows. The valiant griffin changes not his place. And shows how small his fear by act and face. But when, approaching near, he saw the band. He sallied forth to meet them by the way. And wielding still his sword in either hand. Made cruel havoc in the close array. Then on the narrow bridge resumed his stand. Nor there his hunters only held at bay. Anew he sallied, and returned anew. I leaving bloody signs when he withdrew. Four stroke and back he deals, and on the ground. Horsemen and foot o'erthrows on every side. This while the ample mob the knights surround. And more and more the warfare rages wide. At length Sir Griffin fears he shall be drowned. So waxed their numbers, in the increasing tide. And heard in the left shoulder, through his mail. And thigh, his wind as well begins to fail. But valor, who so oft befriends her own. Makes him find grace in Norandino's eyes. Who, while alarmed, he hurries there, o'er thrown. So many men, such heaps of dead espies. While he views wounds. Which Hector's hand alone. He weans could deal, to him all testifies. That he had put an undeserved shame. Upon a cavalier of mighty name. Next seeing him more near, whose falchions sweep. Had dealt such deaths amid his chivalry. And raised about himself that horrid heap. And stained the water with that bloody dye. He thought that he beheld Horatius keep. Singly, the bridge against all Tuscany and vexed, and anxious to remove the stain. Recalled his men, and that with little pain. And, lifting his bare hand, in signified. From ancient times, of treaty, and of truce. Repenting him, he to Sir Griffin cried. It grieves me sorely. And I cannot choose. But own my sin, let counsels which misguide. And my own little wit, such fault excuse. What by the vilest night I thought to do. I to the best on earth have done in you. And though the bitter injuries and shame. That have to thee through ignorance been done. Are equaled, 
and all cancelled by thy fame. And merged, in truth, in glory thou hast won. Whatever satisfaction thou canst claim. Within my power or knowledge, count upon. When I know how atonement may be made. By city, castle, or by money paid. Demand of me this kingdom's moiety. And from this day thou its possessor art. Since not alone thy worth deserves this fee. But merits, I with this should give my heart. Then, pledge of faith and lasting love, to me. In the meanwhile, thy friendly hand impart. So saying, from his horse the king descended. And towards Griffin his right hand extended. When he beheld the monarch's altered cheer. Who bent to clasp his neck, towards him paced. His sword and rancor laid aside, the peer. Him humbly underneath the hips embraced. 232. King Norandine, who saw the sanguine smear. Of his two wounds, bade seek a leech in haste. And bade them softly with the night resort. Towards the town, and lodge him in his court. Here, wounded, he remained some days before. He could bear arms, but him, in the design. Of seeking out Sir Aquilant once more. And good Astolfo, left in Palestine. I quit. They vainly did his path explore. After Sir Griffin left the holy shrine. Through Salama in every place of note. And many, from the holy land remote. One and the other are alike to seek. In the inquiry where the knight may use. But they encounter with the pilgrim Greek. Who of false Origilla gives them news. Relating, as of her he haps to speak. That towards Antioch she her way pursues. By a new leman of that city charmed. Who her with fierce and sudden flame had warmed. Aquilant asked him, if he had posseist. Sir Griffin of the news to them conveyed. Who, hearing that he had, surmised the rest. Where he was gone. And by what motive swayed. He followed Origil, was manifest. And had in quest of her for Antioch made. To take her from his rival, and with view. On him some memorable scathe to do. Aquilant brooked not Griffin such a feat. Without him, and alone, should thus essay. And took his armor and pursued his beat. But first besought the duke he would delay. To visit France and his paternal seat. Till he from Antioch measured back his way. At Joppa he embarks, who deems by sea. The better and securer way to be. From the southeast upsprung so strong a breeze. And which for Griffin's galley blew so right. That the third day he tires famed city seas. And lesser Joppa quick succeeds to sight. By Zibolato and Baruti flees. Cyprus to larboard left, the galley light. From Tripoli to Tortosa shapes her way, 233. And so to Liza and Lajazzo's bay. From thence, towards the east the pilot veered. Her ready tiller, prompt his course to scan. And straightway for the wide Orontes steered. And watched his time, and for the harbor ran. Aquilant, when his bark the margin neared. Bade lower the bridge, and issued, horse and man. It armor, and along the river wended. Upstream, till he his way at Antioch ended. To inform himself of that Martano bent. And heard that he to Antioch was addressed. With Origilla, where a tournament. Was to be solemnized by royal Hest. To track whom Aquilant was so intent. Assured that Griffin had pursued his quest. He Antioch left again that very day. But not by sea again would take his way. He towards Lydia and Larissa goes, 234. At rich Aleppo makes a longer stay. God, to make plain that he, even here, bestows. On evil and on good their fitting pay. At a league's distance from Mamuga, throws. Martano in the avenging brother's way. Martano traveling with the tourney's prize. Displayed before his horse in showy wise. Sir Aquilant believed, at the first show. His brother he in vile Martano spied. 
for arms and vest, more white than virgin snow. The coward and the warrior's sight belied, and sprang towards him with that joyful, oh, by which delight is ever signified. But changed his look and tone, when, nearer brought, he sees that he is not the white he sought. And through that evil woman's treachery, deemed Griffin murdered by the cavalier. And, tell me, he exclaimed, thou, who must be traitor and thief, both written in thy cheer. Whence are these arms? And wherefore do I thee view on the courser of my brother dear? Say, is my brother slaughtered or alive? How didst thou him of horse and arms deprive? When Origilla hears him, in a fright, she turns her palfrey, and for flight prepares. But Aquilant, more quick, in her despite, arrests the traitress, ere she further fares. At the loud threats of that all furious knight, by whom he so was taken unawares, Martin turns pale and trembles like a leaf. Nor how to act or answer knows the thief. Aquilant thundered still, and, to his dread, a falchion, pointed at his gullet, shewed, and swore with angry menaces, the head from him and Origil should be hewed. Save in all points the very truth be said. A while on this ill starred Martano chewed, revolving still what pretext he might try to lessen his grave fault, then made reply. No, sir, you see my sister in this dame, and one of good and virtuous parents born, though she has lately led a life of shame, and been by Griffin foully brought to scorn. And, for I loathed such blot upon our name, yet weened that she could ill by force be torn. From such a puissant white, I laid a scheme, her by address and cunning to redeem. With her I planned the means, who in her breast, nursed the desire a better life to prove, that she, when Griffin was retired to rest, in silence from the warrior should remove. This done, lest he should follow on our quest, and so undo the web we vainly wove. Him we deprived of horse and arm, and we are hither come together, as you see. His cunning might have proved of good avail. For Aquilant believed him easily. And, save in taking Griffin's horse and mail, he to the knight had done no injury. But that he wrought so high the specious tale. As manifested plainly, t'was a lie. In all t'was perfect, save that he the dame. Had for his sister vouched with whom he came. Aquilant had in Antioch chance to know. She was his concubine, well certified. Of this by many, and in furious glow. Exclaimed, Thou falsest robber, thou hast lied. And dealt, with that, the recreant such a blow. He drove two grinders down his throat, then tied. Not sought Martano with his foe to cope. The caitiff's arms behind him with a rope. And, though she for excuse tried many wiles, did thus as well by Origil untrue. Until he reached Damascus lofty piles. Them by town, street, or farm, behind him drew. And will a thousand times a thousand miles. With sorrow and with suffering, drag the two. Till he his brother find. Who, at his pleasure. May vengeance to the guilty couple measure. Sir Aquilant made squires and beasts as well. Return with him, and to Damascus came and heard renown, throughout the city, swell. Plying her ample wings, Sir Griffin's name. Here, great and little, every one, could tell. Twas he that in the tourney won such fame. And had, by one that ill deserved his trust. Been cheated of the honours of the just. Pointing him out to one another's sight. The hostile people all Martin obeyed. And is not this, they cried, that ribald white, who in another spoils himself arrayed, and who the valor of a sleeping knight, with his own shame and infamy o'erlaid, and this the woman of ungrateful mood, who aids the wicked and betrays the good. Others exclaimed, how fittingly combined, 
marked with one stamp, and of one race are they. Some loudly cursed them, and some raved behind. While others shouted, Hang, burn, quarter, slay. The throng to view them pressed, with fury blind. And to the square before them made its way. The monarch of the tidings was advised. And these above another kingdom prized. Attended with few squires the Syrian king. As then he chanced to be, came forth with speed. And with Sir Aquilant encountering. Who Griffin had avenged with worthy deed. Him honored with fair cheer, and home would bring. And in his palace lodged, as fitting need. Having the prison pair, with his consent. First in the bottom of a turret pent. Thither they go, where Griffin from his bed. Has not as yet, since he was wounded, stirred. Who at his brother's coming waxes red. Surmising well he of his case has heard. And after Aquilant his say had said. And him some deal reproached. The three conferred. As to what penance to the wicked two. So fallen into their hands, was justly due. Tis Aquilant's, tis Norandino's will. A thousand tortures shall their guerdon be. But Griffin, who the dame alone can ill. Excuse, entreats for both impunity. And many matters urges with much skill. But well is answered, and tis ruled, to flee. Martano's body with the hangman's scourge. And only short of death his penance urge. Bound is the wretch, but not mid grass and flower. Whose limbs beneath the hangman's lashes burn. All the next morn, they prison in the tower. Origilla, till Lucina shall return. To whom the counseling lords reserve the power. To speak the woman's sentence, mild or stern. Harbored, till Griffin can bear arms, at court. Aquilant fleets the time in fair disport. The valiant Norandino could not choose. Made by such error temperate and wise. But full of penitence and sorrow, muse. With downcast spirit, and in mournful guise. On having bid his men a night misuse. Whom all should worthily reward and prize. So that he, night and morning, in his thought. How to content the injured warrior sought. And he determined, in the public sight. Oh, the city, guilty of that injury. With all such honor as to perfect night. Could by a puissant monarch rendered be. Him with the glorious guerdon to requite. Which had been ravished by such treachery. And hence, within a month, proclaimed the intent. To hold another solemn tournament. For which he made what stately preparation. Was possible to make by sceptred king. Hence fame divulged the royal proclamation. Throughout all Syria's land, with nimble wing. Phoenicia and Palestine, till the relation. Of this in good Astolfo's ears did ring. Who, with the Lord who ruled that land in trust. Resolved he would be present at the just. For a renowned and valiant cavalier. Has the true history vaunted, Sansonet. By Roland christened, Charles, I said. The peer. Over the holy land as ruler set. He with the Duke 235 takes up his load, to steer. Thither, where rumor speaks the champions met. So that his ears, on all sides in the journey. Are filled with tidings of Damascus tourney. Thither the twain their way those countries through. By easy stages and by slow, ad rest. That fresh upon the day of joust the two. Might in Damascus town set up their rest. When at the meeting of crossways they view. A person, who, in movement and in vest. Appears to be a man, but is a maid. And marvelously fierce, in martial raid. Marfisa was the warlike virgin's name. And such her worth, she oft with naked brand. Had pressed Orlando sore in martial game. And him who had Mount Alban in command. 236. And ever, night and day, the armed dame. Scoured, here and there, by hill and plain, the land. Hoping with errant cavalier to meet. 
and win immortal fame by glorious feet. When Sansonetto and the English knight she sees approaching her, in warlike weed, who seem two valiant warriors in her sight, as of large bone, and nerved for doughty deed. On them she fain would prove her martial might, and to defy the pair has moved her steed. When, eyeing the two warriors, now more near, Marfisa recognized the duke and peer. His pleasing ways she did in mind retrace. When arms in far cattery with her he bore. Called him by name, nor would an iron case. Retain her hand, appraised the cask she wore. And him, advanced, to meet with glad embrace. Though, of all living dames and those of yore. The proudest, she. Nor with less courteous mien. The paladin salutes the martial queen. They questioned one another of their way. And when the duke has said, who first replied. That he Damascus seeks, where to assay. Their virtuous deeds, all knights of valor tried. The Syrian king invites, in martial play. The bold Marfisa, at his hearing, cried. Ever to prove her warlike prowess bent. I will be with you at this tournament. To have such a comrade either cavalier. Is much rejoiced. They to Damascus go. And in a suburb, of the city clear. Are lodged, upon the day before the show. And, till her aged lover, once so dear. Aurora roused, their humble roof below. In greater ease the weary warriors rested. Then had they been in costly palace guested. And when the clear and lucid sun again. Its shining glories all abroad had spread. The beauteous lady armed, and warriors twain. Having first couriers to the city sped. Who? When, twas time, reported to the train. That, to see truncheons split in contest dread. King Norandine had come into the square. In which the cruel games appointed were. Straight to the city ride the martial band. And, through the high street, to the crowded place. Where, waiting for the royal signal, stand. Ranged here and there, the knights of gentle race. The guerdons destined to the conqueror's hand. In that day's tourney, were a tuck and mace. Richly adorned, and, with them, such a steed. As to the winning lord were fitting mead. Norandine, sure that, in the martial game. Both prizes destined for the conquering knight. As well as one and the other tourney's fame. Must be obtained by Griffin, named the White. To give him all that valiant man could claim. Nor could he give the warrior less, with right. The armor, guerdon of this final course. Placed with the tuck and mace and noble horse. The arms which in the former joust the dew. A valiant griffin were, who all had gained. With evil profit, by the wretch untrue. Martin usurped, who griffin's bearing feigned. To be hung up on high in public view. With the rich flourished tuck, the king ordained. And fastened at the saddle of the steed. The mace, that griffin might win either mead. But from effecting what he had intended. He was prevented by the warlike maid. Who late into the crowded square had wended. With Sansonet and England's duke arrayed. Seeing the arms of which I spoke suspended. She straight aneized the harness she surveyed. Once hers, and dear to her. As matters are. Esteemed by us as excellent and rare. Though, as a hindrance, she upon the road. Had left the arms, when, to retrieve her sword. She from her shoulders slipped the ponderous load. And chased Brunello, worthy of the cord. More to relate were labor ill bestowed. I deem, nor further of the tale record. Point two thirty seven. Enough for me, by you, tis understood. How here she found anew her armor good. You shall take with you, when by manifest. And certain tokens they by her were known. She, for no earthly thing, the iron vest. And weapons for a day would have foregone. She thinks not if this mode or that be best. 
to have them, anxious to regain her own. But T wards the arms with hand extended highs. And without more regard takes down the prize. And throwing some on earth, it chanced that more. Then was her own she in her hurry took. The Syrian king, who was offended sore. Raised war against her with a single look. For ill the wrong his angered people bore. And, to avenge him, lance and falchion shook. Remembering not, on other day, how dear. They paid for scathing errant cavalier. No wishful child more joyfully, mid all. The flowers of springtide, yellow, blue, and red. Finds itself, nor at concert or at ball. Dame beauteous and adorned. Then, mid the tread. Of warlike steeds, and din of arms, and fall. Of darts, and push of spears, where blood is shed. And death is dealt. In the tumultuous throng. She finds herself beyond all credence strong. She spurred her courser, and with lance in rest. Imperious at the foolish rabble made. And, through the neck impaled or through the breast. Some pierced. Some prostrate at the encounter laid. Next this or that she with the falchion pressed. The head from one she severed with the blade. And from that other cleft, another sank. Short of right arm or left, or pierced in flank. Bold Sansonetto and Astolfo near. Who had, with her, their limbs in harness dight. Though they for other end in arms appear. Seeing the maid and crowd engaged in fight. First lower the helmet's visor, next the spear. And with their lances charge the mob outright. Then bear their falchions, and, amid the crew. A passage with the trenchant weapons HEW. The errant cavaliers who to that stage. To joust, from different lands had made resort. Seeing them warfare with such fury wage. And into morning changed the expected sport. Because all knew not what had moved the rage. Of the infuriate people in that sort. Nor what the insult offered to the king. Suspended stood in doubt and wondering. Of these, some will the crowded rabble's band. Too late repentant of the feat, befriend. Those, favoring not the natives of the land. More than the foreigners, to part them wend. Others more wary, with their reins in hand. Sit watching how the mischief is to end. Griffin and Aquilant are of the throng. Which hurry forward to avenge the wrong. The pair of warlike brethren witnessing. The monarch's drunken eyes with venom fraught. And having heard from many in the ring. The occasion which the furious strife had wrought. Himself no whit less injured than the king. Of Syria's land, offended Griffin thought. Each night, in haste, supplied himself with spear. And thundering vengeance drove in full career. On Rabican, pricked forth before his hand. Valiant Astolfo, from the other bound. With the enchanted lance of gold in hand. Which at the first encounter bore to ground. What knights he smote with it. And on the sand. Laid Griffin first, next Aquilant he found. And scarcely touched the border of his shield. Ere he reversed the warrior on the field. From lofty saddle Sansonet o Erthra. Famous for price and prowess, many a knight. To the outlet of the square the mob withdrew. The monarch raged with anger and despite. Meanwhile, of the first cuirass and the new. Posseist, as well as either helmet bright. Marfisa, when she all in flight discerned. Conqueror towards her suburb in returned. Sansonet and Astolfo are not slow. In following T wards the gate the marshal made. The mob dividing all to let them go. And halt when they have reached the barricade. Griffin and Aquilant, who saw with woe. Themselves on earth at one encounter laid. Their drooping heads, oppressed with shame, decline. Nor dare appear before King Norandine. Seizing their steeds and mounting, either son. Of Oliver to seek their foemen went. With many of his vassals too is gone. The king, 
on death or vengeance all intent. The foolish rabble cry, lay on, lay on. And stand at distance and await the event. Griffin arrived where the three friends had gained. A bridge, and facing round the post maintained. He, at the first approach, Astolfo knew. For still the same device had been his wear. Even from the day he charmed Orilo slew. His horse. His arms the same, him not with care. Sir Griffin had remarked, nor steadfast view. When late he jousted with him in the square. He knows him here and greets. Next praise him show. Who the companions are that with him go. And why they had those arms, without the fear. Of Syria's king, pulled down, and to his slight. Of his champions England's cavalier. Sir Griffin courteously informed aright. But little of those arms, pursued the peer. He knew, which were the occasion of the fight. But, for he thither with Marfisa came. And Sansonet, had armed to aid the dame. While he and Griffin stood in colloquy. Aquilant came, and knew Astolfo good. Whom he heard speaking with his brother nigh. And, though of evil purpose, changed his mood. Of Norandines trooped many, these to spy. But came not nigh the warriors where they stood. And seeing them in conference, stood clear listening, in silence, and intent to hear. Someone who hears Marfisa hold is there. Famed, through the world, for matchless bravery. His courser turns, and bids the king have care. Save he would lose his Syrian chivalry. To snatch his court, before all slaughtered are. From the hand of death and of Tisiphone. For that, t'was verily Marfisa, who had borne away the arms in public view. As Norandine is told that name of dread. Through the Levant so feared on every side. Whose mention made the hair on many a head. Bristle, though she was often distant wide. He fears the ill may happen which is said. Unless against the mischief he provide. And hence his meany, who have changed their ire. Already into fear, he bids retire. The sons of Oliver, on the other hand. With Sansonetto and the English knight. So supplicate Marfisa, she her brand. Puts up, and terminates the cruel fight. And to the monarch next, amid his brand. Cries, proudly, Sir, I know not by what right. Thou wouldst this armor, not thine own, present. To him who conquers in thy tournament. Mine are these arms, which I, upon a day, left on the road which leads from Armony. Because, parforce afoot, I sought to stay. A robber, who had sore offended me. The truth of this my ensign may display. Which here is seen, if it be known to thee. With that she on the plate which sheathed the breast. Cleft in three places, showed a crown impressed. To me this an Armenian merchant gave. Tis true, replied the king, some days ago. And had you raised your voice, the arms to crave. You should have had them, whether yours or no. For, notwithstanding I to Griffin gave. The armor, I so well his nature know. He freely would resign the gift he earned. That it by me to you might be returned. Your allegation needs not to persuade. These arms are yours, that they your impress bear. Your word suffices me, by me more weighed. Than all that other witness could declare. To grant them yours is but a tribute paid. To virtue, worthy better prize to wear. Now have the arms, and let us make accord. And let some fairer gift the knight reward. Griffin, who little had those arms at heart. But much to satisfy the king was bent. Replied, you recompense enough in part. Teaching me how your wishes to content. Here is my honor all at sake, apart. Me see meth, said Marfisa, and forewent. Her claim for Griffin's sake, with courteous cheer. And, as his gift, in fine received the gear. To the city, their rejoicings to renew. In love and peace they measured back their way. 
Next came the joust, of which the honor due. And prize was Sansonets. Since from the fray. Abstained Astolfo and the brethren two, two thirty-eight. And bold Marfisa, best of that array. Like faithful friends and good companions. Fain. That Sansonet the tourney's mead should gain. Eight days or ten in joy and triumph dwell. The knights with Norandine. But with such strong. Desire of France the warrior's bosom swell. Which will not let them thence be absent long. They take their leave. Marfisa, who as well. Thither would go, departs the troop among. Marfisa had long time, with sword and lance. Desired to prove the paladins of France. And make experiment, if they indeed. Such worth as is by rumor voiced display. Sansonet leaves another, in his stead. The city of Jerusalem to sway. And now these five, in chosen squadron, speed. Who have few peers in prowess, on their way. Dismissed by Norandine, to Tripoli. They wend, and to the neighboring haven high. And there a carrack find, about to steer. For western countries, taking in her store. They, with the patron, for themselves and gear. And horses, make accord. A seaman whore. Of Luna he, 239 the heavens, on all sides clear. Vouch many days fair weather. From the shore. They loose, with sky serene, and every sail. Of the Yar vessel stretched by favoring gale. The island of the amorous deity. Breathed upon them an air, in her first port. Which not alone to man does injury. But molders iron, and here life is short. And marsh the cause, and nature certainly. Wrongs Famagosta, poisoning, in such sort. That city with Constantia's fun malign. To all the rest of Cyprus so benign. 240. The noxious sense that from the marish spring. After short sojourn there, compel their flight. The bark to a southeaster every wing. Extends, and circles Cyprus to the right. Makes Paphos Island next, and, anchoring. The crew and warriors on the beach alight. Those to ship merchandise, and these, at leisure. To view the laughing land of love and pleasure. Inland six miles or seven from thence, away. Scales, with an easy rise, a pleasant hill. Which myrtle, orange, cedar tree, and bay. And other perfumed plants by thousands fill. Thyme, marjoram, crocus, rose, and lily gay. From odoriferous leaf such sweets distill. That they who sail the sea the fragrance bland. Sent in each genial gale which blows from land. A fruitful rill, by limpid fountain fed. Waters, all round about, the fertile space. The land of Venus truly may be said. That passing joyous and delightful place. For every maid and wife, who there is bred. Is through the world beside. Unmatched in grace. And Venus wills, till their last hour be told. That love should warm their bosoms, young and old. Twas here they heard the same which they before. Of the orc and of Lucina, erst had heard. In Syria, how she to return once more. In Nicosia, to her lord prepared. Thence, a fair wind now blowing from the shore. His bark for sea the ready patron cleared. Hullet up his anchor, westward turned the head. Of the good ship, and all his canvas spread. To the north wind, which blew upon their right. Stretching to seaward, they their sails untie. When lo! A south-southwester, which seemed light. In the beginning, while the sun was high and afterwards increased in force towards night. Raised up the sea against the mountains high. With such dread flashes, and loud peals of thunder. As heaven, to swallow all in fire, would sunder. The clouds their gloomy veil above them strain. Nor suffer sun or star to cheer the view. Above the welkin roared, beneath the main. 
on every side the wind and tempest grew. Which, with sharp piercing cold and blinding rain, afflicted sore the miserable crew. While I descending night, with deeper shade, the vexed and fearful billows overlaid. The sailors, in this war of wind and flood, were prompt to manifest their vaunted art. One blowing through the shrilling whistle stood, and with the signal taught the rest their part. One clears the best bower anchor, one is good. To lower, 241 this other to haul home or start. The braces, one from deck the lumber cast. And this secured the tiller, that the mast. The cruel wind increased throughout the night. Which grew more dismal and more dark than hell. The wary patron stood to see outright. Where he believed less broken was the swell. And turned his prow to meet, with ready slight. The buffets of the dreadful waves which fell. Never without some hope, that at daybreak. The storm might lull, or else its fury slake. It lulls not, nor its fury slakes, but groan. Wilder, shows worse by day, if this be day. Which but by reckoning of the hours is known. And not by any cheering light or ray. Now, with more fear, his weaker hope o'erthrown. The sorrowing patron to the wind gives way. He veers his bark before the cruel gale. And scours the foaming sea with humble sail. While fortune on the sea annoys this crew. She grants those others small repose by land. Those left in France, who one another slew. The men of England and the Paynim band. These bold Rinaldo broke and overthrew. Nor troops nor banners spread before him stand. I speak of him, who his Bayardo fleet. Had spurred the gallant Dardanelle to meet. The shield, of which Almonte's son was vain. That of the quarters, good Rinaldo spied. And deemed him bold, and of a valiant strain. Who with Orlando's ensign dared to ride. Approaching nearer, this appeared more plain. When heaps of slaughtered men he round him eyed. Better it were, he cried, to overthrow. This evil plant, before it shoot and grow. Each to retreat betook him, where the peer. His face directed, and large passage made. Nor less the Saracens than faithful, clear. The way, so reverenced is Fusberta's blade. Save Dardanelle, Mount Alban's cavalier. Saw none, nor he to chase his prey delayed. To whom, he cast upon the mickle care. Poor child, who of that buckler left the heir? I seek thee out to prove, if thou attend. My coming, how thou keep'st the red and white. For thou, save this from me thou canst defend. Canst still defend it from Orlando's might. To him the king, now clearly comprehend. I what I bear, as well defend in fight. And I more honor hope than trouble dread. From my paternal quartering, white and red. Have thou no hope to make me fly, or yield. To thee my quarters, though a child I be. My life shalt thou take from me, if my shield. But I, in God, well hope the contrary. This as it may, shall none, in fighting field. Say that I ever shamed my ancestry. So said, and grasping in his hand the sword. The youthful king assailed Mount Alban's lord. Upon all parts, a freezing fear goes through. The heart blood of each trembling pain him nigh. When they amazed the fierce Rinaldo view. Who charged the monarch with such enmity. As might a lion, which a bullock, knew. To stings of love, should in a meadow spy. The more smote first, but fruitless was his task. Who beat in vain upon Mambrino's cask. Rinaldo smiled, and said, I'd have thee know. If I am better skilled to find the vein. He spurs, and lets with that the bridle go. And a thrust pushes with such might and main. A thrust against the bosom of his foe. That at his back the blade appears again. Forth issued blood and soul and from his cell. Lifeless and cold the reeling body fell. As languishes the flower of purple hue. 
which leveled by the passing plowshare lies. Or as the poppy, overcharged with dew. In garden droops its head in piteous wise. From life the leader of Zumra's crew 242. So passed, his visage losing all its dyes. So passed from life, and perished with their king. The heart and hope of all his following. As waters will sometime their course delay. Stagnant, and penned in pool by human skill. Which, when the opposing dike is broke away. Fall. And with mighty noise the country fill. Twas so the Africans, who had some stay. While Dardanello valor did instill. Fled here and there, dismayed on every side. When they him hurtling form his cell descried. Letting the flyers fly, of those who stand. Firm in their place, Rinaldo breaks the array. Ariadance kills on every hand. Who ranks well nigh Rinaldo on that day. These Leonettos, those Zerbinos brand. Erdrans, all rivals in the glorious fray. Well Charles and Oliver their parts have done. Turpin and Ogre, Guido and Salomon. In peril were the Moors, that none again. Should visit Heathness, that day oppressed. But that the wise and wary king of Spain. Gathered. And from the field bore off the rest. To sit down with his loss he better gain. Esteemed, that here to hazard purse and vest. Better some remnant of the host to save. Then bid whole squadrons stand and find a grave. He bids forth with the Moorish ensigns be. Born to the camp which Foss and Rampart span. With the bold monarch of Andology. The valiant Portuguese, and Stordalan. He sends to pray the king of Barbary 243. To endeavor to retire, as best be can. Who will know little praise that day deserve. If he his person and his place preserve. That king, who deemed himself in desperate case. Nor ever more by Serta hope to see. For, with so horrible and foul a face. He never fortune had beheld, with glee. Heard that Marsilius had contrived to place. Part of his host in full security. And faced about his banners and bade beat. Throughout his broken squadrons a retreat. But the best portion neither signal knew. Nor listened to the drum or trumpet's sound. So scared, so crowded is the wretched crew. That many insane's neighboring stream are drowned. Agrament, who would form the band anew. With him Sabrino, scours the squadrons round. And with them every leader good combines. To bring the routed host within their lines. But not by Sovereign or Sabrino done. Who, toiling, them with prayer or menace stirred. To march, where their ill-followed flags are gone. Can bring, I say not all, not even a third. Slaughtered or put to flight are two for one. Who, scapes, nor he unharmed, among that herd. Wounded is this behind, and that before. And wearied, one and all, and harassed sore. And even within their lines, in panic sore. They by the Christian bands are held in chase. And of all needful matters little store. Was made there, for provisioning the place. Charlemagne wisely by the lock before. Would grapple fortune, when she turned her face. But that dark night upon the field descended. And hushed all earthly matters and suspended. By the Creator haply hastened, who. Was moved to pity for the works he made. The blood in torrents ran the country through. Flooding the roads, while on the champagne laid. Were eighty thousand of the Paynim crew. Cut off that day by the destroying blade. Last troop from caverns, at the midnight hour. Villain and wolf to spoil them and devour. King Charles returns no more within the town. But camps without the city, opposite. The Moors' cantonments, and bids up and down. And round, high piled, and frequent watch fires light. The Paynim fashions ditch and bastion. Rampart and mine, and all things requisite. Visits his outposts, and his guards' alarms. 
nor all the livelong night puts off his arms. That livelong night the foes, throughout their tents, as insecure and with their scathe depressed, poured tears, and uttered murmurs and laments. But, as they could, their sounds of woe suppressed. One grief for slaughtered friends or kindred vents. Some are by sorrows of their own distressed. As wounded or as ill at ease. But more. Tremble at mischief which they deem in store. Two moors amid the Paynim army were. From stock obscure in Tolomita grown. Of whom the story, an example rare. Of constant love, is worthy to be known. Medoro and Cloridan were named the pair. Who, whether fortune pleased to smile or frown. Served Dardanello with fidelity. And late with him to France had crossed the sea. Of nimble frame and strong was Cloridane. Throughout his life a follower of the chase. A cheek of white, suffused with crimson grain. Medoro had, in youth a pleasing grace. Nor bound on that emprise, mid all the train. Was there a fairer or more jocund face? Point two forty four. Crisp hair he had of gold, and jet black eyes. And seemed an angel lighted from the skies. These two were posted on a rampart's height. With more to guard the encampment from surprise. When, mid the equal intervals, at night, Medoro gazed on heaven with sleepy eyes. In all his talk, the stripling, waffle white. Here cannot choose, but of his lord devise. The royal Dardanelle, and evermore. Him, left unhonored on the field, deplore. Then, turning to his mate, cries, Cloridane. I cannot tell thee what a cause of woe. It is to me, my lord upon the plain. Should lie, unworthy food for wolf or crow. Thinking how still to me he was humane. Meseems, if in his honor I forego. This life of mine, for favors so immense. I shall but make a feeble recompense. That he may lack not sepulture, will I. Go forth, and seek him out among the slain. And haply God may will that none shall spy. Where Charles's camp lies hushed. Do thou remain. That, if my death be written in the sky. Thou mayst the deed be able to explain. So that if fortune foil so fear a feat. The world, through fame, my loving heart may weet. Amazed was Cloridan a child should show. Such heart, such love, and such fair loyalty. And fain would make the youth his though forego. Whom he held passing dear. But fruitlessly. Would move his steadfast purpose, for such woe. Will neither comforted nor altered be. Medoro is disposed to meet his doom. Or to enclose his master in the tomb. Seeing that naught would bend him, naught would move. I too will go, was Cloridan's reply. In such a glorious act myself will prove. As well such famous death I cover, I. What other thing is left me, here above? Deprived of thee, Medoro mine? To die. With thee in arms is better, on the plain. Then afterwards of grief, shouldst thou be slain. And thus resolved, disposing in their place. Their guards' relief, depart the youthful pair. Leave foss and palisade, and, in small space. Are among ours. Who watch with little care. Who, for they little fear the pain in race. Slumber with fires extinguished everywhere. Mid carriages and arms, they lie supine. Up to the eyes, immersed in sleep and wine. A moment Cloridano stopped and cried. Not to be lost are opportunities. This troop, by whom my master's blood was shed. Medoro, ought not I to sacrifice? Do thou, lest any one this way be led. Watch everywhere about, with ears and eyes. For a wide way, amid the hostile horde. I offer here to make thee with my sword. So said he, and his talk cut quickly short. Coming where learned Alpheus slumbered nigh. Who had the year before sought Charles's court. 
in medicine, magic, and astrology. Well versed, but now in art found small support. Or rather found that it was all a lie. He had foreseen, that he his long-drawn life should finish in the bosom of his wife. And now the Saracen with wary view has pierced his weasand with the pointed sword. For others he neat that diviner, slew, nor gave the wretches time to say a word. Sir Turpin in his story tells not who. And time had of their names effaced record. Paladin of Moncalier next he speeds. One who securely sleeps between two steeds. Next came the warrior where, with limbs outspread, pillowed on barrel, lay the wretched GRYLL. This he had drained, and undisturbed by dread, hoped to enjoy a peaceful sleep and still. The daring Saracen lopped off his head. Blood issues from the tap hole, with a rill of wine, and he, well drenched with many a can, dreams that he drinks, dispatched by Cloridan. Next GRYLL, Andropono and Conrad Height. A Greek and German, at two thrusts he gored. Who in the air had passed large part of night. With dice and goblet. Blessed it at that board. They still had watched, till, clothed in amber light. The radiant sun had traversed Indus Ford. But mortal's destiny would set at naught. If every white futurity were taught. As, in full fold, a lion long unfed, whom wasting famine had made lean and spare, devours and rends, and swallows, and lays dead. The feeble flock, which at his mercy are. So, in their sleep, the cruel pain embled. Our host, and made wide slaughter everywhere. Nor blunted was the young Medoro's sword. But he disdained to smite the ignoble horde. He to Libretto's duke, leaving those dead, had come, who slumbered with a gentle mate, each clasping each so closely in their bed, that air between them could not penetrate. From both Medoro cleanly lopped the head. Oh! Blessed way of death! Oh! Happy fate! For tis my trust, that as their bodies, so, their souls embracing to their born shall go. Melindo, with Andalico, he slew. His brother, sons to the Earl of Flanders they. To whom has bearings, each to arms was new. Charles had the lilies given. Because that day. The monarch had beheld the valiant too. With crimson staves, returning from the fray. And them with lands in Flanders vowed to glad. And would, but that Medoro this forbade. Rearing the insidious blade, the pair are near. The place, where round King Charles's pavilion. Our tented warlike paladin and peer. Guarding the side that each is camped upon. When in good time the Paynims backward steer. And sheath their swords, the impious slaughter done. Deeming impossible, in such a number. But they must light on one who does not slumber. And though they might escape well charged with prey, to save themselves they think sufficient gain. Thither by what he deems the safest way. Medoro following him, went Cloridane. Where, in the field, mid bow and falchion, lay. And shield and spear, in pool of purple stain. Wealthy and poor, the king and vassal's course. And overthrown the rider and his horse. The horrid mixture of the bodies there, which heaped the plain where roved these comrades sworn, might well have rendered vain their faithful care. Amid the mighty piles, till break of morn, had not the moon, at young Medoro's prayer, out of a gloomy cloud put forth her horn. Medoro to the heavens upturns his eyes, towards the moon, and thus devoutly cries, O holy goddess! Whom our fathers well have styled as of a triple form, and who thy sovereign beauty dost in heaven and hell and earth in many forms reveal, and through the greenwood holt of beast and monster fell, a huntress bold the flying steps pursue, 
show where my king, amid so many lies. Who did, alive, thy holy studies prize? At the youth's prayer from parted cloud outshone. Were it the work of faith or accident? The moon, as fair, as when Endymion. She circled in her naked arms, with tent. Christian or Saracen, was Paris town. Seen in that gleam, and hill and plain's extent. With these Mount Martyr and Mount Levy's height. This on the left, and that upon the right. 245. The silvery splendor glistened yet more clear. There where renowned Almonte's son lay dead. Faithful Medoro mourned his master dear. Who well amiaes the quartering white and red. With visage bathed in many a bitter tear. For he a rill from either eyelid shed. And piteous act and moan, that might have whist. The winds, his melancholy plaint to list. But with a voice suppressed, not that he ought. Regards if any one the noise should hear. Because he of his life takes any thought. Of which loathed burden he would fain be clear. But, lest his being heard should bring to naught. The pious purpose which has brought them here. The youths the king upon their shoulders stowed. And so between themselves divide the load. Hurrying their steps, they hastened, as they might. Under the cherished burden they conveyed. And now approaching was the Lord of Light. To sweep from heaven the stars, from earth the shade. When good Zerbino, he, whose valiant sprite. Was ne'er in time of need by sleep down weighed. From chasing moors all night, his homeward way. Was taking to the camp at dawn of day. He has with him some horsemen in his train. That from afar the two companions spy. Expecting thus some spoil or prize to gain. They, every one, towards that quarter high. Brother, behoves us, cried young Cloridane. To cast away the load we bear, and fly. For, twere a foolish thought, might well be said. To lose two living men, to save one dead. And dropped the burden, weaning his medor. Had done the same by it, upon his side. But that poor boy, who loved his master more. His shoulders to the weight, alone, applied. Cloridan hurrying with all haste before. Deeming him close behind him or beside. Who, did he know his danger, him to save? A thousand deaths, instead of one, would brave. Those horsemen, with intent to make the two. Yield themselves prisoners to their band, or die. Some here, some there, disperse the champagne through and every pass and outlet occupy. The captain, little distant from his crew, is keener than the rest the chase to ply. And, when he sees them hurrying in such guise, is certain that the twain are enemies. Of old an ancient forest clothed that lair. Of trees and underwood a tangled maze. Of salvage beasts alone the wild repair. And, like a labyrinth, full of narrow ways. Here from the boughs such shelter hope the pair. As may conceal them well from hostile gaze. But him I shall expect who loves the rhyme. To listen to my tale some other time. Canto. Chapter 19. Medoro, by Angelica's quaint hand. Is healed, and weds, and bears her to Cati. At length Marfisa, with the chosen band. After long suffering, makes Lyazes Bay. Guido the savage, bondsman in the land. Which impious women rule with civil sway. With Marfisa strives in single fight. And lodges her and hers at full of night. By whom he is beloved can no one know. Who on the top of fortune's wheel is seated. Since he, by true and faithless friends, with show. Of equal faith, in glad estate is greeted. But, should felicity be changed to woe, the flattering multitude is turned and fleeted. While he who loves his master from his heart, even after death performs his faithful part, were the heart seen as is the outward cheer, he who at court is held in sovereign grace, and he that to his lord is little dear, 
with parts reversed, would fill each other's place. The humble man the greater would appear. And he, now first, be hindmost in the race. But be Medoro's faithful story said. The youth who loved his lord, alive or dead. The closest path, amid the forest gray. To save himself, pursued the youth forlorn. But all his schemes were marred by the delay. Of that sore weight upon his shoulders borne. The place he knew not, and mistook the way. And hid himself again in sheltering thorn. Secure and distant was his mate, that threw. The green wood shade with lighter shoulders flew. So far was Cloridan advanced before. He heard the boy no longer in the wind. But when he marked the absence of Medor, it seemed as if his heart was left behind. Ah! How was I so negligent, the more! exclaimed, so far beside myself, and blind! That I, Medoro, should without thee fare! Nor know when I deserted thee or where! So saying, in the wood he disappears! Plunging into the maze with hurried pace! And thither, whence he lately issued, steers! And, desperate, of death returns in trace! Cries and the tread of steeds this while he hears! And word and the tread of foemen, as in chase! Lastly Medoro by his voice is known! Disarmed, on foot, mid many horse, alone! A hundred horsemen who the youth surround! Zerbino leads, and bids his followers seize! The stripling! Like a top, the boy turns round! And keeps him as he can, among the trees! Behind oak, elm, beech, ash, he takes his ground. Nor from the cherished load his shoulders freeze. Wearied, at length, the burden he bestowed. Upon the grass, and stalked about his load. As in her rocky cavern the she-bear. With whom close warfare alpine hunters wage. Uncertain hangs about her shaggy care. And growls in mingled sound of love and rage. To unsheath her claws, and blood her tushes bare. Would natural hate and wrath the beast engage. Love softens her, and bids from strife retire. And for her offspring watch, amid her ire. Cloridan who to aid him knows not how. And with Medoro willingly would die. But who would not for death this being forego? Until more foes than one should lifeless lie. Ambushed his sharpest arrow to his bow. Fits, and directs it with so true an eye. The feathered weapon bores a Scotchman's brain. And lays the warrior dead upon the plain. Together, all the others of the band. Turn thither, whence was shot the murderous reed. Meanwhile he launched another from his stand. That a new foe might by the weapon bleed. Whom, while he made of this and that demand and loudly questioned who had done the deed. The arrow reached, transfixed the wretch's throat, and cut his question short in middle note. Zerbino, captain of those horse, no more. Can at the piteous sight his wrath refrain. In furious heat, he springs upon Medor. Exclaiming, Thou of this shalt bear the pain. One hand he in his locks of golden ore. In wreaths, and drags him to himself amain. But, as his eyes that beauteous face survey, takes pity on the boy, and does not slay. To him the stripling turns, with suppliant cry. And, by thy God, Sir Knight, exclaims, I pray. Be not so passing cruel. Nor deny. That I in earth my honored king may lay. No other grace I supplicate, nor I. This for the love of life, believe me, say. So much, no longer, space of life I crave. As may suffice to give my lord a grave. And if you needs must feed the beast and bird. Like Theban Creon, let their worst be done 246. Upon these limbs, so that by me interred. In earth be those of good Almonte's son. Medoro thus his suit, with grace, preferred and words, to move a mountain, and so one. 
Upon Zerbino's mood, to kindness turned. With love and pity he all overburned. This while, a churlish horseman of the band. Who little deference for his lord confiest. His lance uplifting, wounded overhand. The unhappy suppliant in his dainty breast. Zerbino, who the cruel action scanned. Was deeply stirred, the rather that, oppressed. And livid with the blow the churl had sped. Medoro fell as he was wholly dead. So grieved Zerbino, with such wrath was stung. Not unavenged shalt thou remain, he cries. Then full of evil will in fury sprung. Upon the author of the foul emprise. But he his vantage marks, and, from among. The warriors, in a moment slips and flies. Cloridan, who beholds the deed, at sight. Of young Medoro's fall, springs forth to fight. And casts away his bow, and, mid the band. Of foemen, whirls his falchion, in desire. Rather of death, than hoping that his hand. May snatch a vengeance equal to his ire. Amid so many blades, he views the sand. Tinged with his blood, and ready to expire. And feeling he the sword no more can guide. Lets himself drop by his Midoro's side. The Scots pursue their chief, who pricks before. Through the deep wood, inspired by high disdain. When he has left the one and the other more. This dead, that scarce alive. Upon the plain. There for a mighty space lay young Medor. Spouting his lifeblood from so large a vein. He would have perished, but that thither made. A stranger, as it chanced, who lent him aid. By chance arrived a damsel at the place. Who was, though mean and rustic was her wear. Of royal presence and of beauteous face. And lofty manners. Sagely debonair. Her have I left unsung so long a space. That you will hardly recognize the fair. Angelica, in her, if known not, scan. The lofty daughter of Cadiz great Khan. Angelica, when she had won again. The ring Brunello had from her conveyed. So waxed in stubborn pride and hot disdain. She seemed to scorn this ample world, and strayed. Alone. And held as cheap each living swain. Although, amid the best, by fame arrayed. Nor brooked she to remember a gallant. In Count Orlando or King Sacrapent. And above every other deed repented. That good Rinaldo she had loved of yore and that to look so low she had consented. As by such choice dishonored, grieved her sore. Love, hearing this, such arrogance resented. And would the damsel's pride endure no more. Where young Medoro lay he took his stand. And waited her, with bow and shaft in hand. When fair Angelica the stripling spies. Nigh hurt to death in that disastrous fray. Who for his king, that their unsheltered lies. More sad than for his own misfortune lay. She feels new pity in her bosom rise. Which makes its entry in unwanted way. Touched was her haughty heart, once hard and cursed. And more when he his piteous tale rehearsed. And calling back to memory her art. For she in IND had learned chirurgery. Since it appears such studies in that part. Worthy of praise and fame are held to be. And. As an heirloom, sires to sons impart, 247. With little aid of books, the mystery. Disposed herself to work with simples juice. Till she in him should healthier life produce. And recollects a herb had caught her sight. In passing hither, on a pleasant plain. What, whether didney or pansy height. I know not. Fraught with virtue to restrain. The crimson blood forthwelling, and of might. To sheathe each perilous and piercing pain. She found it near, and having pulled the weed. Returned to seek Medoro on the mead. Returning, she upon a swain did light. Who was on horseback passing through the wood. Strayed from the lowing herd, the rustic white. A heifer, 
missing for two days, pursued. Him she with her conducted, where the might of the faint youth was ebbing with his blood, which had the ground about so deeply dyed. Life was nigh wasted with the gushing tide. Angelica alights upon the ground, and he her rustic comrade, at her hest. She hastened, twixt two stones the herb to pound. Then took it, and the healing juice expressed. With this did she foment the stripling's wound. And, even to the hips. His waist and breast. And, with such virtue was the salve endued. It stanched his life-blood, and his strength renewed. And into him infused such force again. That he could mount the horse the swain conveyed. But good Medoro would not leave the plain. Till he in earth had seen his master laid. He, with the monarch, buried Cloridane. And after followed whither pleased the maid. Who was to stay with him, by pity led. Beneath the courteous shepherd's humble shed. Nor would the damsel quit the lowly pile. So she esteemed the youth, till he was sound. Such pity first she felt, when him erewhile. She saw outstretched and bleeding on the ground. Touched by his mien and manners next, a file. She felt corrode her heart with secret wound. She felt corrode her heart, and with desire. By little and by little warmed, took fire. The shepherd dwelt, between two mountains hoar. In goodly cabin, in the greenwood shade. With wife and children, in short time before. The Brent new shed had builded in the glade. Here of his greasly wound the youthful moor. Was briefly healed by the Catayan maid. But who in briefer space, a sorer smart. Than young Medoros, suffered at her heart. A wound far wider and which deeper lies. Now in her heart she feels, from viewless bow. Which from the boy's fair hair and beauteous eyes. Had the winged archer dealt, a sudden glow. She feels, and still the flames increasing rise. Yet less she heeds her own than others' woe. Heeds not herself, and only to content. The author of her cruel ill is bent. Her ill but festered and increased the more. The stripling's wounds were seen to heal and close. The youth grew lusty, while she suffered sore. And, with new fever parched, now burnt. Now froze. From day to day in beauty waxed Medor. She miserably wasted. Like the snows. Unseasonable flake, which melts away. Exposed, in sunny place, to scorching ray. She, if a vain desire will not die. Must help herself, nor yet delay the aid. And she in truth, her will to satisfy. Deemed t'was no time to wait till she was prayed. And next of shame renouncing every tie. With tongue as bold as eyes, petition made. And begged him, haply an unwitting foe. To sheath the suffering of that cruel blow. O Count Orlando, O King of Circassy. Say what your valor has availed to you. Say what your honor boots, what goodly fee. Remunerates ye both, for service true. Sirs, show me but a single courtesy. With which she ever graced ye, old or new. As some poor recompense, desert, or guerdon. For having borne so long so sore a burden. Oh! Couldst thou yet again to life return? How hard would this appear, O Agricane, 248! In that she whilom thee was wont to spurn. With sharp repulse and insolent disdain. O Pharaoh, O ye thousand more, forlorn! Unsung, who wrought a thousand feats in vain! For this ungrateful fair, what pain, t'would be! Could you within his arms the damsel see? To pluck, as yet untouched, the virgin rose. Angelica permits the young Medor. Was none so blessed as in that garden's close. Yet to have set his venturous foot before. They holy ceremonies interpose. Some deal to veil, to gild, the matter o'er. Young love was bridesman there the tie to bless. 
and for brideswoman stood the shepherdess. In the low shed, with all solemnities, the couple made their wedding as they might. And there above a month, in tranquil guise, the happy lovers rested in delight. Save for the youth the lady has no eyes. Nor with his looks can satisfy her sight. Nor yet of hanging on his neck can tire. Of feel she can content her fond desire. The beauteous boy is with her, night and day. Does she untent herself, or keep the shed? Morning or eve they to some meadow stray. Now to this bank, and to that other led. Haply, in cavern harbored, at midday. Grateful as that to which Aeneas fled. With Dido. When the tempest raged above. The faithful witness to their secret love. Amid such pleasures, where, with tree o'ergrown. Ran stream, or bubbling fountain's wave did spin. On bark or rock, if yielding were the stone. The knife was straight at work or ready pin. And there, without, in thousand places lone. And in as many places graved, within. Medoro and Angelica were traced. In diverse ciphers quaintly interlaced. When she believed they had prolonged their stay. More than an hour, the damsel made design. In India to revisit her catty. And with its crown Medoro's head entwine. She had upon her wrist an armlet, gay. With costly gems, in witness and in sign. Of love to her by Count Orlando born. And which the damsel for long time had worn. On zillions, hid beneath the wave. This morgue bestowed. 249 And from captivity. The youth, restored to Monodanti's grave. His ancient sire, through Roland's chivalry. To Roland in return the bracelet gave. Roland, a lover. Deigned the gorgeous fee. To wear, with the intention to convey. The present to his queen, of whom I say. No love which to the paladin she bears. But that it costly is and wrought with care. This to Angelica so much endears. That never more esteemed was matter rare. This she was suffered, in the Isle of Tears. I know not by what privilege, to wear. When, naked. To the whale exposed for food. By that inhospitable race and rude. She, not possessing wherewithal to pay. The kindly couple's hospitality. Served by them in their cabin, from the day. She there was lodged, with such fidelity. Unfastened from her arm the bracelet gay. And bade them keep it for her memory. Departing hence the lovers climb the side. Of hills, which fertile France from Spain divide. Within Valencia or Barcelona's town. The couple thought a little to remain. Until some goodly ship should make her bound. To loose for the Levant, as so the twain. Journey. Beneath Girona, coming down. Those mountains, they behold the subject main. And keeping on their left the beach below. By beaten track to Barcelona go. But, ere they there arrive, a crazed white. They find, extended on the outer shore. Who is bedaubed like swine, in filthy plight. And smeared with mud, face, reins, and bosom o'er. He comes upon them, as a dog in spite. Swiftly assails the stranger at the door. And is about to do the lover's scorn. But to the bold Marfisa I return. Marfisa, Astolfo, Griffin, Aquilant. Of these and of the others will I tell. Who, death before their eyes, the vexed Levant. Traverse, and ill resist the boisterous swell. While I more passing proud and arrogant. Waxes in rage and threat the tempest fell. And now three days the angry gale has blown. Nor signal of abatement yet has shown. Waves lifted by the waxing tempest start. Castle and flooring, and, if yet there be. Ought standing left in any other part. Tis cut away and cast into the sea. Here, pricking out their course upon the chart. One by a lantern does his ministry. Upon a sea-chest propped, 
another white. Is busied in the well by torches light. This one beneath the poop, beneath the prow. That other, stands to watch the ebbing sand. And, each half glass run out, returns to know. What way the ship has made, and towards what land. Thence all to speak their different thoughts, below. To midships make resort, with chart in hand. There were the mariners, assembled all. Are met in council, at the master's call. One says, abreast of Lemiso are we. Among the shoals, and by his reckoning, nigh. The rocks of Tripoli and Bark must be. Where shipwrecked, for the most part, vessels lie. Another, we are lost on Sadly 250. Whose coast makes many patrons weep and sigh. According to their judgment, all suggest. Their treasons, each with equal dread oppressed. More spitefully the wind on the third day. Blows, and the sea more yeasty billows rears. The foremast by the first is borne away. The rudder by the last, with him who steers. Better than steel that man will bide the assay. Of marble breast, who has not now his fears. Marfisa, erst so confident mid harms. Denied not but that day she felt alarms. A pilgrimage is vowed to Sinai. To Cyprus and Galicia, and to Rome. Etino, and other place of sanctity. If such is named, and to the holy tomb. Meanwhile, above the sea and near the sky. The bark is tossed, with shattered plank and boom. From which the crew had cut, in her distress. The mizzenmast, to make her labor less. They bail and chest and all their heavy lumber. Cast overboard, from poop, and prow, and side. And every berth and cabin disencumber. Of merchandise, to feed the greedy tide. Water to water others of the number. Rendered, by whom the spouting pumps were plied. This in the hold bestirs himself, where'er. Planks opened by the beating sea appear. They in this trouble, in this woe, remained. For full four days. And helpless was their plight. And a full victory the sea had gained. If yet a little had endured its spite. But them with hope of clearer sky sustained. The wished appearance of St. Elmo's light. Which, every spar was gone, descending glowed. Upon a boat, which in the prow was stowed. 251. When, flaming, they the beauteous light surveyed. All those aboard kneeled down in humble guise. And heaven for peace and for smooth water prayed. With trembling voices and with watery eyes. Nor longer waxed the storm, which had dismayed. Till then enduring in such cruel wise. Northwester or crosswind no longer reigns. But tyrant of the sea the south remains. This on the sea remained so passing strong. And from its sable mouth so fiercely blew. And bore with it so swift a stream and strong. Of the vexed waters. That it hurried through. Their tumbling waves the shattered bark along. Faster than gentle falcon ever flew. And sore the patron feared, to the world's brink. It would transport his bark, or wreck or sink. For this the master finds a remedy. Who bids them cast out spars, and veer away. A line which holds this float, and as they flee. So, by two-thirds, their furious course delay. This council boots, and more the augury. From him whose lights upon the gunnel play.252. This saves the vessel, haply else undone. And makes her through the sea securely run. They, driven on Syria, in Lyazzo's bay. A mighty city rise, so nigh at hand. That they can from the vessel's deck survey. Two castles, which the port within command. Pale turns the patron's visage with dismay. When he perceives what is the neighboring land. Who will not to the port for shelter high. Nor yet can keep the open sea, nor fly. They cannot fly, nor yet can keep the sea. For mast and yards are gone, and by the stroke. 
of the huge billows beating frequently. Loosened is plank, and beam and timber broke. And certain death to make the port would be. Or to be doomed to a perpetual yoke. For each is made a slave, or sentenced dead. Thither by evil chance or error led. Sore dangerous, t'was to doubt. Lest hostile band. Should sally from the puissant town in sight. With armed barks, and upon theirs lay hand. In evil case for sea, and worse for fight. What time the patron knows not what command. To give, of him inquires the English knight, 253. What kept his mind suspended in that sort? And why at first he had not made the port? To him relates the patron, how a crew. Of murderous women tenanted that shore. Which, by their ancient law, enslave or slew. All those whom fortune to this kingdom bore. And that he only could such for a shoe. That in the lists ten champions overbore. And having this achieved, the following night. In bed should with ten damsels take delight. And if he brings to end the former feat. But afterwards the next unfinished leaves. They kill him, and as slaves his following treat. Condemned to delve their land or keep their beeves. If for the first and second labor meet. He liberty for all his band achieves. Not for himself, who there must stay and wed. Ten wives by him selected for his bed. So strange a custom of the neighboring strand. Without a laugh Astolfo cannot hear. Sansonet and Marfisa, near at hand. Next Aquilant, and he, his brother dear. Arrive, to them the patron who from land. I keeps aloof, explains the cause of fear. And cries. I leave her in the sea would choke. Then here of servitude endure the yoke. The sailors by the patron's reed abide. And all the passengers affrighted soar. Save that Marfisa took the other side. With hers, who deemed that safer was the shore. Then see, which raging round them, far and wide. Then a hundred thousand swords dismayed them more. Them little this, or other place alarms. So that they have but power to wield their arms. The warriors are impatient all to land. But boldest is of these the English peer. Knowing how soon his horn will clear the strand. When the scared foe its pealing sound shall hear. To put into the neighboring port this band. Desires, and are at strife with those who fear. And they who are the strongest, in such sort. Compel the patron, that he makes the port. Already when their bark was first espied. At sea, within the cruel city's view. They had observed a galley. Well supplied. With practiced mariners and numerous crew. While them uncertain counsels did divide. Make for their wretched ship. The billows through. Her lofty prow to their short stern and low. These lash, and into port the vessel tow. They thitherward were worked with warp and oar. Rather than with assistance of the sail. Since to lay starboard course or larboard more. No means were left them by the cruel gale. Again their rugged rind the champions wore. Girding the faithful falchion with the mail. And with unceasing hope of comfort fed. Master and mariners oppressed with dread. Like a half moon, projected from the beach. More than four miles about, the city's port. Six hundred paces deep, and crowning each. Horn of the circling haven, was a fort. On every side, secure from storm or breach. Save only from the south, a safe resort. In guise of theater the town extended. About it, and a hill behind ascended. No sooner there the harbored ship was seen. The news had spread already through the land. Then thitherward, with martial garb and mien. Six thousand women trooped, with bow in hand. And, to remove all hope of flight, between. One castle and the other, drew a band. And with strong chains and barks the port enclosed. Whichever, for that use, they kept disposed. A dame, as the Cumian Sibyl Grey. 
or Hector's ancient mother of renown. Made call the patron out, and bade him say, If they their lives were willing to lay down, or were content beneath the yoke to stay, according to the custom of the town, one of two evils they must choose, be slain, or captives, one and all, must there remain. Tis true, if one so bold and of such might be found amid your crew, the matron said, that he ten men of ours engage in fight, and can in cruel battle lay them dead. And, after, with ten women, in one night, suffice to play the husband's part in bed, he shall remain our sovereign, and shall sway the land, and you may homeward wend your way. And at your choice to stay shall also be, whether a part or all, but with this pact, that he who here would stay and would be free, can with ten dames the husband's part enact. But if your chosen warrior fall or flee, by his ten enemies at once attacked, or for the second function have not breath, to slavery you we doom, and him to death. At what she deemed the cavaliers would start, the beldam found them bold, for to compete. With those they should engage, and play their part. The champions hoped alike in either feat. Nor failed renowned Marfisa's valiant heart. Albeit for the second dance unmeet. Secure, where nature had her aid denied. The want should with the falchion be supplied. The patron is commanded their reply. Resolved in common counsel to unfold. The dames at pleasure may their prowess try, and shall in lists and bed allow them bold. The lashings from the vessels they untie. The skipper heaves the warp, and bids lay hold, and lowers the bridge. O'er which, in warlike weed, the expectant cavaliers their coursers lead. These through the middle of the city go, and see the damsels, as they forward fare. Ride through the streets, succinct, in haughty show, and arm, in guise of warriors, in the square. Nor to gird sword, nor fasten spur below, is man allowed, nor any arm to wear, excepting, as I said, the ten, to follow. The ancient usage which those women hallow, all others of the manly sex they seat, to ply the distaff, broider, card, and sow in female gown descending to the feet, which renders them effeminate and slow. Some chained, another labor to complete, are tasked, to keep their cattle, or to plow. Few are the males, and scarce the warriors can. Amid a thousand dames, a hundred men. The knights determining by lot to try, who in their common cause on listed ground, should slay the ten, with whom they were to vie and in the other field ten others wound. Designed to pass the bold Marfisa by, believing she unfitting would be found, and would be, in the second joust at eve, ill-qualified the victory to achieve. But with the others she, the martial maid, will run her risk, and tis her destiny. I will lay down this life, the damsel said, rather than you lay down your liberty. But this, with that she pointed to the blade, which she had girt, is your security. I will all tangles in such manner loose, as Alexander did the Gordian noose. I will not henceforth stranger shall complain, so long as the world lasts, of this repair. So said the maid, nor could the friendly train take from her what had fallen to her share. Then, either everything to lose, or gain their liberty, to her they leave the care. With stubborn plate and mail all over steeled, ready for cruel fight, she takes the field. High up the spacious city is place, with steps which serve as seats in rising rows, which for naught else is used, except the chase, tourney, or wrestling match, or such like shows. For gates of solid bronze secure the space. Thither of armed dames the rabble flows, in troubled tide, and to Marfisa bold, that she may enter, afterwards is told. On piebald horse Marfisa entered, 
spread. Were circles dappling all about his hair. Of a bold countenance and little head. And beauteous points, and haughty gait and air. Out of a thousand coursers which he fed. Him, as the best, and biggest, and most rare. King Norandino chose, and, decked with brave. And costly trappings, to Marfisa gave. Through the south gate, from the midday, the plain. Marfisa entered, nor expected long. Before she heard approaching trumpet strain. Peal through the lists in shrilling notes and strong. And, looking next towards the northern wain. Saw her ten opposites appear, among. These, as their leader, pricked a cavalier. Excelling all the rest in goodly cheer. On a large courser came the leading foe. Which was, excepting the near foot behind. And forehead, darker than was ever crow. His foot and forehead with some white were signed. The horseman did his horse's colors show. In his own dress, and hence might be divined. He, as the mournful hue o'erpowered the clear. Was less inclined to smile, than mournful tear. At once their spears in rest nine warriors laid. When the trump sounded, in the hostile train. But he in black no sign of jousting made. As if he held such vantage in disdain. Better he deemed the law were disobeyed. Than that his courtesy should suffer stain. The knight retires apart, and sits to view. What against nine one single lance can do. Of smooth and balanced pace, the damsel's horse. To the encounter her with swiftness bore. Who poised a lance so massive in the course. It would have been an overweight for four. She, disembarking, as of greatest force. The boom had chosen out of many more. At her fierce semblance when in motion, quail. A thousand hearts, a thousand looks grow pale. The bosom of the first she opened so. As might surprise, if naked were the breast. She pierced the cuirass and the mail below. But first a buckler, solid and well pressed. A yard behind the shoulders of the foe. Was seen the steel, so well was it at rest. Speared on her lance she left him on the plain. And at the others drove with flowing rain. And so she shocked the second of the crew. And dealt the third so terrible a blow. From cell and life, with broken spine, the two. She drove at once. So fell the overthrow. And with such weight she charged the warriors through. So serried was the battle of the foe. I have seen bombard open in such mode. The squadrons, as that band Marfisa strode. Many good spears were broken on the dame. Who was as little moved as solid wall. When revelers play the chase's merry game, 254. Is ever moved by stroke of heavy ball. So hard the temper of her corslet's mail. The strokes I harmless on the breastplate fall. Whose steel was heated in the fires of hell. And in a vernous water slaked by spell. At the end of the career, she checked her steed. Wheeled him about, and for a little stayed. And then against the others drove at speed. Broke them, and to the handle died her blade. Here shorn of arms, and there of head, they bleed. And other in such manner cleft the maid. That breast, and head, and arms together fell. Belly and legs remaining in the cell. With such just measure him she cleaves, I say. Where the two haunches and the ribs confine. And leaves him a half figure, in such way. As what we before images divine. Of silver. Oftener made of wax, survey. Which supplicants from far and near enshrine. In thanks for mercy shown, and to bestow. A pious quittance for accepted vow. Marfisa next made after one that flew. And overtook the wretch, and cleft, before. He the mid-square had won, his collar threw. So clean, no surgeon ever pieced it more. One after other, all in fine she slew. Or wounded every one she smote so sore. She was secure, that never more would foe. Arise anew from earth, 
to work her woe. The cavalier this while had stood aside. Who had the ten conducted to the place? Since, with so many against one to ride, had seemed to him advantage foreign base. Who, now he by a single hand espied. So speedily his whole array displaced. Pricked forth against the martial maid, to show. Twas courtesy, not fear, had made him slow. He, signing with his right hand, made appear. That he would speak ere their career was run. Nor thinking that beneath such manly cheer. A gentle virgin was concealed. Begun. I what thou needs must be, Sir Cavalier. Sore wearied with such mighty slaughter done. And if I were disposed to weary thee. More than thou art, it were discourtesy. To thee, to rest until tomorrow's light. Then to renew the battle, I concede. No honor, t'were today to prove my might. On thee, whom weak and overwrought I read. Arms are not new to me, nor listed fight. Nor does fatigue so short a toil succeed. Answered Marfisa, and I, at my post. Hope to prove this upon thee, to thy cost. I thank thee for thy offer of delay. But need not what thy courtesy agrees. And yet remains so large a space of day. T'were very shame to spend it all in ease. Oh! Were I, he replied, so sure to ape. My heart with everything which best would please. As thine I shall ape in this, but see. That ere thou thinkest, daylight fail not thee. So said he, and obedient to his hest. Two spears, say rather heavy booms, they bear. He to Marfisa bids consigns the best. And the other takes himself, the martial pair. Already, with their lances in the rest. Wait but till other blast the joust declare. Lo! Earth and air and sea the noise rebound. As they prick forth, at the first trumpet's sound. No mouth was opened and no eyelid fell. Nor breath was drawn, amid the observant crew. So sore intent was every one to spell. Which should be conqueror of the warlike two. Marfisa the black champion from his cell. So to Oerthro he shall not rise anew. Levels her lance, and the black champion, bent. To slay Marfisa, spurs with like intent. Both lances, made of willow thin and dry. Rather than stout and stubborn oak, appeared. So splintered even to the rest, they fly. While with such force the encountering steeds careered. It seemed. As with a scythe blade equally. The hams of either courser had been sheared. Alike both fall, but voiding quick the seat. The nimble riders start upon their feet. Marfisa in her life, with certain wound. A thousand cavaliers on earth had laid. And never had herself been borne to ground. Yet quitted now the saddle, as was said. Not only at the accident astound. But nigh beside herself, remained the maid. Strange to the sable cavalier withal. Unwont to be unhorsed, appeared his fall. They scarcely touch the ground before they gain. Their feet, and now the fierce assault renew. With cut and thrust. Which now with shield the twain. Or blade ward off, and now by leaps a shoe. Whether the foes strike home, or smite in vain. Blows ring, and echo parted ether through. More force those shields, those helms, those breastplates show. Then anvils underneath the sounding blow. If heavy falls the savage damsel's blade. That falls not lightly of her warlike foe. Equal the measure one the other paid. And both receive as much as they bestow. He who would see two daring spirits weighed. To seek two fiercer need no further go. Nor to seek more dexterity or might. For greater could not be in mortal wight. The women who have sate long time, to view. The champions with such horrid strokes offend. Nor sign of trouble in the warriors true. Behold, nor yet of weariness. Commend. 
them with just praises, as the worthiest too. That are, where'er the sea's wide arms extend. They deem these of mere toil and labor long. Must die, save they be strongest of the strong. Communing with herself, Marfisa said. That he moved not before was well for me. Who risked to have been numbered with the dead? If he at first had joined his company. Since, as it is, I hardly can make head. Against his deadly blows. This colloquy. She with herself maintained, and while she spoke. Ceased not to ply her sword with circling stroke. Twas well for me, the other cried again. That to repose I did not leave the night. I now from him defend myself with pain. Who is o'erwearied with the former fight? What had he been, renewed in might and main? If he had rested till tomorrow's light? Right fortunate was I, as man could be. That he refused my proffered courtesy. Till eve they strove, nor did it yet appear. Which had the vantage of the doubtful fray. Nor, without light, could either foe see clear. How to avoid the furious blows. When day. Was done, again the courteous cavalier. To his illustrious opposite, gone say. What shall we do? since ill-timed shades descend. While we with equal fortune thus contend? Me seems, at least, that till tomorrow's morn. Twere better thou prolong thy life, no right. Have I thy doom, sir warrior, to adjourn. Beyond the limits of one little night. Nor will I that by me the blame be borne. That thou no longer shalt enjoy the light. With reason to the sex's charge, by whom. This place is governed, lay thy cruel doom. If I lament thee and thy company. He knows, by whom all hidden things are spied. Thou and thy comrades may repose with me. For whom there is no safe abode beside. Since leagued against you in conspiracy. Are all those husbands by thy hand have died. For every valiant warrior of the men. Slain in the tourney, consort was of ten. The scathe they have today received from thee. Would ninety women reek with vengeful spite. And, save thou take my hospitality. Except by them to be assailed this night. I take thy proffer in security. Replied Marfisa, that the faith so plight. And goodness of thy heart, will prove no less. Then are thy corporal strength and hardiness. But if, as having to kill me, thou grieve. Thou well mayst grieve, for reasons opposite. Nor hast thou cause to laugh, as I conceive. Nor hitherto has found me worst in fight. Whether thou wouldst defer the fray, or leave. Or prosecute by this or other light. Behold me prompt thy wishes to fulfill. Where and whenever it shall be thy will. So by consent the combatants divided. Till the dawn broke from Ganges' stream anew. And so remained the question undecided. Which was the better champion of the two? To both the brothers 255 and the rest who sided. Upon that part. The liberal lord did sue. With courteous prayer, that till the coming day. They would be pleased beneath his roof to stay. They unsuspecting with the prayer complied. And by the cheerful blaze of torches white. A royal dome ascended, with their guide. Divided into many bowers and bright. The combatants remain as stupefied. On lifting up their visors, at the sight. One of the other, for, by what appears. The warrior hardly numbers eighteen years. Much marvels with herself the gentle dame. That one so young so well should do and dare. Much marvels he, his wonderment the same when he her sex aneizes by her hair, questioning one another of their name. As speedily reply the youthful pair. But how was height the youthful cavalier? Await till the ensuing strain to hear. Canto. Chapter 20. Guido and his from that foul haunt retire. While all Astolfo chases with his horn. Who to all quarters of the town sets fire. Then roving singly round the world is born. 
Marfisa, for Gabrina's cause, in ire. Puts upon young Zerbino scathe and scorn. And makes him guardian of Gabrina fell. From whom he first learns news of Isabel. Great fears the women of antiquity. In arms and hallowed arts as well have done. And of their worthy works the memory. And luster through this ample world has shown. Praised is Camilla, with Harpalus, 256. For the fair course which they in battle run. Carina and Sappho, famous for their lore. Shine too illustrious light, to set no more. Women have reached the pinnacle of glory. In every art by them professed, well seen. And whosoever turns the leaf of story. Finds record of them, neither dim nor mean. The evil influence will be transitory. If long deprived of such the world had been. And envious men, and those that never knew. Their worth, have haply hid their honors due. To me it plainly seems, in this our age. Of women such is the celebrity. That it may furnish matter to the page. Whence this dispersed to future years shall be. And you, ye evil tongues which foully rage. Be tied to your eternal infamy. And women's praises so resplendent show. They shall, by much, Marfisa's worth outgo. To her returning yet again, the dame. To him who shewed to her such courteous lore. Refused not to disclose her martial name. Since he agreed to tell the style be bore. She quickly satisfied the warrior's claim. To learn his title she desired so sore. I am Marfisa, the virago cried. All else was known, as brooded far and wide. The other, since, twas his to speak, begun. With longer preamble, amid your train. Sirs, it is my belief that there is none. But has heard mention of my race and strain. Not Pontus, Ethiopia, Ind alone. With all their neighboring realms, but France and Spain. What well of Clermont, from whose loins the knight. Issued who killed Almonte's bold in fight. And Cairillo and Mambrino slew. And sacked the realm whose royal crown they wore. Come of this blood, where Danube's waters, through. Eight horns or ten to meet the Euxine poor. Me to the far renowned Duke Amon, who. Thither a stranger roved, my mother bore. And tis a twelvemonth now since her, in quest. Of my French kin, I left with grief oppressed. But reached not France, for southern tempest's spite. Impelled me hither. Lodged in royal bower. Ten months or more, for, miserable white. I reckon every day and every hour. Guido the savage I by name am height. Ill known and scarcely proved in warlike store. Here Argelin of Melabia I. Slew with ten warriors in his company. Conqueror as well in other field confessed. Ten ladies are the partners of my bed. Selected at my choice. Who are the best. And fairest damsels in this kingdom bred. These I command, as well as all the rest. Who of their female band have made me head. And so would make another who in fight. Like me, ten opposites to death would smite. Sir Guido is besought of them to say. Why there appear so few of the male race. And to declare if women there bear sway. O'er men, as men o'er them in other place. He. Since my fortune has been here to stay. I oftentimes have heard relate the case. And now, according to the story told. Will, since it pleases you, the cause unfold. When, after twenty years, the Grecian host. Returned from Troy 257, ten years hostility. The town endured, ten weary years were tossed. The Greeks, detained by adverse winds at sea. They found their women had, for comforts lost. And pangs of absence, learned a remedy. And, that they might not freeze alone in bed. Chosen young lovers in their husband's stead. With others children filled the Grecian crew. Their houses found, and by consent was passed. 
a pardon to their women, for they knew how ill they could endure so long a fast. But the adulterous issue, as their due, to seek their fortunes on the world were cast. Because the husbands would not suffer more. The striplings should be nourished from their store. Some are exposed, and others underhand. Their kindly mothers shelter and maintain. While the adults, in many a various band. Some here, some there dispersed, their living gain. Arms are the trade of some, by some are scanned. Letters and arts, another tills the plain. One serves in court, by other guided go. The herd as pleases her who rules below. A boy departed with the youthful peers. Who was of cruel Clytemnestra born. Like lily fresh, he numbered eighteen years. Or blooming rose, new gathered from the thorn. He having armed a bark, his pinnace steers. In search of plunder, o'er the billows born. With him a hundred other youths engage. Picked from all Greece, and of their leader's age. The Cretans, who had banished in that day. Idomeneus, the tyrant of their land. And their new state to strengthen and upstay. Were gathering arms and levying martial band. Philanta service by their goodly pay. Purchased, so height the youth who sought that strand. And all those others that his fortune run. Who the Dictian city garrison. Amid the hundred cities of old Crete. Was the Dictian the most rich and bright. Of fair and amorous dames the joyous seat. Joyous with festive sports from morn to night. And, as her townsmen I were wont to greet. The stranger, with such hospitable right. They welcomed these. It little lacked but they. Granted them o'er their household's sovereign sway. Youthful and passing fair were all the crew. The flower of Greece, who bold Philantus led. So that with those fair ladies at first view. Stealing their hearts, full well the stripling sped. Since, fair indeed as show, they good and true. Lovers evinced themselves and bold in bed. And in few days to them so grateful proved. Above all dearest things they were beloved. After the war was ended on accord. For which were hired Philantus and his train. And pay withdrawn, nor longer by the sword. Was aught which the adventurous youth can gain. And they, for this, a new would go aboard. The unhappy Cretan women more complain. And fuller tears on this occasion shed. That if their fathers lay before them dead. Long time and sorely all the striplings bold. Were, each apart, by them implored to stay. Who since the fleeting youths they cannot hold. Leave brother, sire, and son. With these to stray. Of jewels and of weighty sums of gold. Spoiling their households ere they wend their way. For so well was the plot concealed. No white. Throughout all Crete was privy to their flight. So happy was the hour, so fair the wind. When young Philantus chose his time to flee. They many miles had left the isle behind. Ere Crete lamented her calamity. Next, uninhabited by humankind. This shore received them wandering o'er the sea. Twas here they settled, with the plunder reft. And better weighed the issue of their theft. With amorous pleasures teemed this place of rest. For ten days, to that roving company. But, as oft happens that in youthful breast. Abundance brings with it satiety. To quit their women with one wish posseist. The band resolved to win their liberty. For never burden does so sore oppress. As woman, when her love breeds weariness. They, who are covetous of spoil and gain. And ill bested with all in stipend, no. That better means are wanted to maintain. So many paramours, than shaft and bow. And leaving thus alone the wretched train. Thence, with their riches charged the adventurers go. For Puglia's pleasant land, they're founded near. The sea, Tarentum city, as I hear. The women when they find themselves betrayed. 
of lovers by whose faith they set most store. For many days remain so sore dismayed, that they seem lifeless statues on the shore. But seeing lamentations nothing aid, and fruitless are the many tears they pour, begin to meditate, amid their pains. What remedy for such an ill remains? Some laying their opinions now before. The others, deem, that to return to Crete, is in their sad estate the wiser lore, throwing themselves at sire and husband's feet, then in those wilds, and on that desert shore, to pine of want. Another troop repeat. They should esteem it were a worthier notion, to cast themselves into the neighboring ocean, and lighter ill, if they as harlots went, about the world, beggars or slaves to be, then offer up themselves for punishment, well merited by their iniquity. Such and like schemes the unhappy dames present, each harder than the other. Finally, one Orontia amid these upstood, who drew her origin from Minas blood, youngest and fairest of the crew betrayed. She was, and wariest, and who least had erred, who to Philantus' arms had come a maid, and left for him her father, she in word, as well as in a kindling face, displayed. How much with generous wrath her heart was stirred. Then, reprobating all advised before, spake, and adopted, saw her better lore. She would not leave the land they were upon, whose soil was fruitful, and whose air was sane, throughout which many limpid rivers ran, shaded with woods, and for the most part plain, with creek and port, where stranger bark could shun, foul wind or storm which vexed the neighboring main, that might from Africa or from Egypt bring, vittel or other necessary thing. For vengeance, she opined, they there should stay. Upon man's sex, which had so sore offended, she willed each bark and crew which to that bay, for shelter from the angry tempest wended. They should, without remorse, burn, sack, and slay. Nor mercy be to any one extended. Such was the lady's motion, such the course. Adopted, and the statute put in force. The women, when they see the changing heaven, turbid with tempest, hurry to the strand. With savage Orontia, by whom given, was the fell law, the ruler of the land, and of all barks into their haven driven, make havoc dread with fire and murderous brand, leaving no man alive, who may diffuse, upon this side or that the dismal news. Twas thus with the male sex at enmity. Some years the lonely women lived forlorn. Then found that hurtful to themselves would be. The scheme, save changed. For if from them were born. None to perpetuate their empery. The idle law would soon be held in scorn. And fail together with the fruitful reign. Which they had hoped eternal should remain. So that some deal its rigor they allay. And in four years, of all who made repair. Thither, by chance conducted to this bay, chose out ten vigorous cavaliers and fair, that for endurance in the amorous play, against those hundred dames good champions were, a hundred they, and, of the chosen men, a husband was assigned to every ten, ere this, too feeble to abide the test, many a one on scaffold lost his head, now these ten warriors so approved the best were made partakers of their rule and bed, first swearing at the sovereign lady's hest, that they, if others to that port are led, no mercy shall to any one afford, but one and all will put them to the sword, to swell, and next a child, and thence to fear. The women turned to teeming wives, began, lest they in time so many males should bear, as might invade the sovereignty they plan and that the government they hold so dear, might finally from them revert to man. And so, while these are children yet, take measure. They never shall rebel against their pleasure. 
that the male sex may not usurp the sway. It is enacted by the statute fell. Each mother should one boy preserve, and slay. The others, or a broad exchange or sell. For this, they these to various parts convey. And to the bearers of the children tell. To truck the girls for boys in foreign lands. Or not, at least, return with empty hands. Nor by the women one preserved would be. If they without them could the race maintain. Such all their mercy, all the clemency. The law accords for theirs, not others gain. The dames all others sentence equally. And temper but in this their statutes pain. That, not as was their former practice, they. All in their rage promiscuously slay. Did ten or twenty persons, or yet more. Arrive, they were imprisoned and put by. And every day one only from the store. Of victims was brought out by lot to die. In fame by Orontia built, before. An altar raised to vengeance. And to ply. As headsman, and dispatched the unhappy men. One was by lot selected from the ten. To that foul murderous shore by chance did fare. After long years elapsed, a youthful wight. Whose father sprung from good Isle Cetus were. And he, of proof in arms, Albanio height. There was he seized, of peril scarce aware. As unsuspecting such a foul despite. And, closely guarded, into prison flung. Kept for like cruel use the rest among. Adorned with every fair accomplishment. Of pleasing face and manners was the peer. And of a speech so sweet and eloquent. Him the deaf adder might have stopped to hear. So that of him to Alexandria went. Tidings as of a precious thing and rare. She was the daughter of that matron bold. Queen Arantia, that yet lived, though old. Yet Arantia lived, while of that shore. The other settlers all were dead and gone. And now ten times as many such or more. Had into strength and greater credit grown. Nor for ten forges, often closed, in store. Have the ill-furnished band more files than one. And the ten champions have as well the care. To welcome shrewdly all who thither fare. Young Alexandria, who the blooming peer. Burned to behold so praised on every part. The special pleasure him to see and hear. One from her mother. And, about to part. From him, discovers that the cavalier. Remains the master of her tortured heart. Finds herself bound, and that, tis vain to stir. A captive made by her own prisoner. I pity, said Albanio, Lady Fair. Was in this cruel region known, as through. All other countries, near or distant, where. The wandering sun sheds light and coloring hue. I by your beauty's kindly charms should dare. Which make each gentle spirit bound to you. To beg my life. Which always, at your will. Should I be ready for your love to spill. But since deprived of all humanity. Are human bosoms in this cruel land. I shall not now request my life of thee. For fruitless would, I know, be the demand. But. Whether a good knight or bad I be. Ask but like such to die with arms in hand. And not as one condemned to penal pain. Or like brute beast in sacrifice be slain. The gentle maid, her eye bedimmed with tear. In pity for the hapless youth, replied. Though this land be more cruel and severe. Than any other country, far and wide. Each woman is not a medaea here. As thou wouldst make her. And, if all beside. Were of such evil kind, in me alone. Should an exception to the rest be known. And though I, like so many here, of your. Was full of evil deeds and cruelty. I can well say, I never had before. A fitting subject for my clemency. But fiercer were I than a tiger, more. Hard were my heart than diamonds, if in me. All hardness did not vanish and give place. 
before your courage, gentleness, and grace. Ah! Were the cruel statute less severe. Against the stranger to these shores conveyed. So should I not esteem my death too dear. A ransom for thy worthier life were paid. But none is here so great, Sir Cavalier. Nor of such puissance as to lend thee aid. And what thou askest, though a scanty grace, were difficult to compass in this place. And yet will I endeavor to obtain for thee, before thou perish, this content. Though much, I fear, twill but augment thy pain, and thee protracted death but more torment. So I the ten encounter, said again. Albanio, I at heart, am confident. Myself to save, and enemies to slay. Though made of iron were the whole array. To this the youthful Alexandria not. Made answer, saving with a piteous sigh. And from the conference a bosom brought. Gored with deep wounds, beyond all remedy. To Arantia she repaired, and wrought. On her to will the stripling should not die. Should he display such courage and such skill. As with his single hand the ten to kill. Queen Orontia straightway bade unite her counsel, and bespoke the assembled band. It still behoves us place the prowest white, whom we can find, to guard our ports and strand, and, to discover whom to take or slight. Tis fitting that we prove the warrior's hand, lest, to our loss, the election may be wrong, and we enthrone the weak and slay the strong. I deem it fit, if you the counsel shown. Deem fit as well, in future to ordain. That each upon our coast by fortune thrown. Before he in the temple shall be slain. Shall have the choice, instead of this, alone. Battle against ten others to maintain. And if he conquer, shall the port defend. With other comrades, pardon to that end. I say this, since to strive against our ten. It seems, that one imprisoned here will dare. Who, if he stands against so many men? By heaven! Deserves that we should hear his prayer. But if he rashly boasts himself, again. As worthily do the punishment should bear. Here Orontia ceased, on the other side. To her the oldest of the dames replied. The leading cause, for which to entertain. This intercourse with men we first agreed was not because we, to defend this reign, of their assistance stood in any need. For we have skill and courage to maintain this of ourselves, and force, withal, to speed. Would that we could in all as well avail, without their succor, nor succession fail. But since this may not be, we some have made these few, partakers of our company, that, Ten to one, we be not overlaid. Nor they possess them of the sovereignty. Not that we for protection need their aid. But simply to increase and multiply. Then be their powers to this sole fear addressed. And be they sluggards, idle for the rest. To keep among us such a puissant wight. Our first design would render wholly vain. If one can singly slay ten men in fight. How many women can he not restrain? If our ten champions had possessed such might, they the first day would have usurped the reign. To arm a hand more powerful than your own is an ill method to maintain the throne. Reflect withal, that if your prisoner speed, so that he kill ten champions in the fray, a hundred women's cry, whose lords will bleed, beneath his falchion, shall your ears dismay. Let him not, scape by such a murderous deed. But, if he would, propound some other way. Yet if he of those ten supply the place. And please a hundred women, grant him grace. This was severe Artemia's sentiment. So was she named, and had her counsel weighed. Albanio to the temple had been sent. To perish by the sacrificial blade. But Arantia, willing to content. Her daughter, to the matron answer made. And urged so many reasons, and so wrought. The yielding senate granted what she ought. 
Albanio's beauty, for so fair to view. Never was any cavalier beside. So strongly works upon the youthful crew. Which in that council sit the state to guide. That the opinion of the older few. That like Artemia think, is set aside. And little lacks but that the assembled race. Absolve Albanio by a special grace. To pardon him in fine the dames agreed. But, after slaying his half-score, and when. He in the next assault as well should speech. Not with a hundred women, but with ten. And, furnished to his wish with arms and steed. Next day he was released from dungeon den. And singly with ten warriors matched in plain. Who by his arms successively were slain. He to new proof was put the following night. Against ten damsels naked and alone. When so successful was the stripling's might. He took the say of all the troop, and won. Such grace with Arantia, that the knight. Was by the dame adopted for her son. And from her Alexandria had to wife. With those whom he had proved in amorous strife. And him she left with Alexandria, heir. To this famed city, which from her was height. So he and all who his successors were. Should guard the law which willed, whatever white. Conducted hither by his cruel star. Upon this miserable land did light. Should have his choice to perish by the knife. Or singly with ten foes contend to strife. And if he should dispatch the men by day. At night should prove him with the female crew. And if so fortunate that in this play. He proved again the conqueror, he, as do. The female band, as prince and guide, should sway. And his ten consorts at his choice renew. And reign with them, till other should arrive. Of stouter hand, and him of life deprive. They for two thousand years nigh passed away. This usage have maintained, and yet maintain. The impious right, and rarely passes day. But stranger white is slaughtered in the fane. If he, Albanio like, ten foes assay. And such sometimes is found, he oft is slain. In the first charge, nor, in a thousand, one. The other feat, of which I spake, has done. Yet some there are have done it, though so few. They may be numbered on the fingers. 1. Of the victorious cavaliers, but who? Reigned with his ten short time, was Argelin. For, smote by me, who mill wind hither blew. The night to his eternal rest is gone. Would I with him that day had filled a grave. Rather than in such scorn survive a slave. For amorous pleasures, laughter, game, and play. Which evermore delight the youthful breast. The gem, the purple garment, rich array. And in his city place before the rest. Little, by heaven, the wretched man Ape. Who of his liberty is dispossessed. And not to have the power to leave this shore. To me seems shameful servitude and sore. To know I wear away life's glorious spring. In such effeminate and slothful leisure. Is to my troubled heart a constant sting. And takes away the taste of every pleasure. Fame bears my kindred's praise on outstretched wing. Even to the skies, and haply equal measure. I of the glories of my blood might share. If I united with my brethren were. Methinks my fate does such injurious deed. By me, condemned to servitude so base. As he who turns to grasp the generous steed. To run amid the herd of meaner race. Because unfit for war or worthier mead. Through blemish, or disease of sight or pace. Nor hoping but by death, alas. To fly. So vile a service, I desire to die. Here Guido ceased to address the martial peers. And cursed with all the day, in high disdain. That he achieved o'er dames and cavaliers. The double victory which bestowed that reign. Astolfo hides his name, and silent hears. Until to him by many a sign is plain. That this Sir Guido is, as he had said. 
the issue of his kinsman Eamon's bed. Then cried. The English duke, Astolfo, I. Thy cousin am, and clipped him round the waist. And in a kindly act of courtesy. Not without weeping, kissed him and embraced. Then, kinsman dear, thy birth to certify. No better sign thy mother could have placed. About thy neck. Enough. That sword of thine. And courage, vouch thee of our valiant line. Guido, who gladly would in other place. So near a kin have welcomed, in dismay. Beholds him here and with a mournful face. Knowing, if he himself survives the fray. Astolfo will be doomed to slavery base. His fate deferred but till the following day. And he shall perish, if the duke is free. So that one's good the other's ill shall be. He grieves, as well, the other cavaliers. Should through his means for ever captive be. Nor, that he should, if slain, those martial peers. Deliver by his death from slavery. Since if Marfisa from one quicksand clears. The troop, yet these from other fails to free. She will have won the victory in vain. For they will be enslaved, and she be slain. On the other hand, the striplings age, in May. Of youth, with courtesy and valor fraught. Upon the maid and comrades with such sway. Touching their breasts with love and pity. Wrought. That they of freedom, for which he must pay. The forfeit of his life, nigh loathed the thought. And if Marfisa him perforce must kill. She is resolved as well herself to spill. Join thou with us, she to Sir Guido cried. And we from hence will sally. From within. These walls to sally, Guido on his side. Answered, ne'er hope, with me you lose or win. I fear not, I, the martial maid replied. To execute whatever I begin. Nor know what can secure a path afford. Than that which I shall open with my sword. Such proof of thy fair prowess have I made. With thee I every enterprise would dare. Tomorrow when about the palisade. The crowds assembled in the circus are. Let us on every side the mob invade. Whether they fly or for defense prepare. Then give the town to fire, and on their bed. Of earth to wolf and vulture leave the dead. He. Ready shalt thou find me in the strife. To follow thee, or perish at thy side. But let us hope not to escape with life. Enough, is vengeance some deal satisfied. Ere death. For oft ten thousand, maid and wife. I in the place have witnessed, and, outside. As many castle, wall and port, defend. Nor know I certain way from hence to wend. And were there more, Marfisa made reply. Then Xerxes led, our squadrons to oppose. More than those rebel spirits from the sky. Cast out to dwell amid perpetual woes. All in one day should by this weapon die. Wert thou with me, at least, not with my foes. To her again, no project but must fail. Sir Guido said, I know, save this avail. This only us can save, should it succeed. This, which but now remembered I shall teach. To dames alone our laws the right concede. To sally, or set foot upon the beach. And hence to one of mine in this our need. Must I commit myself, and aid beseech? Whose love for me, by perfect friendship tied? Has oft by better proof than this been tried? No less than me would she desire that I should escape from slavery, so she went with me. And that, without her rival's company, she of my lot should sole partaker be. She bark or pinnace, in the harbor nigh. Shall bid, while yet, tis dark, prepare for sea. Which shall await your sailors, rigged and yar. For sailing, when they thither shall repair. Behind me, in a solid band comparest. Ye merchants, mariners, and warriors, who. Driven to this city, have set up your rest. Beneath this roof. 
for which my thanks are due. You have to force your way with steadfast breast. If adversaries interrupt our crew. Tis thus I hope, by succor of the sword. To clear a passage through the cruel horde. Do as thou wilt, Marfisa made reply. I of escape am confident withal. And likelier, twere that by my hand should die. The martial race, encompassed by this wall. Than any one should ever see me fly. Or guess by other sign that fears appall. I would my passage force in open day. And shameful in my sight were other way. I what if I were for a woman known. Honor and place from women I might claim. Here gladly entertained. And classed as one. Haply among their chiefs of highest fame. But privilege or favor will I none. Unshared by those with whom I hither came. Too base it were, did I depart or free. Remain, to leave the rest in slavery. These speeches by Marfisa made, and more. Showed that what only had restrained her arm. Was the respect she to the safety bore. Of the companions whom her wrath might harm. By this alone withheld form taking sore. And signal vengeance on the female swarm. And hence she left in Guido's care to shape. What seemed the fittest means for their escape? Sir Guido speaks that night with Allery. So the most faithful of his wives was height. Nor needs long prayer to make the dame agree. Disposed already to obey the knight. She takes a ship and arms the bark for sea. Stowed with her richest chattels for their flight. Feigning design, as soon as dawn ensues. To sail with her companions on a cruise. She into Guido's palace had before. Bid sword and spear and shield and cuirass bear. With the intent to furnish from this store. Merchants and sailors that half naked were. Some watch, and some repose upon the floor. And rest and guard among each other share. Oft marking, still with harness on their backs. If ruddy yet with light the orient wax. Not yet from earth's hard visage has the sun. Lifted her veil of dim and dingy dye. Scarcely Lycaon's child, her furrow done. Has turned about her plowshare in the sky. 258. When to the theatre the women run. Who would the fearful battles end espy? As swarming bees upon their threshold cluster. Who bent on change of realm in springtide muster. With warlike trumpet, drum, and sound of horn. The people make the land and welkin roar. Summoning thus their chieftain to return. And end of unfinished warfare. Covered o'er. With arms stand aquilant and griffin stern. And the redoubt duke from England's shore. Marfisa, Dudo, Sansonet, and all. The knights or footmen harbored in that hall. Hence to descend towards the sea or port. The way across the place of combat lies. Nor was there other passage, long or short. Sir Guido so to his companions cries. And having ceased his comrades to exhort. To do their best set forth in silent wise. And in the place appeared, amid the throng. Head of a squad above a hundred strong. Toward the other gate Sir Guido went. Hurrying his band, but, gathered far and nigh. The mighty multitude, for I intent. To smite, and clad in arms. When they descry. The comrades whom he leads, perceive his bent. And truly deem he is about to fly. All in a thought betake them to their bows. And at the portal part the knight oppose. Sir Guido and the cavaliers who go. Beneath that champion's guidance, and before. The others bold Marfisa, were not slow. To strike, and labored hard to force the door. But such a storm of darts from ready bow. Dealing on all sides death, or wounding sore. Was reigned in fury on the troop forlorn. They feared at last to encounter scathe and scorn. Of proof the corslet was each warrior war. Who without this would have had worse to fear. Sansonet's horse was slain. And that which bore. 
Marfisa, to himself the English peer, exclaimed, Why wait I longer? As if more. My horn could ever succor me than here. Since the sword steads not, I will make a say. If with my bugle I can clear the way. As he was customed in extremity, he to his mouth applied the bugles round. The wide world seemed to tremble, earth and sky. As he in air discharged the horrid sound. Such terror smote the dames, that bent to fly. When in their ears the deafening horn was wound. Not only they the gate unguarded left. But from the circus reeled, of wit bereft. As family, awaked in sudden wise. Leaps from the windows and from lofty height. Periling life and limb, when in surprise. They see, now near, the fire's encircling light. Which had, while slumber sealed their heavy eyes. By little and by little waxed at night. Reckless of life, thus each, impelled by dread. At sound of that appalling bugle fled. Above, below, and here and there, the rout. Rise in confusion and attempt to fly. At once, above a thousand swarm about. Each entrance, to each other's let, and lie. In heaps, from window these, or stage without. Leap headlong, in the press these smothered die. Broken is many an arm, and many a head. And one lies crippled, and another dead. Amid the mighty ruin which ensued. Cries pierce the very heavens on every part. Where'er the sound is heard, the multitude. In panic at the deafening echo, start. When you are told that without hardihood. Appear the rabble, and of feeble heart. This need not more your marvel, for by nature. The hare is evermore a timid creature. But of Marfisa what will be your thought? And Guido late so furious, of the two. Young sons of Olivier, that lately wrought. Such deeds in honor of their lineage? Who? Lately a hundred thousand held as not. And now, deprived of courage, basely flew. As ring doves flutter and as connies fly. Who hear some mighty noise resounding nigh. For so to friend as stranger, noxious are. The powers that in the enchanted horn reside. Sansonet, Guido, follow, with the pair 259. Or brethren bold, Marfisa terrified. Nor flying, can they to such distance fare. But that their ears are dinned. On every side. Astolfo, on his foaming courser borne. Lends louder breath to his enchanted horn. One sought the sea, and won the mountain top. One fled the hide herself in forest hoar. And this, who turned not once nor made a stop. Not for ten days her headlong flight forbore. These from the bridge in that dread moment drop. Never to climb the river's margin more. So temple, house, and square and street were drained. That nigh unpeopled the wide town remained. Marfisa, Guido, and the brethren too. With Sansonetto, pale and trembling, high. Towards the sea, and behind these the crew. Of fright mariners and merchants fly. And, twixt the forts, in bark, prepared with view. To their escape, discover Allery. Who in sore haste receives the warriors pale. And bids them ply their oars and make all sail. The duke within and out the town had beat. From the surrounding hills to the seaside. And of its people emptied every street. All fly before the deafening sound, and hide. Many in panic, seeking a retreat. Lurk, in some place obscure and filthy steed. Many, not knowing whither to repair. Plunge in the neighboring sea, and perish there. The duke arrives, seeking the friendly band. Whom he had hoped to find upon the quay. He turns and gazes round the desert strand. And none is there, directs along the bay. His eyes, and now, far distant from the land. Beholds the parting frigate under way. So that the paladin, for his escape. The vessel gone, must other projects shape. Let him depart. 
nor let it trouble you. That he so long a road must beat alone. Where, never without fear, man journeys through. Wild Paynim countries, danger is there none. But what he with his bugle may eschew. Whose dread effect the English duke has shown. And let his late companions be our care. Who trembling to the beach had made repair. They from that cruel and ensanguined ground. To seaward, under all their canvas, bore. And having gained such offing, that the sound. Of that alarming horn was heard no more. Unwanted shame inflicted such a wound. That all a face of burning crimson wore. One dares not eye the other, and they stand. With downcast looks, a mute and mournful band. Fixed on his course, the pilot passes by. Cyprus and Rhodes, and ploughs the Aegean Sea. Beholds a hundred islands from him fly. And Malia's fearful headland. Fanned by free. And constant wind, seas vanish from the eye. The Greek Moria. Rounding Sicily. Into the Tuscan sea his frigate veers. And, coasting Italy's fair region, steers. Last rises Luna, where his family. Is waiting his return. The patron whore. Gives thanks to God at having passed the sea. Without more harm, and makes the well-known shore. Here, offering passage to their company. They find a master, ready to unmoor. For France, and that same day his pinnace climb. Thence wafted to Marseilles in little time. There was not Bradamant, who used to sway. The land, and had that city in her care. And who, if present there, to make some stay. Would have compelled them by her courteous prayer. They disembarked, and that same hour away. Did bold Marfisa at a venture fare. Bidding adieu to salvage Guido's wife. And to the four, her comrades in the strife. Saying, she deems unfitting for a knight. To fare in like great fellowship. That so. The starlings and the doves in flock unite. And every beast who fears, the stag and doe. But hawk and eagle, that in others might. Put not their trust, for ever singly go. And lion, bear, and tiger, roam alone. Who fear no prowess greater than their own. But none with her opine, and, in the lack. Of a companion, singly must she fare. So then, alone and friendless, she attract. Uncouth pursues, and through a wooded lair. Griffin the white and aquilent the black. Take road more beaten with the other pair. And on the following day a castle see. Within which they are harbored courteously. Courteously I, in outward show, would say. For soon the contrary was made appear. Since he, the castellane, who with display. Of kindness sheltered them and courteous cheer. The night ensuing took them as they lay. Couched in their beds, secure and void of fear. Nor from the snare would he his prisoners loose. Till they had sworn to observe an evil use. But I will first pursue the martial maid. Ere more of these, fair sir, I shall proclaim. Beyond the durance, roan, and sown she strayed. And to the foot of sunny mountain came. And there approaching in black gown arrayed. Beside a torrent, saw an ancient dame. Who with long journey weak, and wearied sore. Appeared, but pined by melancholy more. This was the beldam who had wont to ply. Serving the robbers in the caverned mount. Whither stern justice sent, that they might die. By that good paladin, Anglantes count. The aged Herodon, for cause which I. To you shall in another place recount. Now many days by path obscure had flown. Still fearing lest her visage should be known. The semblance now of foreign cavalier. She in Marfisa saw, in arms and vest. And hence she flies not her, though wont to fear. As being natives of that land, the rest. Nay, with security and open cheer. Stops at the ford the damsel to arrest. Stops at the ford, 
where that old beldam meets. Marfisa, and with fair encounter greets. And next implored the maid, she of her grace. Would bear her on the croup to the other shore. Marfisa, who was come of gentle race. The hag with her across the torrent bore. And is content to bear, till she can place. In a secure road the beldam whore. Clear of a spacious marish, as its end. They see a cavalier towards them wend. In shining armor and in fair array. The warrior rode on saddle richly wrought. Towards the river, and upon his way. With him a single squire and damsel brought. Of passing beauty was the lady gay. But little pleasing was her semblance hot. All overblown with insolence and pride. Worthy the cavalier who was her guide. He of Maganza was a count, who bore. The lady with him, Pinabello height. The same who Bradamant, some months before. Had plunged into a hollow cave in spite. Those many sobs, those burning sighs and sore. Those tears which had nigh quenched the warrior's sight. All for the damsel were, now at his side. And then by that false necromancer steed. But when the magic tower upon the hill. Was raised, the dwelling of Atlantis whore. And every one was free to rove at will. Through Bradamant's good deed and virtuous lore. The damsel, who had been compliant still. With the desires of Pinable before. Rejoined him, and now journeying in a round. With him, from castle was to castle bound. As wanton and Ilka stoned, when she spies. Marfisa's aged charge approaching near. She cannot rein her saucy tongue, but plies. Her, in her petulance, with laugh and jeer. Marfisa hot, unwont in any wise. Outrage from whatsoever part to hear. Makes answer to the dame, in angry tone. That, handsomer than her she deems the crone. And that she this would prove upon her knight. With pact that she might strip the bonnebel. Of gown and palfrey, if, o'erthrown in fight. Her champion from his goodly courser fell. In silence to have overpassed the slight. Would have been sin and shame in Pinable. Who for short answer seized his shield and spear. And wheeled, and drove at her in fierce career. Marfisa grasped a mighty lance, and thrust. Encountering him, at Pinabello's eyes. And stretched him so astounded in the dust. That motionless an hour the warrior lies. Marfisa, now victorious in the just. Gave orders to strip off the glorious guise. And ornaments wherewith the maid was drayest. And with the spoils her ancient crone invest. And willed that she should don the youthful weed. Bedizened at the haughty damsel's cost. And took away as well the goodly steed. Which her had thither borne, and, bent to post. On her old track, with her the hag will speed. Who seems most hideous when adorned the most. Three days the tedious road the couple beat. Without adventure needful to repeat. On the fourth day they met a cavalier. Who came in fury galloping alone. If you the stranger's name desire to hear. I tell you, t'was Zerbino, a king's son. Of beauty and of worth example rare. Now grieved and angered, as unvenged of one. Who a great act of courtesy, which fain. The warrior would have done, had rendered vain. Vainly the young Zerbino, through the glade. Had chased that man of his, who this despite. Had done him, who himself so well conveyed. Away and took such vantage in his flight. So hid by wood and mist, which overlaid. The horizon and bedimmed the morning light. That he escaped Zerbino's grasp, and lay. Concealed until his wrath was passed away. Zerbino laughed par force, when he descried. That Beldam's face, though he was full of rage. For too ill-sorted seemed her vest of pride. With her foul visage, more deformed by age. And to the proud Marfisa, at her side. The prince, exclaimed, Sir warrior, you are sage. In having chosen damsel of a sort. 
whom none, I ween, will grudge you should escort. Older than Sybil seemed the beldam whore. As far as from her wrinkles one might guess. And in the youthful ornaments she wore. Looked like an ape which men in mockery dress. And now appears more foul, as angered sore. While rage and wrath her kindled eyes express. For none can do a woman worse despite. Than to proclaim her old and foul to sight. To have sport of him, as she had, an air. Of wrath the maid assumed upon her part. And to the prince, by heaven, more passing fair. Is this my lady than thou courteous art? Exclaimed in answer. Though I am aware. What thou hast uttered comes not from thy heart. Thou wilt not own her beauty, a device. Put on to mask thy sovereign cowardice. And of what stamp would be that cavalier? Who found such fair and youthful dame alone? Without protection, in the forest drear. Nor sought to make the lovely weft his own. So well she sorts with thee, replied the peer. Twere ill that she were claimed by any one. Nor I of her would thee in any wise. Deprive, God rest thee merry with thy prize. But wouldst thou prove what is my chivalry? On other ground I to thy wish incline. Yet deem me not of such perversity. As to tilt with thee for this prize of thine. Or fair or foul, let her remain thy fee. I would not, I, such amity disjoin. Well are ye paired, and safely would I swear. That thou as valiant art as she is fair. To him Marfisa, thou in thy despite. Shalt try to bear from me the dame away. I will not suffer that so fair a sight. Thou shouldst behold, nor seek to gain the prey. To her the prince, I know not wherefore white. Should suffer pain and peril in a fray. Striving for victory, where, for his pains. The victor losses, and the vanquished gains. If this condition please not, other course. Which ill thou canst refuse, I offer thee. Marfisa cried, If thou shalt me unhorse. In this our tourney. She remains with me. But if I win, I give her the par force. Then prove we now who shall without her be. Premised, if loser, thou shalt be her guide. Wherever it may please the dame to ride. And be it so, Zerbino cried, and wheeled. Swiftly his foaming courser for the shock. And rising in his stirrup scoured the field. Firm in his seat, and smote, with leveled stock. For surer aim, the damsel in mid-shield. But she sate steadfast as a metal rock. And at the warrior's morion thrust so well. She clean outbore him senseless from the cell. Much grieved the prince, to whom in other fray. The like misfortune had not chanced before. Who had unhorsed some thousands in his day. Now shamed, he thought for ever. Troubled sore. And mute long space upon the ground he lay. And, when, twas recollected, grieved the more. That he had promised, and that he was bound. To accompany the hag where'er she wound. Turning about to him the victorious cried. Laughing, this lady I to thee present. And the more beauty is in her descried. The more that she is thine I am content. Now in my place her champion and her guide. But do not thou thy plighted faith repent. So that thou fail, as promised, to attend. The dame, wherever she may please to wend. Without awaiting answer, to career. She spurred her horse, and vanished in the wood. Zerbino, deeming her a cavalier. Cried to the crone, By whom am I subdued? And, knowing t'would be poison to his ear. And that it would inflame his angered blood. She in reply, It was a damsel's blow. Which from thy lofty saddle laid thee low. She, for her matchless force, deservedly. Usurps from cavalier the sword and lance. And even from the east is come to try. Her strength against the paladins of France. Not only was his cheek of crimson dye. Such shame Zerbino felt as his mischance. Little was wanting, 
so his blushes spread. But all the arms he wore had glowed as red. He mounts, and blames himself in angry wise. In that he had no better kept his seat. Within herself the beldam laughs, and tries. The Scottish warrior more to sting and heat. To him for promised convoy she applies. And he, who knows that there is no retreat, stands like tired courser, who in pensive fit, hangs down his ears, controlled by spur and bit, and, sighing deeply, cries, in his despair, Fell fortune, with what change dost thou repay? My loss. She who was fairest of the fair. Who should be mine, by thee is snatched away. And thinkest thou the evil to repair? With her whom thou hast given to me this day? Rather than make like ill exchange, less cross. It were to undergo a total loss. Her, who for virtue and for beauteous form. Was never equalled, nor will ever be. Thou on the rocks hast wrecked, in wintry storm. As food for fowls and fishes of the sea. And her who should have fed the earth bred worm. Thou hast delivered from her destiny. Preserved beyond her date, some ten or score. Of years, to harass and torment me more. So spake Zerbino, and like grief displayed. In his despairing words and waffle mien. For such an odious acquisition made. As he had suffered when he lost his queen. The aged woman now, from what he said. Though she before Zerbino had not seen. Perceived, twas him of whom, in the thieves hold. Isabel of Galicia erst had told. If you remember what was said before. This was the hag who, scaped out of the cave. Where Isabella, who had wounded sore. Zerbino's heart, was long detained a slave. Who oft had told how she her native shore. Had left, and, launching upon ocean's wave. Her frigate, had been wrecked by wind and swell upon the rocky shallows near Rochelle. And she to her Zerbino's goodly cheer. And gentle features had portrayed so well. That the hag hearing him, and now more near. Let her her eyes upon his visage dwell. Discerned it was the youth for whom, Wylera. Had grieved at heart the prisoned Isabel. Whose loss she in the cavern more deplored. Than being captive to the murderous horde. The beldam, hearing what in rage and grief. Zerbino vents, perceives the youth to be. Deceived, and cheated by the false belief. That Isabel had perished in the sea. And though she might have given the prince relief. Knowing the truth, in her perversity. What would have made him joyful she concealed. And only what would cause him grief revealed. Here, you that are so proud, the hag pursues and flout me with such insolence and scorn. You would entreat me fair to have the news. I know of her whose timeless death you mourn. But to be strangled would I rather choose. And be into a thousand pieces torn. Whereas if you had made me kinder cheer. Haply from me the secret might you hear. As the dog's rage is quickly overblown. Who flies the approaching robber to arrest. If the thief proffer piece of bread or bone. Of offer other lure which likes him best. As readily Zerbino to the crone. Humbled himself, and burned to know the rest. Who, in the hints of the old woman, read. That she had news of her he mourned as dead. And with more winning mien to her applied. And her did supplicate, entreat, conjure. By men and gods, the truth no more to hide. Did she benign or evil lot endure? The hard and pugnacious crone replied. Not shalt thou hear, thy comfort to assure. Isabel has not yielded up her breath. But lives a life she would exchange for death. She, since thou heardest of her destiny. Within few days, has fallen into the power. Of more than twenty. If restored to thee. Think now if thou hast hope to crop her flower. Cursed hag, how well thou shapest thy history. Yet knowest it is false. Her virgin dower. Secure from brutal wrong, 
would none invade. Though in the power of twenty were the maid. Questioning of the maid, he when and where. She saw her, vainly asked the beldam whore. Who, ever restive to Zerbino's prayer. To what she had rehearsed would add no more. The prince in the beginning spoke her fair. And next to cut her throat in fury swore. But prayers and menaces alike were weak. Nor could he make the hideous beldam speak. At length Zerbino to his tongue gave rest. Since speaking to the woman booted not. Scarcely his heart found room within his breast. Such dread suspicion had her story wrought. He to find Isabella was so pressed. Her in the midst of fire he would have sought. But could not hurry more than was allowed. By her his convoy, since he so had vowed. They hence, by strange and solitary way. Rove, as the beldam does her will betoken. Nor climbing, nor descending hill, survey. Each other's face, nor any word is spoken. But when the sun upon the middle day. Had turned his back, their silence first was broken. By cavalier encountered in their way. What followed the ensuing strain will say. Canto. Chapter 21. Zerbino for Gabrina, who a heart. Of ASP appears to bear, contends. Earthrone. The Fleming falls upon the other part. Through cause of that despised and odious crone. He wounded sore, and writhing with the smart. The beldam's treason to the prince makes known. Whose scorn and hatred hence derive new force. Towards loud cries Zerbino spurs his horse. No cord I well believe is wound so tight. Round chest, nor nails the plank so fastly hold. As faith enwraps an honorable sprite. In its secure, inextricable, fold. Nor holy faith, it seems, except in white. Was mantled over in the days of old. So by the ancient limner ever painted. As by one speck, one single blemish tainted. Faith should be kept unbroken evermore. With one or with a thousand men united. As well if given in grot or forest whore. Remote from town and hamlet, as if plighted. Amid a crowd of witnesses, before. Tribunal. And in act and deed recited. Nor needs the solemn sanction of an oath. It is sufficient that we pledge our troth. And this maintains as it maintained should be. In each emprise the Scottish cavalier 260. And gives good proof of his fidelity. Quitting his road with that old crone to steer. Although this breeds the youth such misery. As, t'would to have disease itself as near. Or even death, but with him heavier weighed. That his desire the promise he had made. Of him I told who felt at heart such load. Reflecting she beneath his charge must go. He spake no word, and thus in silent mode. Both fared, so sullen was Zerbino's woe. I said how vexed their silence, as they rode. Was broke, when soul his hindmost wheels did show. By an adventurous errant cavalier. Who in mid-pathway met the crone and peer. The hag, who the approaching warrior knew. Hermonides of Holland he was height. That bore upon a field of sable hue. A bar of vermal tint, transversely dight. Did humbly now to good Zerbino sue. Her pride abased, and look of hot despite. And him reminded of the promise made. When her Marfisa to his care conveyed. Because as foe to her and hers she knew. The knight they were encountering, who had slain. Her only brother and her father true. And was advised, the traitor would be fain. By her, the remnant of her race, to do. What he had perpetrated on the twain. Woman, while guarded by my arm, he said. I will not thou shouldst any danger dread. As nearer now, the stranger knight espied. That face, which was so hateful in his sight. With menacing and savage voice he cried. Either with me prepare thyself to fight. Or arm thee not on that old woman's side. Who by my hand shall perish, as is right. 
if thou contendest for her, thou art slain. For such their portion is who wrong maintain. Him young Zerbino answered courteously. Twas sign of evil and ungenerous will. And corresponded not with chivalry. That he a woman should desire to kill. Yet if the knight persists, he will not flee. But bids him well consider first how ill. Twould sound, that he, a gentle knight and good, should wish to dip his hand in woman's blood. This and yet more he vainly says, nor stand. They idle long, from word they pass to deed. And having compassed on the level land. Enough of ground, encounter on the mead. Not fired in some rejoicing, from the hand. Discharged, so fast the whistling rocket speed. As the two coursers bear the cavaliers. To hurtle in mid-space with rested spears. Hermonides of Holland leveled low. And for the youth's left flank the stroke intended. But his weak lance was shivered by the blow. And little the opposing Scot offended. But vain was not the spear thrust of his foe. Who bored his opposite's good shield, and rend. His shoulder, by the lance pierced through and through. And good Hermonides on earth o' earthra. Thinking him slain who only lay amazed. By pity pressed, Zerbino leapt to ground. And from his death-like face the visor raised. And he, as wakened out of sleep profound. In silence, hard upon Zerbino gazed. Then cried, It does not me, in truth, confound. To think that I am overthrown by thee. Who seems the flower of errant chivalry. But it with reason grieves me this is done. Upon account of a false woman's spite. Who's wicked cause I know not why you own. An office ill according with your might. And when to you the occasion shall be known. Which urges me her wickedness to quite. Weener you think on it, you will repent. How she by you was saved, and I was shent. And if enough of breath, although I fear. The contrary, is left me to expound. Her evil actions, I shall make appear. She in all guilt transgresses every bound. I had a brother once, the youthful peer. Set out from Holland's isle, our natal ground. To serve Heraclius, mid his knights arrayed. Who then the Grecian empire's scepter swayed. Brother in arms and bosom friend installed. Here was he by a baron of that court. Who, in a pleasant sight, and strongly walled. On Servia's distant frontier had a fort. Argeus he of whom I tell was called. Husband of that ill hag, whom in such sort. He loved, as past all mean, and misbecame. One of his worth and honorable fame. But she, more volatile than leaf, when breeze. Of autumn most its natural moisture dries. And strips the fluttering foliage from the trees. Which, blown about, before its fury flies. Changes her humor, and her husband sees. Whom she sometime had loved, with other eyes. And in her every wish and every thought. Schemes how my brother's love may best be bought. But not Acroceranus fronts the brine. Ill-famed, against whose base the billow heaves. Nor against Boreas stands the mountain pine. That has a hundred times renewed its leaves. And towering high on Alp or Apennine. With its fast root the rock as deeply cleaves. So firmly as the youth resists the will. Of that foul woman, sink of every ill. Now, as it oft befalls a cavalier. Who seeks and finds adventure, high and low. It happened that my gentle brother near. His comrade's fort was wounded by a foe. Where often, uninvited by the peer. He guested, was his host with him or no. And thither he resorted from the field. There to repose until his wounds were healed. While there he wounded lay, upon some need. It chanced Argeus was compelled to ride. Quickly that wanton, from his presence freed. As was her use, my brother's fealty tried. But he, as one unstained in thought and deed. So fell a goad no longer would abide. 
and to preserve his faith, as lures increased. Of many evils chose what seemed the least. To break communion with the cavalier. To him, of many, seemed the lightest ill. And go so far. That wanton should not hear. More of his name, this purpose to fulfill. Was honester, though quitting one so dear. Was hard, than to content her evil will. Of her foul wishes to her lord impart. Who cherished her as fondly as his heart. And though yet smarting with his wounds and pined. He dons his arms, and from the tower departs. And wanders thence with firm and constant mind. Ne'er to return again into those parts. But not availed the purpose he designed. His project's fortune baffled with new arts. This while, behold. The castellane returned. And bathed in bitter tears the wife discerned. And with flushed face, and hair in disarray. He asks of her what had disturbed her mood. Who, ere she in reply a word will say is vainly more than once to answer wooed. And all the while is thinking in what way. The knight can best with vengeance be pursued. And well it's suited with her fickle vein. Lightly to change her love into disdain. Ah! Why should I conceal, in fine she cried. The fault committed while you were away? For though I it from all the world should hide. This would my conscience to myself bewray. The soul, which is with secret evil died, does with such penitence its fault appy, as every corporal sufferance exceeds, that thou couldst deal me for my evil deeds, if evil be the deed, when done par force. But, be it what it may, the mischief no. Then, with my sword from this polluted course, delivered, let my spotless spirit go, and quench these wretched eyes, which in remorse, I, if I lived, on earth must ever throw. As the least penance of so foul a blame. And, look on whom they may, must blush for shame. My honor has been ruined by thy mate. Who to this body violence has done. And fearing lest I all to thee relate. Without farewell the graceless churl is gone. She by this story made her husband hate. The youth, than whom before was dearer none. Argeus credits all, without delay. Arms him, and, breathing vengeance, posts away. In knowledge of that country not to seek. He overtook the knight in little space. For my poor brother, yet diseased and weak. Rode, unsuspicious, at an easy pace. Argeus, eager his revenge to wreak. Assailed him straight in a sequestered place. My brother would excuse him if he might. But his indignant host insists on fight. This one was sound and full of new disdain. That weak and friendly, as I wont to be. My brother was ill fitted to sustain. His altered comrade's newborn enmity. Philander, then unmeriting such pain. So was the stripling named, described by me. Not gifted with the power to undergo. Such fierce assault, was taken by the foe. Forbid it, heaven. I should be led astray. So by just wrath and thy iniquity. To him Argeus cried, as thee to slay. Who loved thee once, and certes thou lovedst me. Though in the end thou ill didst this display. I yet desire this ample world may see. That, measured by my deeds, I rank above. Thyself in hate as highly as in love. In other mode shall I chastise the deed. Then spilling more of thine ill blood. The peer. This said, commands his followers, on a steed. Of verdant boughs composed to place a bier. And with the knight half lifeless homeward speed. And in a tower enclose the cavalier. There dooms the guiltless stripling to remain. And suffer prisonment's perpetual pain. Yet nothing but his former liberty. Thence to depart was wanting to the night. In all the rest, as one at large and free. He ordered, and was still obeyed aright. But that ill dame her former fantasy. Pursuing ever with unwearied sprite. 
having the keys, repaired nigh every day. To the close turret where the prisoner lay. And evermore my brother she assailed. And with more boldness pressed her former suit. Mark what to thee fidelity availed. She cries, which all mere perfidy repute. With what triumphant joy shalt thou be hailed. What noble spoils are thine, what happy fruit. Oh what a worthy guerdon is thy meed. Branded by all men for a traitor's deed. How well thou mightst have given, and without stain. Of thine own honour, what I sought of thee. Now of so rigorous mood the worthy gain. Have and enjoy. In close captivity. Thou art, nor ever hope to break thy chain. Unless thou soften thy obduracy. But, if compliant, I mean can frame. To render thee thy liberty and fame. No, no. Have thou no hope, replied the knight. That my true faith shall ever change, although. It thus should happen that, against all right. I should so hard a sentence undergo. Let the world blame. Enough that in his sight. Who sees and judges everything below. And in his grace divine my fame can clear. My innocence unsullied shall appear. Does not Argeus deem enough to sty? Me in his prison, let him take away. This noisome life. Nor yet may heaven deny. It's mead, though ill the world my work appe. And yet he who condemns me may, when I. Am parted from this tenement of clay. Perceive that he has wronged me in the end. And shall bewail when dead his faithful friend. Thus oftentimes that shameless woman pressed. The good philander, but obtained no fruit. Nursing her blind desires, which knew not rest. In seeking what her wicked love may boot. She her old vices, in her inmost breast. Ransacks for what may best the occasion suit. And sifts them all, then, having overrun. A thousand evil thoughts, resolved on one. Six months she waited ere again she sought. The prisoner's tower, as she was wont before. From which the sad philander hoped and thought. That love to him the dame no longer bore. Lo! Fortune for her an occasion wrought. To evil deed propitious evermore. To give effect, with memorable ill. To her irrational and evil will. The husband had an ancient feud with one. Who was by name Mirando Height the Fair. Who even within the fort would often run. In its lord's absence. But the knight's repair. At the wide distance of ten miles would shun. Was he assured the castellane was there? Who now, to lure him thither? Brooded how? He for Jerusalem was bound by vow. Said he would go, and went. Thus each who spies. His outset, of his journey spreads the fame. Nor he, who only on his wife relies. Trusts any with his purpose but the dame. And home returned when dusky waxed the skies. Nor ever, save at evening, thither came. And with changed ensigns, at the dawn of day. Unseen of any, always went his way. He now on this side, now on the other side. Roved round his castle but to ascertain. If credulous Mirando, who to ride. Thither was wanted, would return again. All day he in the forest used to hide. And, when he saw the sun beneath the main. Came to the tower, and, through a secret gate. Was there admitted by his faithless mate. Thus every one, except his consort ill. Argeus many miles away suppose. She, when, tis time her errand to fulfill. Hatching new mischief, to my brother goes. Of tears she has a ready shower at will. Which from her eyes into her bosom flows. Where shall I succor find, now needed most? So that my honor be not wholly lost. And. With my own, my wedded lords. She cries winky face. I should feel no alarm, if he were here. Thou knowst Mirando, no if deities. Or men he in Argeus' absence fear. 
he at this time tries all extremities. Nor servant have I but by threat or prayer. He him to further his desire has swayed. Nor know I whither to recur for aid. Of my lord's absence hearing the report. And that he would not quickly homeward fare. He had the insolence within my court. Upon no other pretext to repair. Who, were my absent lord within his fort? So bold a deer not only would not dare, but would not deem himself secure withal. By heaven! At three miles distance from his wall. And what he erst by messenger had sought. From me today has sued for face to face. And in such manner that long time I thought. Dishonor must have followed and disgrace. And if I had not humbly him besought. And feigned to yield to him with ready grace. He haply would have ravished that by force. Which he expects to win by milder course. I promise, not designing to comply. For void is contract made in fear, alone. From his ill purpose would I put him by. And what he then parforce would else have done. So stands the case, the single remedy. Lies in yourself, my honor else is gone. And that of my Argeus, which is dear or more so, than your own you vowed Wylera. If you refuse me, I shall say, you show. That you have not the faith which you pretended. But that in cruelty you said me no. When vainly were my tears on you expended. And no wise for Argea's sake, although. With this pretext you have yourself defended. Our love's bad been concealed and free from blame. But here I stand exposed to certain shame. To me such preface needs not, said anew. The good philander, bound by amity. To my Argeus still. Thy pleasure shew. I what I ever was will be, and I. Although from him I bear such ill undo. Accuse him not, for him would I defy. Even death itself. And let the world, allied. With my ill destiny, against me side. The impious woman answered, "'Tis my will. Thou slay him who would do us foul despite. Nor apprehend to encounter any ill. For I the certain mean will tell aright. He will return, his purpose to fulfill. At the third hour, when darkest is the night. And, at a preconcerted signal made. Be without noise by me within conveyed. Let it not irk thee to await the peer. Within my chamber, where no light will be. Till I shall make him doff his warlike gear. And, almost naked, yield him up to thee. So did his wife into that quicksand steer. Her hapless husband, it appears to me. If wife she rightly could be called, more fell. And cruel than a fury sprung from hell. She drew my brother forth, that guilty knight. With his good arms in hand, and him again secreted in the chamber without light. Till thither came the wretched Castellane. As it was ordered, all fell out aright. For seldom ill design is schemed in vain. So fell Argeus by Philander's sword. Who for Mirando took the castle's lord. One blow divided head and neck, for naught. Was there of helm, the warrior to defend. Without a struggle was Argeus brought to his unhappy life's disastrous end. And he who slew him never had such thought. Nor this would have believed, to aid his friend. Intent. Strange chance. He wrought him in that blow. The worst that could be done by mortal foe. When now, unknown, on earth Argeus lay. My brother to Gabrina gave the blade. So was she named, who lived but to betray. She, who discovery had till then delayed. Wills that philander with a light survey. The man whom he on earth has lifeless laid. And she, with the assistance of the light. Shows him Argeus in the murdered white. And threatens, save he with desires comply. To which her bosom had been long a prey. What he would be unable to deny. She to the assembled household will display and he like traitor and assassin die. Upon her tail, 
in ignominious way. And mine's him fame is not to be despised. Albeit so little life by him be prized. Philander stood oppressed with grief and fear. When his mistake to him the woman showed. And to have slain her in his wrath went near. And long be doubted, so his collar glowed. And, but that reason whispered in his ear. That he was in an enemy's abode. For lack of falchion in his empty sheath. He would have torn her piecemeal with his teeth. As sometimes vessel by two winds which blow. From different points is vexed upon the main. And now one speeds the bark an end, and now. Another squall impels her back again. Still on her poop assailed, or on her prow. Till she before the strongest flies amain. Philander, so distraught by two designs. Takes what he pregnant with least ill opines. Reason demonstrates with what peril fraught. His case, not more with death than lasting stain. If in the castle were that murder taught. Nor any time has he to sift his brain. Will he or nil he, in conclusion not. Is left him but the bitter cup to drain. Thus in his troubled heart prevailing more. His fear his resolution overbore. The fear of shameful punishment's pursuit. Made him with many protestations swear. To grant in everything Gabrina's suit. If from the fortalage they safely fare. So plucks that impious dame, par force, the fruit. Of her desires, and thence retreat the pair. Thus home again the young Philander came. Leaving behind him a polluted name. And deeply graven in his bosom bore. The image of his friend so rashly slain. By this to purchase, to his torment sore. A progni, a media, impious gain. And but his knightly faith, and oaths he swore. Were to his fury as a curbing rein. From him when safe she would have met her fate. But lived subjected to his bitterest hate. Thenceforth he never more was seen to smile. All his discourse was sad, and still ensued. Sobs from his breast. Afflicted in the style. Of vexed Orestes, when he in his mood. Had slain his mother and Aegisthus vile. By vengeful furies for the deed pursued. Till broken by the ceaseless grief he fed. He sickened and betook himself to bed. Now in the harlot, when she had discerned. This other set by her so little store. The former amorous flame was quickly turned. Into despiteous rage and hatred sore. Nor with less wrath she towards my brother burned. Than for Argeus she had felt before. And she disposed herself, in treasons versed. To slay her second husband like the first. Of a deceitful leech she made a say 261. Well fitted for the work she had in hand. Who better knew what deadly poisons slay. Then he the force of healing syrup scanned. And promised him his service to repay. With a reward exceeding his demand. When he should, with some drink of deadly might. Of her detested husband rid her sight. In presence of myself and more beside. The wicked elder with his deadly dole. Approaching my unhappy brother, cried. It was a sovereign drink to make him whole. But here a new device Gabrina tried. And, ere the sickly man could taste the bowl. To rid her of accomplice in the deed. Or to defraud him of his promised mead. Seized on his hand, the instant he presented. The poison to my brother. Ill my fear. Exclaimed the dame, by you would be resented. Excited for a spouse I hold so dear. I, that the beverage has not been fermented. With evil drug and poisonous, will be clear. Nor deem it meet that you to him convey. The proffered bowl, unless you take the say. 262. In what condition think you, sir, remained? The wretched elder by his fears oppressed? Thus by the woman's suddenness constrained. He had no time for thinking what were best. He, lest more doubt of him be entertained. Tastes of the chalice, at Gabrina's hest. And the sick man, emboldened so, 
drinks up. All the remainder of the poisoned cup. As the trained hawk of crooked Talon who clutches the partridge, when about to eat, is by the dog, she deems her comrade true. Er taken and defrauded of the meat. So on ill gain intent, the leech, in lieu of the expected aid, received defeat. Here, thus, what sovereign wickedness will dare? And be like fate each greedy miscreant's share. This past and done, the leech would homeward speed. That he, to counteract the pest he bore. Within his bowels, in this fearful need. Might use some secret of his cunning lore. But this the wicked dame would not concede. Forbidding him to issue thence before. His patient stomach should the juice digest. And its restoring power be manifest. 263. No prayer will move, nor offered price will buy. The woman's leave to let him thence depart. The desperate man who saw that death was nigh. And sure to follow, quickly changed his part. And told the story to the standers by. Nor could she cover it with all her art. Thus what he want to do by many a one. That goodly doctor by himself has done. And follows with his soul my brother true. That hence, already freed, was gone before. We, the assistants, that the matter knew. From the old man who lingered little more. Took that abominable monster, who. More cruel was than beast in forest hoar. And. Prisoned in a darksome place, reserved. To perish in the fire, as she deserved. So said Hermonides, and had pursued. His tale, and told how she from prison fled. But suffered from his wound a pang so shrewd. He fell reversed upon his grassy bed. Meanwhile two squires, who served him in the wood. A rustic beer of sturdy branches spread. Their master upon this the servants lay. Who could not thence be born in other way. Zerbino, in excuse, assured the peer. He grieved so good a knight to have offended. But, as was still the use of cavalier. Had guarded her who in his guidance wended. Nor had he else preserved his honor clear. For when the dame was to his care commended. Her to defend his promise he had plight. From all men, to the utmost of his might. He, if he might, is anything beside would readily assist him in his need. His only wish, the cavalier replied, was, he might be from Ilgabrina freed. Ere him some mighty mischief should betide. Of future penitence the bitter seed. Gabrina keeps on earth her downcast eye. For ill the simple truth admits reply. Zerbino thence, upon the promised way. With the old woman in his escort, went and inly cursed her all the live-long day. That in her cause that baron he had shent. And having heard the knight her guilt display. Who was instructed in her evil bent. He, if before he had her at despite. So loathed her, she was poisoned to his sight. Well read in young Zerbino's hate, the dame. Would not by him in malice be outdone. Nor baited him an inch, but in that game. Of deadly hatred set him two for one. Her face was with the venom in a flame. Wherewith her swelling bosom overrun. Twas thus in such concord as I say. These through the ancient wood pursued their way. When, lo! As it is now nigh eventide. They a mixed sound of blows and outcries here. Which seem a sign of battle fiercely plied and, as the deafening noise demonstrates, near. To mark what this might be, towards that side. Whence came the tumult, moved the Scottish peer. Nor is in following him Gabrina slow. What chanced in other canto you shall know. Canto. Chapter 22. Atlantis magic towers Astolfo White. Destroys, and frees his thralls from prison cell. Bradamant finds Rogero, who in fight. Earth rose four barons from the warlike cell. When on their way to save an errant knight. Doomed to devouring fire, the four who fell. 
for impious Pinabel maintained the strife. Whom, after, Bradamant deprives of life. Ye courteous dames, and to your lovers dear. You that are with one single love content. Though, mid so many and many, it is clear. Right few of you are of such constant bent. Be not displeased at what I said Wylera. When I so bitterly Gabrina shent. Nor if I yet expend some other verse. In censure of the beldam's mind perverse. Such was she. And I hide not what is true. So was enjoined me for a task by one. Whose will is law, therefore is honor due. To constant heart throughout my story done. He who betrayed his master to the Jew. For thirty pence, nor Peter wronged, nor John. Nor less renowned is Hypermnestra's fame. For her so many wicked sisters shame. 264. For one I dare to censure in my lays. For so the story wills which I recite. On the other hand, a hundred will I praise. And make their virtue dim the sun's fair light. But turning to the various pile I raise. Gramercy. Dear to many, of the night. Of Scotland I was telling, who hard by. Had heard, as was rehearsed, a piercing cry. He entered, twixt two hills, a narrow way. From whence was heard the cry, nor far had hide. Ere to a vale he came shut out from day. Where he before him a dead knight espied. Who I shall tell, but first I must away. From France, in the Levant to wander wide. Till I the paladin Astolfo find. Who westward had his course from thence inclined. I in the cruel city left the pier. Whence, with the formidable bugle's roar. He had chased the unfaithful people in their fear. And had preserved himself from peril sore. And with the sound had made his comrades rear. Then sail, and fly with noted scorn that shore. Now following him, I say, the warrior took. The Armenian road, and so that land forsook. He, after some few days, in Natoli. Finds himself, and towards Brusa goes his ways. Hence wending, on the hither side o' the sea. Makes Thrace. Through Hungary by the Danube lays. His course, and as his horse had wings to flee. Traverses in less time than twenty days. Both the Moravian and Bohemian line. Threaded Franconia next, and crossed the Rhine. To Aix La Chapelle thence, through Arden's wood. Came and embarked upon the Flemish strand. 265. To see, with southern breeze his vessel stood. And, so the favoring wind her canvas fanned. That he, at little distance, Albion viewed. By noon, and disembarked upon her land. He backed his horse, and so the rowels plied. In London he arrived by eventide. Here, learning afterwards that Otho old. Has lain for many months in Paris town. And that a new nigh every baron bold. Has after his renowned example done. He straightway does for France his sails unfold. And to the mouth of Thames again is gone. Whence issuing forth, with all his canvas spread. For Calais he directs the galley's head. A breeze which, from the starboard blowing light. Had tempted forth Astolfo's bark to sea. By little and by little, waxed in might. And so at last obtains the mastery. The pilot is constrained to veer outright. Lest by the billows swamped his frigate be. And he, departing from his first design, keeps the bark straight before the cresting brine. Now to the right, now to the other hand. Sped by the tempest, through the foaming main. The vessel ran, she took the happy land. At last nigh Rouen. And forthwith, in chain. And plate Astolfo cased, and girt with brand. Bade put the saddle upon Rabicane. Departed thence, and, what availed him more? Then thousands armed, with him his bugle bore. And traversing a forest, at the feet. Of a fair hill, arrived beside a font. 
what time the sheep foregoes his grassy meat. Penned in the cabin or the hollow mount. And, overcome by feverish thirst and heat. Lifted the weighty morion from his front. Tethered his courser in the thickest wood. And, with intent to drink, approached the flood. His lips he had not wetted in its bed. Before a youthful rustic, ambushed near. Sprang from a copse, backed rabican, and fled. With the good courser of the cavalier. Astolfo hears the noise and lifts his head. And, when he sees his mighty loss so clear. Satiate, although he had not drunk, upstarts. And after the young churl in fury darts. That robber did not let the courser strain. At speed, or he had from the warrior shot. But loosening now and tightening now the rein. Fled at a gallop or a steady trot. From the deep forest issued forth the twain. After long round, and reached in fine the spot. Where so many illustrious lords were shent. Worse prisoners they than if in prison pent. On Rabican, who with the wind might race. The villain sped, within the enchanter's one. Impeded by his shield and iron case. Parforce Astolfo far behind him run. Yet there arrives as well, but every trace. Of what the warrior had pursued is gone. He neither Rabican nor thief can meet. And vainly rolls his eyes and plies his feet. He plies his feet, and searches still in vain. Throughout the house, hall, bower, or galleried rose. Yet labors evermore, with fruitless pain. And care, to find the treacherous churl. Nor knows. Where he can have secreted Rabicane. Who every other animal outgoes. And vainly searches all day the dome about. Above, below, within it, and without. He, wearied and confused with wandering wide. Perceived the place was by enchantment wrought. And of the book he carried at his side. By Logistilla given in India, thought. Bestowed, should new enchantment him betide. That needful succor might therein be sought. He to the index turns, and quickly sees. What pages show the proper remedies? I, the book, of that enchanted house at large. Was written, and in this was taught the way. To foil the enchanter, and to set at large. The different prisoners, subject to his sway. Of these illusions and these frauds in charge. A spirit pent beneath the threshold lay. And the stone raised which kept him fast below. With him the palace into smoke would go. Astolfo with desire to bring to end. An enterprise so passing fair, delays. No more, but to the task his force does bend. And prove how much the heavy marble weighs. As old Atlantes sees the night intend. To bring to scorn his art and evil ways. Suspicious of the ill which may ensue. He moves to assail him with enchantments new. He, with his spells and shapes of devilish kind. Makes the duke different from his won't appear. To one a giant, and to one a hind. To other an ill-visaged cavalier. Each, in the form which in the thicket blind. The false enchanter war, beholds the peer. So that they all, with purpose to have back. What the magician took, the duke attack. The child, 266 Gradasso, Iroldo, Bradamant. Priscildo, Brandimart, and many more. All, cheated by this new illusion, pant. To slay the English baron, angered sore. But he abased their pride and haughty vaunt. Who straight bethought him of the horn be bore. But for the succor of its echo dread. They, without fail, had laid Astolfo dead. But he no sooner has the bugle wound. And poured a horrid larum, than in guise. Of pigeons at the musket scaring sound. The troop of cavaliers affrighted flies. No less the necromancer starts astound. No less he from his den in panic hies. Troubled and pale, and hurrying evermore. Till out of hearing of the horrid roar. The warder fled. With him his prison train. 
and many steeds as well are fled and gone. These more than rope is needed to restrain. Who after their astounded masters run? Scared by the sound. Nor cat nor mouse remain. Who seem to hear in it, lay on, lay on. Rabican with the rest had broke his bands. But that he fell into Astolfo's hands. He, having chased the enchanter more away. Upraised the heavy threshold from the ground. Beneath which, figures and more matters lay. That I omit. Desirous to confound. The spell which did the magic dome upstay. The duke made havoc of whatever he found. As him the book he carried taught to do. And into mist and smoke all passed from view. There he found fastened by a golden chain. Rogero's famous courser, him I say. Given by the wizard, that to the domain. A false Alcina him he might convey. On which? Equipped with Logistilla's reign. To France Rogero had retraced his way. And had from Ind to England rounded all. The right-hand side of the terrestrial ball. I know not if you recollect how tied. To a tree Rogero left his reign, the day. Galifron's naked daughter from his side. Vanished, and him did with that scorn apathy. The courser, to his wonder who espied. Returned to him whom he was used to obey. Beneath the old enchanter's care to dwell. And stayed with him till broken was the spell. At not Astolfo could more joyous be. Than this, of all things fortunate the best. In that the hippogriff so happily. Offered himself. That he might scour the rest. As much he coveted, of land and sea. And in few days the ample world invest. Him well he knew, how fit for his behoof. Four of his feats he had elsewhere made proof. Him he that day in India proved, when sped. He was by sage Melissa, from the rain. Of that ill woman who him, sore bested. Had changed from man to myrtle on the plain. Had marked and noted how his giddy head. Was formed by Logistilla to the rain. And saw how well instructed by her care. Rogero was, to guide him everywhere. Minded to take the hippogriff, he flung. The saddle on him, which lay near, and bit. The steed, by choosing, all the reins among. This part or that. Until his mouth was fitted. For in that place were many bridles hung. Belonging to the coursers which flitted. And now alone, intent upon his flight. The thought of Rabicane detained the knight. Good cause he had to love that Rabicane. For better horse was not to run with lance. And him had he from the remotest reign. Of India ridden even into France. After much thought. He to some friend would fain. Present him, rather than so, left to chance. Abandon there the courser, as a prey. To the first stranger who should pass that way. He stood upon the watch if he could view. Some hunter in the forest, or some hind. To whom he might commit the charge, and who. Might to some city lead the horse behind. He waited all that day until the new. Had dawned, when, while the twilight yet was blind. He thought he saw, as he expecting stood. A cavalier approaching through the wood. But it behoves that, ere the rest I say. I Bradamant and good Rogero find. After the horn had ceased, and, far away. The beauteous pair had left the dome behind. Rogero looked, and knew what till that day. He had seen not, by Atlantes rendered blind. Atlantes had effected by his power. They should not know each other till that hour. Rogero looks on Bradamant, and she. Looks on Rogero in profound surprise. That for so many days that witchery. Had so obscured her altered mind and eyes. Rejoiced, Rogero clasps his lady free. Crimsoning with deeper than the roses dies. And his fair love's first blossoms, while he clips. The gentle damsel, gathers from her lips. A thousand times they their embrace renew. 
and closely each is by the other pressed. While so delighted are those lovers too. Their joys are ill-contained within their breast. Deluded by enchantments, much they rue. That while they were within the wizard's rest. They should not e'er have one another known. And have so many happy days foregone. The gentle Bradamant, who was I, the vain. To grant whatever prudent virgin might. To solace her desiring lover's pain. So that her honor should receive no slight. If the last fruits he of her love would gain. Nor find her ever stubborn, bade the knight. Her of Duke Amon through fair mean demand. But be baptized before he claimed her hand. Roger o' good, who not alone to be. A Christian for the love of her were fain. As his good sire had been, and anciently. His grandsire and his whole illustrious strain. But for her pleasure would immediately. Resign whatever did of life remain. Says, I not only, if, tis thy desire. Will be baptized by water, but by fire. Then on his way to be baptized he hide. That he might next espouse the martial may. With Bradamant. Who served him as a guide. To Valambrosa's fame 267 and Abbey Gray. Rich, fair, nor less religious, and beside. Courteous to whosoever passed that way. And they encountered, issuing from the chase. A woman, with a passing waffle face. Rogero, as still courteous, still humane. To all, but woman most, when he discerned. Her dainty visage furrowed by a rain. Of lovely tears, sore pitted her. And burned. With the desire to know her grievous pain. And having to the mournful lady turned. Besought her, after fair salute, to show. What cause had made her eyes thus overflow. And she, uplifting their moist rays and bright. Most kindly to the inquiring child replied. And of the cause of her unhappy plight. Him, since he sought it, fully satisfied. Thou hast to understand, O gentle knight. My visage is so bathed with tears, she cried. In pity to a youth condemned to die. This very day, within a town hard by. Loving a gentle lady and a gay. The daughter of Marsilius, king of Spain. And feigning, veiled in feminine array. The modest role of eye and girlish strain. With her each night the amorous stripling lay. Nor any had suspicion of the twain. But not so hidden is, but searching eye. In the long run the secret will espy. One first perceived it, and then spoke with two. Those two with more, till to the king, twas said. Of whom but yesterday a follower true. Gave order to surprise the pair in bed. And in the citadel the prisoners mew. To separate dungeons in that fortress led. Nor think I that enough of day remains. To save the lover from his cruel pains. I fled, not to behold such cruelty. For they alive the wretched youth will burn. Nor think I aught could more afflicting be. Than such fair striplings torment to discern. Or that hereafter thing can pleasure me. So much, but that it will to trouble turn. If memory retrace the cruel flame. Which preyed upon his fair and dainty frame. Touched deeply, Bradamant his danger hears. In heart sore troubled at the story shown. As anxious for the lover, it appears. As if he were a brother of her own. Nor certes wholly causeless are her fears. As in an afterverse will be made known. Then, to Rogero. Him to keep from harms. Meseems we worthily should turn our arms. And to that melancholy damsel said. Place us but once within the walls, and I. So that the youth be not already dead. Will be your warrant that he shall not die. Rogero, who the kindly bosom read. Of Bradamant, still full of piety. Felt himself but all over with desire. To snatch the unhappy stripling from the fire. And to the maid, whose troubled face ape ours. Bathed with a briny flood, why wait we, need. 
is here of speedy succor, not of tears. Do you but where the youth is prisoned lead. Him from a thousand swords, a thousand spears. We vow to save, so it be done with speed. But haste you, lest too tardy be our aid. And he be burnt, which succor is delayed. The haughty semblance and the lofty say. Of these, who with such wondrous daring glowed. That hope, which long had ceased to be her stay. Again upon the grieving dame bestowed. But, for she less the distance of the way. Dreaded, than interruption of the road. Lest they, through this, should take that path in vain. The damsel stood suspended and in pain. Then said, If to the place our journey lay. By the high road, which is both straight and plain. That we in time might reach it, I should say. Before the fire was lit. But we must strain. By path so foul and crooked, that a day. To reach the city would suffice with pain. And when, alas! We thither shall have sped. I fear that we shall find the stripling dead. And wherefore take we not the way most near? Rogero answers. And the dame replies. Because fast by where we our course should steer. A castle of the Count of Poitiers lies. Where Pinabel for dame and cavalier. Did, three days past. A shameful law devise. Then whom more worthless living white is none. The Count Anselmo de Alterapa's son. No cavalier or lady by that rest. Without some noted scorn and injury goes. Both of their coursers here are dispossessed. And knight his arms and dame her gown foregoes. 268. No better cavaliers lay lance in rest. Nor have for years in France against their foes. Then four, who for Sir Pinabel have plight. Their promise to maintain the castle's right. Whence first arose the usage, which began. But three days since, you now, Sir Knight, shall hear. And shall the cause, if right or evil, scan. Which moved the banded cavaliers to swear. So ill a lady has the castellan, 269. So wayward, that she is without a peer. Who, on a day, as with the count she went. I know not whither, by a knight was shent. This knight, as flouted by that bonnyble. For carrying on his croup an ancient dame. Encountered with her champion Pinabel. Of overweening pride and little fame. Him he o'erturned, made a light as well. And put her to the proof, if sound or lame. Left her on foot, and had that woman old. In the dismounted damsel's garment stoled. She, who remained on foot, in fell despite. Greedy of vengeance, and a thirst for ill. Leagued with the faithless Pinabel, a white. All evil prompt to further and fulfill. Says, she shall never rest by day nor night. Nor ever know a happy hour, until. A thousand knights and dames are dispossessed. Of courser, and of armor, and of vest. For puissant knights arrived that very day. It happened, at a place of his. And who? Had all of them from regions far away. Come lately to those parts, so many true. And valiant warriors, skilled in martial play. Our age has seen not. These the goodly crew. Guido the savage, but a stripling yet. Griffin, and Aquilant, and Sansonet. Them at the fortalage, of which I told. Sir Pinabel received with semblance fair. Next sees the ensuing night the warriors bold. In bed, nor loosed. Till he had made them swear. That, he such period fixed, they in his hold. Should be his faithful champions for a year. And month. And of his horse and arms deprive. Whatever cavalier should there arrive. And any damsel whom the stranger bore. With him, dismount, and strip her of her vest. So, thus surprised, the warlike prisoners swore. So were constrained to observe the cruel hest. Though grieved and troubled, nor against the four. 
It seems, can any joust, but veils his crest. Night infinite have come. But one and all. Afoot and without arms have left that hall. Their order is, who from the castle hies. The first by lot, shall meet the foe alone. But if he find a champion of such guise. As keeps the cell, while he himself is thrown. The rest must undertake the enterprise. Even to the death, against that single one. Ranged in a band. If such each single night. Imagine the assembled warriors might. Nor stands it with our haste, which all delay. All let forbids, that you beside that tower. Be forced to stop and mingle in the fray. For grant that you be conquerors in the stower. And as your presence warrants well, you may. Tis not a thing concluded in an hour. And if all day he wait our succor, I. Much fear the stripling in the fire will die. Regard we not this hindrance of our quest. Rogero cried, but do we what we may. Let him who rules the heavens ordain the rest. Or fortune, if he leave it in her sway. To you shall by this joust be manifest. If we can aid the youth. For whom today? They on a ground so causeless and so slight. As you to us rehearsed, the fire will light. Rogero ceased. And in the nearest way. The damsel put the pair without reply. Nor these beyond three miles had fared, when they. Reached bridge and gate, the place of forfeitry. Of horse and arms and feminine array. With peril sore of life. On turret high. Upon first sight of them, a sentinel. Beat twice upon the castle's larum bell. And lo, in eager hurry from the gate. An elder trotting on hackney maid. And he approaching cried, Await, await. Ola. Halt, sirs, for here a fine is paid. And I to you the usage shall relate. If this has not to you before been said. And to the three forthwith began to tell. The use established there by Pinabel. He next proceeds, as he had wont before. To counsel other errant cavalier. Unrobe the lady, said the elder whore. My sons, and leave your steeds and martial gear. Nor put yourselves in peril, and with four. Such matchless champions hazard the career. Clothes, arms, and coursers everywhere are rife. But not to be repaired is loss of life. No more. Rogero said, No more. For I. I am well informed of all, and hither speed. With the intention, hereby proof to try. If, what my heart has vouched, I am indeed. For sign or threat I yield a not panoply. If not beside I hear, nor vest nor steed. And this my comrade, I as surely know. These for mere words as little will forego. But let me face to face, by heaven, espy. Those who would take my horse and arms away. For we have yet beyond that hill to high. And little time can here afford to stay. Behold the man, that ancient made reply. Clear of the bridge. Nor did in this missy. For thence a warrior pricked, who, powdered o'er. With snowy flowers, a crimson surcoat wore. Bradamant for long time with earnest prayer. For courtesy the good Roger oppressed. To let her from his cell the warrior bear. Who with white flowers had purfled o'er his vest. But moved him not, and to Roger's share. Must leave, and do herself, what liked him best. He willed the whole emprise his own should be. And Bradamant should stand apart to see. The child demanded of that elder, who? Was he that from the gate first took his way? And he, tis Sansonet, of crimson hue. I know his surcoat, with white flowers gay. Without a word exchanged, the warlike two. Divide the ground, and short is the delay. For they against each other, leveling low. Their spears, and hurrying soar their coursers, go. This well had issued from the fortress near. With many footmen girt, Sir Pinabel. 
all ready to despoil the cavalier. Who in the warlike joust should void is sell? At one another spurred in bold career. The knights, with their huge lances rested well. Up to the points nigh equal was each stick. Of stubborn native oak, and two palms thick. Sansonet, of such staves, above five pair. Had made them sever from the living stock. In neighboring wood, and bade his followers bear. Two of them hither. Destined for that shock. Such truncheons to withstand, well needed were a shield and cuirass of the diamond rock. One he had made them give his foe, and one. He kept himself, the present course to run. With these which might the solid anvil bore. So well their ends were pointed, there and here. Each aiming at the shield his foeman wore. The puissant warriors shocked in mid-career. That of Rogero, wrought with magic lore. By fiends, had little from the stroke to fear. I of the buckler speak Atlantes made. Of whose rare virtues I Wylera have said. I have already said, the enchanted light. Strikes with such force on the beholder's eyes. That, at the shield's discovery, every white. Is blinded, or on earth half lifeless lies. Wherefore, well mantled with a veil, the knight. Keeps it, unless some passing need surprise. Impassive is the shield as well believed. Since it no damage in the shock received. The other by less skillful artist wrought. Did not so well that weightiest blow abide. But, as if smit by thunder, in a thought. Gave way before the steel, and opened wide. Gave way before the griding steel, which sought. The arm beneath, by this ill fortified. So that Sir Sansonet was smote, and reeled. In his despite, unhorsed upon the field. And this was the first comrade of the train. That of the tower maintained the usage fell. Who there had failed another spoil to gain. And voided in the joust his knightly cell. Who laughs, as well will sometimes have to plain. And find that fortune will by fits rebel. Anew the warder on his larum beats. And to the other knights the sign repeats. This while Sir Pinabello had drawn near. To Bradamant, and prayed that she would shew. What warrior had his knight in the career? Smith with such prowess. That the guerdon do. To his ill deeds might wait the cavalier. God's justice that ill doer thither drew. On the same courser, which before the cheat. From Bradamant had taken by deceit. Twas now exactly the eighth month was ended. Since, if you recollect, upon his way. The faithless Maganzies, with whom she wended. Cast into Merlin's tomb the martial may. When her abow, which fell with her, defended. From death, or her good fortune, rather say. And Pinabel bore off her courser brave. Deeming the damsel buried in the cave. The courser, and, through him, the cavalier. Bradamant knew to be the wicked count. And, having heard him, and perused him near. With more attentive eye and front to front. This is the man, the damsel said, tis clear. Who erst designed me outrage and affront. Lo! Him the traitor's sin doth hither speed. Of all his treasons to receive the mead. To threaten him with vengeance, and to lay. Hands on her sword and charge him home, was done. All in a thought, but first she barred the way. By which he might his fortalage have won. To earth himself like fox, in his dismay. Sir Pinabel has every hope foregone. He screaming loud, nor ever making head. Against the damsel, through the forest fled. Pale and dismayed his spurs the caitiff plied whose last hope of escape in flight was found. While with her ready sword, Dordona's pride, was at his flank, and pressed him in his round, hunting him close and ever fast beside. Loud is the uproar, and the woods resound. Nothing of this is at the castle kenned, for only to Rogero all attend. The other three, who from the fortress came, 
this well had issued forth upon their way. And brought with them the ill-accustomed dame. Who made wayfarers that ill use obey. In all, who rather than prolong with blame. Their life, would choose to perish in the fray. The kindling visage burns, and heart is woe. That to assail one man so many go. The cruel courtesan by whom was made. And by whose hest maintained, that evil right. Reminds the warriors that they are arrayed. By oath and pact, to avenge her in the fight. If with this lance alone thy foes are laid. On earth, why should I band with other knight? Guido the savage said, and if I lie. Off with my head, for I consent to die. So aquilent, so griffin. For the twain. Singly against a single foe would run. And rather would be taken, rather slain. Then he should be assailed by more than one. To them exclaimed the woman, Why in vain? Waste you so many words, where fruit is none? I brought you here that champion's arms to take. Not other laws and other pacts to make. You should have offered, when in prison cell. This your excuse, which now too late is made. Tis yours the law's observance to compel. And not with lying tongue your oath evade. Behold. The arms, behold, with a new cell. And cloth, the goodly steed. Rogero said. Behold with these, as well, the damsel's vest. If these you covet, why your course arrest? She of the castle presses on this side. On that Rogero rates, and calls them on. Till they parforce, towards him, together hide. But red with shame, are to the encounter gone. Foremost appeared, mid those three knights of pride. Of Burgundy's good marquis either son. 270. But Guido, who was born on heavier steed, came at some interval, with tardier speed. With the same lance with which he overbore. Sir Sansonet, Rogero came to fight. Well covered with the shield which heretofore. Atlantes used on Pyrenean height. I say the enchanted buckler, which, too sore. For human sufferance, dazed the astonished sight. To which Rogero, as a last resource. In the most pressing peril had recourse. Although three times alone the child was fain. And, certes sore bested, this to display. Twice when he from the wanton fairy's reign. Was to that sober region on his way. Last, when the unsated orc upon the main. By this astounded, mid the sea foam lay. Which would have fed upon the naked maid. So cruel to the child who brought her aid. Save these three times, he has preserved the shield. Beneath its veil, but covered in such wise. That it may quickly be to sight revealed. If he in need of its good succor lies. With this, as said before, he came afield. As boldly, as if those three enemies. Who were arrayed before him, had appeared. Yet less than little children to be feared. Rogero shocked the valiant griffin, where. The border of the buckler joined the sight. Who seemed as he would fall, now here, now there. And, from his courser far, last fell outright. He at the shield had aimed, but smote not fair. The mark, and, for Rogero's orb was bright. And smooth, the hissing weapon slipped, and wrought. Other effect than was in Griffin's thought. It rent and tore the veil which served to hide. The lightning's fearful and enchanted rays. Which, without blinded eyes, can none abide. Upright, nor refuge is for them who gaze. Aquilent, who was at his brother's side. Tore off the rest, and made the buckler blaze. The splendor struck the valiant brothers blind. And Guido in their rear, who spurred behind. These here, or there, to earth astonished real. Nor eyes alone are dazzled by the light. But every sense astounds the flaming steel. Unconscious of the issue of the fight. Rogero turned his horse, and, in the wheel. Handled his sword, so good to thrust and smite. 
and none descried his fury to oppose. For in the charge dismounted were his foes. The knights, together with the footmen all. And women, who had from the castle hide. Nor less the coursers panting with their fall. As if about to die, the warrior spied. He wondered first, and next perceived the pall. Of silk was handing down on the left side. I say the pall, in which he used to lap. His shield, the evil cause of that mishap. He quickly turns, and, turning, rolls his eyes. In hopes to view his well-loved martial maid. And thitherward, without delay, he hies. Where, when the joust began, the damsel stayed. Not finding her, it is the child's surmise. That she is gone to bear the stripling aid. Fearing he may be burnt, while they their journey. So long delay, retarded by that tourney. He saw the damsel, stretched among the rest. Who him had thither guided, as she lay. He took and placed her, yet with sleep oppressed. Before him, and, sore troubled, rode away. He with a mantle, which above her vest. She wore, concealed the enchanted buckler's ray. And to the maid restored, when, t'was concealed. Her senses, which were ravished by the shield. Away Rogero posted with the dame. And did not date his crimson visage rays. Since every one, it seemed to him, might blame. With right that victory, worthy little praise. By what amends can I of such a shame? The blushing warrior said, the stain erase? For twill be brooded, all my deeds by slight. Of magic have been done, and not by might. As, thinking thus, he journeyed on his way. Rogero stumbled upon what he sought. For, in the middle of the track, there lay. A well, within the ground profoundly wrought. Whither the thirsty herd, at noon of day. Repaired, their paunches with green forage fraught. Rogero said, Tis now, must I provide. I shame from thee, O shield, no more abide. Thee will I keep no more, and this shall be. Even the last shame which so on me is thrown. The child, so ending his self colloquy. Dismounting, takes a large and heavy stone. Which to the shield he ties, and bodily. Both to the bottom of the well are gone. Lie buried there for ever, from all eyes. And with thee hidden be my shame, he cries. Filled to the brim with water was the well. Heavy the stone, and heavy was the shield. Nor stopped they till they to the bottom fell. By the light, liquid element concealed. Fame was not slow the noble act to swell. But, wandering wide, the deed in brief revealed. And voicing it abroad, with trumpet sound. Told France and Spain and all the countries round. When that so strange adventure to the rest. Of the wide world, from mouth to mouth was blown. Knights out of number undertook the quest. From neighboring parts and distant. But unknown. To all remained the forest which possessed. The spring wherein the virtuous shield was thrown. For she who told the action, would not say. Where was the well? Nor in what land it lay. Upon Rogero's parting thence, where fell? The four good champions of that evil law. Made by the castle's lord Sir Pinabel. By him discomfited like men of straw. The shield withdrawn, he had removed as well. The light, which quelled their sight and minds who saw. And those, who, like dead men, on earth had lain. Had risen, full of wonderment, again. Nor anything throughout that live long day. They'd mid themselves but that strange case relate. And how it was in that disastrous fray. Each by the horrid light was quelled, debate. While these, discoursing, of the adventure say. Tidings are brought of Pinabello's fate. That Pinabel is dead the warriors here. But learn not who had slain the cavalier. Bradamant in close pass, this while, had stayed. The faithless Pinabel, and sorely pressed. And many times had buried half her blade. 
within bleeding flanks and heaving breast. One of his crimes the forfeit had been paid. By him, the infected country's curse and pest. She from the conscious forest turned away. With that good steed the thief had made his prey. She would return where she had left the night. But never could make out the road anew. And now by valley, now by mountain height. Wandered well nigh the ample country through. Yet could she never, such her fortune spite. Find out the way to join Roger O'True. Him in another canto I attend. Who loves the tale, to hear my story's end. Canto. Chapter 23. Astolfo soars in air. Upon account. Of Pinabel is prison Scotland's heir. By Roland Freed, Frontino Rodamont. Takes from Hipalca, trusted to her care. With Mandricardo strives Anglanti's count. Who, next, offended by his lady fair. Into the fury falls, so strange and fell. Which in the world has not a parallel. Let each assist the other in his need. Seldom good actions go without their due. And if their just reward should not succeed. At least, nor death, nor shame, nor loss ensue. Who wrongs another, the remembered meed. As well shall have, and soon or later rue. That, mountains never meet, but that men may. And oft encounter, is an ancient say. Now mark what chance to Pinabel, the event. Of having borne himself so wickedly. He at the last received due punishment. Due and deserved by his iniquity. And God, who for the most is ill content. To see the righteous suffer wrongfully. Secured the maid from harm, and will secure. All who from every wickedness are pure. Pinabel deemed he to an end had brought. And buried deep in earth, the martial maid. Nor weaning to behold her more, less thought. To her his treasons forfeit to have paid. Nor profits it the wily traitor ought. To be among the forts his father swayed. For Alterapa here its summit rears. Amid rude hills, confining on Poictiers. Anselm and Alterapa held command. The count from whom was sprung this evil seed. Who, to escape from angry Claremont's hand. Of friends and of assistants stood in need. At a hill's foot, with her avenging brand. Bradamant made the worthless traitor bleed. Who found no better succor in the strife. Then piteous cry and fruitless prayer for life. When she has put to death the treacherous peer. Who to put her to death had erst intent. To seek Rogero she again would steer. But that her cruel fate would not consent. Which, where the wood was loneliest and most drear. To wander by close path the lady sent. Until the western sun withdrew his light. Abandoning the world above to night. Nor knowing where for shelter she should rove. Bradamant in that place resolves to stay. Couched on the verdant herbage of the grove. And, sleeping, now awaits the dawn of day. Now watching Saturn, Venus, Mars, and Jove. And the other wandering gods upon their way. But, whether waking or to sleep resigned. Has I Rogero present to her mind. With sorrow and repentance oft assailed. She from her inmost heart profoundly sighed. That anger over love should have prevailed. Anger has torn me from my love, she cried. Oh! Had I made some note, which had availed. Thither, whence I set out, my steps to guide. When I departed on my ill emprise. Sure I was lorn of memory and of eyes. These words and others she in mournful strain. Utters, and broods within her heart on more. Meanwhile a wind of sighs, and plenteous rain. Of tears, are tokens of her anguish sore. In the east, at last, expected long in vain. The wished for twilight streaked the horizon o'er. And she her courser took, which on the lay. Was feeding, and rode forth to meet the day. Nor far had rode, ere from the greenwood trees. She issued, where the dome was erst displayed. 
and many days her with such witcheries. The evil-minded wizard had delayed. Here she Astolfo found, who at full ease. A bridle for the hippogriff had made. And here was standing, thoughtful and in pain. To whom he should deliver Rabicane. By chance she found him, as the cavalier. Had from the helm uncast his head to view. So that one of the dingy forest clear. Fair Bradham and her gentle cousin knew. Him from afar she hailed with joyful cheer. And now more nigh, to embrace the warrior flew. And named herself, and raised her visor high. And let him plainly who she was espy. None could Astolfo have found anywhere. With whom to leave his horse with more content. As knowing she would guard the steed with care. And to his lord on his return present. And he believed that heaven had, in its care. Duke Amon's daughter for this pleasure sent. Her was he wont with pleasure I to see. But now with more in his necessity. Embracing twice or thrice the cousins stand. Fraternally, each other's neck, and they. Had of each other's welfare made demand. With much affection, ere the duke gone say. Would I now see the winged people's land. Here upon earth I make too long delay. And opening to the dame the thought he brewed. To her the flying horse Astolfo shooed. But she scarce marveled when above the plain. She saw the rising steed his wings unfold. Since upon former time, with mastering rein. On him had charged the dame that wizard old. And made her eye and eyelid sorely strain. So hard she gazed, his movements to behold. The day that he bore off, with wondrous range. Rogero on his journey, long and strange. Astolfo says, on her he will bestow. His rabican, so passing swift of kind. That, if the courser started when a bow. Was drawn, he left the feathered shaft behind. And will as well his panoply forego. That it may to Mount Alban be consigned. And she for him preserve the martial weed. Since of his arms he has no present need. Bent, since a course in air was to be flown. That he, as best he can, will make him light. Yet keeps the sword and horn. Although alone. The horn from every risk might shield the knight. But he the lance abandons, which the sun. Of Galifron 271 was wont to bear in fight. The lance, by which whoever in the course. Was touched, fell headlong hurtling from his horse. Backed by Astolfo, and ascending slow. The hippogriff through yielding ether flew. And next the rider stirred the courser so. That in a thought he vanished out of view. Thus with his pilot does the patron go. Fearing the gale and rock, till he is through. The reefs, then, having left the shore behind. Hoists every sail, and shoots before the wind. Bradamant, when departed was the pier. Remained distressed in mind, since in what way. She knew not her good kinsman's warlike gear. And courser to Mount Alban to convey. For on her heart, which they inflame and tear. The warm desire and greedy will yet pray. To see the child, whom she defined once more. At Valombrosa thought, if not before. Here standing in suspense, by chance she spied. A churl, that came towards her on the plain. Who, at her hest, Astolfo's armor tied. As best he might, and laid on Rabicane. She next behind her bade the peasant guide. One courser loaded and one loose, the twain. Two were the steeds, for she had that before. On which his horse from Pinabel she bore. To Valombrosa to direct her way. She thought, in hopes to find Rogero there. But, fearing evermore to go astray. Knew not how thither she might best repair. The churl had of the country small assay. And, sure to be bewildered, when the pair. Yet at a venture thitherward she hies. Where she believes the place of meeting lies. She here and there, as she her way pursued. Turned, but found none to question of the road. She saw at midday, issuing from the wood. 
a fort, nor far removed was the abode, which on the summit of a mountain stood, and to the lady like Mount Alban showed, and was Mount Alban sure, in which repair. One of her brothers and her mother were. She, when she recognized the place, became sadder at heart than I have power to say. If she delays, discovered is the dame. Nor thence will be allowed to wend her way. If thence she wends not, of the amorous flame, which so consumes her, she will be the prey. Nor see Roger O'More, nor compass aught, which was at Valambrosa to be wrought. Some deal she doubted, then to turn her steed. Resolved upon Mount Alban's castle near. And, for she thence her way could deftly read. Her course anew towards the abbey steer. But fortune, good or evil, had decreed. The maid, before she of the veil was clear. Of one of her good brethren should be spied. Alardo named, ere she had time to hide. He came from billeting the bands which lay. Dispersed about that province, foot and horse. For the surrounding district, to obey. King Charlemagne, had raised another force. Embraces brotherly and friendly say. Salutes and kindly cheer, and sue of course. And next into Mount Alban, side by side. They, communing of many matters, ride. Bradamant enters Montalbano's seat. Whom Beatrice 272 had mourned, and vainly sought. Through spacious France, tis here all welcome sweet. The kiss and clasp of hand. She holds at naught. While her a mother and a brother greet. As the enamored maid compares in thought. These with the loved Rogero's fond embrace. Which time will never from her mind efface. Because she could not go, one in her stead. To send to Valambrosa she devised. Who thither in the damsel's name should speed. By whom should young Rogero be apprised. What kept her thence, and prayed, if prayer should need. That there he for love would be baptized. And next, as was concerned, would intend. What might their bridal bring to happy end. She purposed the same messenger should bear. As well to her Rogero his good steed. Which he was ever wanted to hold dear. Worthily dear. For sure so stout at need. And beauteous was no coarser, far or near. In land of Christian or of Paynim creed. In occupation of the Gaul or more. Except Bayardo good and Brigliador. Valiant Rogero, when too bold of sprite. He backed the hippogriff and sword in air. Frontino left, Frontino he was height. Whom Bradamant then took into her care. And to Mount Alban sent. And had him dight. And nourished, at large cost, with plenteous fare. Nor let be rode except at easy pace. Hence was he ne'er so sleek or well in case. Each damsel and each dame who her obeyed. She tasked, together with herself, to sew. With subtle toil. And with fine gold o'erlaid. A piece of silk of white and sable hue. With this she trapped the horse, then chose a maid. Old Calatrefia's daughter, from the crew. Whose mother whilom Bradamant had nursed. A damsel she in all her secrets versed. How graven in her heart Rogero lies. A thousand times to her she had confessed. And had extolled above the deities. The manners, worth, and beauty be possessed. No better messenger could I devise. She said, and called the damsel from the rest. Nor have I one, Hippalca mine, more sage. And sure than three, to do my embassage. Hippalca was the attendant damsel height. Go, says her lady, and describes the way. And afterwards informs the maid aright. Of all which to Rogero she should say. And why she at the abbey failed the knight. Who must not to bad faith ascribe her stay. But this to fortune charge, that so decides. Who, more than we ourselves, our conduct guides. She made the damsel mount upon a pad. 
and put into her hand Frontino's rein. And, if she met with one so rude or mad, who to deprive her of the steed were fain, her to proclaim who was his owner, bade, as that which might suffice to make him sane. For she believed there was no cavalier, but that Rogero's name would make him fear, of many and many things, whereof to treat. With good Rogero, in her stead, she showed, of which instructed well, her palfrey fleet. Hippalca stirred, nor longer there abode. Through highway, field, and wood, a gloomy beat. More than ten weary miles the damsel rode. Ere any crossed her path on mischief bent. Or even questioned whitherward she went. At noon of day, descending from a mount. She in a strait and ill declivity. Led by a dwarf, encountered Rodamont. Who was afoot and harnessed cap a pea. The more towards her raised his haughty front. And straight blasphemed the eternal hierarchy. That horse, so richly trapped and passing fair. He had not found in a knight errant's care. On the first courser he should find, the knight. Had sworn a solemn oath his hands to lay, 273. This was the first, nor he on steed could light. Fairer or fitter. Yet to take away. The charger from a maid were foul despite. Doubtful he stands, but covets sore the prey. Eyes and surveys him, and says often, Why? Is not as well the courser's master by? Ah! Would be were, to him the maid replied. For haply he would make thee change thy thought. A better knight than thee the horse doth ride. And vainly would his match on earth be sought. Who tramples thus on others' fame? He cried. And she, Rogero, said, as she was taught. Then Rodamont, the steed I may my own. Since him a champion rides of such renown. If he, as you relate, be of such force. That he surprises all beside in might. I needs must pay the hire as well as horse. And be this at the pleasure of the knight. That I am Rodamont, to him discourse. And, if indeed with me he lists to fight. Me shall he find, in that I shine confiest. By my own light, in motion, or at rest. I leave such vestige where soar I tread. The volleyed thunder leaves not worse below. He had thrown back, over Frontino's head. The courser's gilded reins, in saying so. Backed him, and left Hippalca sore bested. Who, bathed in tears, and goaded by her woe. Cries shame on him, and threats the king with ill. Rodamont hearkens not. And climbs the hill. Whither the dwarf conducts him on the trace. Of Duralis and Mandricardo bold. Behind, Hippalca him in ceaseless chase. Pursues with taunt and curses manifold. What came of this is said in other place. Turpin, by whom this history is told. Here makes digression, and returns again. Thither, where faithless Pinabel was slain. Duke Amon's daughter scarce had turned away. From thence, who on her track in haste had gone. Ere thither by another path, astray. Zerbino came, with that deceitful crone. And saw the bleeding body where it lay. And, though the warrior was to him unknown. As good and courteous, felt his bosom swell. With pity at that cruel sight and fell. Dead lay Sir Pinabel, and bathed in gore. From whom such streams of blood profusely flow. As were a cause for wonderment, had more. Swords than a hundred joined to lay him low. A print of recent footsteps to explore. The cavalier of Scotland was not slow. Who took the adventure, in the hope to read. Who was the doer of the murderous deed. The hag to wait was ordered by the peer. Who would return to her in little space? She to the body of the count drew near. And with fixed eye examined every place. Who willed not aught, that in her sight was dear. The body of the dead should vainly grace. As one who, soiled with every other vice. Surpassed all womankind in avarice. 
if she in any manner could have thought or hoped to have concealed the intended theft. The bleeding warrior's surcoat, richly wrought. She would, together with his arms, have reft. But at what might be safely hidden, caught. And, grieved at heart, forwent the glorious weft. Him of a beauteous girdle she undressed. And this secured between a double vest. Zerbino after some short space came back. Who vainly Bradamant had thence pursued. Through the green holt, because the beaten track. Was lost in many others in the wood. And he, for daylight now began to lack. Feared night should catch him mid those mountains rude. And with the impious woman thence, in quest. Of inn, from the disastrous valley pressed. A spacious town, which I'll tear up a height. Journeying the twain, at two miles distance spy. There stopped the pair, and halted for the night. Which, at full soar. Even now went up the sky. Nor long had rested their air, left and right. They from the people heard a mournful cry. And saw fast tears from every eyelid fall. As if some cause of sorrow touched them all. Zerbino asked the occasion, and, t'was said. Tidings had been to Count Anselmo brought. That Pinabel, his son, was lying dead. In a straight way between two mountains wrought. Zerbino feigned surprise, and hung his head. In fear lest he the assassin should be thought. But well divined this was the white he found. Upon his journey, lifeless on the ground. After some little time, the funeral bier. Arrives, mid torch and flambeau, where the cries. Are yet more thick, and to the starry sphere. Lament and noise of smitten hands arise. And faster and from fuller vein the tear. Waters all cheeks, descending from the eyes. But in a cloud more dismal than the rest. Is the unhappy father's visage drayest. While solemn preparation so was made. For the grand obsequies, with reverence due. According to old use and honors paid. In former age, corrupted by each new. A proclamation of their lord allayed. Quickly the noise of the lamenting crew. Promising any one a mighty gain. That should denounce by whom his son was slain. From voice to voice, from one to other ear. The loud proclaim they through the town declare. Till this the wicked woman chanced to hear. Who passed in rage the tiger or the bear. And hence the ruin of the Scottish peer. Either in hatred, would the crone prepare. Or were it she alone might boast to be. In human form, without humanity. Or were it but to gain the promised prize. She to seek out the grieving county flew. And, prefacing her tale in likely wise. Said that Zerbino did the deed. And drew. The girdle forth, to witness to her lies. Which straight the miserable father knew. And on the woman's tail and token built. A clear assurance of Zerbino's guilt. And, weeping, with raised hands, was heard to say. He for his murdered son would have amends. To block the hostel where Zerbino lay. For all the town is risen, the father sends. The prince, who deems his enemies away. And no such injury as this attends. In his first sleep is seized by Anselm's throng. Who thinks he has endured so foul a wrong. That night in prison, fettered with a pair. Of heavy letters, is Zerbino chained. For before yet the skies illuminated are. The wrongful execution is ordained. And in the place will he be quartered, where. The deed was done for which he is arraigned. No other inquest is on this received. It is enough that so their lord believed. When, the next morn, aurora stains with dye. Red, white, and yellow, the clear horizon. The people rise, to punish, death. Their cry. Zerbino for the crime he has not done. They without order him accompany. A lawless multitude, some ride, some run. I, the midst the Scottish prince, with drooping head. 
is, bound upon a little hackney, led. But he who with the innocent oft sides. Nor those abandons who make him their stay. For Prince Zerbino such defense provides. There is no fear that he will die today. God thitherward renowned Orlando guides. Who's coming for his safety paves the way. Orlando sees beneath him on a plain. The youth to death conducted by the train. With him was wended she, that in the cell. Prisoned, Orlando found. That royal maid. Child of Galicia's king, fair Isabel. Whom chance into the ruffian's power conveyed. What time her ship she quitted. By the swell. Of the wild sea and tempest overlaid. The damsel, who, yet nearer her heart core. Than her own vital being, Zerbino wore. She had beneath Orlando's convoy strayed. Since rescued from the cave. When on the plain. The damsel saw the motley troop arrayed. She asked Orlando what might be the train. I know not, said the count, and left the maid. Upon the height, and hurried towards the plain. He marked Zerbino, and at the first sight. A baron of high worth esteemed the knight. And asked him, why and wherefore him they led. Thus captive. To Zerbino drawing near. At this the doleful prince appraised his head. And, having better heard the cavalier. Rehearsed the truth. And this so well he said. That he deserved the succor of the peer. Well Sir Orlando him, by his reply. Deemed innocent, and wrongly doomed to die. And, after he had heard, twas at the hest. Of Anselm, Count of Alterapa, done. Was certain, twas an outrage manifest. Since not but ill could spring from him. And one. Moreover, was the other's foe professed. From ancient hate and enmity, which run. In Claremont and Maganza's blood, a feud. With injuries, and death and shame pursued. Orlando to the rabble cried, Untie. The cavalier, unless you would be slain. Who deals such mighty blows? One made reply. That would be thought the truest of the train. Were he of fire who makes such bold defy. We wax or straw, too haughty were the strain. And charged with at the paladin of France. Orlando at the lozel couched his lance. The shining armor which the chief had rent. From young Zerbino but the night before. And clothed himself withal, poor succor lent. Against Orlando in that combat sore. Against the churl's right cheek the weapon went. It failed indeed his tempered helm to bore. But such a shock he suffered in the strife. As broke his neck. And stretched him void of life. All at one course, of other of the band. With lance unmoved, he pierced the bosom through. Left it. On Durandana laid his hand. And broke into the thicket of the crew. One head in twain he severed with the brand. While, from the shoulders lopped. Another flew. Of many pierced the throat. And in a breath. Above a hundred broke and put to death. Above a third he killed, and chased the rest. And smote, and pierced, and cleft, as he pursued. Himself of helm or shield one dispossessed. One with spontoon or bill the champagne strewed. This one along the road, across it pressed. A fourth, this squats in cavern or in wood. Orlando, without pity, on that day. Let's none escape whom he has power to slay. Of a hundred men and twenty, in that crew. So Turpin sums them, eighty died at least. Thither Orlando finally withdrew. Where, with a heart sore trembling in his breast. Zerbino sat. How he at Roland's view. Rejoiced, in verse can hardly be expressed. Who, but that he was on the hackney bound. Would at his feet have cast himself to ground. While Roland, after he had loosed the knight. Helped him to don his shining arms again. Stripped from those sergeants captain, who had dight. Himself with the good harness, 
to his pain. The prince on Isabella turned his sight. Who had halted on the hill above the plain. And, after she perceived the strife was o'er. Nearer the field of fight her beauties bore. When young Zerbino at his side surveyed. The lady, who by him was held so dear. The beauteous lady, whom false tongue had said. Was drowned, so often wept with many a tear. As if ice at his heart core had been laid. Waxed cold, and some deal shook the cavalier. But the chill quickly passed, and he, instead, was flushed with amorous fire, from foot to head. From quickly clipping her in his embrace. Him reverence for Anglanti's sovereign stayed. Because he thought, and held for certain case. That Roland was a lover of the maid. So passed from pain to pain, and little space. Endured the joy which he at first essayed. And worse he bore she should another's be. Than hearing that the maid was drowned at sea. And worse he grieved, that she was with a knight. To whom he owed so much, because to rest. The lady from his hand, was neither right. Nor yet perhaps would prove an easy quest. He, without quarrel, had no other wight. Suffered to part, of such a prize posseist. But would endure, Orlando, such his debt. A foot upon his prostrate neck should set. The three in silence journey to a font. Where they alight, and halt beside the well. His helmet here undid the weary count. And made the prince too quit the iron shell. The youth unhelmed, she sees her lover's front. And pale with sudden joy grows Isabel. Then, changing, brightened like a humid flower. When the warm sun succeeds to drenching shower. And without more delay or scruple, pressed. To cast her arms about her lover dear. And not a word could draw forth from her breast. But bathe his neck and face with briny tear. Orlando, who remarked the love expressed needing no more to make the matter clear. Could not but, by these certain tokens, see. The could no other but Zerbino be. When speech returned, ere yet the maiden well. Had dried her cheeks from the descending tear. She only of the courtesy could tell. Late shown her by Anglanti's cavalier. The prince, who in one scale weighed Isabel. Together with his life, esteemed as dear fell at Orlando's feet and him adored. As to two lives at once by him restored. Proffers and thanks had followed, with a round. Of courtesies between the warlike pair. Had they not heard the covered paths resound. Which overgrown with gloomy foliage were. Upon their heads the helmet, late unbound. They quickly place, and to their steeds repair. And, lo! A knight and maid arrive, Air well. The cavaliers are seated in the cell. This was the Tartar Mandricardo, who, in haste behind the paladin had sped, to venge Alzerdo and Manilard. The two, whom good Orlando's valor had laid dead, though afterwards less eager to pursue, since he with him fair Doralis had led, whom from a hundred men, in plate and chain, he, with a single staff of oak, had ta'en. Yet knew not that it was Anglanti's peer. This while, of whom he had pursued the beat. Though that he was a puissant cavalier. By certain signals was he taught to wheat. More than Zerbino him he eyed, and, near. Perused the paladin from head to feet. Then finding all the tokens coincide. Thou art the man I seek, the pain him cried. Tis now ten days, to him the Tartar said. That the eyes still have followed. So the fame. Had stung me, and in me such longing bred. Which of thee to our camp of Paris came? When, amid thousands by thy hand laid dead. Scarce one alive fled thither. To proclaim. The mighty havoc made by thy good hand. Mid Tremesina's and Norisha's band. I was not as I knew, in following slow. Both to behold thee, and to prove thy might. And by the surcoat o'er thine arms I know. 
instructed of thy vest, thou art the night. And if such cognizance thou didst not show. And, mid a hundred, wert concealed from sight. For what thou art thou plainly wouldst appear. Thy worth conspicuous in thy haughty cheer. No one can say, to him Orlando cried. But that a valiant cavalier thou art. For such a brave desire can ill reside. Tis my assurance, in a humble heart. Since thou wouldst see me, would that thou inside. Couldst as without, behold me. I apart. Will lay me helm, that in all points thy will. And purpose of thy quest I may fulfill. But when thou well hast scanned me with thine eye. To that thine other wish as well attend. It yet remains for thee to satisfy. The want, which leads thee after me to wend. That thou mayest mark if, in my valour, I. Agree with that bold cheer thou so commend. And now, exclaimed the Tartar, for the rest. For my first want is thoroughly red rest. Orlando, all this while, from head to feet. Searches the Paynim with inquiring eyes. Both sides, and next the pommel of his seat. Surveys, yet neither mace nor tuck espies. And asks, how he the combat will repeat. If his good lance at the encounter flies. Take thou no care for that, replied the peer. Thus into many have I stricken fear. I have an oath in heaven to gird no blade. Till Durandana from the count be won. Pursuing whom, I through each road here strayed. With him to reckon for more posts than one. If thou wilt please to hear, my oath I made. When on my head I placed this Morian. Which cask, with all the other arms I bear. A thousand years ago great Hectors were. To these good arms not lacks beside the sword. How it was stolen, to you I cannot say. This now, it seems, is borne by Brava's lord. And hence is he so daring in a fray. Yet well I trust, if I the warrior board. To make him render his ill-gotten prey. Yet more, I seek the champion with desire. To avenge the famous Agrican, my sire. Him this Orlando slew by treachery 274. I what, nor could have slain in otherwise. The count could bear no more, and, tis a lie. Exclaims, and whosoever says so, lies. Him fairly did I slay, Orlando, I. But what thou seekest fortune here supplies. And this the falchion is, which thou hast sought. Which shall be thine if by thy valour bought. Although mine is the falchion, rightfully. Let us for it in courtesy contend. Nor will I in this battle, that it be. More mine than thine, but to a tree suspend. Bear off the weapon freely hence, if me. Thou kill or conquer. As he made an end. He Durandana from his belt unslung. And in midfield upon a sapling hung. Already distant half the range of bow. Is from his opposite each puissant knight. And pricks against the other, nothing slow. To slack the reins or ply the rowels bright. Already dealt is either mighty blow. Where the helm yields a passage to the sight. As if of ice, the shattered lances fly. Broke in a thousand pieces, to the sky. One and the other lance parforce must split. In that the cavaliers refuse to bend. The cavaliers, who in the saddle sit. Returning with the staff's unbroken end. The warriors, who with steed had ever smit. Now, as a pair of hinds in rage contend. For the mead's boundary or river's right. Armed with two clubs, maintain a cruel fight. 275. The truncheons which the valiant champions bear. Fail in the combat, and few blows resist. Both rage with mightier fury, here and there. Left without other weapon than the fist. With this the desperate foes engage, and, where. The hand can grapple, plate and mail untwist. Let none desire, to guard himself from wrongs. A heavier hammer or more holding tongs. How can the Saracen conclude the fray? 
with honor, which he haughtily had sought. Twere forty to waste time in an essay. Where to himself more harm the smiter wrought. Than to the smitten, in conclusion, they. Closed, and the Paynim King Orlando caught. And strained against his bosom. What Jove's son. Did by Antaeus, thinking to have done. Him griped athwart, he, in impetuous mood. Would now push from him, now would closely strain. And waxed so wroth that, in his heat of blood. The Tartar little thought about his reign. Firm in his stirrup self-collected, stood. Roland, and watched his vantage to obtain. He to the other courser's forehead slipped. His wary hand, and thence the bridle stripped. The Saracen essays with all his might. To choke, and from the cell his foemen tear. With either knee Orlando grasps it tight. Nor can the Tartar moor him, here or there. But with the straining of the pain him night. The girts which hold his saddle broken are. Scarce conscious of his fall, Orlando lies. With feet eyed the stirrups, tightening yet his thighs. As falls a sack of armor, with such sound. Tumbled Orlando, when he pressed the plain. King Mandricardo's courser, when he found. His head delivered from the guiding rein. Made off with him, unheeding what the ground. Stumbling through woodland, or by pathway plain. Hither and thither, blinded by his fear. And bore with him the Tartar cavalier. The beauteous Doralis, who sees her guide. So quit the field, dismayed at his retreat. And wanted in his succor to confide. Her hackney drives behind his courser fleet. The pain rates the charger, in his pride. And smites him oftentimes with hands and feet. Threatening, as if he understood his lore. And where he'd stop the courser, chafes him more. Not looking to his feet, by high or low. The beast of craven kind, with headlong force. Three miles in rings had gone, and more would go. But that into a fosse which stopped their course. Not lined with featherbed or quilt below. Tumble, reversed, the rider and his horse. On the hard ground was Mandricardo thrown. Yet neither spoiled himself, nor broke a bone. Here stopped the horse, but him he could not guide. Left without bid his motions to restrain. Brimful of rage and choler, at his side. The Tartar held him, grappled by the mane. Put upon him, to Mandricardo cried. His lady, Doralis, my hackney's reign. Since for the bridle I have little use. For gentle is my palfrey, reined or loose. The pain him deems it were discourtesy. To accept the proffer by the damsel made. But his through other means a reign will be. Since fortune, who his wishes well abade. Made thitherward the false Gabrina flee. After she young Zerbino had betrayed. Who like a she-wolf fled, which, as she hies. At distance hears the hounds and hunters cries. She had upon her back the gallant gear. And the same youthful ornaments and vest. Stripped from the ill-taught damsel for her jeer. That in her spoils the beldam might be drayest. And rode the horse that damsel backed Wylera. Who was among the choicest and the best. Ere yet aware of her, the ancient dame. On Doralis and Mandricardo came. Stortelaine's daughter and the Tartar king. Laugh at the vest of youthful show and shape. Upon that ancient woman, figuring. Like monkey, rather say, like grandam ape. From her the Saracen designs to wring. The rain, and does the deed, upon the rape. Of the crone's bridle, he, with angry cry. Threatens and scares her horse, and makes him fly. He flies and hurries through the forest gray. That ancient woman, almost dead with fear. By hill and dale, by straight and crooked way. By foss and cliff, at hazard, there and here. But it imports me not so much to say. Of her, that I should leave Anglante's peer. Who, from annoyance of a foe released. The broken saddle at his ease repieced. He mounts his horse, and watches long, before. 
departing, if the foe will reappear. Nor seeing puissant manned Ricardo more. At last resolves in search of him to steer. But, as one nurtured well in courtly lore. From thence departed not the cavalier. Till he with kind salutes, in friendly strain. Fair leaves had taken of the loving twain. At his departure waxed Zerbino woe. And Isabella wept for sorrow, they. Had wended with him, but the count, although. Their company was fair and good, said nay. Urging for reason, not so ill could show. In cavalier, as, when upon his way. To seek his foeman out, to take a friend. Who him with arms might succor or defend. Next, if they met the Saracen, before. They should encounter him, besought them say. That he, Orlando, would for three days more. Waiting him, in that territory stay. But. After that, would seek the flags which bore. The golden lilies, and King Charles's array. That man Ricardo through their means might know. If such his pleasure, where to find his foe the lovers promised willingly to do. This, and whatever else he should command. By different ways the cavaliers withdrew. One on the right, and one on the left hand. The count, ere other path he would pursue, took from the sapling, and replaced, his brand. And, where he weaned he might the pain him best. Encounter, thitherward his steed ad rest. The course in pathless woods, which, without rain. The Tartar's charger had pursued astray. Made Roland for two days, with fruitless pain. Follow him, without tidings of his way. Orlando reached a rill of crystal vein. On either bank of which a meadow lay. Which, stained with native hues and rich, he sees. And dotted o'er with fair and many trees. The midday fervor made the shelter sweet to hardy herd as well as naked swain. So that Orlando, well beneath the heat, some deal might wince, oppressed with plate and chain. He entered, for repose, the cool retreat, and found it the abode of grief and pain, and place of sojourn more accursed and fell. On that unhappy day, than tongue can tell. Turning him round, he there, on many a tree, Beheld engraved, upon the woody shore. What is the writing of his deity? He knew, as soon as he had marked the lore. This was a place of those described by me. Whither oft times, attended by Medor. From the near shepherd's cot had wont astray. The beauteous lady, sovereign of Cate. In a hundred knots, amid those green abodes. In a hundred parts, their ciphered names are dight whose many letters are so many goads, which love has in his bleeding here corpite. He would discredit in a thousand modes, that which he credits in his own despite, and would parforce persuade himself, that rind, other Angelica than his had signed. And yet I know these characters, he cried, of which I have so many read and seen. By her may this Medoro be belied. And me, she, figured in the name, may mean. Feeding on such like fantasies, beside. The real truth, did sad Orlando lean. Upon the empty hope, though ill contented. Which he by self illusions had fomented. But stirred and I rekindled it, the more. That he to quench the ill suspicion wrought. Like the incautious bird, by Fowler's lore. Hampered in net or line. Which, in the thought, to free its tangled pinions and to soar, by struggling, is but more securely caught. Orlando passes thither, where a mountain o'erhangs in guise of arch the crystal fountain, splay footed ivy, with its mantling spray, and gaddying vine, the cavern's entry case, where often in the hottest noon of day, the pair had rested, locked in fond embrace. Within the grotto, and without it, they had oftener than in any other place, with charcoal or with chalk their names portrayed, or flourished with the knife's indenting blade. Here from his horse the sorrowing county lit, 
and at the entrance of the grot surveyed. A cloud of words, which seemed but newly writ, and which the young Medoro's hand had made. On the great pleasure he had known in it. The sentence he in verses had arrayed. Which in his tongue, I deem, might make pretense. To polished phrase, and such in ours the sense. Gay plants, green herbage, rill of limpid vein. And, grateful with cool shade, thou gloomy cave. Where oft, by many wooed with fruitless pain. Beauteous Angelica. The child of grave. King Galifron, within my arms has lain. For the convenient harborage you gave. I, poor Medoro, can but in my lays. As recompense, for ever sing your praise. And any loving lord devoutly pray. Damsel and cavalier, and every one. Whom choice or fortune hither shall convey. Stranger or native, to this crystal run. Shade, caverned rock. And grass, and plants, to say. Benignant be to you the fostering sun. And moon, and may the choir of nymphs provide. That never swain his flock may hither guide. In Arabic was writ the blessing said. Known to Orlando like the Latin tongue. Who, versed in many languages, best read. Was in this speech. Which oftentimes from wrong. And injury, and shame, had saved his head. What time he roved the Saracens among. But let him boast not of its former boot. Herbalanced by the present bitter fruit. Three times, and four, and six, the lines impressed. Upon the stone that wretch perused, in vain. Seeking another sense than was expressed. And ever saw the thing more clear and plain. And all the while, within his troubled breast. He felt an icy hand his heart core strain. With mind and eyes close fastened on the block. At length he stood, not differing from the rock. Then well nigh lost all feeling, so a prey. Holy was he to that o'ermastering woe. This is a pang, believe the experienced say. Of him who speaks, which does all griefs outgo. His pride had from his forehead passed away. His chin had fallen upon his breast below. Nor found he, so grief barred each natural vent. Moisture for tears, or utterance for lament. Stiffed within, the impetuous sorrow stays. Which would too quickly issue. So to abide. Water is seen, imprisoned in the vase. Whose neck is narrow and whose swell is wide. What time, when one turns up the inverted base. Towards the mouth, so hastes the hurrying tide. And in the strait encounters such a stop. It scarcely works a passage, drop by drop. He somewhat to himself returned, and thought. How possibly the thing might be untrue. The some one, so he hoped, desired, and sought. To think, his lady would with shame pursue. Or with such weight of jealously had wrought. To whelm his reason, as should him undo. And that he, whosoe'er the thing had planned. Had counterfeited passing well her hand. With such vain hope he sought himself to cheat. And man some deal his spirits and awoke. Then pressed the faithful Brigliadoro's seat. As on the sun's retreat his sister broke. Nor far the warrior had pursued his beat. Ere eddying from a roof he saw the smoke. Heard noise of dog and kine, a farm espied. And thitherward in quest of lodging hide. Languid, he lit, and left his Brigliador. To a discreet attendant, one undressed. His limbs, one doffed the golden spurs he wore. And one bore off, to clean, his iron vest. This was the homestead where the young Medor. Lay wounded, and was here supremely blessed. Orlando here, with other food unfed. Having supped full of sorrow, sought his bed. The more the wretched sufferer seeks for ease. He finds but so much more distress and pain. Who everywhere the loathed handwriting sees. On wall, and door, and window, he would fain. Question his host of this, but holds his peace. 
because, in sooth, he dreads too clear. Too plain. To make the thing, and this would rather shroud. That it may less offend him, with a cloud. Little availed the count his self-deceit. For there was one who spake of it unsought. The shepherd swain, who to allay the heat. With which he saw his guest so troubled, thought. The tale which he was wanted to repeat. Of the two lovers, to each listener taught. A history which many loved to hear. He now, without reserve, gone tell the peer. How at Angelica's persuasive prayer. He to his farm had carried young Medor. Grievously wounded with an arrow, where. In little space she healed the angry sore. But while she exercised this pious care. Love in her heart the lady wounded more. And kindled from small spark so fierce a fire. She burnt all over. Restless with desire. Nor thinking she of mightiest king was born. Who ruled in the east, nor of her heritage. Forced by too puissant love. Had thought no scorn. To be the consort of a poor footpage. His story done, to them in proof was born. The gem, which, in reward for harborage. To her extended in that kind abode. Angelica, at parting, had bestowed. A deadly axe was this unhappy close which, at a single stroke, lopped off the head. When, satiate with innumerable blows. That cruel hangman love his hate had fed. Orlando studied to conceal his woes. And yet the mischief gathered force and spread. And would break out parforce in tears and sighs. Would he, or would be not, from mouth and eyes. When he can give the rein to raging woe. Alone, by others' presence unrepressed. From his full eyes the tears descending flow. In a wide stream, and flood his troubled breast. Mid sob and groan, he tosses to and fro. About his weary bed, in search of rest. And vainly shifting, harder than a rock. And sharper than a nettle found its flock. Amid the pressure of such cruel pain. It passed into the wretched sufferer's head. That oft the ungrateful lady must have lain. Together with her leman. On that bed. Nor less he loathed the couch in his disdain. Nor from the down upstart with less dread. Than churl, who, when about to close his eyes. Springs from the turf. If he a serpent spies. In him, forthwith, such deadly hatred breed. That bed, that house, that swain he will not stay. Till the morn break, or till the dawn succeed. Whose twilight goes before approaching day. In haste, Orlando takes his arms and steed. And to the deepest greenwood wends his way. And, when assured that he is there alone. Gives utterance to his grief in shriek and groan. Never from tears, never from sorrowing. He paused, nor found he peace by night and day. He fled from town, in forest harboring. And in the open air on hard earth lay. He marveled at himself, how such a spring. Of water from his eyes could stream away. And breath was for so many sobs supplied. And thus oft times, amid his mourning, cried. These are no longer real tears which rise. And which I scatter from so full a vein.276 of tears my ceaseless sorrow lacked supplies. They stopped when to mid-height scarce rose my pain. The vital moisture rushing to my eyes. Driven by the fire within me, now would gain. A vent. And it is this which I expend. And which my sorrows and my life will end. No, these, which are the index of my woes. These are not sighs, nor sighs are such. They fail. At times, and have their season of repose. I feel, my breast can never less exhale. It's sorrow, love, who with his pinions blows. The fire about my heart, creates this gale. Love, by what miracle does thou contrive? It wastes not in the fire thou keep'st alive. I am not, 
am not what I seem to sight. What Roland was is dead and underground. Slain by that most ungrateful lady spite. Whose faithlessness inflicted such a wound. Divided from the flesh, I am his sprite. Which in this hell, tormented, walks its round. To be, but in its shadow left above. A warning to all such as thrust in love. All night about the forest roved the count. And, at the break of daily light, was brought. By his unhappy fortune to the fount. Where his inscription young Medoro wrought. To see his wrongs inscribed upon that mount. Inflamed his fury so, in him was not. But turned to hatred, frenzy, rage, and spite. Nor paused he more, but bared his falchion bright. Cleft through the writing, and the solid block. Into the sky, in tiny fragments sped. Were worth each sapling and the caverned rock. Where Medor and Angelica were red. So scathed, that they to shepherd or to flock. Thenceforth shall never furnish shade or bed. And that sweet fountain, late so clear and pure. From such tempestuous wrath was ill secure. For he turf, stone, and trunk, and shoot, and lop. Cast without cease into the beauteous source. Till, turbid from the bottom to the top. Never again was clear the troubled course. At length, for lack of breath, compelled to stop. When he is bathed in sweat, and wasted force. Serves not his fury more, he falls, and lies. Upon the mead, and, gazing upward, sighs. Wearied and woebegone, he fell to ground. And turned his eyes toward heaven, nor spake he aught. Nor ate, nor slept, till in his daily round. The golden sun had broken thrice, and sought. His rest anew, nor ever ceased his wound. To rankle, till it marred his sober thought. At length, impelled by frenzy, the fourth day. He from his limbs tore plate and mail away. Here was his helmet, there his shield bestowed. His arms far off, and, farther than the rest. His cuirass, through the greenwood wide was strode. All his good gear, in fine, and next his vest. He rent. And, in his fury, naked showed. His shaggy paunch, and all his back and breast. And gone that frenzy act, so passing dread. Of stranger folly never shall be said. So fierce his rage, so fierce his fury grew. That all obscured remained the warrior's sprite. Nor, for forgetfulness, his sword he drew. Or wondrous deeds, I trow, had wrought the night. But neither this, nor bill, nor axe to hew. Was needed by Orlando's peerless might. He of his prowess gave high proofs and full. Who a tall pine uprooted at a pull. He many others, with as little let. As fennel, walwort stem, or dill, uptore. And ilex, knotted oak, and fir upset. And beech, and mountain ash, and elm tree hoar. He did what fowler, ere he spreads his net. Does, to prepare the champagne for his lore. By stubble, rush, and nettle stalk, and broke. Like these, old sturdy trees and stems of oak. The shepherd swains, who hear the tumult nigh. Leaving their flocks beneath the greenwood tree. Some here some there across the forest high. And hurry thither, all, the cause to see. But I have reached such point, my history. If I owe Erpus this bound, may irksome be. And I my story will delay to end. Rather than by my tediousness offend. Canto. Chapter 24. Odorico's and Gabrina's guilt repaid. Youthful Zerbino sets at large the train. He in defense of good Orlando's blade. Is afterwards by Mandricardo slain. Isabel weeps, by Rodamont is made. War on the Tartar king, and truce again. To succor Agrament and his array. Who to the lilies are well nigh a prey. Let him make haste his feet to disengage. Nor lime his wings, whom love has made a prize. For love, in fine, 
is not but frenzied rage. By universal suffrage of the wise. And albeit some may show themselves more sage. Than Roland, they but sin in other guise. For, what proves folly more than on this shelf? Thus, for another, to destroy oneself? Various are love's effects, but from one source. All issue, though they lead a different way. He is, as, twere, a forest, where par force. Who enter its recess go astray. And here and there pursue their devious course. In sum, to you I, for conclusion, say. He who grows old in love, besides all pain. Which waits such passion, well deserves a chain. One here may well reproach me, brother, thou. Sayest not thy faults, while thou dost others fit. I answer that I see mine plain enow. In this my lucid interval of wit. And strive and hope with all I shall forego. This dance of folly, but yet cannot quit. As quickly as I would, the faults I own. For my disease has reached the very bone. I in the other canto said before. Orlando, furious and insensate white. Having torn off the arms and vest he wore. And cast away from him his falchion bright. And uptorn trees. And made the forest hoar. And hollow cave resound, and rocky height. Towards the noise some shepherds, on that side. Their heavy sins or evil planets guide. Viewing the madman's wondrous feats more near. The fright band of rustics turned and fled. But they, in their disorder, knew not where. As happens oftentimes in sudden dread. The madman in a thought is in their rear. Seizes a shepherd, and plucks off his head. And this as easily as one might take. Apple from tree, or blossom from the brake. He by one leg the heavy trunk in air. Upheaved, and made a mace the rest to bray. Astounded, upon earth he stretched one pair. Who haply may awake at the last day. The rest, who well advised and nimble are. At once desert the field and scour away. Nor had the madman their pursuit deferred. Had he not turned already on their herd. By such examples warned, the rustic crew. Abandoned in the field's pick, scythe, and plough. And to the roof of house and temple flew. For ill secure was elm or willow's bough. From hence the maniac's horrid rage they view. Who, dealing kick, and bite, and scratch, and blow. Horses and oxen slew, his helpless prey. And well the courser ran who, scaped that day. Already mightst thou hear how loudly ring. The hubbub and the din, from neighboring farms. Outcry and horn, and rustic trumpeting. And faster sound of bells. With various arms. By thousands, with spontoon, bow, spit, and sling. Lo! From the hills the rough militia swarms. As many peasants from the vale below. To make rude war upon the madman go. As beats the wave upon the salt sea shore. Sportive at first, which southern wind has stirred. When the next, bigger than what went before. And bigger than the second, breaks the third. And the vexed water waxes evermore. And louder on the beach the surf is heard. The crowd, increasing so, the count assail. And drop from mountain and ascend from dale. Twice he ten peasants slaughtered in his mood. Who, charging him in disarray, were slain. And this experiment right clearly showed. To stand aloof was safest for the train. Was none who from his body could draw blood. For iron smote the impassive skin in vain. So had heaven's king preserved the count from scathe. To make him guardian of his holy faith. He would have been in peril on that day. Had he been made of vulnerable mold. And might have learned was, t'was to cast away. His sword, and, weaponless, so play the bold. The rustic troop retreated from the fray. Seeing no stroke upon the madman told. Since him no other enemy attends. Orlando to a neighboring township wends. 
since every one had left the place for dread. No white he found within it, small or great. But here was homely food in plenty spread. Vittle, well sorting with the pastoral state. Here, acorns undistinguishing from bread 277. By tedious fast and fury driven to sate. His hunger, he employed his hand and jaw. On what he first discovered, cooked or raw. Thence, repossessed with the desire to rove. He, through the land, did man and beast pursue. And scouring, in his frenzy, wood and grove. Took sometimes goat or doe of dappled hue. Often with bear and with wild boar he strove. And with his naked hand the brutes o' earthrow. And gorging oftentimes the savage fare. Swallowed the prey with all its skin and hair. Now right, now left, he wandered, far and wide. Throughout all France, and reached a bridge one day. Beneath which ran an ample water's tide. Of steep and broken banks, a turret gray. Was builded by the spacious river's side. Discerned, from far and near, and every way. What here he did I shall relate elsewhere. Who first must make the Scottish prince my care. When Roland had departed on his quest. Zerbino paused some deal. Then, in his rear. Slowly his steed by the same path ad rest. Which had been taken by Englanti's peer. Nor two miles on his way, I think, had pressed. When he beheld a captive cavalier. Upon a sorry, little, hackney tide. And by armed horsemen watched on either side. Zerbino speedily the prisoner knew. And Isabel, as soon, when nigh surveyed. This was Sir Odoric, the Biscayan, who, like Wolf, the guardian of a lamb was made. To whom, of all his friends esteemed most true. Zerbino Isabella had conveyed. Hoping, one hitherto by him found just. Would now, as ever, have approved his trust. Even then how all had chanced, with punctual lore. Was Isabel relating to the night. How in the pinnace she was saved, before. The broken vessel sank at sea outright. Odoric's assault, and next, how bandits bore. Her to the cavern, in a mountain dight. Nor Isabella yet her tale has told. When bound the malefactor they behold. The two that had Sir Odoric in their ward. The royal damsel Isabella knew. And deemed he was her lover and her lord. That pricked beside the lady, fair of hue. More, that the bearings on his shield record. The honors of the stem from which he grew. And found, as better they observed his cheer. They had judged rightly of the cavalier. Lighting, with open arms and hurried pace. They make toward Zerbino eagerly. And, kneeling, with bare head, the prince embrace. Where lord is clipped by one of less degree. Zerbino, looking either in the face. Knows one Caribo of Biscay to be. And Sir Almonio, his co-mate, the pair. Charged, under Odoric, with the galley's care. Almonio cried, since God is pleased in the end. Gramercy. Isabel should be with you. My lord, I very clearly comprehend. I should deliver tidings, nothing new. If I should now inform you why I wend. With this offender, whom with me you view. Since she, who at his hands has suffered worst. The story of his crimes will have rehearsed. How me that traitor dupe thou hast not to learn. What time he rid himself of me, nor how. Caribo, who would have avenged the scorn. Intended to the damsel, was laid low. But that which followed, upon my return. By her unseen or heard, she cannot know. So as to thee the story to have told. The sequel of it then will I unfold. I seaward from the city, with a store. Of nags, collected in a hurry, fair. I watchful, if the trace I can explore. Of those left far behind me, I repair. Thitherward. I arrive upon the shore. The place where they were left, look everywhere. 
nor sign of them perceive upon that strand. Except some steps, new printed on the sand. The steps I traced into the forest drear. Nor far within the greenwood had I wound. When, guided by a noise which smote my ear, I saw my comrade bleeding on the ground. Of Isabel I asked the cavalier. Of Odoric. And what hand had dealt his wound? And thence departed, when the thing I knew. Seeking the wretch these precipices through. Wide circling still I go, and through that day. I find no other sign of him that fled. At length returned to where Caribo lay. Who had the ground about him died so red. That he, had I made little more delay. A grave would have required, and. More than bed. And sucker of the leech, to make him sound. Craved priest and friar to lay him in the ground. I had him to the neighboring city brought. And boarded with a friendly host, and there. Caribo's cure in little time was wrought. Beneath an old chirurgeon's skillful care. This finished, having arms and horses brought. We thence together to the court repair. Of King Alfonso of Biscay, where I. Find out the traitor, and to fight defy. The monarch's justice, who fair field and free. Allowed us for the duel, and my right. And destiny to boot, for destiny. Oftener makes conquest where she listeth. Light. So backed my arms, that felon was by me. Worsted, and made a prisoner in the fight. Alfonso, having heard his guilt confessed. Bade me dispose of him as liked me best. Him would I neither loose, nor yet have slain. But, as thou sayest, in bonds to thee convey. That whether he should be condemned to pain. Or death. It should be thine his doom to say. I, hearing thou wert with King Charlemagne. Thither, in hope to find thee, took my way. I thank my God, that thee upon this ground. Where I least hope to meet thee, I have found. As well I render thanks, that Isabel. I see restored to thee, I know not how. Of whom, by reason of that traitor fell. I deemed thou never more shouldst tidings know. In silence Prince Zerbino hears him tell. His story, gazing upon Odoric's brow. In pity, more than hate, as he perpends. How foully such a goodly friendship ends. After Almonio had his tale suspended. Astounded for a while the prince stood by. Wondering, that he who least should have offended. Had him requited with such treachery. But, his long fit of admiration ended. Waking from his amazement with a sigh. Questioned the prisoner in the horseman's hold. It that was true the cavalier had told. The faithless man alighted, and down fell. Upon his bended knees, 278 and answered, Sir. All people that on middle earth do dwell. Through weakness of their nature, sin and error. One thing alone distinguishes the well. An evil doer, this, at every stir. Of least desire, submits, without a blow. That arms, but yields as well to stronger foe. Had I been charged some castle to maintain. And, without contest, on the first assault. Hoisted the banners of the hostile train. For cowardice, or treason. Fowler fault. Upon my eyes, a well-deserved pain. Thou mightst have justly closed the darksome vault. But, yielding to superior force, I read. I should not merit blame, but praise and mead. The stronger is the enemy, the more. Easily is the vanquished side excused. I could but faith maintain as, girded sore. The leaguered fort to keep her faith is used. Even so, with all the sense, with all the lore. By sovereign wisdom into me infused. This I essayed to keep, but in the end. To o'ermastering assault was forced to bend. So said Sir Odoric, and after showed. Though, twere too tedious to recount his suit. Him no light cause had stirred, but puissant goad. If ever earnestness of prayer could boot. 
to melt a heart that with resentment glowed. If e'er humility produced good fruit, it well might here avail. Since all that best moves a hard heart, Sir Odoric now expressed. Whether or no to venge such infamy. Youthful Zerbino doubted, the review. Of faithless Odorico's treachery. Moved him to death the felon to pursue. The recollection of the amity. So long maintained between them. With the dew. Of pity cooled the fury in his mind. And him to mercy towards the wretch inclined. While Scotland's prince is doubting in such wise. To keep him captive, or to loose his chain. Or to remove him from before his eyes. By dooming him to die, or live in pain. Loud neighing, thitherward the palfrey hies. From which the Tartar king had stripped the rein. And the old Harridan, who had before. Nigh caused Zerbino's death, among them bore. The horse, that had the others of that band. Heard at a distance, thither her conveyed. Sore weeping came the old woman, and demand. For succor, in her trouble, vainly made. Zerbino, when he saw her, raised his hand. To heaven, that had to him such grace displayed. Giving him to decide that couple's fate. The only two that had deserved his hate. The wicked hag is kept, so bids the peer. Until he is determined what to do. He to cut off her nose and either ear. Now thought, and her as an example shew. Next, twere far better, deemed the cavalier. If to the vultures he her carcass threw. He diverse punishments a while revolved. And thus the warrior finally resolved. He to his comrades turned him round, and said. To let the traitor live I am content. Who, if full grace he has not merited. Yet merits not to be so foully shent. I, as I find his fault of love was bred. To give him life and liberty consent. And easily we all excuse his own. When on commanding love the blame is thrown. Often has love turned upside down a brain. Of sounder wit than that to him assigned. And led to mischief of far deeper stain. Then has so outraged us. Let Odoric find. Pardon his offenses, I the pain. Of these should justly suffer, who was blind. Blind when I gave him such a trust, nor saw. How easily the fire consumes the straw. Then gazing upon Odoric, gone say. This is the penance I enjoin to thee. That thou a year shalt with the beldam stay. Nor ever leave this while her company. But, roving or at rest, by night or day. Shalt never for an hour without her be and her shall even unto death maintain. Against whoever threatens her with pain. I will, if so this woman shall command. With whosoer he be, thou battle do. I will this while that thou all France's land. From city shall to city, wander through. So says he, for as Odoric at his hand. Well merits death, for his foul trespass do. This is a pitfall for his feet to shape which it will be rare fortune if he scape. So many women, many men betrayed. And wronged by her, have been so many more. Not without strife by night shall he be stayed. Who was beneath his care the beldam whore. So, for their crimes, shall both alike be paid. She for her evil actions done before. And he who wrongfully shall her defraud. Nor far can go before he finds an end. To keep the pact Zerbino makes him swear. A mighty oath, under this penalty. That should he break his faith, and anywhere. Into his presence led by fortune be. Without more mercy. Without time for prayer. A cruel death shall wait him, as his fee. Next by his comrades, so their lord commands. Sir Odoric is unpinioned from his bands. Caribo frees the traitor in the end. Almonio yielding, yet as ill content. For much Zerbino's mercies both offend. Which thus their so desired revenge prevent. Thence, he disloyal to his prince and friend. 
in company with that cursed woman went. What these befell Sir Turpin has not said. But more I once in other author read. This author vouches, I declare not who. That hence they had not one day's journey wended. When Odoric, to all pact, all faith, untrue. For riddance of the pest to him commended. About Gabrina's neck a halter threw. And left her to a neighboring elm suspended. And in a year, the place he does not name. Almonio by the traitor did the same. Zerbino, who the paladin pursues. And loath would be to lose the cavalier. To his Scottish squadron of himself sends news. Which for its captain well might stand in fear. Almonio sends, and many matters shews. Too long at full to be recited here. Almonio sends, Caribo next, nor stayed. Other with him, besides the royal maid. So mighty is the love Zerbino bore. Nor less than his the love which Isabel. Nursed for the valorous paladin, so sore. He longed to know if that bold infidel. The count had found. Who in the duel tore. Him from his horse, together with the cell. That he to Charles's camp, till the third day. Be ended, will not measure back his way. This was the term for which Orlando said. He should wait him, who yet no falchion wears. Nor is there place the count has visited. But thither in his search Zerbino fares. Last to those trees, upon whose bark was read. The ungrateful lady's writing, he repairs. Little beside the road, and there finds all. In strange disorder, rock and waterfall. Far off, he saw that something shining lay. And spied Orlando's corslet on the ground. And next his helm. But not that headpiece gay. Which whilom African Almontes crowned. He in the thicket heard a coarser neigh. And, lifting up his visage at the sound. Saw Brigliadoro the green herbage browse. With rain yet hanging at his saddle bows. For Durandane, he sought the greenwood, round. Which separate from the scabbard met his view. And next the surcoat, but in tatters, found. That, in a hundred rags, the champagne strew. Zerbino and Isabel, in grief profound. Stood looking on, nor what to think they knew. They of all matters else might think, besides. The fury which the wretched Count misguides. Had but the lovers seen a drop of blood. They might have well believed Orlando dead. This while the pair, beside the neighboring flood. Beheld a shepherd coming, pale with dread. He just before, as on a rock he stood. Had seen the wretch's fury, how he shed. His arms about the forest, tore his clothes. Slew hinds, and caused a thousand other woes. Questioned by good Zerbino, him the swain. Of all which there had chanced, informed aright. Zerbino marveled, and believed with pain. Although the proofs were clear, this as it might. He from his horse dismounted on the plain. Full of compassion, in afflicted plight. And went about, collecting from the ground. The various relics which were scattered round. Isabel lights as well. And, where they lie. Dispersed, the various arms uniting goes. Lo! Them a damsel joins, who frequent sigh. Heaves from her heart, and doleful visage shows. If any ask me who the dame, and why. She mourns, and with such sorrow overflows. I say, twas Flordalus, who, bound in trace. Of her lost lover's footsteps, sought that place. Her brandymart had left disconsolate. Without farewell, I the court of Charlemagne. Who there expected him six months or eight. And lastly, since he came not there again. From sea to sea, had sought her absent mate. Through Alpine and through Pyrenean chain. In every place had sought the warrior. Save. Within the palace of Atlantis' grave. If she had been in that enchanted hold. She might before have seen the cavalier. Wandering with Bradamant, Roger O'Bold. 
Gradasso and Ferro and Bravas Pier. 279. But, when Astolfo chased the wizard old. With the loud bugle, horrible to hear. To Paris he returned, but not of this. As yet was known to faithful Flordalus. To Flordalus were known the arms and sword. Who, as I say, by chance so joined the twain. And Brigliadoro, left without his lord. Yet bearing at the saddlebow his rein. She with her eyes the unhappy signs explored. And she had heard the tidings of the swain. Who had alike related. How he viewed. Orlando running frantic, in his mood. Here Prince Zerbino all the arms unites. And hangs, like a fair trophy, on a pine. And, to preserve them safe from errant knights. Natives or foreigners, in one short line. Upon the sapling's verdant surface writes. Orlando's arms, King Charles's paladine. As he would say, let none this harness move. Who cannot with its lord his prowess prove? Zerbino having done the pious deed. Is bounding him to climb his horse, when, lo! The Tartar king arrives upon the mead. He, at the trophied pine tree's gorgeous show. Beseeches him the cause of this to read. Who lets him, as rehearsed, the story know? When, without further pause, the Paynim lord. Hastes gladly to the pine, and takes the sword. None can, he said, the action reprehend. Nor first I make the falchion mine today. 280. And to its just possession I pretend. Where'er I find it, be it where it may. Orlando, this not daring to defend. Has feigned him mad, and cast the sword away. But if the champion so excuse his shame. This is no cause I should forego my claim. Take it not thence, to him Zerbino cried. Nor think to make it thine without a fight. If so thou tookest Hector's arms of pride. By theft thou hadst them, rather than by right. Without more parley spurred upon each side. Well matched in soul and valor either knight. Already echoed are a thousand blows. Nor yet well entered are the encountering foes. In scaping Durandain, a flame in show. He shifts so quickly, is the Scottish lord. He leaps about his courser like a doe. Where'er the road best footing does afford. And well it is that he should not forego. An inch of vantage, who, if once that sword. Smite him, will join the enamoured ghosts, which rove. Amid the mazes of the myrtle grove. As the swift-footed dog, who does espy. Swine severed from his fellows, hunts him hard. And circles round about, but he lies by. Till once the restless foe neglect his guard. So, while the sword descends, or hangs on high. Zerbino stands, attentive how to ward. How to save life and honor from surprise. And keeps a wary eye, and smites and flies. On the other side, where'er the foe is seen. To threaten stroke in vain, or make good. He seems an alpine wind, two hills between. That in the month of March shakes leafy wood. Which to the ground now bends the forest green. Now whirls the broken boughs, at random strewed. Although the prince wards many, in the end. One mighty stroke he cannot scape or fend. In the end he cannot scape one downright blow. Which enters, between sword and shield, his breast. As perfect was the plate and corslet. So. Thick was the steel wherein his paunch was drayest. But the destructive weapon, falling low. Equally opened either iron vest. And cleft whatever it swept in its descent. And to the saddlebow, through cuirass, went. And, but that somewhat short the blow descends. It would Zerbino like a cane divide. But him so little in the quick offends. This scarce beyond the skin is scarified. More than a span in length the wound extends. Of little depth, of blood a tepid tide. To his feet descending, with a crimson line. Stains the bright arms which on the warrior shine. 
Tis so, I sometimes have been wont to view. A hand, more white than alabaster, part. The silver cloth, with ribbon red of hue. A hand I often feel divide my heart. Here little vantage young Zerbino drew. From strength and greater daring, and from art. For in the temper of his arms and might. Too much the Tartar king excelled the knight. The fearful stroke was mightier in show. Than in effect, by which the prince was pressed. So that poor Isabel, distraught with woe. Felt her heart severed in her frozen breast. The Scottish prince, all over in a glow. With anger and resentment was posseist. And putting all his strength in either hand. Smote full the Tartar's helmet with his brand. Almost on his steed's neck the Tartar fell. Bent by the weighty blow Zerbino sped. And, had the helmet been unfenced by spell. The biting falchion would have cleft his head. The king, without delay, avenged him well. Nor I for you till other season, said. We'll keep this gift, and leveled at his crest. Hoping to part Zerbino to the chest. Zerbino, on the watch, whose eager eye. Waits on his wit, wills quickly to the right. But not withal so quickly, as to fly. The trenchant sword, which smote the shield outright. And cleft from top to bottom equally. Shearing the sleeve beneath it, and the knight. Smote on his arm, and next the harness rend. And even to the champion's thigh descended. Zerbino, here and there, seeks every way. By which to wound, nor yet his end obtains. For, while he smites upon that armor gay. Not even a feeble dint the coat retains. On the other hand, the tartar in the fray. Such vantage o'er the Scottish prince obtains. Him he has wounded in seven parts or eight. And reft his shield and half his helmet's plate. He ever wastes his blood, his energies. Fail, though he feels it not, as, t'would appear. Unharmed, the vigorous heart new force supplies. To the weak body of the cavalier. His lady, during this, whose crimson dies. Where chased by dread, to Doralis drew near. And for the love of heaven, the damsel wooed. To stop that evil and disastrous feud. Doralis, who as courteous was as fair. And ill assured withal, how it would end. Willingly granted Isabella's prayer. And straight to truce and peace disposed her friend. As well Zerbino, by the other's care. Was brought his vengeful anger to suspend. And, wending where she willed, the Scottish lord. Left unachieved the adventure of the sword. Fair Flordalus, who ill maintained descries. The goodly sword of the unhappy count. In secret garden, and so laments the prize. Forgone, she weeps for rage. And smite her front. She would move Brandimart to this emprise. And, should she find him, and the fact recount. Weens, for short season will the Tartar foe. Exulting in the ravished falchion go. Seeking him morn and evening, but in vain. Flordalus after Brandimart did fare. And widely wandered from him, who again. Already had to Paris made repair. So far the damsel pricked by hill and plain. She reached the passage of a river, where. She saw the wretched count, but what befell. The Scottish prince, Zerbino, let me tell. For to leave Durandana such misdeed. To him appeared, it passed all other woes. Though he could hardly sit upon his steed. Though mighty loss of life-blood, which yet flows. Now, when his anger and his heat secede. After short interval, his anguish grows. His anguish grows, with such impetuous pains. He feels that life is ebbing from his veins. For weakness can the prince no further high. And so beside a fount is forced to stay. Him to assist the pitying maid would try. But knows not what to do, not what to say. For lack of comfort she beholds him die. Since every city is too far away. Wherein this need she could resort to leech. 
whose succor she might purchase or beseech. She, blaming fortune, and the cruel sky, can only utter fond complaints and vain. Why sank I not in ocean, was her cry. When first I reared my sail upon the main, Zerbino, who on her his languid eye, had fixed, as she bemoaned her, felt more pain, than that enduring and strong anguish bred, through which the suffering youth was well nigh dead. So be thou pleased, my heart, Zerbino cried, to love me yet, when I am dead and gone, as to abandon thee without a guide, and not to die, distresses me alone. For did it me in place secure betide, to end my days, this earthly journey done, I cheerful, and content, and fully blessed, would die, since I should die upon thy breast. But since to abandon thee, to whom a prize, I know not, my sad fate compels, I swear. My Isabella, by that mouth, those eyes. By what enchained me first, that lovely hair. My spirit, troubled and despairing, highs. Into hell's deep and gloomy bottom, where. To think, thou wert abandoned so by me. Of all its woes the heaviest pain will be. 281. At this the sorrowing Isabel, declining. Her mournful face, which with her tears o'erflows. Towards the sufferer, and her mouth conjoining. To her Zerbino's, languid as a rose. Rose gathered out of season, and which, pining. Fades where it on the shadowy hedgerow grows. Exclaims, without me think not so, my heart. On this your last, long, journey to depart. Of this, my heart, conceive not any fear. For I will follow thee to heaven or hell. It fits our souls together quit this sphere. Together go, for I together dwell. No sooner close thine eyelids shall appear. Then either me internal grief will quell. Or, has it not such power, I hear protest. I with this sword today will pierce my breast. I of our bodies cherish hope not light. That they shall have a happier fate when dead. Together, to entomb them, may some white. Haply by pity moved, be hither led. She the poor remnants of his vital sprite. Went on collecting, as these words she said. And while yet aught remains, with mournful lips. The last faint breath of life devoutly sips. Twas here his feeble voice Zerbino manned. Crying, my deity, I beg and pray. By that love witnessed, when thy father's land. Thou quittedst for my sake. And, if I may. In anything command thee, I command. That, with God's pleasure, thou live out thy day. Nor ever banish from thy memory. That, well as man can love, have I loved thee. God haply will provide thee with good aid. To free thee from each churlish deed I fear. As, when in the dark cavern thou wast stayed. He sent, to rescue thee on Glanty's pier. So he, Gramercy, succored thee dismayed. At sea, and from the wicked Biscainer. And, if thou must choose death, in place of worse. Then only choose it, as a lesser curse. I think not these last words of Scotland's knight. Were so expressed, that he was understood. With these, he finished, like a feeble light. Which need supply of was, or other food. Who is there, that has power to tell aright? The gentle Isabella's doleful mood? When stiff, her loved Zerbino, with pale face. And cold as ice, remained in her embrace. On the ensanguined course, in sorrow drowned. The damsel throws herself, in her despair. And shriek so loud that wood and plain resound. For many miles about. Nor does she spare. Bosom or cheek, but still, with cruel wound. One and the other smites the afflicted fair. And wrongs her curling lock of golden grain. I calling on the well-loved youth in vain. She with such rage, such fury, was posseist. That, in her transport, she Zerbino's glaive would easily have turned against her breast. 
ill keeping the command her lover gave. But that a hermit, from his neighboring rest, accustomed oft to seek the fountain wave, his flagon at the cooling stream to fill, opposed him to the damsel's evil will. The reverend father, who with natural sense, abundant goodness happily combined, and, with ensamples fraught and eloquence, was full of charity towards mankind. With efficacious reasons her did fence. And to endurance Isabel inclined. Placing, from ancient testament and new. Women, as in a mirror, for her view. The holy man next made the damsel see. That save in God there was no true content. And proved all other hope was transitory. Fleeting, of little worth, and quickly spent and urged withal so earnestly his plea. He changed her ill and obstinate intent, and made her, for the rest of life, desire, to live devoted to her heavenly sire. Not that she would her mighty love forbear, for her dead lord, nor yet his relic slight. These, did she halt or journey, everywhere, would Isabel have with her, day and night. The hermit therefore seconding her care, who, for his age, was sound and full of might. They on his mournful horse Zerbino placed, and traversed many a day that woodland waste. The cautious elder would not bear away. Thus all alone with him that damsel bland. Thither, where in a cave, concealed from day, his solitary cell hard by did stand. Within himself exclaiming, I convey with peril fire and fuel in one hand. Nor in such bold experiments the sage wisely would trust to prudence or to age. He thought to bear her to Provence, where, near the city of Marseilles, a borough stood, which had a sumptuous monastery, here, of ladies was a holy sisterhood. And, hither to transport the cavalier, they stowed his body in a chest of wood, made in a town by the wayside, and which was long and roomy, and well closed with pitch. So, compassing a mighty round, they fare through wildest parts, for many and many a day. Because, the war extending everywhere, they seek to hide themselves as best they may. At length a cavalier arrests the pair that with foul scorn and outrage bars their way of whom you more in fitting time shall learn. But to the Tartar king I now return. After the fight between the two two eighty-two was done. Already told by me, the king withdrew. To a cooling shade and river from the sun. His horse's reins and saddle to undo. Letting the courser at his pleasure run. Browsing the tender grass the pasture through. But he reposed short time ere he descried. An errant knight descend the mountain side. Him Doralis, as soon as he his front. Uplifted, knew, and showed him to her knight. Saying, Behold! The haughty Rodamont. Unless the distance has deceived my sight. To combat with thee, he descends the mount. Now it behoves thee put forth all thy might. To lose me, his betrothed, a mighty cross. The monarch deems, and comes to venge his loss. As a good hawk, who duck or woodcock shy. Partridge or pigeon, or such other prey. Seeing towards her from a distance fly. Raises her head, and shows her blithe and gay. So manned Ricardo, in security. Of crushing Rodamont in that affray. Gladly his courser seized, best rode the seat. Reined him and in the stirrups fixed his feet. When the two hostile warriors were so near, that words could be exchanged between the twain. Loudly began the monarch of Argier, to threat with head and hand, in haughty strain, that to repentance he will bring the peer, who lightly for a pleasure, rash and vain, had scrupled not his anger to excite, who dearly will the offered scorn requite. When Mandricardo, he but vainly tries. To fright, who threatens me, by words unscared. Woman, or child, or him he terrifies. 
witless of warfare. Not me, who regard. With more delight than rest, which others prize. The stirring battle, and who am prepared. My foemen in the lists or field to meet. Armed or unarmed, on horse or on my feet. They pass to outrage, shout, and ire, unsheath. The brand, and loudly smites each cruel foe. Like winds, which scarce at first appear to breathe. Next shake the oak and ash tree as they blow. Then to the skies up whirl the dusty wreath. Then level forests, and lay houses low. And bear the storm abroad, o'er land and main. By which the flocks in greenwood holt are slain. Of those two infidels, unmatched in worth. The valiant heart and strength, which thus exceed. To such a warfare and such blows give birth. As suits with warrior of so bold a seed. At the loud sound and horrid, trembles earth. When the swords cross, and to the stroke succeed. Quick sparks. Or rather, flashing to the sky. Bright flames by thousands and by thousands fly. Without once gathering breath, without repose. The champions one another still assail. Striving, now here, now there, with deadly blows. To rive the plate, or penetrate the mail. Nor this one gains, nor the other ground foregoes. But, as if girded in by foss or pale. Or, as too dearly sold they deem an inch. Ne'er from their close and narrow circle flinch. Mid thousand blows, so, with two-handed swing. On his foe's forehead smote the Tartar knight. He made him see, revolving in a ring. Myriads of fiery balls and sparks of light. The croup, with head reversed, the Sarzan king. Now smote, as if deprived of all his might. The stirrups lost, and in her sight, so well. Beloved, appeared about to quit the cell. But as steel arbalest that's loaded sore. By how much is the engine charged and strained? By lever or by crane, with so much more. Fury returns, its ancient bent regained. And. In discharging its destructive store. Inflicts worse evil than itself sustained. So rose that African with ready blade. And straight with double force the stroke repaid. Rodamont smites, and in the very place. Where he was smit, the Tartar in return. But cannot wound the Sarzan in the face. Because his Trojan arms the weapon turn. Yes so astounds, he leaves him not in case. If it be morn or evening to discern. Rodamont stopped not, but in fury sped. A second blow, still aiming at his head. King Mandricardo's courser, who abhorred. The whistling of the steel which round him flew. Saved, with sore mischief to himself, his lord. In that he backed the falchion to a shoe. Aimed at his master, not at him, the sword. Smote him across the head, and cleft it through. No Trojan helm defends the wretched horse. Like Mandricardo, and he dies par force. He falls, and Mandricardo on the plain. No more astound, slides down upon his feet. And whirls his sword, to see his courser slain. He storms all over fired with angry heat. At him the Sarzan monarch drives amain. Who stands as firm as rock which billows beat. And so it happened, that the courser good. Fell in the charge, while fast the footman stood. The African, who feels his horse give way. The stirrups quits, and lightly from the cell. Is freed, and springs on earth, for the assay. Hence matched anew, stands either infidel. Worse than before the battle boils, while they. With pride and anger, and with hatred swell. About to close, but that, with flowing rain. A messenger arrives to part the twain. A messenger arrives, that from the moor. With many others, news through France conveyed. Who word to simple knight and captain bore. To join the troops, beneath their flags arrayed. For he, the emperor, who the lilies wore. Siege to their quarters had already laid. 
and, save quick succor that there was at rest. He read, their army's scathe was manifest. The Moorish messenger not only knows. By ensigns and by vest, the warlike pair. But by the circling blades, and furious blows. With which no other hands could wound the air. Hence dared not, twixt champions interpose. Nor deemed his orders an assurance were. From such impetuous fury, nor the saw. Which says ambassadors are safe by law. But to fair Duralis approached, and said. Marcellius, Agrament, and Stordelaine. Within weak works, with scanty troops to aid. Were close beleaguered by the Christian train. And, having told his tale, the damsel prayed. That this she to the warriors would explain. And would accord the pair, and to their post. Dispatch, for rescue of the Moorish host. The lady, with bold heart, twixt either foe. Threw herself, and exclaimed, I you command. By the large love you hear me, as I know. That you to better use reserve the brand. And that you instantly in succor go. Of our host, menaced by the Christian band. Which now, besieged within its camp, attends. Ruin or speedy succor from its friends. The messenger rehearsed, when she had done. Fully the peril of the Paynim train. And said, that he bore letters to the son. Of Yulian, from the son of King Trojan. The message ended, every grudge foregone. Twas finally resolved between the twain. They should conclude a truce, until the day. The Moorish siege was raised, their strife delay. Intending, when from siege their chivalry. Shall be relieved, the one and the other knight. No longer to remain in company. But bandy cruel war was with fell despite. Until determined by their arms shall be. To whom the royal dame belongs of right. And she, between whose hands their solemn troth. They plighted, was security for both. 283. Discord, at hearing this, impatient grew. With any truce or treaty ill content. And that such fair agreement should ensue. Pride, who was present, could as ill consent. But love was there, more puissant than the two. Equaled of none in lofty hardiment. And launching from his bow his shafts of proof. With these, made pride and discord stand aloof. To keep the truce the rival warriors swore. Since so it pleased her well, who either swayed. One of their coursers lacked, four on the moor. Lifeless King Mandricardo's had been laid. Hence, thither, in good time, came Brigliador. Who, feeding, by the river's margin strayed. But here I find me at my canto's end. So, with your license, shall the tale suspend. Canto. Chapter 25. Rogero Richardetto from the Pains. Of fire preserves, doomed by Marcellius dead. He to Rogero afterwards explains. Fully the cause while he to death was led. The mournful Aldegier next entertains. And with them the ensuing morning sped. Vivian and Malagigi to set free. To Bertology sold for hire and fee. Oh! Mighty springs of war in youthful breast. Impetuous force of love, and thirst of praise. Nor yet which most avails is known aright. For each by turns its opposite outweighs. Within the bosom here of either night. Honor, be sure, and duty strongly sways. For the amorous strife between them is delayed. Till to the Moorish camp they furnish aid. Yet love sways more, for, save that the command. Was laid upon them by their lady gay. Neither would in that battle sheath the brand. Till he was crowned with the victorious bay. And agrament might vainly with his band. For either knight's expected succor, stay. Then love is not of evil nature still. He can at times do good, if often ill. Twas now, suspending all their hostile rage. One and the other Paynim cavalier. The Moorish host from siege to disengage. 
for Paris, with the gentle lady, Steer. And with them goes as well that dwarfish page, who tracked the footsteps of the Tartar peer, till he had brought the warrior front to front, in presence with the jealous Rodamont. They at a meet arrived, where, in disport, knights were reposing by a stream, one pair, disarmed, another casked in martial sort, and with them was a dame of visage fair. Of these and other place I shall report. Not now, for first Rogero is my care. That good Rogero, who, as I have shown, into a well the magic shield had thrown. He from that well a mile is hardly gone. Ere he a courier sees arrive at speed. Of those dispatched by King Troiano's son. To knights whom he awaited in his need. From him Rogero hears that, so fordone. By Charles are those who hold the Paynim creed. They will, save quickly succored in the strife. As quickly forfeit liberty and life. Rogero stood a while in pensive case. Whom many warring thoughts at once oppressed. But neither fitted was the time nor place. To make his choice, or judge what promised best. The courier he dismissed, and turned his face. Whither he with the damsel was at rest. Whom I the child so hurried on her way. He left her not a moment for delay. Pursuing thence their ancient road again. They reached a city, with the westering sun. Which, in the midst of France, from Charlemagne. Marsilius had in that long warfare won. Nor them to interrupt or to detain. At drawbridge or at gate. Was any one though in the fosse, and round the palisade, stood many men, and piles of arms were laid. Because the troop about that fortress see, accompanying him, the well-known dame, they to Rogero leave the passage free, nor even question him from whence he came. Reaching the square, of evil company, he finds it full, and bright with ruddy flame. And, in the midst, is manifest to view. The youth condemned, with face of pallid hue. As on the stripling's face he turns his eyes. Which hangs declined and wet with frequent tear. Rogero thinks he bradamant descries. So much the youth resembles her in cheer. More sure the more intently he espies. Her face and shape, when thus the cavalier. Or this is bradamant, or I no more. I am the Rogero which I was before. She hath adventured with too daring will. In rescue of the youth condemned to die. And, for the enterprise had ended ill. Hath there been taken, as I see. Ah! Why? Was she so hot her purpose to fulfill? That she must hither unattended high. But I thank heaven, that hither have I made. Since I am yet in time to lend her aid. He drew his falchion without more delay. His lance was broken at the other town, 284. And, though the unarmed people making way, wounding flank, paunch, and bosom, bore them down. He whirled his weapon, and, amid the array, smote some across the gullet, cheek, or crown. Screaming, the dissipated rabble fled. The most with cloven limbs or broken head. As while at feed, in full security, a troop of fowl along the marish wend. If suddenly a falcon from the sky. Swoop mid the crowd, and one surprise and rend. The rest dispersing. Leave their mate to die. And only to their own escape attend. So scattering hadst thou seen the fright throng. When young Rogero pricked that crowd among. Rogero smites the head from six or four. Who in escaping from the field are slow. He to the breast divides as many more. And countless to the eyes and teeth below. I grant no helmets on their heads they wore. But there were shining iron caps enow. And, if fine helmets did their temples press. His sword would cut as deep, or little less. Such good Rogero's force and valor are. As never nowadays in warrior dwell nor yet in rampant lion, nor in bear. Nor, 
whether home or foreign, beast more fell. Haply with him the earthquake might compare. Or haply the great devil, not he of hell. But he who is my Lord's, 285 who moves in fire. And parts heaven, earth, and ocean in his ire. At every stroke he never less o'erthrow. Then one, and oftener two, upon the plain. And four, at once, and even five he slew. So that a hundred in a thought were slain. The sword Rogero from his girdle drew. As knife cuts curd, divides their plate and chain. Phalerina in Orgagna's garden made. To deal Orlando death, that cruel blade. 286. But to have forged that falchion sorely rude. Who saw her garden wasted by the brand. What wreck, what ruin then must have ensued. From this when wielded by such warrior's hand? If e'er Roger o' force, e'er fury shewed. If e'er his mighty valor well was scanned. Twas here, twas here employed, twas here displayed. In the desire to give his lady aid. As hair from hound unslipped, that helpless train. Defends itself against the cavalier. Many lay dead upon the cumbered plain. And numberless were they who fled in fear. Meanwhile the damsel had unloosed the chain. From the youth's hands, and him in martial gear. Was hastening, with what speed she might, to deck. With sword in hand and shield about his neck. 287. He, who was angered sore, as best he could. Sought to avenge him of that evil crew. And gave such signal proofs of hardihood. As stamped him for a warrior good and true. The sun already in the western flood. Had dipped his gilded wheels, what time the two. Valiant Rogero and his young compeer. Victorious issued, of the city clear. When now Rogero and the stranger knight. Clear of the city gates, the champagne reach. The youth repays, with praises infinite. Rogero in kind mode and cunning speech. Who him. Although unknown, had sought to write. At risk of life, and praise his name to teach. That he may know to whom his thanks he owed. For such a mighty benefit bestowed. The visage of Bradamant I see. The beauteous features and the beauteous cheer. Rogero said. And yet the suavity. I of her well-known accents do not hear. Nor such return of thanks appears to be. In place towards her faithful cavalier. And if in very sooth it is the same. How has the maid so soon forgot my name? In wary wise, intent the truth to find. Rogero said, You have I seen elsewhere. And have again, and yet again, divined. Yet know I not, nor can remember where. Say it, yourself, if it returns to mind. And, I beseech, your name as well declare. Which I would gladly hear, in the desire. To know whom I have rescued from the fire. Me, it is possible you may have seen. I know not when nor where, the youth replied. For I too range the world, in armor sheen. Seeking adventure strange on every side. Or haply it a sister may have been. Who to her waist the knightly sword has tied. Born with me at a birth, so like to view. The family discerns not who is who. You not first, second, or even fourth will be. Who have in this their error had to learn. Nor father, brother, nor even mother me. From her, such our resemblance, can discern. Tis true, this hair, which short and loose you see. In many guise, and hers, with many a turn. And in long tresses wound about her brow. Wide difference made between us two till now. But since the day, that, wounded by a moor. In the head, a story tedious to recite. A holy man, to heal the damsel's sore. Cut short to the mid-ear her tresses bright. Excepting sex and name, there is no more. One from the other to distinguish, height. I Richardetto am, Bradamant she. Rinaldo's brother and his sister we. And to displease you were I not afraid. 
you with a wonder would I entertain. Which chanced from my resemblance to the maid. Begun in pleasure, finishing in pain. He to whom not more pleasing could be said. And to whose ears there was no sweeter strain. That what in some sort on his lady ran. Besought the stripling so, that he began. It so fell out, that as my sister threw. The neighboring wood pursued her path, a wound. Was dealt the damsel by a painim crew. Which her by chance without a helmet found. And she was fain to trim the locks which grew. Clustering about the gash, to make her her sound. Of that ill cut which in her head she bore. Hence, shorn. She wandered through the forest hoar. Ranging, she wandered to a shady font. Where, worn and troubled, she, in weary wise. Lit from her courser and disarmed her front. And, couched upon the greenwood, closed her eyes. A tale more pleasing than what I recount. In story there is none, I well surmise. Thither repaired young Flordespine of Spain. Who in that wood was hunting with her train. And, when she found my sister in the shade. Covered, except her face, with martial gear. In place of spindle. Furnished with the blade. Believe that she beheld a cavalier. The face and manly semblance she surveyed. Till conquered was her heart, with courteous cheer. She wooed the maid to hunt with her, and passed. With her alone into that hold at last. When now she had her, fearless of surprise. Safe in a solitary place, that dame. By slow degrees, in words and amorous wise. Showed her deep wounded heart. With sighs of flame. Breathed from her inmost breast, with burning eyes. She spake her soul sick with desire, became. Now pale, now red. Nor longer self-controlled. Ravished a kiss, she waxed so passing bold. My sister was assured the huntress maid. Falsely conceded her a man to be. Nor in that need could she afford her aid. And found herself in sore perplexity. Tis better that I now dispel, she said. The foolish thought she feeds, and that in me. The damsel should a gentlewoman scan. Rather than take me for a craven man. And she said well, for cravenhood it were. Befitting man of straw, not warrior true. With whom so bright a lady deigned to pair. So wondrous sweet and full of nectarous dew. To clack like a poor cuckoo to the fair. Hanging his coward wing, when he should woo. Shaping her speech to this in wary mode. My sister that she was a damsel, showed. That, like Camilla and like Hippolyte. Sought fame in battlefield, and near the sea. In Afric, in Arzilla, saw the light. To shield and spear inured from infancy. A spark this quenched not, nor yet burned less bright. The enamored damsels kindled fantasy. Too tardy came the salve to ease the smart. So deep had love already driven his dart. Nor yet less fair to her my sister's face. Appeared, less fair her ways, less fair her guise. Nor yet the heart returned into its place. Which joyed itself within those dear loved eyes. Florida spine deems the damsel's iron case. To her desire some hope of ease supplies. And when she thinks she is indeed a maid. Laments and sobs, with mighty woe down weighed. He who had marked her sorrow and lament. That day, himself had sorrowed with the fair. What pains, she said, did ever white torment. So cruel, but that mine more cruel were. I need not to accomplish my intent. In other love, impure or pure, despair. The rose I well might gather from the thorn. My longing only is of hope forlorn. If, twas thy pleasure, love, to have me shent. Because by glad estate thine anger stirred. Thou with some torture mightst have been content. On other lovers used. But never word. Have I found written of a female bent. On love of female, mid mankind or herd. Woman to woman's beauty still is blind. 
nor you delights in you, nor hind in hind. Tis only I, on earth, in air, or sea, who suffer at thy hands such cruel pain. And this thou hast ordained, that I may be the first and last example in thy reign. Foully did Ninus wife and impiously for her own son a passion entertain. Loved was Pasiphae's bull and Mira's sire. But mine is madder than their worst desire. Here female upon male had set her will. Had hope, and, as I hear, was satisfied. Pasiphae the wooden cow did fill. Others, in other mode, their want supplied. But, had he flown to me, with all his skill. Dan Dedlis had not the noose untied. For one too diligent hath wreathed these strings. Even nature's self, the puissantest of things. So grieves the maid, so goads herself and wears. And shows no haste her sorrowing to forego. Sometimes her face, sometimes her tresses tears. And levels at herself the vengeful blow. In pity, Bradamant the sorrow shares. And is constrained to hear the tale of woe. She studies to divert, with fruitless pain. The strange and mad desire, but speaks in vain. She, who requires assistance, not support. Still more laments herself, with grief oppressed. By this the waning day was growing short. For the low sun was crimsoning the west. A fitting hour for those to seek a port. Who would not in the wood set up their rest. When to this city, near her sylvan haunt. Young Florida Spine invited Brodament. My sister the request could ill deny. And so they came together to the place. Where, but for you. By that ill squadron I. Had been compelled the cruel flame to face. There Florida Spina made her family. Caress and do my sister in no small grace. And, having in a female robe arrayed. Passed her on all beholders for a maid. Because perceiving vantage there was none. In the male cheer by which she was misled. The damsel held it wise, reproach to shun. Which might by any carping tongue be said. And this the rather, that the ill, which one. Of the two garments in her mind had bred. Now with the other which revealed the cheat. She would essay to drive from her conceit. The ladies share one common bed that night. Their bed the same, but different their repose. One sleeps, one groans, and weeps in piteous plight. Because her wild desire more fiercely glows. And on her wearied eyes should slumber light. All is deceitful that brief slumber shows. To her it seems, as if relenting heaven. A better sex to bradament is given. As the sick man with burning thirst distressed. If he should sleep, ere he that wish fulfill. I in his troubled, interrupted, rest. Remembers him of every once seen rill. So is the damsel's fancy still posseest. In sleep, with images which glad her will. Then from the empty dreams which crowd her brain. She wakes, and, waking, finds the vision vain. What vows she vowed, how oft that night she prayed. To all her gods and Mahound, in despair. That they, by open miracle, the maid. Would change, and give her other sex to wear. But all the ladies' vows were ill apaid. And haply heaven as well might mock the prayer. Night fades, and Phoebus raises from the main. His yellow head, and lights the world again. On issuing from their bed when day is broken. The wretched Flordespina's woes augment. Four of departing Bradamant had spoken. Anxious to escape from that embarrassment. The princess a prime genet, as a token. Forced on my parting sister, when she went. And gilded housings, and a surcoat brave. Which her own hand had richly broidered, gave. Her Flordespina accompanied some way. Then, weeping, to her castle made return. So fast my sister pricked, she reached that day. Mount Alban. We who for her absence mourn. Mother and brother, greet the martial May. 
and her arrival with much joy discern. For hearing not, we feared that she was dead, and had remained in cruel doubt and dread. Unhelmed, we wondered at her hair, which passed. In braids about her brow, she whilom wore. Nor less we wondered at the foreign cast of the embroidered surcoat which she wore. And she to us rehearsed, from first to last, the story I was telling you before. How she was wounded in the wood, and how, for cure, were shorn the tresses from her brow. And next how came on her, with labor spent. As by the stream she slept, that huntress bright. And how, with all her false semblance well content, she from the train withdrew her out of sight. Nor left she anything of her lament. Untold, which touched with pity every wight. Told how the maid had harbored her, and all. Which passed, till she revisited her hall. Of Florida Spine I knew, and I had seen. In Saragossa and in France the maid. To whose bewitching eyes and lovely mien. My youthful appetite had often strayed. Yet her I would not make my fancy's queen. For hopeless love is but a dream and shade. Now I this proffered in such substance view. Straightway the ancient flame breaks forth anew. Love, with this hope, constructs his subtle ties. Who other threads for me would vainly weave? Tis thus he took me, and explained the guise. In which I might the long-sought boon achieve. Easy it were the damsel to surprise. For as the likeness others could deceive. Which I to Bradamant, my sister, bear. This haply might as well the maid ensnare. 288. Whether I speed or no, I hold it wise. I to pursue whatever give delight. I with no other of my plan devise. Nor any seek to counsel me aright. Well knowing where the suit of armor lies. My sister doffed, I thither go at night. Her armor and her steed to boot I take. Nor stand expecting until daylight break. I rode all night, love serve me as a guide. To seek the home of beauteous Flordespine. And there arrived, before in ocean's tide. The western sun had hid his orbit sheen. A happy man was he who fastest hide. To tell my coming to the youthful queen. Expecting from that lady, for his pain. Favor and goodly guerdon to obtain. For Bradamant the guests mistake me all. As you yourself but now, so much the more. That I have both the courser and the pall. With which she left them but the day before. Flordespine comes at little interval. With such festivity and courteous lore. And with a face, so jocund and so gay. She could not, for her life, more joy display. Her beauteous arms about my neck she throws. And fondly clasping me, my mouth she kissed. If to my inmost heart the arrow goes. Which love directs, may well by you be wist. She leads me to her chamber of repose. In haste. Not suffers others to assist. In taking off my panoply of steel. Disarming me herself from head to heel. Then, ordering from her store a costly vest. She spread it, and, as I a woman were. The lady me in that rich garment drayest. And in a golden net confined my hair. I gravely move my eyeballs, nor confiest. By gesture or by look, the sex I bear. My voice, which might discover the deceit. I tuned so well that none perceived the cheat. Next to the hall, where dame and cavalier. In crowds are gathered, we united go. Who make to us such court and goodly cheer. As men to queen or high-born lady show. Here oft I laughed at some, with secret jeer. Who, knowing not the sex concealed below. My flowing robe of feminine array. Wooed me with wishful eyes in wanton way. When more advanced in now the festive night. And the rich board, board plenteously pervade. With what in season was most exquisite. Has been some time removed. The royal maid. Expects not till I of myself recite. 
the cause which thither me anew conveyed. By her own courtesy and kindness led. That lady prays me to partake her bed. Damsels and dames withdrawn, with all the rest. Pages and chamberlains, when now we lay. One and the other, in our bed undressed. With kindled torches, counterfeiting day. Marvel not, lady, her I thus addressed. That I return after such short delay. For, haply, thou imagined, that again. Thou shouldst not see me until heaven knows when. The reason I departed from thy side. And next of my return, explained shall be. Could I unto thy fever have applied? By longer sojourn here, a remedy. I in thy service would have lived and died. Nor would have been an hour away from thee. But seeing how my stay increased thy woe. I, who could do no better, fixed to go. Into the middle of a wood profound. By chance I from the beaten pathway strayed. Where near me plaintive cries I hear resound. As of a woman who entreated aid. To a lake of crystal I pursue the sound. And, there, amid the waves, a naked maid. Caught on the fish hook of a fawn, survey. Who would devour alive his helpless prey? Upon the lozel, sword in hand, I ran. And, for I could not aid in otherwise. Bereft of life that evil fisherman. She in an instant to the water flies. Me hast thou helped not vainly, she began. And well shalt be rewarded, with what prize? Thou canst demand, for know I am a nymph. And have my dwelling in this crystal lymph. And power is mine to work portentous ends. Nature and elements I force, thy prayer. Shape to the scope to which my strength extends. And leave its satisfaction to my care. Charmed by my song the moon from heaven descends. Fire can I freeze, and harden liquid air. And I at times have stopped the sun, and stirred. This earth beneath me by a simple word. Treasure I covet not, nor yet aspire. O'er land or people to hold sovereign sway. Nor greater strength nor valor would acquire. Nor fame in every warfare bear away. But only to accomplish thy desire. Entreat the damsel she will show some way. Nor one nor other method I forestall. But to her choice refer me, all in all. Scarce my demand was made, before mine eye. Beneath the lymph engulfed that lady viewed. Nor answered she my prayer, but, for reply. Me with the enchanted element bedewed. Which has no sooner touched my face than I. I know not how, am utterly transmute. I see, I feel, yet doubting what I scan. Feel, I am changed from woman into man. 289 E S E non fos, che senza demora 290. Vi potit chirir, nal creterist. E, qual en el ultro sesso, in questo ancora. Ho lumia vogli ad ubidervi prest. Commendate lor per, che fieno hor ora. E semper mi per voi vigil e dest. Cosi ludisi, e fisi, che ella stessa. Trovo con man la verite espressa. Come intervene a chi gia fuer di spim 291. D cosa sia, che nel pensier molt habia. Che mentre più dia cern privo gim. Pu sen afflige, e sen e strug e arabia. Se ben la trova poi, tanto gli prim. Laver gran tempo seminato in sabia. E la disperation elha si mal uso. Che non creed a se stesso, e sta confuso. Cosi la donna, poi che taca, e vid 292. Quel, d ch havuto havia tanto desire. Agliochi, al tattoo. A se stessa non creed. E sta dubiosa anchor di non dormire. E buona prova bisogno a far feed. Che sentia quel, Che Luperia Centire. F.A. Dio, Dis Ella, S.E. Sun Sogni Questi. Chio Dorma Semper, 
e mai piu non mi desti. Non rumor di tamburi, a son di tromb 293. Furon principio a el amoroso asalto. Ma baci che imitavan la colombi. Davin senio or di gyre, or di fer alto. Usamo altram che set from. Io senza scale in sularaca salto. E lo standardo piantovi di bato. E la nimica mia mi caccio sato. Se fu quel letto la nate din anti 294. Pien di suspirai e di querel gravi. Non stet el ultra poi senza altra tanti. Risi, fest, joyer, gioci soavi. Non con più nodi i fleshuosi acanti. Lo colon circundano, e la travi. Di quelli, con che noi legamo stretti. E cali, e fianci, e brassia, e gam, e petti. The thing remained concealed between us two. So that our bliss endured some months, at last. We were espied, and, as I sorely rue. The tidings to the Spanish monarch passed. Thou that Wylera preserves me from the crew. Which me into the flames designed to cast. By this mayst fully comprehend the rest. But God alone can read my sorrowing breast. So Richardetto spake, and by his say. Made the dark path they trod less irksome be. Up a small height this while their journey lay. Girded with cliff and cavern, drear to see. Bristling with rocks, a steep and narrow way. Was to that rugged hill the stubborn key. A town, called Agrismont, crowned the steep. Which Aldegir of Clermont had in keep. Bastard of Bovo, brother to the pair. Sir Vivian and Sir Malagigi Height. Who him Gerardo's lawful son declare. Are witnesses of little worth and light. This, as it may. Strong, valiant, wise, and where. Liberal, humane, and courteous was the knight. And on the fortress of its absent lord. By night and day, kept faithful watch and ward. His cousin Richardetto, as behoved. Was courteously received by Aldegir. Who him as dearly as a brother loved. And made Rogero for his sake good cheer. But not with wonted welcome, inly moved. He even wore a visage sad and drear. For he, that day, ill tidings had received. And hence in heart and face the warrior grieved. To Richardetto he exclaims, instead. Of greeting, evil news are hither blown. By a sure messenger, today I read. That faithless Bertology of Bayonne. With barbarous Lanfusa has agreed. And costly spoils makes over to that crone. Who will consign to him the brethren twain. Thy Malagigi and thy Vivian. These she, since Pharaoh took them, I has stayed. Imprisoned in a dark and evil cell. Till the discourteous and foul pact was made. With that false Maganzies of whom I tell. And them tomorrow, to a place conveyed. Twixt Bayonne and a town of his, will sell. To him, who will be present, to advance. The price of the most precious blood in France. One, at a gallop, even now, to report. Tidings to our Rinaldo of the wrong. I sent, bur fear that he can ill resort. To him in time, the journey is so long. Men have I not to sally from my fort. And my power halts where my desire is strong. The traitor will the knights, if rendered, slay. Nor know I what to do nor what to say. Sir Richardetto the ill news displease. And, as they him, displease in equal wise. Rogero. Who, when silent both he sees. Nor able any counsel to devise. Exclaims with mickle daring, be at ease. I challenge for myself the whole emprise. And, to set free your brethren, in my hand. More than a thousand shall avail this brand. I ask not men, I ask not aid, my spear. Is, I believe, sufficient to the feet. I only ask of you a guide to steer. 
me to the place where for the exchange they meet. I even in this place will make you hear. Their cries, who for that evil bargain threat. He said, nor to one listener of the twain. That had helped his actions, spake in vain. The other heard him not, or heard at most. As we great talkers here, who little do. But Richardetto took aside their host. And told, how him he from the fire withdrew. And how he was assured, beyond his boast. He would in time and place his prowess shoe. Twas now that better audience than before. Aldegir lent, and set by him great store. And at the feast, where plenty for the three. Emptied her horn, him honored as his lord. Here they conclude they can the brethren free. Without more succor from their jailer's ward. This while sleep seized on lord and family. Save young Rogero, no repose afford. To him the thoughts, which evermore molest. And, rankling in his bosom, banish rest. The siege of agreement, to him that day. Told by the messenger, he has at heart. He well discerns that every least delay. Will he dishonor? What a ceaseless smart! Will scorn inflict, what shame will him appe? If he against his sovereign lord take part? Oh! What foul cowardice, how foul a crime! His baptism will appear at such a time. That true religion had the stripling swayed. Men might at any other time conceive. But now, when needed was the warrior's aid. From siege the Moorish monarch to relieve. That fear and baseness had more largely weighed. In his designs, would every one believe. That any preference of a better creed. This thought makes good Rogero's bosom bleed. Nor less to quit his queen, her leave unsought. Did with Rogero's other griefs combine. Now this and now that care upon him wrought. Which diversely his doubtful heart incline. The unhappy lover fruitlessly had thought. To find her at the abode of Flordespine. Whither together went, as told Wylera. To succor Richardetto, maid and peer. He next bethinks him of the promise plight. To meet at Valambrosa's sanctuary. Deems her gone thither, and that, twill excite. Her wonderment himself not there to see. Could he at least a message send or write? That he with reason might not censured be. Because not only he had disobeyed. But was departing hence, and nothing said. He, having thought on many things, in the end. Resolves on writing what behoves. And, though. He knows not how his letter he shall send. In the assurance it will safely go. This hinders not. He thinks that, as they wend. Chance in his way some faithful post may throw. Nor more delays, up leaps the restless night. And calls for pen and paper, ink and light. That which is needed, in obedience meet. Aldegir's valets bring, a careful band. The youth begins to write, and, first, to greet. The maid, as wanted courtesies demand. Next tells, how Agrament has sent to entreat. In his dispatches, succor at his hand. And, save he quickly to his comfort goes. Must needs be slain or taken by his foes. Then adds, his sovereign being so bested. And praying him for succor in his pain. She must perceive what blame upon his head. Would light, if agreement applied in vain. And, since with her he is about to wed. Tis fitting he should keep him with stain. For ill he deems a union could endure. Between aught foul and her to passing pure. And if he erst a name, renowned and clear. Had labored to procure by actions fair. And having gained it thus, he held it dear. If this had sought to keep, with greater care. He kept it now, and with a miser's fear. Guarded the treasure she with him would share. Who, though distinct in body and in limb. When wedded, ought to be one soul with him. And, as he erst by word, he now explained. Anew by writing, that the period o'er. For which he was to serve his king constrained. 
unless it were his lot to die before. He would indeed a Christian be ordained. As in resolve he had been evermore. And of her kin, Rinaldo, and her sire. Her afterwards in wedlock would require. I would, he said, relieve, with your good will. My king, besieged by Charlemagne's array. That the misjudging rabble, prone to ill. Might never, to my shame and scandal, say. Rogero, in fair wind and weather, still. Waited upon his sovereign, night and day. And now that fortune to King Charles is fled. Has with that conquering lord his ensign spread. I fifteen days or twenty ask, that I. Yet once again may to our army speed. So that, by me from leaguering enemy. The African cantonments may be freed. I will some fit and just occasion spy. Meanwhile, to justify my change of creed. I for my honor make this sole request. Then wholly yours for life, in all things, rest. Rogero is such words his thoughts exposed. Which never could by me be fully showed. And added more, nor from his task reposed. Until the crowded paper overflowed. He next the letter folded and enclosed. And sealed it, and within his bosom stowed. In hopes to meet next morning by the way. One who might covertly that writ convey. When he had closed the sheet, that amorous night. His eyelids closed as well, and rest ensued. For slumber came and steeped his wearied might. In balmy moisture. From a branch imbued. With Lethe's water. And he slept till, white. And red, a rain of flowers the horizon strewed. Painting the joyous east with colors gay. When from her golden dwelling broke the day. And when the greenwood birds, gone, far and wide. Greet the returning light with gladsome strain. Sir Aldegir, who wished to be the guide. Upon that journey, of the warlike twain. Who would in succor of those brethren ride? To rescue them from Bertology's chain. Was first upon his feet. And either peer. Issues as well from bed, when him they hear. When clad and thoroughly in arms arrayed. Rogero with the cousins took his way. Having that pair already warmly prayed. The adventure on himself alone to lay. But these. By love for those two brethren swayed and deeming it discourtesy to obey. Stood out against his prayer, more stiff than stone. Nor would consent that he should wend alone. True to the time and place of change, they high. Whither Sir Aldegir's advices teach. And their survey an ample band who lie. Exposed to fierce Apollo's heat. In reach. Nor myrtle tree nor laurel they descry. Nor tapering cypress, ash, nor spreading beech. But naked gravel with low shrubs discerned. Undelved by mattock and by share unturned. Those three adventurous warriors halted where. A path went through the uncultivated plain. And saw a knight arrive upon the lair. Who, flourished o'er with gold, war plate and chain. And on green field that beauteous bird and rare which longer than an age extends its reign. No more, my lord, for at my canto's close. I find myself arrived, and crave repose. Canto. Chapter 26. Of mighty matters, sculptured in a font. Does Malagigi to his comrades tell. On them come Mandricardo and Rodamont. And forth with battle follows fierce and fell. Discord goes scattering quarrel and affront. Amid the crew, but whither, forced by spell. Fair Duralis upon her palfrey speeds. The Tartar king, and Sarzan, turn their steeds. In former ages courteous ladies were. Who worshipped virtue, and not worldly gear. Women in this degenerate age are rare. To whom aught else but sordid gain is dear. But they who real goodness make their care. Nor with the avaricious many steer. In this frail life are worthy to be blessed. Held glorious and immortal when at rest. 
Bradamant well would deathless praise inherit. Who nor in wealth nor empire took delight. But in Rogero's worth, excelling spirit. In his unbounded gentless. And a right. For this did good Duke Amon's daughter merit. To be beloved of such a valorous knight. Who, what might be for miracles received. In future ages, for her sake achieved. He, with those two of Claremont, as Wylera. To you I in the former canto said. I say with Richardet and Aldegier. Was gone, to give the prison brethren aid. I told. As well how they a cavalier. Of haughty look approaching had surveyed. Who bore that noble bird, by fiery birth. Renewed, and ever single upon earth. When those three of that warrior were espied. Poised on the wing, as if about to smite. He fain by proof their prowess would have tried. And if their semblance tallied with their might. Is there, among you, one, the stranger cried. Will prove upon me, which is best in fight. With lance or sword, till one to ground be cast. While in the cell his foe is seated fast. I, at your choice, said Aldegir, were fain. To flourish falchion, or to tilt with spear. But this with feet, which, if you here remain. Yourself may witness, so would interfere. That for the present parley time with pain. Suffices, and yet less for the career. Six hundred men, or more, we here attend. With whom we must today in arms contend. Two of our own to rescue from their foes. And free from chains, us love and pity sway. He to that stranger next the reason shows. Why thus in steel their bodies they array? So just is the excuse which you oppose. He answered, that I ill should this gainsay. And hold you surely for three cavaliers. That seldom upon earth will find their peers. With you a lance or two I would have crossed. To prove how great your prowess in the field. But, since tis shown me at another's cost. Forgo the joust, and to your reasons yield. Warmly I pray your leave against that host. To join with your good arms this helm and shield. And hope, if suffered of your band to be. No worthless comrade shall you find in me. Some one, meseems, may crave the stranger's name. Who thus the champions on their road delayed. And so to partnership in arms laid claim. With those three warriors. For the strife arrayed. She, style no more a man that martial dame. Marfisa was. That on Zerbino laid. The task to bear about, against his will. Ribald Gabrina, prone to every ill. The two of Claremont and their bold compeer 295. Gladly received her succor in their cause. Whom certes they believed a cavalier. And not a damsel, and not what she was. A banner was espied by Aldegir. And shown the others, after little pause. Which by the wavering wind was blown about. And round about it ranged a numerous rout. And when, now nearer, the advancing crew. Were better marked in Moorish habits stoled. For Saracens the stranger band they knew. And they upon two sorry jades behold. I, the middle of that troop, the prisoners, who were to the false Maganza to be sold. Marfisa cries, Why is the feast delayed? When lo! The guests are here, for whom we stayed? Not all, Rogero said, of the array. Invited, lacks as yet a numerous part. A solemn festival is held today. And we, to grace it more, use every art. Yet they can now but little more delay. While thus they parley, they from other part. Descry the treacherous Maganzi's advance. So all was ready to begin the dance. They of Maganza from one quarter steer. And laden mules beneath their convoy go. Bearing vest, gold, and other costly gear. On the other side, mid falchion, spear, and bow. Approached the captive too with doleful cheer. 
who found themselves awaited by the foe. And false and impious Bertology heard. As with the Moorish captain he conferred. Nor Buovo's nor Duke Amon's valiant son 296. Can hold, when that false Maganzese they view. Against him both with rested lances run. He falls the victim of those furious two. Through belly and through pummel pierced by one. And by the other, in mid visage. Through. His bleeding cheeks, may like disastrous fate. O'erwhelm all evil doers, soon or late. Marfisa with Rogero moved her horse. At this, nor waited other trumpet strain. Nor broke her lance in her impetuous course. Till in succession three had pressed the plain. A mark well worthy fierce Rogero's force. The Paynim leader in a thought is slain. And with him, pierced by the same weapon, go. Two others to the gloomy realms below. Twas hence a foul mistake the assaulted made. It caused their utter loss, and ruined all. They of Maganza deemed themselves betrayed. By the infidels, upon their leader's fall. On the other side, so charged with hostile blade. The Moors those Maganzese assassins call. And, with fierce slaughter, either angry horde. Gone bend bow, and brandish lance and sword. Rogero, charging this, or the other band. Slays ten or twenty, shifting his career. No fewer by the warlike damsel's hand. Are slaughtered and extinguished, there and here. As many men as feel the murderous brand. Are from the saddle seen to disappear. Before it vanish cuirass, helms, and shields. As the dry wood to fire in forest yields. If ever you remember to have viewed. Or heard, what time the wasps divided are. And all the winged college is at feud. Mustering their swarms for mischief in mid-air. The greedy swallow swoop amid that brood. To mangle and devour, and kill, and tear. You must imagine so. On either part. The bold Rogero and Marfisa dart. Not so Sir Richardet and Aldegier. Varied the dance between those squadrons twain. For, heedless of the Moors, each cavalier. Had but an eye to false Maganza's train. The brother of Rinaldo, Charles's peer. Much courage added to much might and main. And these were now redoubled by the spite. Which against false Maganza warmed the night. This cause made him who in his fury shared. Good Bovo's bastard, seems a lion fell. He, without pause, each trusty helmet paired. With his good blade, or crushed it like the shell. Of brittle egg. And who would not have dared? would not have shown a Hector's worth as well. Having two such companions in the stower. Of warlike whites the very choice and flower? Marfisa, waging all the while the fight. On her companions often turned to gaze. And as she marked their rivalry in might. Admiring, upon all bestowed her praise. But when she on Rogero fixed her sight. Deemed him unparalleled, and in amaze. At times believed that Paladin was Mars. Who left his heaven to mix in mortal wars. She marvels at the champion's horrid blows. She marvels how in vain they never fell. The iron, smit by Balisarda shows. Like paper, not like stubborn plate and shell. To pieces helm and solid corslet goes. And men are severed, even to the cell. Whom into equal parts those strokes divide. Half dropped on this, and half on the other side. With the same downright stroke, he overbore. The horse and rider, bleeding in the dust. The heads of others from their shoulders bore. And parted from the hips the bleeding bust. He often at a blow cleft five and more. And, but I doubt who hears me might distrust. What of a seeming falsehood bears the impress? I would say more but I parforce say less. Good Turpin, he who knows that he tells true. And leaves men to believe what they think right. Says of Rogero wondrous things, which you. 
hearing related, would as falsehood slight. Thus, with Marfisa matched, that hostile crew. Appears like ice, and she like burning light. Nor her Rogero with less marvel eyes. That she had marked his valor with surprise. As she had Mars in bold Rogero seen. Perhaps Bologna he had deemed the maid. If for a woman he had known that queen. Who seemed the contrary, in arms arrayed. And haply emulation had between. The pair ensued, by whom with cruel blade. Most deadly signs of prowess should be shown. Mid that vile herd, on sinew, flesh, and bone. To rout each hostile squadron, filled with dread. Sufficed the soul and valor of the four. Nor better arms remained for them who fled. Than the sharp goads which on their heels they wore. Happy was he with courser well bested. By trot or amble they set little store. And he who had no steed, here learned, dismayed. How wretched is the poor foot soldier's trade! The conqueror's prize remained both field and prey. Nor was there footman left nor muleteer. The more took this, Maganza took that way. One leaves the prisoners, and one leaves the gear. With visage glad, and yet with heart more gay. The four united each captive cavalier. Nor were less diligent to free from chains. The prison pages, and unload the wains. Besides good quantity of silver fine. Wrought into different vessels, with a store. Of feminine array, of fair design. Embroidered round about with choicest lore. And suit of Flemish tapestry, framed to line. Royal apartments, wrought with silk and ore. They, mid more costly things in plenty spread. Discovered flasks of wine and meat and bread. When now the conquering troop their temples bear. All see they have received a damsel's aid. Known by her curling locks of golden hair. And delicate and beauteous face displayed. Her the knights honored much, and to declare. Her name, so well deserving glory, prayed. Nor she, that ever was of courteous mood. Among her friends, their instances withstood. With viewing her they cannot sate their eyes. Who in the battle such had her espied? She speaks but with the child, but him descries. None prizes, values none, t'would seem, beside. Meanwhile, that ready spread a banquet lies. To them is by the servants notified. This they had served about a neighboring fountain. Screened from the sun by an o'ershadowing mountain. This spring was one of those four fountains rare. Of those in France produced by Merlin slight. Encompassed round about with marble fair. Shining and polished, and then milk more white. Therein the stone choice figures chiseled were. By that magician's godlike labor dight. Save voice was wanting, these you might have thought. Were living and with nerve and spirit fraught. Here, to appearance, from the forest pressed. A cruel beast and hideous to the eye. With teeth of wolf, an ass's head and crest. A carcass with long famine lean and dry. And lion's claws. A fox in all the rest. Which seemed to ravage France and Italy. And Spain and England's desolated strands. Europe and Asia, and in fine all lands. 297. The beast the low and those of proudest port. Had slain or maimed throughout this earthly ball. Yeah, fiercest seemed on those of noble sort. Sovereign and satrap, prince and peer, to fall. And made most havoc in the Roman court. For it had slaughtered pope and cardinal. Had filled St. Peter's beauteous seat with scathe. And brought foul scandal on the holy faith. Whatever she touches, wall or rampire steep. Goes to the ground, where'er the monster wends. Each fortress opens, neither castle keep. Nor city from her rage its wealth defends. Honors divine as well that beast would reap. It seems, while the besotted rabble bends. And claim withal, as to its keeping given. The sacred keys which open hell and heaven. 
approaching next, is seen a cavalier. His temples circled with imperial bay. Three youths with him in company appear. With golden lilies wrought in their array. A lion seems against that monster drear. To issue. With the same device as they. The name of these are on the marble red. Some on their skirt, some written overhead. Of those who sow against beast advance. One to the hilt has in his life blood died. His falchion, Francis styled the first of France. With Austrian Maximilian at his side. In one, who gores his gullet with the lance. The Emperor Charles V is signified. Henry VIII of England is he height. Who in the monster's breast a dart has pite. The tenth, in writing, on his back displayed. The lion, who that beast is seen to hold. By both his ears, and him so well has bade. That thither troop assistance manifold. T'would seem the world all fear aside has laid. And, in amendment of their errors old. Thitherward nobles troop, but these are few. And so that hideous beast those hunters slew. In wonder stood long time that warlike train. Desirous, as the storied work they traced. To know by hands of whom that beast was slain. Which had so many smiling lands defaced. The names unknown to them, though figured plain. Upon the marble which that fountain cased. They one another prayed, if any guessed. That story, he would tell it to the rest. Vivian on Malagigi turned his eyes. Who listening stood this while, yet spake he not. With thee, he cried, to tell the meaning lies. Who are they, by whose darts and lances dies? That shouldst by what I see in this be taught. The hideous monster. That to bay is brought. And Malagigi, hitherto their glory. No author has consigned to living story. The chiefs whose names are graved upon the stone. Not yet have moved upon this worldly stage. But will within seven hundred years be known. To the great honor of a future age. What time King Arthur filled the British throne. This fountain Merlin made, enchanter sage. Who things to come upon the marble fair. Made sculpture by a cunning artist's care. This beast, when weights and measures first were found. Came out of nether hell. When on the plain. Common before, men fixed the landmarks bound. And fashioned written pacts with jealous pain. Yet walked not everywhere, at first, her round. Unvisited she left yet many a reign. Through diverse places in our time she wends. But the vile rabble and the crowd offends. From the beginning even to our day. I has that monster grown, and I will grow. And till much time be past will grow alway. Was never mightier, nor worse cause of woe. That python, oft the theme of ancient lay. So passing wonderful and fierce in show. Came not by half this loathsome monster nigh. In all its foulness and deformity. Dread desolation shall it make, nor place. Will unpolluted or untainted be. And you in the mysterious sculptured trace but little of its foul iniquity. The world, when weary of imploring grace. Those worthy peers, whose names you sculptured see. And which shall blazing carbuncle outshine. To succor in its utmost need combine. No one shall more that cruel beast molest. Than Francis, who the realm of France will steer. Who justly shall be forward in this quest. Whom none shall go beyond whom few shall peer. Since he in splendor, as in all the rest, wanting in worth, will many make appear. Who whilom perfect seemed. So fade and yield. All lesser glories to the sun revealed. In the first year of his successful reign. The crown yet ill secure upon his front. He threads the Alps, and makes their labor vain. Who would against his arms maintain the mount? Impelled by generous and by just disdain. The unavenged as yet is that affront. Which a French army suffered from their rage. 
who poured from beast coat, field, and pasturage, and thence shall into the rich Lombard plain descend, with all the flower of France, and so shall break the Switzer, that henceforth in vain would he uplift his horn against the foe, to the sore scandal of the Church and Spain, and to the Florentines much scathe and woe. By him that famous castle shall be quelled, which inexpugnable Wylera was held. 298. In quelling it his honoured falchion, more. Then other arms, availing shall be found, which first that cruel beast to death will gore, the foul destroyer of each country round. Parforce will every standard fly before, that conquering falchion, or be cast to ground. Nor, stormed by it, will rampart, fosse, or wall. Secure the city, they surround, from fall. Imbued with every generous quality. Which can in great commander be combined. Prudence like his who won Thrasymony. And Trebia's field, with Caesar's daring mind. And Alexander's fortune, him I see. Without which all designs are mist and wind. With all, so passing liberal, I in none. Mark his example or his paragon. So Malagigi to his comrade said. And moved in them desire some name to hear. Of others, who had laid that monster dead. Which to slay others had been used Wylera. Among the first Bernardo's name was read, 299. Much vaunted in the writing of the seer. Who said, through him as known as Bibiena as her own neighbor Florence and Siena. More forward in this chase shall no one show. Then Sigismund, then Louis, and then John. Each to that hideous beast a cruel foe. One a Gonzaga, one of Aragon. And one a Salviati, two with them go. Francis Gonzaga and Frederick his son 301. Brother and son-in-law, their aid afford. One chief Ferraras, one Urbino's lord. 302. Of one of these the son, Sir Guidobald 303. Will not by sire, or other, distanced be. With Autobahn de Flisco, Cinnabald 304. Chases the beast. Both striving equally. Louis de Gazzolo 305 its neck has galled. With one of those keen darts, Apollo's fee. Given with his bow, what time as well his glaive. The god of war. To gird that warrior, gave. Two Hercules and two Hippolyte 306. Of Este, a Hercules and Hippolyte. Of the Gonzagas and the Medici. Hunt and fatigue the monster in his flight. Nor Julian 307 lets his good son pass him by. Nor bold Ferent 308 his brother, nor less white. Is Andrew Doria 309 nor by any one? Is Francis Sforza 310 in the chase outdone? Of good Avalo's glorious lineage bred, 311. Two chiefs that mountain for their bearing show. Which, hiding him, from dragon feet to head. The wicked Typhus seems to keep below. Mid those combined, to lay the monster dead. Shall none more forward than this couple go. Him Francis of Pescara 312 names the text. Alfonso, height of Guasto 313 is the next. But where leave I Gonsalvo Ferrant 314 who is held in such esteem, the pride of Spain? So praised by Malagigi, that him few equal among the worthies of that train. William, surnamed of Monferrato 315 view. Mid those that have the hideous monster slain. But these are few compared with numbers round. Whom that despidious beast shall kill or wound. To converse gay the friends themselves addressed. And seemly pastimes, when their meal was done. Through the hot noontide, and fine carpets pressed. Mid shrubs. By which the limpid river run. Vivian and Malagigi, that the rest might be more tranquil, watched with armor on. When unaccompanied they saw a dame, 
who quickly towards their place of shelter came. Hipalka she, from whom was torn away. Frontino, that good horse, by Rodamont. Him had she long pursued the former day. And now with prayer, now followed with affront. Which booting not, she had retraced her way. To seek Rogero out in agrisement. And, how I know not, heard upon her round. He here with Richardetto would be found. And, for to her well known was that repair. Used by her often, she herself addressed. Towards the fount, and in that quarter fair. Found him, and in what manner, was expressed. But like ambassadress, who, wise and where. Better than was enjoined performs a hest. When Richardetto she beheld, made show. As if she good Rogero did not know. She turned her wholly to Sir Richardet. As bound direct to him, and, on his side. He who well knew her, straight uprose and met. And asked that damsel whitherward she hide. Hippalca, with her eyes yet red and wet. From her long weeping, sighing deeply, cried. But cried aloud, that young Rogero, near. The warrior she addressed. Her tale might hear. I from Mount Alban with a courser sped. So your good sister had commanded me. A horse much loved by her, and highly bred. Frontino is eclept that charger free. And him I more than thirty miles had led. Towards Marseilles, where she designed to be. Within few days, by her enjoined to wend. Thither, and her arrival there attend. I in the sure belief pursued my course. Was none so stout of heart, if I should say. How Sir Rinaldo's sister owned the horse. He would presume to take that steed away. But vain was my design, for him par force. A Saracen took from me yesterday. Nor, when to him his master's name I read. Will that bold robber render back the steed? Him I today and all the day before. Have prayed, and prayer and menace proving vain. I cursing him and execrating sore. Have left at little distance. Where, with pain. Both to his courser and himself, the more. As best he can, a combat does maintain. Against a knight, who him so hard has pressed. I trust my injury shall be red rest. At this Rogero, leaping on his feet. Who scarcely had endured the whole to hear. To Richardetto turned. And, as a meat. Guerdon for his good deed, the cavalier. Did, with beseechings infinite, entreat. To let him singly with that damsel steer. Until she showed the pain him. Who by force. Had wrested from her hands that goodly horse. Richardet, though it seems discourtesy. To yield to other champion that emprise. Which by himself should terminated be. Yet with Rogero's earnest suit complies. Who takes farewell of that good company. And with the damsel on her journey hies. And leaves those others, whom his feats confound. Not merely lost in wonder, but astoud. To him Hippalca said, when she apart. Had drawn him to some distance from the rest. She was dispatched by her that in her heart. Bore of his worth the image so impressed and added, without using farther art, all that her lady had to him add rest. And if she told another tale Wylera, of Richardetto she was then in fear. She added, how the author of that deed, had also said to her with mickle pride, because I know Rogero owns the steed, more willingly I take him from his guide. If he would repossess the courser, read, to him what I have no desire to hide. I am that Rodamont, whose martial worth scatters its splendor through this ample earth. Listening, the visage of the youthful knight showed with what rage his heart was in a flame, as well as that the horse was his delight, as well upon account of whence it came, and also that, twas reft in his despite. He sees dishonor will ensue and blame, save he from Rodamont redeems the prey and with a due revenge that wrong repay. 
With him, without repose, the damsel rides. Who with his foe would bring him front to front? And thither journeys where the road divides. And one branch cuts the plain, one climbs the mount. And either pathway to that valley guides. Where she had newly left King Rodamont. The mountain track was short, but trod with pain. That other longer far, but smooth and plain. Hippalca's ardor to retrieve the prey. And upon Rodamont's avenge the wrong. Insights that made the mountain to assay. By which, as said, the journey was less long. While Mandricardo, Rodamont, and they. Of whom I erst made mention in my song. That easier track across the level hold. And thus encounter not Rogero bold. Until King Agrament shall succored be. Suspended is their quarrel, in what wise? You know, and in the champion's company. Duralis, cause of all their discord, highs. Now hear the upshot of this history. Their way directly by that fountain lies. Beside whose margin are in pastime met. Marfisa and Aldegir and Richardet. Marfisa had, at her companion's prayer, clothed her in female ornaments and vest. Of those, which by Maganza's traitor were. Late to Lanfusa, in full trust, at rest. And, though the appearance of that maid was rare. Without her corslet, cask and all the rest. At their entreaty. These for once laid down. She deigned to seem a maid and don the gown. As soon as Mandricardo saw her face. In trust that, could he win her in a fray. He would that maid, in recompense and place. Of Duralis, to Rodamont convey. As if love trafficked in such contracts base. And lover could his lady change away. Nor yet with reason at the event be pained. If he in losing one another gained. Hence with a damsel to provide the peer. That he himself the other may retain. Deeming her worthy any cavalier. He would by force of arms the maid obtain. And, as if he could suddenly hold dear. This maid as that, on him bestow the gain. And all of those, whom he about her spied. Forthwith to joust and single fight defied. Vivian and Malagigi, who were dight. In arms, as guard and surety for the rest. One and the other champion, prompt for fight. Rose lightly from the herbage which they pressed. Deeming they had to joust with either knight. But Rodamont, who came not on this quest. No motion made as he a course would run. So that they had to tourney but with one. Sir Vivian is the first who moves his horse. With mighty heart, and lays his weapon low. And he, that Tartar king, renowned for force. With greater puissance meets the coming foe. His lance each warrior levels in the course. Where he best trusts to plant the furious blow. Vainly Sir Vivian spear the cask offends. Nor throws that pain him knight, nor even bends. That Tartar's harder weapon makes the shield. Of Vivian, at their onset, fly like grass. And, tumbling from his saddle on the field. Extends the champion amid flowers and grass. To run his chance Sir Malagigi, steeled. Did to his brother's succor quickly pass. But, such that warriors hurry to be near. Rather accompanied, than venged the peer. The other of those brethren armed before. His cousin, and had backed his courser white. And, having first defied, encountered sore. Spurring with flowing rain, the stranger knight. Against the tempered helm that pagan wore. Sounded the blow, an inch below the sight. Heaven high the truncheon flew, in fragments broke. But the stout pagan winced not for the stroke. Him on the left side smote that pain impure. And, for the blow was with huge force designed. Little his shield, and less his iron gear. Availed. Which opened like the yielding rind. The weapon pierced his shoulder. Aldagir. Now right now left upon his horse inclined. Then him, mid grass and flowers, his comrades view. 
with arms of crimson, face of pallid, hue. Next Richard Dedo comes, and for the blow. Intended, level such a mighty lance. He showed himself, as he was wont to show. Worthy to be a paladin of France. And has stamped signs of this upon the foe. If he had warred on him with equal chance. But prostrate rolled, encumbered by his steed. Nor fell the courser through his lord's misdeed. When night appeared not on the other side. Who should in joust the Paynim king affront? He thought the damsel was his prize, and hide. Thither, where she was seated by the fount. And, lady, you are mine, the Tartar cried. Save other champion in your succor mount. Nor can you make denial or excuse. Since such the right of war and common use. Marfisa raised her face with haughty cheer. And answered him, Thy judgment wanders far. I will concede thy sentence would be clear. Concluding I am thine by right of war. If either were my lord or cavalier. Of those, by thee unhorsed in bloody jar. Nor theirs am I. Nor others, but my own. Who wins me, wins me from myself alone. I too with lance and sword do doughty deed. And more than one good knight on earth have laid. Give me, she cried, my armor and my steed. And readily her squires that hast obeyed. Then in her waistcoat stood, of flowing weed. Despoiled, with well-knit from and charms displayed. And in all points, such strength she shewed and grace. Resembled heavenly Mars, except her face. The damsel donned her sword, when armed all o'er. And on her courser leapt with nimble spring. And, right and left, she made him, thrice or more. Poised on his haunches, turn in narrow ring. And, leveling the sturdy lance she bore. Defied, and next assailed, the Tartar king. So combating with Peleus' son, of yore. Penthesilea warred on Trojan shore. Like brittle crystal, in that proud career. The weapons at the rest to pieces went. Yet neither of those warriors, t'would appear. Backwards one inch at their encounter bent. Marfisa, who would willingly be clear. What of a closer fight would be the event? For a new combat with the Paynim lord. Wield, to attack that warrior with the sword. That Tartar cursed the elements and sky. When her he saw remaining in her cell. And she, who thought to make his buckler fly. Cursed heaven as loudly as that infidel. Already were their falchions raised on high. Which on the enchanted arms like hammers fell. Enchanted arms both combatants enclose. Never more needed by those deadly foes. So perfect are the champion's plate and chain. They thrust or cut of spear or falchion stay. So that the two the battle might maintain. Throughout this and throughout another day. But Rodamont leaps in between the twain. And taxes Mandricardo with delay. Crying, if battle here is to be done. Finish we that which we today begun. We made a truce, thou knowest, upon pact. Of furnishing our baffled forces aid. Nor foe in joust or fight can be attacked. By us with justice till this debt be paid. Then to Marfisa he in reverent act. Addressed himself, and of that courier said. And next recounted to the martial dame. How seeking aid for agreement he came. Next praise, not only with that Tartar knight. She will abandon or defer the fray. But that, Troiano's valiant son to right. She will, together with them, wend her way. By which her warlike fame a higher flight. More easily may, even to heaven, assay. Than in a quarrel of such paltry guise. Which offers hindrance to such fair emprise. Marfisa, who had evermore in thought. To prove the paladins of Charles, and who. To France was over land and ocean brought. From climes so distant, with no other view. Than by her own experience to be taught. If their far-spread renown were false or true. Resolved together with the troop to speed. 
as soon as she had heard their monarch's need. Meanwhile Rogero, with that guiding May, had vainly by the rugged pathway sped. Who that King Rodamont another way had taken, when he reached the mountain, red, and thinking, that he was not far away, and the road straight towards that fountain led, trotting in haste behind the Sarzen hide, where he knew prince upon the path espied. Hippalca he to Mont Albano, prayed, to wend, which distant one day's journey lies, because to seek anew that fountain glade, would be to wander in too wide a guise. And that she need not doubt withal, he said. But that he would retrieve the ravished prize. And, were she in Mount Alban, or where'er, vowed she the tidings speedily should hear. And gave the letter to that maid to bear. Which, writ by him, he in his bosom wore. And added many matters, with the prayer. She would excuse him by her friendly lore. Hippalca in her memory fixed, with care. The whole, took leave, and turned her horse once more. Nor ceased that faithful messenger to ride. Till she Mount Alban reached at evening tide. Rogero followed fast the Paynim knight. Tracked o'er the level by those footsteps new. But overtook him not, till he got sight. Beside the fount, of Mandricardo too. Already either had his promise plight. He not unknown to his compeer would do. Till they had succor to that host conveyed. On which King Charles his yoke had nearly laid. Arrived, Rogero knew Frontino gay. And, through that courser, knew the knight astride. And on his lance with bending shoulder lay. And in fierce tone the African defied. Job was outdone by Rodamont that day. In that the king subdued his haughty pride. And the fell fight which he had ever used. To seek with every instance, he refused. The first day this and last, that e'er in fight. King Rodamont refused his part to bear. But his desire appeared to him so right. In succor of his sovereign to repair. That if he had believed he clutched the knight. Faster than nimble leopard gripes the hare. He not so far his purpose would forego. As on his prey to waste a passing blow. Add, that he knows Rogero is the peer. Who him for good Frontino now assails. So famous, that no other cavalier. Like him such eminence of glory scales. The man, of whom he gladly would be clear. By proof, how much in battle he avails. Yet shuns the combat, proffered on his part. So much his monarch siege has he at heart. Three hundred miles, a thousand, would he ride. Were it not so, to purchase such a fray. But he, if him Achilles had defied, had done no otherwise than as I say. So deeply did the covering ashes hide. That fire beneath, whose fury stifled lay. He told, why he refused the strife, and prayed. As well Rogero the design to aid. Adding, that he, in doing so, would do. What to his lord a faithful vassal owes. Still, when the siege was raised, might they renew. And terminate their deadly strife by blows. To him Rogero cried, The fight with you. I freely will defer, till from his foes. King Agrament be rescued by the sword. Provided first Frontino be restored. Would you that I delay to prove by deed? That you have acted in unworthy sort. Nor did, like valiant man, to take my steed. Thus from a woman, till we meet at court. Render me my frontino back, or read. Upon no other ground, will I support. That battle shall not be between us two. Nor will accord an hour of truce to you. While of that African he so demands. Frontino, or him threats with instant fray. And either still the other's claim withstands. Nor this the steed will grant, nor that delay. King Mandricardo stirs, on the other hand. Another strife. Who sees that ensign gay? Rogero on his shield was wont to wear. The bird which reigns o'er other fowls of air. 
he bore on azure field that eagle white. The beauteous ensign of the Trojan throng. Such glorious bearing showed that youthful knight. Because he drew his line from Hector strong. But Mandricardo knew not of this right. Nor would endure, and deemed a crying wrong. That any other but himself should wield. Famed Hector's argent eagle on his shield. King Mandricardo is like blazon war. The bird of Ide, which bore off Ganymede. How in the castle perilous of yore. He gained that noble ensign for his meed. That enterprise I ween, with matter more. You bear in mind, and how, for his good deed. The fairy gave it him with all the gear. Erst given by Vulcan to the Trojan peer. The Tartar and Rogero had before. Engaged in battle, only on this quest. Divided by what accident, my lore. Recites not. As already manifest. Nor had till now those knights encountered more. When Mandricardo sees that bird impressed. On the child's shield. He shouts with threatening cry. To young Rogero, take my proud defy. Audacious man, mine ensign doost thou wear. Nor this today for the first time, is said. And think'st thou, madman, I will thee forbear. Because for once to spare thee I was led? But since nor menace nor yet counsel are. Of force to drive this folly from thy head. It shall appear how much it had been best. For thee forthwith to have obeyed my hest. As fire, whereon dry, heated wood is strown. Roused by a little puff, at once ascends. So burns Rogero's wrath, to fury blown. By the first word with which that king offends. Thou thinkest, he exclaims, to bear me down. Because his knight as well with me contends. But learn that I can win in fighting field. From him the horse. From the good Hector's shield. Yet once before, nor is it long ago. Twixt us in battle was this question tried. But I that day restrained the murderous blow. Because thou hadst no falchion at thy side. These shall be deeds, that strife was but a show. And ill this argent bird shall thee betide. This is the ancient bearing of my line. Tis thou usurpest what by right is mine. Say rather, thou usurpest mine from me. Cried Mandricardo, and that falchion drew. Which lately, underneath the green wood tree. Orlando from his hand in fury threw. The child, who could not aught but courteous be. Such was his gentle nature, at the view. Of Mandricardo, with his falchion drawn. Let fall his ready lance upon the lawn. And at the same time, strained his goodly sword and better braced the covering shield he wore. But, twixt those combatants leapt Argier's lord. And quick Marfisa spurred the pair before. And one this foe, the other that implored. And both besought, that they would strive no more. King Rodamont complains, the Tartar knight. Has violated twice the compact plight. First, in belief he should Marfisa gain. He more than once had jousted for that fair. Now to bear off Rogero's ensign fane. He for King Agrament shows little care. If thus, said Rodamont, you faith maintain. To finish our own combat better were. A cause of strife more fitting and more due. Than either of the pleas maintained by you. On this condition was the treaty plight. And the accord between us now in force. When I with thee shall have performed the fight. I next shall answer him about the horse. You then with him, if you survive, you're right. Shall to the shield maintain in warlike course. But I such work shall give you, I conceive. As will small labor for Rogero leave. The bargain which thou hopest thou shalt not have. King Mandricardo answered Rodamont. I will accord thee more than thou dost crave. And trust to make thee sweat from feet to front and to bestow on others, much shall save. As water never fails in plenteous font. And for Rogero and a thousand more. And all the world beside reserve a store. 
Their fury waxed, and angrier words ensued. Now upon this and now upon that side. With Rodamont and with the child at feud. Fierce Mandricardo both at once defied. Rogero, not endowed with suffering mood. Would hear no more of peace, but vengeance cried. Now here Marfisa hurried, and now there. But could not singly such an ill repair. As peasant, when a river saps its mounds. And seeking vent the oozing waters drop. Hastening to shut the stream within its bounds. And save his pastures and expected crop. Dams right and left. Yet him the stream confounds. For, if he hear the sinking ruin prop. There he beholds the rotten dike give out. And from thick seems the restless water spout. So. While the Tartar and Rogero rage. And Rodamont, in hurly-burly fray. For each of these would fiercest battle wage. And would outgo his fears in that assay. Marfisa seeks their fury to assuage. And strives, and time and trouble throws away. For as she makes one knight from strife retire. She sees the others re-engage with ire. Marfisa, to appease the warriors bent. Exclaimed, Sirs, listen to my better lore. A good remembrance, tis, all argument. To leave until we agreement restore. If each is on his own design intent. With Mandricardo will I strive once more. And fain would see, according to his word. If he can conquer me with spear and sword. But if, to aid our sovereign, duty call. Him let us aid, nor civil discord breed. To ground, through me, such project shall not fall. Rogero said, so he restore my steed. Let him resign that horse, or, once for all. I say again, to his defense take heed. I either hear my parting breath will yield. Or on my courser will return afield. T'were not so easy to obtain this quest. As, t'were that other, Rodamont replied. And thus pursued, I unto thee protest. If any evil shall our king betide. Thine is the fault not mine, for I am pressed. To do whatever is fitting, on my side. Small heed to that protest Rogero paid. And stung by fury, griped his trenchant blade. On Argier's king he sprang, like savage boar. Encountering him with shoulder and with shield. And him disordered and distressed so sore. That with one stirrup's loss, the monarch reeled. Rogero, Mandricardo cried, Give o'er. Or else with me divide the battlefield. And struck, this said, with worse than felon spite. Upon the morion of that youthful knight. Even to his courser's neck Rogero bends. Nor, when he would, himself can rear. Because the sword of Yulian's son 316 descends as well upon the youthful cavalier. And, but that adamant his face defends. Across the cheeks his tempered helm would shear. The child, in anguish, opens either hand. And this the bridle drops and that the brand. Him o'er the field his courser bears away. On earth the falchion lies, which he let go. Marfisa, with Rogero's through that day. Comrade in arms, appeared like fire to glow. Enraged, that two one knight should overlay. And, as magnanimous and stout, for foe. Singled King Mandricardo out, and sped. With all her might, stroke upon his head. Rodamont o'er the plain pursues his man. Another stroke, and he has lost the horse. But Richardetto drives, and Vivian. Between the child and Paynim in that course. This warrior at the king of Argia ran. And from Rogero severed him by force. That, it was Vivian, in Rogero's hand. Now from the blow recovered, placed his brand. As soon as to himself the child returns. And is by Vivian armed with sword again. To venge the injury that stripling burns. And runs at Rodamont with flowing rein. Like lion. Whom a bull upon his horns. Has lifted, though he feels this while no pain. 
so him his heat of blood, disdain, and ire. To venge that cruel outrage goad and fire. Rogero storms upon the Paynim's crest. And, could that knight recover his own brand? Which by foul felony, as erst expressed, was ravished from the youthful warrior's hand. I well believe that the descending pest, Rodamont's iron cask will ill withstand. That cask which Babel's king bade forge, who sought to war on heaven in his presumptuous thought. Discord, believing nothing could ensue. But stir, and strife, and combat on that head. And that there was no place, amid the crew. For truce or treaty, to her sister said. That she, her well-beloved monks to view. Might now again with her securely tread. Let them depart, and mark we where in front. Rogero has sore wounded Rodamont. Rogero's blow was leveled with such spite. That this upon Frontino's crupper made. The helmet and the shell of iron smite. In which that Saracen his limbs arrayed. And he, three times or four, to left and right. As if about to fall, head foremost, swayed. And would have lost with all his trusty brand. But that the hilt was fastened to his hand. Marfisa has King Mandricardo pressed. Meanwhile, and makes him sweat breast, front, and face. And he Marfisa has as sore distressed. But such good plates each valiant bosom case. Impassable is either iron vest. And both have hitherto maintained their place. But, at a turn her martial courser made. Marfisa needed young Rogero's aid. Marfisa's martial steed, in turning short. Where a firm footing that soft mead denied. On the moist surface slipped, and in such sort. That he fell, helpless, on his better side. And, as he rose in haste and lacked support, a thwart by furious Brigliador was plied. On which the Paynim, little courteous, came. So that he fell anew beneath the dame. Rogero, when Marfisa on the ground. He saw unhorsed, deferred no more his aid. Who for that deed had leisure. Since, astound. Rodamont far away had been conveyed. He smote the morion which that tartar crowned. And, cleft like stock, his head on earth had laid. Had he his trusty balisarda borne. Or manned Ricardo other helmet worn. Rodamont, of his senses repossessed. Turned round this while, and Richardetto spied. And recollecting how, when late distressed. He to Rogero succor had supplied. Quickly against that youthful warrior pressed. Who an ill guerdon would from him abide? Did Malagigi not his malice thwart? With other magic and with mickle art. Sage Malagigi versed in every slight. Which by the wisest wizard can be done. Although his book he has not, by whose might. He in his course can stop the passing sun. The conjuration recollects and right. By which he tames the rebel fiends, and one. Bids enter into Duralis's steed. Whom he to fury stings and headlong speed. Into that gentle palfrey's form, who bore. The beauteous daughter of King Stordelaine. Sir Vivian's brother, simply by his lore. Made pass an angel of the dark domain. And the good horse, who never moved before. Except in due obedience to the rein. Now took a leap, posseest by that ill sprite. Thirty feet long and sixteen feet in height. It was a mighty leap, yet not so wide. As to make any rider void the cell 317. Seeing herself so high in air, loud cried. Yielding herself for dead, that bonnible. Her palfrey, with the demon for his guide. After his leap, runs, goaded by the spell. The maid still screaming, such a furious course. An arrow had not reached the flying horse. At the first hearing of that voice, the son. Of Yulian, on his part, the strife suspended. And thither, where the furious palfrey run. Swiftly in succor of the lady wended. No less was by the Tartar monarch done. 
who neither child nor damsel more offended. But without craving time, or truce, or peace. Pursued King Rodamont and Duralis. Marfisa rose meanwhile, to fury stirred. And, with disdain all over in a glow, thought to accomplish her revenge, and erred. For at too great a distance was the foe. Rogero, who beheld the war deferred. Rather like lion roared than sighed, well no. Those two their coursers they should vainly gore. Following Frontino and good Brigliador. Rogero will not halt till he renew. And end the unfinished combat for the horse. Marfisa will not quit that Tartar, who will to her satisfaction prove his force. To leave their quarrel in such guise the two esteem foul scandal, as their better course. In chase of those offending knights to fare is the conclusion of that valiant pair. They in the Paynim camp will find each foe, if them before they find not on their way, whom thither bound, to raise the siege they know. Ere Charlemagne bring all beneath his sway. So thitherward the twain directly go. Where these, they deem, will be their certain prey. Yet not so rudely thence Rogero broke. But that he first with his companion spoke. Thither returns Rogero, where apart. Is he, the brother of his lady fair. And vows himself his friend, with generous heart. In good or evil fortune, everywhere. Him he implores, and frames his speech with art. He his salutes will to his sister bear. And this so well, he moves by that request. No doubt in him, nor any of the rest. Of Malagigi he and Vivian. Next takes farewell and wounded Aldegir. Their services no less that kindly twain. Proffer, as ever debtors to the peer. Marfisa to seek Paris is so fain. That parting she forgets her friends to cheer. But Malagigi and Vivian, in pursuit. Follow, and from afar that made salute. And so Sir Richardet as well, but lo! On earth lies Aldegir, and there must rest. The two first champions 318 towards Paris go. And the two others 319 next pursue that quest. In other canto, sir, I hope to show. Of wondrous and of superhuman jest. Wrought to the damage of the Christian king. By those two couples of whose worth I sing. Canto. Chapter 27. By good Rogero and those Paynims three. Defeated, Charlemagne to Paris flies. Already all, throughout their chivalry. Are mad with spite and hatred. Jars arise. And strife, and means to still their enmity. Their sovereign is unable to devise. From him departs the monarch of Argier. Who is rejected of his lady dear. A woman for the most part reasons best. Upon a sudden motion, and untaught. For with that special grace the sex is blessed. Mid those so many gifts, wherewith tis fraught. But man, of a less nimble wit possiest. Is ill at counsel, save, with sober thought. He ruminates thereon, content to spend. Care, time and trouble to mature his end. That seemed good counsel, but was ill indeed. Of Malagigi's, as before was said. Albeit he so rescued in his need. His cousin Richardet, with odds o'erlaid. When from the pain of monarchs him he freed. By ready demon, who his hest obeyed. For sure he never deemed they should be born. Where they would work the Christian army scorn. Had he some little prize for counsel stayed. We with the same success may well suppose. He to his cousin might have furnished aid yet brought not on the Christian host their foes. That evil sprite he might as well have made. Him, who embodied in the palfrey goes. Eastward or west, so far that lady bear. That France should hear no further of the pair. So the two lovers, following her who flies. To other place than Paris might be brought. But this calamity was a surprise. On Malagigi, through his little thought. 
and fiendish malice, banished from the skies. Whichever blood and fire and ravage sought. Guided them by that way to Charles's disaster. Left to his choice by him, the wizard master. The wayward fiend who makes that palfrey ramp. Bears off the fright Doralis amain. Nor river nor yet yawning ditch, or swamp. Wood, rock, or rugged cliff, the steed restrain. Till, traversing the French and English camp. And other squadrons of the mingled train. Beneath the holy flag of Christ arrayed. He to Granada's king the fair conveyed. The Sarzan and the Tartar the first day. That royal damsel a long while pursue. Because her distant form they yet survey. But finally they lose that lady's view. When, like a lime dog, whom the hunters lay. On hare or roebuck's trail, the valiant too. Follow upon her track, nor halt, till told. That she is harbored in her father's hold. Guard thyself, Charles, for, lo! Against thee blown. Is such a storm, that I no refuge see. Nor these redoubt monarchs come alone. But those of Sericane and Circassy. While fortune, who would probe thee to the bone. Has taken those two shining stars from thee. Who kept thee by their wisdom and their light. And thou remainest blind and wrapped in night. Tis of the valiant cousins three twenty I would speak. Of these, Orlando of his wit bereft. Naked, in sun or shower, by plain or peak. Wanders about the world, a helpless weft. And he, in wisdom little less to seek. Rinaldo, in thy peril thee has left. And, for in Paris town she is not found. In search of his Angelica is bound. A cunning, old enchanter him deceived. As in the outlet of my tale was said. Deluded by a phantom, he believed. Angelica was with Orlando fled. And hence with jealousy, at heart, aggrieved. Lover ne'er suffered worse, to Paris sped. Whence he, as soon as he appeared at court. By chance, was named to Britain to resort. Now, the field won, wherein with mickle fame. He drove King Agrament his works behind. To Paris yet again the warrior came. Searched convent, tower, and house, and. Save confined. Twixt solid walls or columns be the dame. Her will the restless lover surely find. Nor her nor yet Orlando he descries. So forth in the desire to seek them highs. Her to Anglantes or to Brava brought. He deemed the count enjoyed in mirth and play. And vainly, here and there, that damsel sought. Nor here nor there, described the long-sought prey. To Paris he repaired again, in thought. The paladin returning to waylay. Because he deemed he could not rove at large. Without that town, but on some special charge. Within he takes a day or two's repose. And, when he finds Orlando comes not there. Again to Brava and Anglantes goes. Inquiring tidings of the royal fair. Nor, whether morning dawns or noontide glows. Nor night nor day, his weary steed does spare. Nor once, but twice a hundred times, has run. The selfsame course, by light of moon or sun. But the ancient foe, deluded by who say. To the forbidden fruit Eve raised her hand. Turned his wan eyes on Charlemagne one day. When he the good Rinaldo absent scanned. And seeing what foul rout and disarray. Might at that time be given to Charles's band. Of all the Saracens the choice and flower. Marshalled in arms against the Christian power. King Sacrapent and King Gradasso, who. While a companionship in war had made. When from Atlantis' palace fled the two. Together to unite their arms. In aid. Of royal agreements beleaguered crew. And to the ruin of King Charles, he swayed. And where through unknown lands the warriors hide. Made smooth the way, and served them as a guide. Thither another fiend that ruthless foe. 
Bade Rodamont and Mand Ricardo bear. Through ways, by which his comrade was not slow. With the affrighted Doralis to fare. A third. Lest they their enterprise forego. Rogero and Marfisa has in care. But their conductor journeys not so fast. And hence that martial pair arrives the last. Later by half an hour, against their foes. So matched, Rogero and Marfisa speed. Because the sable angel, who his blows. Aimed at the bands that held the Christian creed. Provided, that the contest which arose. About that horse, his work should not impede. Which had again been kindled, had the twain. Rodamont and Rogero, met again. The first four ride until themselves they find. Where the besiegers and besieged they view. And see the banners shaking in the wind. And the cantonments of those armies too. Here they short counsel took, and next opined. In spite of Charlemagne's beleaguering crew. To carry speedy succor to their liege. And rescue royal agreement from siege. Where thickest camped lay Charles's host, they spurred. Closing their files against the Christian foe. Afric and Spain. Is the assailant's word. Whom at all points the Franks for Paynims know. To arms, to arms. Throughout their camp is heard. But first is felt the Moorish saber's blow. Even on the rearguard falls the vengeful stroke. Not charged alone, but routed, beat and broke. The Christian host throughout is overthrown. And how they know not, in tumultuous wise. And that it is a wanted insult done. By Switzer or by Gascon, some surmise. But, since the reason is to most unknown. Each several nation to its standard flies. This to the drum, that to the trumpets sound. And shriek and shout from earth to heaven redound. All armed is Charlemagne, except his head. And, girt with paladins, his faithful stay. Arrived demanding what alarm has bred. Disorder in his host and disarray. And stopped with menace this or that who fled. And many fugitives, upon their way. Some with maimed face, breast, arm, or hand, espied. And some with head or throat with life-blood died. Advancing, he on earth saw many more. Or rather in a lake of crimson laid. Horribly weltering in their own dark gore. Beyond the leeches and magicians' aid. 321. And busts dissevered from the heads they bore. And legs and arms, a cruel show, surveyed. And, from the first cantonments to the last. Saw slaughtered men on all sides as he passed. Where the small band advances in such wise. Deserving well eternal praise to gain. Vouching their deeds, a long-drawn furrow lies. A signal record of their might and main. His army's cruel slaughter, with surprise. Anger and rage, is viewed by Charlemagne. So he whose shattered walls have felt its force. Throughout his mansion tracks the lightning's course. Not to the ramparts of the Paynim crew. Of agreement as yet had pierced this aid, 322. When, on the further side, these other two. Rogero and Marfisa, thither made. When, once or twice, that worthy pair of you. Have taken of the ground, and have surveyed. The readiest way assistance to afford. They swiftly move in succor of their lord. As when we spark to loaded mine apply. Through the long furrow, filled with sable grain. So fast the furious wildfire darts, that I pursues the progress of the flash with pain. And as dire ruin follows, and from high the loosened rock and solid bastion reign, so bold Rogero and Marfisa rush to battle, so the Christian squadrons crush. Front and askance, the assailants smote, and lo, on earth heads, arms, and severed shoulders lay. Where'er the Christian squadrons were too slow. To free the path and break their close array. Whoer has seen the passing tempest blow. 
and of the hill or valley, in its way. One portion ravage and another leave. May so their course amid that host conceive. Many who had escaped by quick retreat. Rodamont and those other furious three. Thank God that he had given them legs and feet. Wherewith to fly from that calamity. And from the child and damsel new defeat. Encounter, while with end long course they flee. As man, no matter if he stands or run. Seeks vainly his predestined doom to shun. Hoops scape one peril, into other fly. And pay the penalty of flesh and blood. So, by the teeth of dog, is wont to die. The fox, together with her infant brood. By one who dwells her ancient cavern nigh. Unearthed, and with a thousand blows pursued. When from some unsuspected place, that foe. Has filled with fire and smoke the den below. Marfisa and the child, of danger clear. Enter the Paynim ramparts. And, with eyes. Upturned, the Saracens, with humble cheer. Thank heaven for the success of that emprise. The paladins no longer are their fear. The meanest more a hundred francs defies. And, tis resolved, without repose, again. To drench with Christian blood the thirsty plain. At once a formidable larum rose. Horns, drums, and shrilling clarions filled the skies. And the wind ruffles, as it comes and goes. Banner and gonfalon of various dyes. The Germans and the warlike Bretons close. Ranged on the other part, in martial wise. Italians, English, French, were seen, and through. Those armies' furious war blazed forth anew. The force of the redoubt Rodamont. And that of Agrican's infuriate son, 323. That of Rogero, Valiant's copious font. Gradasso's, so renowned for trophies won. The martial maid. Marfisa's fearless front. And might of sacrapent, excelled by none. Made Charles upon St. John and Dennis call. And fly for shelter to his Paris wall. Of fierce Marfisa and her bold allies. The unconquered daring and the wondrous might. Sir, was not of a nature, of a guise. To be conceived. Much less described aright. The number slaughtered hence may you surmise. What cruel blow King Charles sustained in fight. Add to these warriors of illustrious name. More than one more with Pharaoh known to fame. Many through reckless haste were drowned in sane. For all too narrow was the bridge's floor. And wished, like Icarus, for wings in vain. Having grim death behind them and before. Save Oliver, and Ogre hight the Dane. The paladins are prisoners to the moor. Wounded beneath his better shoulder fled. The first, that other with a broken head. And, like Orlando and Duke Amon's son, 324. Had faithful Brandimart thrown up the game. Charles had from Paris into exile gone. If he had scaped alive so fierce a flame. Brandimart does his best, and when tis done. Yields to the storm, thus fortune, fickle dame. Now smiles upon the Paynim monarch, who. Besieges royal Charlemagne anew. From earth beneath the widow's outcry swells. Mingled with elders and with orphans' prayer. Into the pure serene, where Michael dwells. Rising above this dim and troubled air. And to the blessed archangel loudly tells. How the devouring wolf and raven tear. His faithful English, French, and German train. Whose slaughtered bodies overspread the plain. Red blushed the blessed angel, who believed. He ill obedience to his lord had paid. And, in his anger, deemed himself deceived. By the perfidious discord and betrayed. He his creator's order had received. To stir the moors to strife, nor had obeyed had rather in their eyes who marked the event. Appeared throughout to thwart his high intent. As servant faithful to his lord, and more. In love than memory strong, who finds that he. Has that forgotten which at his heart core. 
as precious as his life and soul should be. Hastes to repair his error, nor before. He mend that fault, again his Lord will see. So not to God is he. Michael will ascend. Until he has achieved his holy end. Again he to that monastery flew. Where whilom he had discord seen. And there. Seated in chapter sees her, while anew. Their yearly officers elected are. She taking huge delight those friars to view. That at each other hurled their books of prayer. His hand within her locks the archangel twists. And deals her endless scathe with feet and fists. On her he next a cross's handle broke. Where with her back, and arms, and head he plies. His mercy with loud voice the wretch bespoke. And hugged that angel's knees with suppliant cries. Michael suspends not the avenging stroke. Till hunted to the Moorish camp she flies. Then thus, believe worse vengeance yet in store. If I beyond these lines behold thee more. Albeit in back and arms all over shent. Was discord by that angel, in her fear. Of suffering yet again such chastisement. Such horrid fury and such blows severe. She speedily to take her bellows went. And, adding food to what she lit Wylera. And setting other ready piles of fire. Kindled in many hearts a blaze of ire. And good Rogero, she inflames them so. With Rodamont and Mandricardo fares. To agrament. And all, since now the foe. The Paynims pressed no more, the vantage theirs. To him the seed of their dissensions show. And what the bitter produce which it bears. Then to the judgment of the king refer. Who first enlisted field his claim should stir. As well Marfisa to Troiano's son 325. Relates her case, and will conclude the fray. Which with the Tartar king she had begun. Because by him provoked to that essay. Nor will she yield her place to any one. No, not a single hour, yet less a day. But with loud instances maintains her right. With Mandricardo first to wage the fight. To have the first possession of the field. No less renowned King Rodamont contended. Which he, the African array to shield. Had interrupted until now suspended. Rogero to King Agramont appealed. As having borne too long, though sore offended. That Rodamont form him detained his horse. Nor yet would meet him first in martial course. The Tartar king, for more perplexity. Denied on any ground Rogero's right. The bearer of the white-winged bird to be. And was so passing wood with wrath and spite. That, if to this those others would agree. He would at once those several quarrels fight. And so those others would as well have done. If Agramant's consent they could have won. King Agramant, with prayer and kingly word. Had willingly appeased that jarring crew. But since the foes were deaf to all accord. Nor would assent to peace or truce anew. Considered how at least he might afford. The field of each of them in order do. And, as the best resolve, at last decreed. Each should by lot possess the listed mead. For lots the monarch bade prepare, which done. This, Rodamont and Mandricardo, said. Rogero and Mandricardo were in one. In one, Rogero and Rodamont were red. That, Mandricardo and Marfisa, run. Next, as the fickle goddess, fortune, led. The lots are drawn, and in the first appear. The Tartar king and sovereign of Argier. Rogero and Mandricardo for that play. Were next, Rogero and Rodamont were third. Marfisa's lot and Mardricardo's lay. At bottom, whence the dame was deeply stirred. Nor young Rogero seems a whit more gay. Who knows the prowess of those two preferred? Will nothing in the listed combat leave? For him or for Marfisa to achieve? There lies a place, of Paris little wide. Covering a mile or somewhat less, and round. Like ancient theatre, on every side. 
encompassed by a tall and solid mound. With Castle Wylam was it fortified, which sword and fire had leveled with the ground. The Parmesan like circle does survey, whenever he to Borgo wends his way. In this place is prepared the listed mead, which palisades of little height enclose. A square, of just proportions for that need. With two capacious gates, as usage goes. The day on which to combat have agreed. Those valiant knights, who will not balk their foes. Beside the palisades, to left and right. Facing each entrance, are pavilions pite. In that, which looks towards the western sun. Is lodged the giant monarch of Argier and him assist his serpent hide to don. Bold Pharaoh and Circassia's cavalier. Gradasso and the puissant false iron. In that which fronts the morning hemisphere. Clothed with their hands, in Trojan plate and chain. The good successor of King Agricane. High on a throne of ample state appeared. Agrament and Marsilius, next in place. Were Stortelain and all the chiefs, revered. Throughout the squadrons of the Paynim race. Happy was he who found himself upreared. On mound or tree, above that level space. Great was the throng, and round the palisade. On every side the eddying people swayed. Were seated with the queen of fair Castile. Queens, princesses, and dames of noble strain. From Aragon, Granada, and Seville. And Atlas columns and amid the train, assembled to behold that fierce appeal, was placed the daughter of King Stortelain. Two costly vests, one red, one green, she wore. But ill the first was dyed, and faded sore.326. In dress succinct Marfisa sate. In plight. Such as beseemed a warrior and a maid. Thermodun haply witnessed Hippolyte and her fair squadron in like garb arrayed. A field already, in his livery dight. Agrament's herald made proclaim, and said. It was forbid to all men, far and wide. In act or word, with either part to side. The frequent crowd expects the double foe. And often, in impatience, they complain. And call those famous cavaliers too slow. When from the Tartar's tent an angry strain is heard, and cries which multiply. Sir, no. It was the martial king of Sari Cain, 327. And Puis and Tartar, who that question stirred. And made the mighty tumult which has heard. Sari Cain's monarch, having with his hand. Equipped the king of Tartary all o'er. Approached to gird him with that sovereign brand with which Orlando went adorned of yore. When Durandana on the hilt he scanned, graved with the quartering that Almontes wore, which from that wretched man, beside a font, youthful Orlando reft in Aspermont. He, seeing this, ugnized it for the blade, so famous, which Anglantes' warrior bore, for which he had the fairest fleet arrayed, which ever put to sea from eastern shore and had Castile's rich kingdom overlaid, and conquered fruitful France some years before. But cannot now imagine how that sword is in possession of the Tartar lord, and asks, had he by force or treaty won, and when and where and how, that falchion bright. And Mand Ricardo said that, he had done. Fierce battle for that sword with Brava's knight. 328 who feigned himself of sober sense foregone, hoping that so he should conceal his fright. For I on him would ceaseless war have made. He added, while he kept the goodly blade, saying, the count, in yielding to his foe, that sword, the beaver's known device had tried. Who, followed closely by the hunter, no. Their fell pursuer covets not beside. Ere he had heard him out, nor I forego. That sword to thee nor any one, replied. Gradasso, fierce, well earned by me, at cost. Of treasure, and of pain, and people lost. 
some other falchion for thyself purvey. This will I have, nor deem my reasons new. Whether Orlando wise or foolish stray, I make it mine where'er it meets my view. With none to witness, thou, beside the way. Usurp that sword, I claim it as my due. For this my sigh-meter shall reasons yield. And we will try the cause in listed field. Prepare to win the sword before thou rear. That goodly blade against King Rodamont. To win his arms is use of cavalier. Before his foe in duel he affront. No sweeter music ever soothes my ear. Replied the Tartar, as he raised his front. Then voice which champions me to martial field. But see that his consent the Sarzan 329 yield. Be thou the first, and, next on listed ground. Let Sarza's valiant lord the question try. Nor doubt but I in readiness be found. To thee and every other to reply. Thou shalt not so the ordered lots confound. Or break our compact, was Rogero's cry. Either, first Rodamont shall take the field. Or shall to me his right of battle yield. If that be true Gradasso has averred. That knight should win the arms he would assay. Thou hast no title to my white-winged bird. Save this from me thou first shalt bear away. But since, forsooth, Wylera I said the word. I will not what I once pronounced unsay. That mine shall be the second battle, so. That Argier's monarch first affront his foe. I will confuse the order of the field. Throughout, if partially confused by thee. Abandon will I not my blazoned shield. Unless thou combat for it now with me. Were one and the other Mars, for battle steeled. Replies enraged. The king of Tartary. Nor one nor the other's might should make me wave. My title to that shield and goodly glaive. And overmastered by his collar, flies. With a clenched fist at him of Sari Kane. And smites him with his right hand in such wise. As makes him quit his hold of Durandane. Gradasso Bold was taken by surprise. Not deeming him so furious and insane. And, while he looked not to the Tartar lord. Found himself robbed of good Orlando's sword. Fury and scorn Gradasso's visage heats. Which seems to flash with fire, at that disgrace. And with more rage and pain his bosom beats. In that, twas offered in such public place. To draw his sigh meter, the king retreats. Intent upon revenge, some little space. So Mandricardo on himself relies. Rogero he to fight, as well defies. Come on in arms against me, both combined. And be King Rodamont the third. He said. Come Spain and Afric and all humankind. Ne'er will I turn. And he, at not dismayed. So saying, in his fury, sawed the wind. About him, with Almonte's noble blade. Embraced his shield, and, full of collar. Stood. Against Gradasso and Rogero good. Leave me the care, the fierce Gradasso cried. The frenzy of this madman to subdue. Not so, by heaven. Rogero Roth replied. For I this field claim justly as my due. Stand back, and stand thou back, on either side. They shout, yet neither of the twain withdrew. And thus among those three began a feud. And then some strange result would have ensued. If many had not interposed, and sought. With little wit their fury to restrain. Who had well nigh too dear the experience bought. Of saving others at their proper pain. Nor to accord the world had ever brought. Those knights, but that the worthy king of Spain 330. Came thither with renowned Troiano's heir. 331. Awed by whose sovereign presence all forbear. Agrament those contending warriors made. The cause of their so burning strife display. Next earnestly bestirred himself, and prayed. Gradasso that he would, in courteous way. Concede the Trojan Hector's goodly blade. 
to mand Ricardo, solely for that day. Until the cruel fight was at an end. Wherein he should with Rodamont contend. While royal agreement would peace restore. And now with this and now with that conferred. From the other tent, between the Sars and Moor. And Sacrapent, another strife was heard. Valiant King Sacrapent, as said before. To equip Sir Rodamont himself bestirred. And he and Pharaoh had that champion Dreist. In his forefather Nimrod's iron vest. And there had they arrived, where with his spume. The horse was making his rich bridle white. I of the good Frontino speak, for whom? Rogero urged with yet unfelt despite. King Sacrapent, who plays the part of groom. And has to bring afield the Sars and Knight. Marks narrowly the courser's gear and shoes. And sell and furniture throughout reviews. And as his points and nimble parts, more near. He, in this view, observes with better heed. The youthful king, beyond all doubt, is clear. He sees his frontalat in that steed. Him he of old had held so passing dear. Wylam of such debates the fruitful seed. And for whose loss, Wylera he was so woe. He evermore on foot resolved to go. This from beneath him had Brunello 332 born. Before Albraca, on the very day. Angelica's rare ring, and Roland's horn. And Balisarda he conveyed away. With fierce Marfisa's blade, and on return. To Afric, to Rogero, from his prey. Gave Balisarda and the courser, who. Was by the child Frontino named anew. Assured, t'was no mistake, Sir Cassius' chief. Turned him about to Rodamont, and cried. Reft from me in Albraca, by a thief. This horse is mine. Which might be certified. By them whose words would warrant well belief. But as my witnesses are distant wide. If it be questioned, I will make it plain. And will, with sword in hand. The truth maintain. Yet am I well contented, for that we have for thee some few days together gone to lend him for today, since well I see that not without him could the fight be done, but on condition that the courser be acknowledged mine and furnished as a loan. Otherwise, hope not for that horse, save first me, on this quarrel, thou in combat worst, the furious king of Argier that in pride surpassed all knights that ever girt the sword, whose paragon, for heart and prowess tried, meseems no ancient history's record, cried, Sacrapent, if any one beside thyself, to me should utter such a word, he should deem quickly, from its bitter fruit, he from his birth would better have been mute, but, for that fellowship in which we went, as thou hast said, together, I to show. Such patience and forbearance am content. As warning thee, thy purpose to forego. Until thou shalt have witnessed the event. Of strife between me and my tartar foe. When him I such example hope to make. That thou shalt humbly say, the courser take. Fierce and enraged, replied Sir Cassius peer. To play the churl with thee is courteous deed. But I to thee repeat more plain and clear. Thou ill wouldst aught design against that steed. For, while I an avenging sabre rear. This I prohibit thee, and, should it need. And every better means of battle fail. With thee for this would battle, tooth and nail. They from dispute proceed to ribaldry. From words to blows, and through their mickle ire. Fierce battle was inflamed and blazed more high. Than ever lightly kindled straw took fire. King Rodamont is steeled in panoply. Sacrapent neither plate nor male attire. Yet so in fence is skilled that nimble lord. He seems all over sheltered by his sword. No greater were the daring and the might. Though infinite, which Rodamont displayed. Than the precaution and the nimble slight which the Circassian summoned to his aid. 
no mill wheel ever turns with swifter flight. The circling stone by which the grain is braid. Then sacrapent at need moves foot or hand. And shifts now here, now there his restless stand. But serpentine and pharaoh interfere. They withdrawn swords the twain asunder bore. With them Grandonia was and Isolier. And many other leaders of the moor. This was the tumult which was heard Wylera. In the other tent, what time they labored sore. Rogero vainly to a peace to bring. With Tartaris and Sericana's king. This while some voice to agrement the news. Reports aright, that Yulians might cede, 333. With Sacrapent, Circassia's king, pursues. A fierce and furious quarrel for the steed. Agrament, whom so many jars confuse. Exclaims to King Marsilius, Take thou heed. That no worse evil mid these knights betide. While for this new disorder I provide. Rodamont reined his anger, and retired. Some deal, at his approaching sovereign's view. Nor less respect in sacrapent inspired. The Moorish monarch. Of the furious too. He with grave voice and royal mien inquired. What cause of strife such deadly discord blew? And having searched their quarrel to the root. Would fain accord them. But with little fruit. Circassia's monarch would not, on his side. Longer his horse to Argier's lord allow. Save humbly Rodamont to him applied. That steed for this occasion to bestow. To him Sir Rodamont, with wonted pride. Return for answer, neither heaven nor thou. Shall make me recognize as gift or loan. What I with this good hand can make mine own. The king bade Sacrapent explain his right. And how that horse was taken from him sought. And this from first to last Circassia's knight. Rehearsed, and reddened as the tale he taught. Relating to the king the robber's slight. Who had surprised him overwhelmed with thought. Upon four spears his courser's saddle stayed. And from beneath the naked horse conveyed. Marfisa, whom these cries, mid others, bring. When of the robbery of the horse advised. In visage is disturbed, remembering. How on that day her falchion was surprised. And when that courser, which equipped with wing. Appeared when flying her, she recognized. And recognized as well, at first unknown. The valiant king who filled Circassia's throne. The others who stood round her, won't to hear. Brunello often boast of the deceit. Gone turned towards that wretch, and made appear. By open signs they knew him for the cheat. Marfisa who the subtle knave Wylera. Suspected as the author of that feat. Now questions this, now that, who all accord. In saying, twas Brunello stole her sword. Who, well deserving as a fitting pain. To dangle from the gallows tree in air. By agrament the crown of Tingitane. An ill example, was preferred to wear. This fires a new Marfisa's old disdain. Nor she from instant vengeance will forbear. For this, as well as other shame and scorn. She on her road had from that caitiff born. A squire laced on her helmet, at her hest. She wore the remnant of her armor sheen. Nor without martial cuirass on her breast. Find I, that she ten times was ever seen. Even from the day when first that iron vest. Braced on her limbs the passing valiant queen. With helm on head, where, mid the highest rose. Brunello sits among the first, she goes. Him by mid-breast Marfisa griped amain. And lifted up the lozel from the ground. As is rapacious eagle wont to strain. The pullet, in her talons circled round. And bore him where the sons of King Trojan. Heard the two knights their jarring claims propound. He who perceives himself in evil hands. I weeps, and mercy of that made demands. Above the universal noise and shout. Which rose nigh equally on either side. Brunello, who from all the crowd about. For pity now, and now for succor, cried. 
so loud was heard. That of that ample rout. He gathered round himself the pressing tide. Arrived before the Moorish army's head. To him with haughty mien Marfisa said. This thief, said she, thy vassal, will I slay. And with this hand of mine will not the cord. About his neck. Because the very day. He stole his courser, he purloined my sword. But is there any one who deems I say? Amiss, let him stand forth and speak the word. For I on him will prove, before thine eyes. I have done right, and who gainsays me, lies. But because haply some one may pretend. I have till such a time of strife delayed. My vengeance, when such famous knights contend. For three days shall the wretch's doom be stayed. In the meantime let him who would defend. That caitiff, come himself, or send him aid. For afterwards, if none the deed prevent. His carcass shall a thousand birds content. I hence to yonder tower, which distant nigh. Three leagues, o'erlooks a little copse, repair. But with one varlet in my company. And with one waiting maid. If any dare. Rescue the thief, let him come thither, I. Wait the approach of his defenders there. Thus she, and thither quickly wends her ways. Whither was said, nor any answer stays. Held on the pommel grappled by his hair. Brunello on Marfisa's courser lies. The caitiff weeps, and shrieking in despair. On all in whom he hopes, for succor cries. In such confusion is Troiano's heir. He sees no way through these perplexities. And, that Marfisa thence Brunello bore. In such a guise, yet grieved the monarch more. Not that he loved the lazel or esteemed. Rather to him some time had borne despite. And often had to hand the caitiff schemed. Since he had forfeited the ring of might. But here his honor touched the monarch deemed. So that his visage reddened at the slight. He would, in person, follow her at speed. And to his utmost power avenge the deed. But the wise king, Sabrino, who was by. Him from the quest endeavored to dissuade. And, that with his exalted majesty. Such enterprise were ill-assorted. Said. Although firm hope, nay full security. He had to overcome that martial maid. If he with pain subdued a woman, shame. Rather than honor, would pursue his name. Small profit and much peril would succeed. From any fight he should with her maintain. And he advised him, as the better deed. To leave that wretched caitiff to his pain. And albeit but a simple nod should need. To free him, from that nod he should refrain. In that the monarch would do ill to force. Even handed justice from her destined course. Thou to the fierce Marfisa mayst apply. To leave his trial, he pursued, to thee. With promise. Her in this to satisfy. And to suspend him from the gallows tree. And even should the maid thy prayer deny. Let her in every wish contented be. And rather than that she desert thy side. Let her hang him and every thief beside. Right willingly King Agrament gave way. To King Sabrino's counsel sage and stayed. And let renowned Marfisa went her way. Nor scathed he, nor let scathe, that martial maid. Neither endured that any her should pray. And heaven knows with what courage he obeyed. That wise advice, to calm such ruder strife. And quarrel, as throughout his camp were rife. At this mad discord laughed, no more in fear. That any truce or treaty should ensue. And scoured the place of combat there and here. Nor could stand still, for pleasure at the view. Pride gambled and rejoiced with her compeer. And on the fire fresh food and fuel threw. And shouted so that Michael in the sky. Knew the glad sign of conquest in that cry. Paris town rocked, and turbid ran the flood. Of sane at that loud voice, that horrid roar. And, so it echo rang in Arden's wood. 
beasts left their caverns in that forest hoar. Alp and Savenne's mountain solitude. And Blois, and Alls, and Rouen's distant shore. Rhine, Rhone, and Saone, and Garonne, heard the pest. Scared mothers hugged their children to their breast. Five have set up their rest, resolved to be. The first their different quarrels to conclude. Entangled so is one with other plea. That ill Apollo's self could judge the feud. 334. To unravel that first cause of enmity. The king began, the strife which had ensued. Because of beauteous Duralis, between. The king of Scythia 335 and her Algerine. King Agrament oft moved, between the pair. Now here now there, to bring them to accord. Now there now here, admonishing that pair. Like faithful brother and like righteous lord. But when he found that neither would forbear. Deaf and rebellious to his royal word. Nor would consent that lady to forego. The cause of strife, in favor of his foe. As his best lore, at length the monarch said. And to obey his sentence both were fain. That he who was by her preferred, should wed. The beauteous daughter of King Stordelaine. And that what was established on his head. Should not be changed, to either's loss or gain. The compromise was liked on either side. Since either hoped she would for him decide. The mighty king of Sarza, who long space. Before the Tartar, had loved Duralis. Who had preferred that sovereign to such grace. As modest lady may, nor do amiss. Believed. When she passed sentence on the case. She must pronounce what would ensure his bliss. Nor thus alone King Rodamont conceived. But all the Moorish host with him believed. All know what exploits wrought by him had been. For her in joust and war. They all unsound. And weak King Mandricardo's judgment ween. But he, who oft was with her on their round. And oftener private with the youthful queen. What time the telltale sun was underground. He, knowing well how sure he was to speed. Laughed at the silly rabble's idle creed. They, after, ratify the king's award. Between his hands, and next the suitors twain. Before that damsel go, that on the sward. Fixing her downcast eyes, in modest vein. Avows her preference of the Tartar lord. At which sore wondering stand the Paynim train. And Rodamont remains so sore astound. He cannot raise his visage from the ground. But wanted anger chasing shame which died. The Sarzan's face all over, he arraigned. The damsel's sentence, of the falchion, tied. About his manly waist, the handle strained. And in the king's and others' hearing cried. By this the question shall be lost or gained. And not by faithless woman's fickle thought. Which thither still inclines, where least it ought. Kind man Ricardo on his feet once more. Exclaims, and be it as it pleases thee. So that ere yet the vessel made the shore. Unpluffed remained a mighty space of sea. But that this king reproved the Sarzan sore. Ruling, that to appeal upon that plea. No more with manned Ricardo could avail. And made the moody Sarzan strike his sail. Branded with double scorn, before those peers. By noble agreement, whose sovereign sway. He, as in loyal duty bound, reveres. And by his lady on the selfsame day. There will no more the monarch of Algiers. Abide, but of his band, a large array. Two sergeants only for his service takes. And with that pair the pain him camp forsakes. As the afflicted bull who has foregone. His heifer, nor can longer warfare wage. Seeks out the greenwood holt and stream most lone. Or sands at distance from his pasturage. There ceases not in sun or shade to moan. Yet not for that exhales his amorous rage. So parts, constrained his lady to forego. The king of Argier, overwhelmed with woe. Rogero moved, his courser to regain. 
and had already donned his warlike gear. Then recollecting, that on listed plain. At Mandricardo he must couch the spear. Followed not Rodamont, but turned his rein. To end his quarrel with the Tartar, heir. He met in combat Sericana's lord. Within close barriers, for Orlando's sword. To have Frontino ravished in his sight. And be unable to forbid the deed. He sorely grieves, but, when he shall that fight. Have done, resolves he will regain the steed. But Sacrapent, whom, like the youthful knight, no quarrels in the moor's pursuit impede, and who was unengaged in other quest, upon the sarzan's footsteps quickly pressed, and would have quickly joined him that was gone, but for the chance of an adventure rare, which him detained until the day was done, and made him lose the track of Yulian's heir, a woman who had fallen into the sown and who without his help had perished there. The warrior drowning in that water found, and stemmed the stream and dragged the dame aground, when afterwards he would remount the cell. From him his restless charger broke astray, who fled before his lord till evening fell. Nor lightly did the king that courser stay. At last he caught him, but no more could spell. Where he had wandered from the beaten way, Two hundred miles he roved, twixt hill and plain. Ere he came up with Rodamont again. How he by sacrapent was overtaken. And fought by him, to his discomfit sore. And how he lost his courser, how was taken. I say not now, who have to say before. With what disdain and with what anger shaken. Against his liege and love, the Sars and more. Forth from the Saracen cantonment sped. And what he of the one and other said. Wherever that afflicted Paynim goes. He fills the kindling air with sighs that burn. And echo oft, for pity of his woes. With him from hollow rock is heard to mourn. O female mind! How lightly ebbs and flows. Your fickle mood, he cries, I prone to turn. Object most opposite to kindly faith. Lost, wretched man, who trusts you to his scathe. Neither my love nor length of servitude. Though by a thousand proofs to you made clear. Had power even so to fix your faithless mood. That you at least so lightly should not veer. Nor am I quitted, because less endued. With worth than Mandricardo I appear. Nor for your conduct cause can I declare. Save this alone, that you a woman are. I think that nature and an angry God produced thee to the world, thou wicked sex, to be to man a plague, a chastening rod. Happy, wert thou not present to perplex. So serpent creeps along the grassy sod. So bear and ravening wolf the forest vex. Wasp, fly, and gadfly buzz in liquid air and the rich grain lies tangled with the tear. Why has not bounteous nature willed that man? Should be produced without the aid of thee. As we the pippin, pear, and service can. Engraft by art on one another's tree. But she directs not all by certain plan. Rather, upon a nearer view, I see. In naming her, she ill can act aright. Since nature is herself a female height. Yet be not therefore proud and full of scorn. Women, because man issues from your seed. For roses also blossom on the thorn. And the fair lily springs from loathsome weed. Dispiteous, proud, importunate, and lorn. Of love, of faith, of counsel, rash indeed. With that, ungrateful, cruel and perverse. And born to be the world's eternal curse. These plaints and countless others to the wind. Poured forth the pain of night, to fury stirred. Now easing in low tone his troubled mind. And now in sounds which were at distance heard. In shame and in reproach of womankind. Yet certes he from sober reason erred. For we may deem a hundred good abound. Where one or two perchance are evil found. Though none for whom I hitherto have sighed. Of those so many, 
have kept faith with me. All with ingratitude, or falsehood died. I deem not, I accuse my destiny. Many there are, and have been more beside. Unmeriting reproach, but if there be. Mid hundreds, one or two of evil way. My fortune wills that I should be their prey. Yet will I make such search before I die. Rather before my hair shall wax more white. That haply on some future day, even I. Shall say, that one has kept her promise plight. And should not the event my trust belie. Nor am I hopeless, I with all my might. Will with unwearied pain her praise rehearse. With pen and ink and voice, in prose and verse. The Saracen, whom rage no less profound. Against his sovereign lord than lady swayed. And who of reason thus o'erpassed the bound. And ill of one and of the other said. Would fain behold that monarch's kingdom drowned. With such a tempest, with such scathe o'erlaid. As should in Afric every house aggrieve. Nor one stone standing on another leave. And would that from his realm, in want and woe. King Agrament a mendicant should wend. That through his means the monarch, brought thus low. His father's ancient seat might reascend. And thus he might the fruit of fealty show. And make his sovereign see. A real friend. Was I to be preferred in wrong or right? Although the world against him should unite. And thus the Saracen pours forth his moan. With rage against his liege and love posseist. And on his way is by long journeys gone. Giving himself and coarser little rest. The following day or next, upon the sown. He finds himself, who has his course at rest. Towards the coast of Provence, with design. To his African domain to cross the brine. From bank to bank the stream was covered o'er. With boat of little burden, which conveyed. For the supply of the invading moor. Vittel. From many places round pervaded. Since even from Paris to the pleasant shore. Of Aquamorta, all his rule obeyed. And, fronting Spain, whatever of level land. Was seen, extending on the better hand. The Vittel, disembarked from loaded barge. Was laid on sumpter horse or ready wain. And sent, with escort to protect the charge. Where barges could not come, about the plain. Fat herds were feeding on the double march. Brought thither from the march of either rain. And, by the riverside, at close of day. In different homesteads lodged, the drovers lay. The king of Argier, for the dusky air. Of night began upon the world to close. Here listened to a village landlord's prayer. That in his inn besought him to repose. His courser stalled, the board with plenteous fare. Is heaped, and Corsic wine and Grecian flows. For, in all else a more, the Sarzen drank. Of the forbidden vintage like a Frank. To warlike Rodamont, with goodly cheer. And kindlier mean, the landlord honor paid. For he the port of an illustrious peer. In his guest's lofty presence saw portrayed. But, sore beside himself, the cavalier. Had scarce his heart within him, which had strayed. To her, Wylera his own, in his despite. Nor word escaped the melancholy knight. Mine host, most diligent in his vocation. Of all the trade who throughout France were known. In that he had, mid strange and hostile nation. And every chance of warfare. Kept his own. Prompt to assist him in his occupation. Some of his kin had called. Whereof was none. Who dared before the warrior speak of aught? Seeing that pain am mute and lost in thought. From thought to thought the Sarzan's fancy flies. Himself removed from thence a mighty space. Who sits so bent, and with such downcast eyes. He never once looks any in the face. Next, after silence long, and many sighs. As if deep slumber had but then given place. His spirits he recalls, his eyelids raises. And on the family and landlord gazes. 
Then silence broke, and with a milder air. And visage somewhat less disturbed, applied. To him, the host, and those bystanders there. To know, if any to a wife were tied. And landlord and attendants, that all were. To Sarza's moody cavalier replied. He asked, what each conceited of his spouse. And if he deemed her faithful to her vows. Except mine host, those others were agreed. That chaste and good their consorts they believed. Think each man as he will, but well I read. The landlord said, You fondly are deceived. Your rash replies to one conclusion lead. That you are all of common sense bereaved. And so too must believe this noble knight. Unless he would persuade us black is white. Because, as single is that precious bird. The phoenix, and on earth there is but one. So, in this ample world, it is averred. One only can a woman's treason shun. Each hopes alike to be that white preferred. The victor who that single palm has won. How is it possible that what can fall? To one alone, should be the lot of all? Erewhile I made the same mistake as you. And that more dames than one were virtuous thought. Until a gentleman of Venice, who? For my good fortune, to this inn was brought. My ignorance by his examples true. So ably schooled, he better wisdom taught. Valerio was the name that stranger bore, 336. A name I shall remember evermore. Of wives and mistresses the treachery. Was known to him, with all their cunning lore. He, both from old and modern history. And from his own, was ready with such store. As plainly showed that none to modesty. Could make pretension, whether rich or poor. And that, if one appeared of purer strain. Twas that she better hid her want in vain. He of his many tales, among the rest. Whereof a third is from my memory gone. So well one story in my head impressed. It could not be more firmly graved in stone. And what I thought and think, would be professed. For that ill sex, I ween by every one. Who heard? And, sir, if pleased to lend an ear. To their confusion yon that tale shall hear. What couldst thou offer which could better please? At present, made reply the Paynim knight. Then sample, chosen from thine histories. Which hits the opinion that I hold, aright? That I may hear thee speak with better ease. Sit so, that I may have thee in my sight. But in the following canto I unfold. What to King Rodamont the landlord told. Canto. Chapter 28. To whatsoever evil tongue can tell. Of womankind King Rodamont gives ear. Then journeys homeward, but that infidel. Finds by the way a place he holds more dear. Hear him new love in flames for Isabel. But so the wishes of the cavalier. A friar impedes, who with that damsel wends. Him by a cruel death the felon ends. Ladies, and all of you that ladies prize. Afford not, for the love of heaven, an ear. To this, the landlord's tale, replete with lies. In shame and scorn of womankind. Though ne'er. Was praise or fame conveyed in that which flies. From such a caitiff's tongue. And still we hear. The sottish rabble all things rashly brand. And question most what least they understand. Omit this canto, and, the tale untold. My story will as clear and perfect be. I tell it, since by Turpin it is told. And not in malice or in rivalry. Besides, that never did my tongue withhold. Your praises. How you are beloved by me. To you I by a thousand proofs have shown. Vouching I am, and can but be, your own. Let him who will, three leaves or four pass by. Nor read a line, or let him, who will read. As little of that landlord's history. As of a tale or fiction, make his creed. But to my story, when his auditory. He saw were waiting for him to proceed. 
and that a place was yielded him, O oh, aright. The cavalier. He'd gone his tale recite. Astolfo that the Lombard scepter swayed. Who was King Monacho, his brother's heir? By nature with such graces was purveyed. Few e'er with him in beauty could compare. Such scarce a Pelle's pencil had portrayed. Zuxus, or worthier yet, if worthier were. Beauteous he was, and so by all was deemed. But far more beauteous he himself esteemed. He not so much rejoiced that he in height. Of grandeur was exalted o'er the rest. And that, for riches, subjects, and for might. Of all the neighboring kings he was the best. As that, superior to each other white. He beauty was throughout the world confiest. This pleased the monarch, who the praise conferred. As that wherein he most delighted, heard. Faustus Latinus, one of his array. Who pleased the king, a Roman cavalier. Hearing oft times Astolfo now display. The beauties of his hand, now of his cheer. And. Questioned by that monarch, on a day. If ever in his lifetime, far or near. He any of such beauty had espied. To him thus unexpectedly replied. Faustus to him replied, By what I see. And what I hear, is said by every one. Few are there that in beauty rival thee. And rather I those few confine to one. Jocundo is that one, my brother he. And well I ween that, saving him alone. Thou leavest all in beauty far behind. But I in him thy peer and better find. Impossible Astolfo deemed the thing. Who hitherto had thought the palm his own. And such a longing seized the Lombard king. To know that youth whose praises so were blown. He pressed, till Faustus promised him to bring. The brother praised by him, before his throne. Though, t'would be much if thither he repaired. The courier added, and the cause declared. Because the youth had ne'er been known to measure. In all his life. A single pace from Rome. But, on what fortune gave him, lived at leisure. Contented in his own paternal dome. Nor had diminished nor increased the treasure. Wherewith his father had endowed that home. And he more distant would Pavia deem. Than Tanais another would esteem. And that a greater difficulty were. To tear Jocundo from his consort. Who? Was by such love united to that fair. No other will but hers the husband knew. Yet at his sovereign's hest he would repair. To seek the stripling, and his utmost due. The suit with offers and with gifts was crowned. Which for that youth's refusal left no ground. Faustus set forth, and, after few days' ride, reached Rome, and his paternal mansion gained. There with entreaties so the brother plied. He to that journey his consent obtained. And wrought so well, though difficult to guide. Silent even young Jocundo's wife remained. He showing her what good would thence ensue. Besides what gratitude would be her due. Jocundo names a time to wend his way. And serving men meanwhile purveys and steeds. And a provision makes of fair array. For beauty borrows grace from glorious weeds. Beside him or about him, night and day. I weeping, to her lord the lady reads. She knows not how she ever can sustain. So long an absence, and not die with pain. For the mere thought produced such misery. It seemed from her was ravished her heart's core. Alas! My love, Jocundo cried, let be. Thy sorrows, weeping with her evermore. So may this journey prosper. As to thee. Will I return ere yet two months are o'er. Nor by a day o erpus the term prescribed. Though me the king with half his kingdom bribed. This brought his troubled consort small content. She, that the period was too distant, said. And, that, would be a mighty wonderment. If her, at his return, he found not dead. The grief which, day and night, her bosom rent. 
was such, that lady neither slept nor fed. So that for pity off the youth repented. He to his brother's wishes had consented. She from her neck unloosed a costly chain. That a gemmed cross and holy relics bore. Which one, a pilgrim of Bohemia's reign. Had gathered upon many a distant shore. Him did her sire in sickness entertain. Returning from Jerusalem of yore. And hence was made that dying pilgrim's heir. This she undoes, and gives her lord to wear. And round his neck entreats him, for her sake. That chain in memory of herself to wind. Her gift the husband is well pleased to take. Not that a token needs his love to bind. For neither time, nor absence, e'er will shake. Nor whatsoever fortune is behind. Her memory, which, rooted fast and deep, he still has kept, and after death will keep. The night before that morning streaked the sky. Fixed for his journey, to his sore dismay. Her husband deemed that in his arms would die. The wife from whom he was to wend his way. She slumbered not, to her a last goodbye. He bade, while yet it lacked an hour of day. Mounted his nag, and on his journey sped. While his afflicted spouse returned to bed. Jocundo was not two miles on his road. When he that jeweled cross recalled to mind. Which he beneath his pillow had bestowed. And, through forgetfulness, had left behind. Alas! The youth bethought him, in what mode? Shall I excuse for my omission find? So that from this my consort shall not deem. I little her unbounded love esteem. He pondered an excuse, then weaned, t'would be. Of little value, if it were expressed. By page or other, save his embassy. He did himself, his brother he addressed. Now to Bacchano ride you leisurely. And there at the first and set up your rest. For I must back to Rome without delay. But trust to overtake you by the way. No other but myself my need could do. Doubt not but I shall speedily be back. No servant took he, but, with an adieu. Jocundo, at a trot, wheeled round his hack. And when that cavalier the stream was through. The rising sun gone chased the dusky rack. At home he lighted, sought his bed, and found. The consort he had quitted sleeping sound. He, without saying aught, the curtains drew. And, what he least believed, within espied. For he beneath the quilt, his consort true. And chaste, saw sleeping at a stripling's side. Forth with Jocundo that adulterer knew. By practice, of his features certified. In that he was a footboy in his train. Nourished by him, and come of humble strain. To imagine his distress and wonderment. And warrant it, that other may believe. Is better than to make the experiment. And, like this wretch. The cruel proof receive. By anger stirred, it was his first intent. To draw his sword, and both of life bereave. But love, which spite himself, he entertained. For that ungrateful woman, him restrained. You see if like a vassal he obeyed. This ribald love, who left him not the force. To wake her, lest to know her guilt surveyed. Should in his consort's bosom move remorse. As best he could, he forth in silence made. The stair descended, and regained his horse. Goaded by love, he goads his steed again. And ere they reach there and rejoins his train. His change of mien to all was manifest. All saw his heart was heavy, yet not one. Mid these, in any sort, the reason guessed. Nor read the secret woe which caused his moan. All thought he had to roam his steps ad rest. Woe to the town, surnamed of Horns, had gone. 337. That love has caused the mischief all surmise. Though none of them conjectures in what wise. His brother weaned he was in grief immersed. For his deserted wife, he, on his side. For other reason, inly chafed and cursed. That she was but too well accompanied. 
meanwhile, with swelling lips and forehead pursed. The ground that melancholy stripling eyed. Faustus, who vainly would apply relief. Ill cheered him, witless what had caused his grief. He for his sore an evil salve had found. And, where he should retire, increased his woes. Who, with the mention of his wife, that wound. Inflamed and opened, which he sought to close. He rests not night nor day, in sorrow drowned. His appetite is gone, with his repose. Ne'er to return, and, whilom of such fame. His lovely visage seems no more the same. His eyeballs seem deep buried in his head. His nose seems grown, his cheeks are pined so sore. Nor even remains, his beauty so is fled. Enough to warrant what he was before. Such fever burns him, of his sorrow bred. He halts on Arbia's and on Arno's shore, 338. And, if a charm is left, tis faded soon. And withered like a rosebud plucked at noon. Besides that Faustus sorrowed to descry. Him so bested, worse cause for sorrowing. Was to that courtier to appear to lie. Before Astolfo. He was pledged to bring. One that was fairest deemed in every eye. Who must appear the foulest to that king. Yet he continued on his way to wend. And brought him to Pavia in the end. Not that forthwith he lets the youth be seen. Lest him the king of little wit arraign. He first by his dispatches lets him wean. That thither he jocundo brings with pain. Saying, that of his beauteous air and mien. Some secret cause of grief had been the bane. Accompanied by a distemper sore. So that he seemed not what he was before. Glad was the monarch, of his coming taught. As of a friend's arrival he could be. Since in the universal world was not. That he so much desired as him to see. Nor was the Lombard's king displeased in aught. To mark his guest's inferiority. Though, but for his misfortune, it was clear. He his superior would have been or peer. Lodged by him in his palace, every day. And every hour, the stranger youth he sees. Studious to honor him, and bids purvey. Store of provision for his better ease. While still his thoughts to his ill consort stray. Jocundo languishes, nor pastimes please. That melancholy man, nor music strain. One jot diminishes his ceaseless pain. Above his chambers, on the upper floor. Nearest the roof, there was an ancient hall. Thither, in solitary mood, forsore. Pastime and company, the stripling gall. He aye betakes himself. While evermore. Sad thought some newer cause of grief recall. He here, who would believe the story, found. A remedy unhoped, which made him sound. At that hall's farther end, more feebly lighted. For windows ever closed shut out the day. Where one wall with another ill united. He, through the chink. Beheld a brighter ray. There laid his eye, and saw, what he had slighted. As hard to credit, were it but hearsay. He hears it not, but this himself descries. Yet hardly can believe his very eyes. He of the Queen's apartment here was sight 339. Her choicest and her priviest chamber, where. Was never introduced whatever white. Save he most faithful was esteemed, he there. As he was peeping, saw an uncouth fight. A dwarf was wrestling with the royal fair. And such that champion's skill, though undergrown. He in the strife his opposite had thrown. As in a dream, Jocundo stood, beside. Himself, a while of sober sense bereaved. Nor, but one of the matter certified. And sure it was no dream, his sight believed. A scorned and crooked monster, then he cried. Is, as her conqueror, by a dame received. Wife of the comeliest, of the courteest white. And greatest monarch, oh! What appetite! And he the consort to whom he was wed. Her he most used to blame, recalled to mind. 
and, for the stripling taken to her bed. To deem the dame less culpable inclined. Less of herself than sex the fault he read. Which to one man could never be confined. And thought, if in one taint all women shared. At least his had not with a monster paired. To the same place Jocundo made return. At the same hour, upon the following day. And, putting on the king the selfsame scorn. Again beheld that dwarf and dame at play. And so upon the next and following morn. For, to conclude, they made no holiday. While she, what most Jocundo's wonder moved. The pygmy for his little love reproved. One day, amid the rest, the youth surveyed. The dame disordered and oppressed with gloom. Having twice summoned, by her waiting maid. The favored dwarf, who yet delayed to come. A third time by the lady sent, she said. Engaged at play, Madonna, is the groom. Nor, lest he lose a doit, his paltry stake. Will that discourteous churl his game forsake? At such strange spectacle, the Roman knight. Cleared up his brow, his visage and his eyes. He jocund, as in name, became in sprite. And changed his tears for smiles, with altered guise. He waxed ruddy, gay, and plump in plight. And seems a cherubim of paradise. So that such change with wonderment all see. Brother and king, and royal family. If from the youth Astolfo wished to know. From whence this sudden light of comfort came. No less Jocundo this desired to show. And to the king such injury proclaim. But willed that like himself he should forego. Revenge upon the author of that shame. Hence, that he might discern her guilt, yet spare. He made him on the Agnes day swear. 340. He made him swear that he, for nothing said. Or seen, which might to him displeasing be. Though he, in what he should discover, read. An outrage offered to his majesty. Would, now or ever, venge him on his head. Moreover him he bound to secrecy. That the ill-doer ne'er, through deed or word. Might guess his injured king that case had heard. The monarch, who to everything beside. Could better have given credit, freely swore. To him the cause Jocundo signified. Why he had many days lamenting sore. Because he had his evil wife espied. In the embraces of a sergeant poor, 341. And vowed he should in fine have died of grief. If he for longer time had lacked relief. But that within his highness palace said. He had witnessed what had much appeased his woe. For, if foul shame had fallen upon his head. At least he was not single. Saying so. He to that chink the Lombard monarch led. Who spied the mannequin of hideous show. Che la gementa altrui sato sitn, 342. Taka di sproni, efa giacar di skeen. You may believe he shameless deemed that act. Without my swearing it. He, at the sight. It seemed, would go distraught, with fury racked. He against every wall his head would smite. Would cry aloud, would break the solemn pact. Yet kept parforce the promise he had plight. And gulped his anger down and bitter scorn. Since on the holy water he had sworn. Then to Jocundo, what remains to me? To do in this misfortune, brother, speak. Since vengeance with more noted cruelty. Thou wilt not let me on the sinners reek. Jocundo answered, Let these ingrates be. And try we if all women are as weak. And if the wives of others can be won. To do what others by our own have done. Both fair and youthful, measured by this scale. Nor easily our equals shall we find. What woman but to us shall strike her sail? If even to the ugly these are kind? At least, if neither youth nor grace avail. The money may, with which our bags are lined. Nor will I that we homeward more return. Ere the chief spoils we from a thousand earn. Long absence, seeing with a distant part. 
converse with different women, off delay. As it would seem, the troubles of a heart. Whereof love's angry passions make their prey. The king is pleased to hear the youth impart. This counsel, nor his journey will delay. Thence on their road, with but two squires beside. He and the Roman knight together ride. Disguise they go through France and Italy. They Flanders next and England scour, and where. A woman they of lovely visage spy. I find the dame complaint with their prayer. They upon some bestow what others buy. And oft replaced their squandered treasures are. Our travellers to the wives of many sued. And by as many other dames were wooed. By solid proof those comrades ascertain. Here tarrying for a month, and there for two. That their own wives are of no other vein. Than those of others, and as chaste and true. After some season, wearied are the twain. With ever running after something new. For, without risk of death, thus evermore. The intruder's ill could enter others' door. Twere best to find a girl whose natural bent. And face to both of us should pleasing be. A girl, that us in common might content. Nor we in her find cause for jealousy. And wherefore wouldst thou that I should lament? More than with other, to go halves with thee? Exclaimed Astolfo, well I know is none. Of all the female sex, content with one. One damsel that in naught shall us constrain. Then only, when disposed to please the fair. Will we in peace and pleasure entertain. Nor we, about her, have dispute or care. Nor, deem I, she with reason could complain. For if two fell to every other's share. Better than one might she keep faith with two. Nor haply we such frequent discord view. Much seems the king's proposal to content. The Roman youth, and thus it is, the twain. To execute Astolfo's project bent. Journey by many a hill and many a plain. And find at last, well fitting their intent. The daughter of a publican of Spain. Of presence and of manners framed to win. Whose father at Valencia kept his inn. As yet, upon the bloom of spring, the maid. Was a fresh flower that scarce began to blow. Her sire with many children was o'erlaid. And was to poverty a mortal foe. Hence, tis an easy matter to persuade. Mine host his buxom daughter to forego. And let them, where they will the damsel bear. In that to treat her well the travellers swear. Pigliano la Fanciula, e Piacer and Hanno 343. Hor el uno, hor el altro in caritade, e in pace. Come a vicenda i mantisi, che dano. Hor el uno or el altro, fiato a la fornis. Per vetter tuta spagna indian ivano. E passar poi nel regno di Sifis. They to Zativa come upon the day. That from Valencia they had bent their way. The travellers from there into street and square. And places, public and divine, resort. Who, wheresoever they had made repair. Themselves were so accustomed to disport. The girl is with the valets left in care. Who make the beds. And wearied hackneys sort. While others in the hostile kitchen dight. The meal against their lords return at night. As groom, a stripling in the hostel plied. Who in the other landlord's house had been. He, from her childhood at the damsel's side. Had joyed her love, they, without change of mien. On meeting, closely one another eyed. Since either apprehended to be seen. But when alone, now left together, raised. Their eyelids and on one another gazed. The stripling asked her whitherward they sped. And of the two which claimed her as his right. This, point by point, to him Flametta read. Flametta she, the Greek that boy was height. When I had hoped the time was coming, said. The Greek, that I should live with thee, my light. Flametta, thou, alas! Art lost to me. Nor know I if I more thy face shall see. 
I to the bitter dregs the cup must drain. Of promised sweets, since thou art others' prey. Twas my design, having with mickle pain. And labor sore, some money put away. Which I had hoarded out of frequent gain. From parting guests, and from my yearly pay. To seek again Valencia, and demand. Thee from thy sire in lawful wedlock's band. The damsel shrugs her shoulders, and complains. And, that he is too late, is her reply. The Greek laments and sobs, and partly feigns. Wilt thou, he answered her, thus let me die. Let me, at least, exhale my amorous pains. Let me, but once, in thine embrace lie. For every moment in thy presence spent. Ere thou depart, will make me die content. To him the damsel, full of pity, cries. Believe, I covet this no less than thee. But here, surrounded by so many eyes, is neither time nor opportunity. I feel assured, to her that youth replied. Were I beloved by you, as you by me. This very night you would find out a place. Wherein to solace us some little space. She bade him come, when she a while had thought. When he believed that all asleep were laid. And how by him her chamber should be sought. And how he should return, at full, displayed. The cautious stripling did as he was taught. And, when he found all silent, thither made. He pushed, till it gave way, the chamber door. And, upon tiptoes, softly paced the floor. Pensa ella al quanto, e poi dice, che vegna 344. Quando creter patra chogn uno dorma. E pianament cum far convegna. E de elander, e del torner el informa. I el greco, si cum ella ludisegna. Quando sente dormir tuta la torma. Vienna a el uscio e lo spinge, e quel gli seed. Entra pien piano, e va a tenten cal pedi. Fa lungi i passi, e semper in quel di dietro 345. Tuto si firma, e l ultro par che muova. A gaisa, che di dar tima nel vetro. Non che el terreno habia a calcar, ma el yuva. Etn la mano inanzi simul metro. Va brancolando in fin che el leto trova. E di la, dove gli altri havian la piante. Tacito si cacho cal capo inanti. Fra eluna e el ultra gamba di fiametta 346. Che supina giasea, dorito ven. E quando le fu a par, el abracho stretta. E sopra le sin presso al dsi ten. Cavalco forte, e non ando a staffetta. Che my bestia muter non li conven. Che questa para lui che si ben trot. Che sender non in vol per tutanate. Havia jocondo, ed avia il re sentido 347. Il calpestio, che semper il leto scas. E el uno e el ultro, di uno error scarnito. Shavia creduto che el campagno fos. Poi si hebi il greco il sua camin fornito. Si cum era venuto, anco tornas. Seto il sol de el orizont i ragi. Source fiametta, e fis ent rare i pagi. Il re dis al campagno modigiando 348. Freight, molto camin fato a verde. E tempo a ben, che ti reposi, quando. Stato a cavallo tuta nate se. Giocando a lui rispose di romando. S dis, tu di quel, cio a dire of re. A te taca poser. E pro ti facia. Che tuta nate hai cavalcato a caccia. Anchio, sugiens il re. Senza Alcan Fio 349. Lasciato Havria il mio can carer un trato. E e mi havesi prestato un pa il cavallo. Tanto che el mio bisogno avesi fato. Giocondo replico, son tua vasallo. E poi far mico, 
e romper ogni pato. C. Che non convenia tal seni usar. Ben mi potivi dur, la sila stare. Tanto replica elon, tanto sagiunge 350. L'altro, che sono a grave light in siim. Vengan de mati ad un parlar, che punge. Ch ad a menduo lesser bifato prim. Chiamon fiametta, che non era lunge. E de la fraude esser scoperta team. Per fair in viso eluno all altro dire. Quel, che negando ambi perian mentire. Dimi, ludis il re con fiero scardo, 351. E non temer di me, ne di costui. Chi tuta nate fu quel si gagliardo. Che ti god, senza far part altrui? Credendo el un provar el altro bugiardo. La risposta aspidavano ambedui. Fia meta ad piedi lor si gido, inserta. Di viver piu, vedendosi scoperta. Demando lor perdono, che demor 352. Cha un giovaneto havia portato, spinta. E de pieta dun tormentato cor. Che molto havia per le petito, vinta. Caduta era la nate in quello error. E seguito, senza dar cosa finta. Cum tra lor con spim si condus. Chmb credesser, che el compagno fus. Gazing on one another, with surprise. The monarch and Jocundo are confused. Nor even to have heard a case surmise. Of two, that ever thus had been abused. Then laughed so, that they sate with winking eyes. And open mouth, and lungs which breath refused. And, wearied with the mirth her tale had bred. Fell backwards, both, exhausted on the bed. When they had laughed so loud a laugh, the dew. Stood in their eyes, and each with aching breast. Remained, the pair exclaimed, What shall we do? In order not to be a woman's jest. Since we, with all our heed, between us two, could not preserve the one by us posseist. A husband, furnished with more eyes than hair. Perforce must be betrayed with all his care. A thousand, beauteous all, have we found kind. Nor one of those so many has stood fast. If tried, all women we by proof should find. Like these, but be the experiment our last. Then we may deem our own not worse inclined. Then are the wives of others, and as chaste. And, if like others we our own discern. I hold it best that we to them return. When they have come to this resolve, they, through. Flametta, call the youth into their bower. And with the girl her leman, in the view. Of many, gift, and add a fitting dower. They mount, and to the east their way pursue. Accustomed westward hitherto to scour. To their deserted wives again repair. Nor of their afterdeeds take farther care. Here paused mine host, to whom on every side. His audience had with careful heed attended. Rodamont listened, nor a word replied. Until the landlord's story was suspended. Then, fully I believe, that Paynim cried. The tale of women's frauds would ne'er be ended. Nor could that man in any volume note. The thousandth part, who would their treasons quote. Of sounder judgment, mid that company. There was an elder, one more wise and bold. That undefended so the sex to see. Was inly wroth, and could no longer hold. To the relator of that history. He turned. And, many things we have been told. Exclaimed that ancient, wherein truth is none. And of such matters is thy fable one. Him I believe not, that told this truth to you. Though in all else he gospel truths expressed. As less by his experience, than untrue. Conceit respecting women prepossessed. The malice which he bears to one or two. Makes him unjustly hate and blame the rest. But you shall hear him, if his wrath o'erblow. Yet greater praise than blame on these bestow. 
and he a larger field for speaking well. Will find, than blaming womankind withal. And of a hundred worthy fame may tell. For one whose evil deeds for censure call. He should exalt the many that excel. Culled from the multitude, not rail at all. If otherwise your friend Valerio said. He was by wrath, and not by reason, led. Didemi un poco, a d voi force alcuno, 353. Chabia servato a l'sua magli feed? Che nigi andar, quando gli sia opportuno. A l altrui donna, e darl anchor merced? Credit in tutto el mondo travarnuno? Ci el dice, ment, e fall a ben ci el creed. Trovatin vo alcuna, che six chiami. Non parlo de lo publish, ed infamy. Conocit alcan voi, che non lasias 354. La mogli sola, anchor che fos bella. Per sigire ultra donna, se speras. In breve, e facilment odner quella? Che fareb egli, quando lo pregas. Ades premio a lui donna, adonzella? Credo per compiacer or quest, hor kel. Che tutti lasir a movi la pel. Kel, che i lor maridi hanno lasciati, 355. Lo più volti cagion havuta en hanno. Del sua di casa li vegens voliati. E che fuer, de el altrui bramosi vano. Davriano amar, valendo esser amati. E tor con la misura cha lor dano. Io feriai. Se a mistes il darla, e tori. Tal leg, si hum non six potrebapor. Seria la leg, ch agni donna colta 356. In adulterio, fos mesa a mort. Se provar non pates, ch una volta. Haves adulterato il sua consort. Se provar lo pates, andrebasi alta. Na temiria il marido, na la corte. Cristo ha lasciato eni i presedi suoi. Non far altrui quel, che pater non voi. La incontinenza e quanto mal si put 357. Imputer lor, non gia a tuto lo stulo. Ma in questo ci ha di noi più brut note? Che continente non si trova un solo. E molto più en hadiraser lugot. Quando bestemia, ladronecchio, dolo. Usura, ed omicidio, e seve peggio. Raro, se non dagli huomini, far veggio. So reasoning, that just elder and sincere. With ready instances, supports his creed. Showing there many women are who ne'er. Sinned against chastity, in word or deed. But him with impious visage and severe. The pain him scared, ill pleased the truth to read. So that, through fear, he further speech forbore. But changed not therefore aught his former lore. Having stopped further question in this wise. The pain him monarch from the table rose. Then lays him on his bed, till from the skies. The dusky shades depart. And morning glows but spends a larger part of night in size. At his liege lady's sin, then in repose. Rodamont thence departs at dawn of day. Resolved by water to pursue his way. For with such care for his good horse's plight. As is becoming a good cavalier. The courser fair and good, made his in spite. Of young Rogero and Circassia's peer. Seeing he, for two days, that horse's might had taxed too hardly in his long career. As well he for his ease embarked the steed, as to pursue his way with better speed. He straight makes launch the vessel from the marge, and bids put forth the oars from either side. Nor big nor deeply laden, she, at large, descends the sown, transported by the tide. Care never quits him, though the shifting barge. The king ascend, or nimble horse bestride. This he encounters eye on prow or poop. 
and bears behind him on his courser's croup. Rather within his head or heart always. Care sits, whence every comfort is o'erthrown. No remedy the wretched man surveys. In that his enemies are in the town. From others hope is none, since they who raise. This fearful war against him, are his own. Vexed by that cruel one, I night and day. Whom he might hope to find his natural stay. Rodamont navigates the day and night. Ensuing, I by heavy thoughts oppressed. Nor can he ever banish the despite. Suffered from king and lady, from his breast. The selfsame grief sate heavy on his sprite. Aboard the bark, as when his steed he pressed. Such fire was not by water to be drowned. Nor he his nature changed by changing ground. 358. As the sick man who with a fever grows. And, weak and weary, shifts his place in vain. Whether he right or left himself bestows. And hopes in turning some relief to gain. Finds neither on this side or that repose. But everywhere encounters equal pain. The pagan monarch so found small relief. By land or water, for his secret grief. Rodamont brooked no more aboard to stay. But bade them land him, and by lions hide. By Vienne and Valence next took his way. And the rich bridge in Avignon descried. For these and more, which, twixt the river lay. And Celtiberian hills upon that side. Theirs, from the day they conquered the Champagne. Obeyed the kings of Afric and of Spain. To pass to Afric Strait, the cavalier. Kept to the right, towards Aquamorta's shore. And lighted on a stream and hamlet, dear. To Ceres and to Bacchus. Which that more. Found quitted by the peasants, in their fear. As often by the soldier harried sore. The beach upon one side broad ocean laved. And on the other yellow harvests waved. Here, newly built upon a hillock's crest. A little church the Saracen espied. Abandoned by its priesthood, like the rest. For war was flaming upon every side. Rodamont of this place himself posseist. Which, from its sight, as well as lying wide. Of fields, from whence he tidings loathed to hear. So pleased him, he for it renounced Argier. He changed his scheme of seeking Afric's land. So this fair spot seemed fit for his behoof. And here housed carriages, and steed, and band. Together with himself, beneath one roof. At few leagues distance, did Montpellier stand. And other wealthy towns, not far aloof. The village was upon a river's side. So that its every need might be supplied. Here standing, full of thought, upon a day. Such was his common wont, the pain him spied. Advancing by a narrow path, which lay. Through a green meadow, from the adverse side. A lovely damsel, that upon her way. Was by a bearded monk accompanied. And these behind them led a lusty steed. Who bore a burden, trapped with sable weed. Who that attendant monk and damsel were. And what that burden, will to you be clear. Remembering Isabella is the fair. Charged with the course of her Zerbino dear. I left her. Where from Provence, in the care. Of that good sire, she bound herself to steer. By whom persuaded, had the lady given. The remnant of her virtuous life to heaven. Although in her pale face and troubled guise. The sorrow of that dame is manifest. Although two fountains are her streaming eyes. And sobs I issue from her burning breast. And more beside of suffering testifies. With what a load of grief she is oppressed. Yet, in her faded cheek such beauties meet. Love and the graces there might fix their seat. As soon as he of Sarza saw appear. The beauteous dame, he laid the thought aside. Of hatred to that gentle race and dear. By whom alone the world is glorified. And best by Isabel the cavalier. Believed his former love would be supplied. 
and one love by another be effaced. As bolt by bolt in timber is displaced. Her with the kindest mien and mildest tone. That he could fashion, met the Sarzan knight. To whom the dame her every thought made known. And said, when she was questioned of her plight. She would with holy works, this world foregone. Seek favor in her heavenly father's sight. Loud laughed that godless Paynim at the thought. Who every faith and worship held it not. And said, that she from reason wandered wide. And termed her project sudden and unsound. Nor deemed her less to blame than those who hide. Through greediness, their treasure underground. And keep it from the use of all beside. Though hence no profit to themselves redound. Rightly were prisoned lion, snake, and bear. But ill whatever is innocent and fair. The monk, that to this talk has lent an ear. Prompt with advice that mournful dame to stay. And lest she quit her course, prepared to steer. His bark, like practiced pilot. On her way. A sumptuous table, rich in spiritual cheer. Had speedily bestirred him to array. But, born with evil taste, that pain him rude. No sooner tasted, than he loathed, the food. And having interrupted him in vain. Nor having power to make him stint his lore. That pain him, stirred to fury, broke the rein. Of patience, and assailed the preacher whore. But haply wearisome might seem the strain. If I upon this theme dilated more. So here I close, nor words will idly spend. Admonished by that ancient's evil end.